you, babe. Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yes, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere, a hard-working girl whose hardest work is finding work. But luckily, I landed a job last week. Sales girl in one of the town's swankiest department stores. I've only been working at the store for seven days. And so far, I've had a perfect record. I've been late coming to work every day. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll be able to get there on time as soon as I get enough money to take my alarm clock out of half. Oh, gosh, it's 9, 10 now, and I'd better hurry that store walker. Mr. Drinkwater has an eye like an eagle. Out of my way, everybody, out of my way. Oh, 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 oh I'm terribly oh, sorry. Well, heavens to Betsy. Don't just stand there and gape, you silly you. Oh, help me up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Drinkwater. There. Oh, oh. oh what's the matter, Mr. Drinkwater? Did you break a leg or an arm? Oh, more horrible than that. My carnation. It's in shreds. Oh, and without one in your buttonhole, you're practically a civilian, aren't you? <laughs> Miss Revere. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Mr. Drinkwater. Buy yourself another carnation and take it out of my salary. Uh, your salary? Oh, there ain't that much left in it? Uh, hardly, Miss Revere. Mm. In the short period of time you've been with our organization, you have been a regular butterfinger. Oh. Every department to which you've been transferred, you've managed to break something. It won't happen again, Mr. Drinkwater. It had better not, Miss Revere. Oh. But we can't afford to fire you because you're so much in our debt. And we can't take the chance of putting you in another department where you can cause further breakage. Say, I really got the company over a barrel, ain't I? <laughs> and I hate to burst your beautiful um, bubble, Your Majesty. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have conjured up a way to avail ourselves of your services. Mm -hmm. Will you please step into my office? Uh-huh, if I have to. All right. What's the catch? The catch. When you're bitten by a dog, you don't feed him liver, Mr. Drinkwater. I understand, Miss Revere. But you may banish your fears. You see, the reason I have chosen you for this special job mm -hmm. is because, well, uh, the requirements are rather unusual. How unusual? Well, you see, you have exactly the right figure. Mm -hmm. The perfect, uh, um, oh, everything. Oh, I'm absolutely certain you do. Do what, Mr. Drinkwater? Well, I mean, uh, your figure and your coloring. They're practically an exact duplicate of Miss Trent. Is that good? Uh, Peter Drake Honeycutt the third seems to think so. <laughs> oh, you mean Peter Drake Honeycutt, the rich society playboy that's always giving mink and limousines to chorus girls? Uh, yes. yes. Uh -huh. You see, Miss Revere, Mr. Honeycutt is marrying Miss Amanda Trent next week. Well, imagine that. Yes, she's a society girl from Los Angeles, mm. and we have been commissioned by the bride-to-be to create her complete wedding ensemble. Oh, well, how nice. Now, that's Miss Trent good. happens to be a very busy young lady and insists that each flounce and ruffle of her wedding gown fits just perfectly. So you want to use my torso for her trousseau, huh? I abhor your organic way of putting it, Miss Revere. But that's it exactly. You report it once to our Miss Fogel, head seamstress in our bride beautiful salon. <laughs> okay, Mr. Pinkwater, and thanks. Uh, don't mention it. Gee, I've always wanted to wear a wedding gown, but I guess this is as close as I'll ever get to it. Sorry, Maisie. Did I stick you again? Yes, Miss Vogel. 
Shall we try our darns from now on to get this fitting finished with just every other pin in my epidermis? Oh, I can't help it, Maisie. I'm so nervous. Oh. Miss Trent's wedding is just a week off, and this wedding on has to be just perfect. And she has a terrible temper. And if every stitch isn't just right, she'll raise the roof, and I'll be fired, and I've got an old mother to support. And jobs aren't easy to get. Ah, oh, forget it, kid. I know how much this means to you. And the pins don't really bother me. Some of them are stuck in very deep, you know. Oh, oh. there you are, Maisie. Finished. <laughs> Now, turn around slowly. All right. Oh, Maisie. You know, you'd make a beautiful bride. Really? You know, I'm thinking of getting married. You are, Maisie? When? Constantly. Oh. There. That's better. Now, walk like you're coming down the church aisle. Sure. You know, when I was on the stage, I had rich millionaires like Peter Drake, Hunnicott, Julie about me, too. But I kept saying to myself, Maisie... You don't want to marry for money. You want to marry for love. Uh Uh-huh. And if you say that to yourself long enough, after a while, you get to believe it. Yeah. Hmm. I guess you do. Now, turn around and come towards me, Maisie, please. Sure. Then I'd say to myself, maybe rich people are as nice as poor people. After all, what are rich people? Just poor people with money. You know, I've met some nice rich people. They're not all like that, Miss Trent. Hmm. Maisie... Don't you think that neckline is a little too uh, daring? Oh, not for me, honey. But after all, I'm not Amanda Trent. Well, you could have fooled me, Maisie. When you came in for the fittings this morning, I almost called you Miss Trent. You mean I look like it? Enough to be a twin. Oh. Wait, I'll show you. There's a picture of Miss Trent in the society column of today's paper. Oh, here she is, Maisie. Gosh, she sure looks like you. Yeah, let me see. Hmm? Ah. Well, she certainly should look like me. That is Daisy Revere. You mean your sister? I mean, in Vaudeville, I had a song, dance, and witty patter act called the Revere Sisters. The original Daisy got married, so I teamed up with this Tilly Floor. Tilly Floor? Yeah. That was this Daisy's name before she became Daisy Revere, before she became Amanda Trenton, before she became a society girl from Los Angeles. Now she's going to be Mrs. Peter Drake Hunnicutt. Gee, she's sure been called a lot of names. Yeah. And if I know Daisy, she deserves every name she's been called. You don't like her, then? Like I like snakes, honey. That two-time and tin-eared soprano ran out in the act in Toledo and took my entire wardrobe with her. And gosh, that sure was a pretty dress. Are we decent, girls? Some of us are, some of us ain't. Oh, I just cannot wait to feast my eyes. <gasps> oh, it's poetry, Miss Fogel. It's sheer, sheer poetry. Oh, thank you, Mr. Drinkwater. Oh, well, Miss Fogel did it all by herself, Mr. Drinkwater. Don't you think she deserves a raise? A raise? <laughs> he don't think. And Miss Trent is waiting in the lounge to see her wedding gown, Miss Revere. And I'm just certain her eyes will burst out of her head when she sees you. You ain't just beating your chops, mister. What was that, Mrs. Fair? Uh, she said she couldn't beat this gown if she went to other shops. Uh, no, I didn't. I was oh, just going to tell her. Mr. Drinkwater, have you noticed the striking resemblance between Miss Revere and Miss Trent? Uh, well, yes, yes. The resemblance to Miss Trent is remarkable. Oh, it's nothing. Yes, it's remarkable indeed, Miss Revere. Why, you could be taken for sister. No, thanks, Mr. Drinkwater. I was already taken by her once, in Toledo. Uh, Maisie, uh, Miss Trent is waiting. You'd better get... You know Miss Trent, Miss Revere? Like a book, Mr. Drinkwater, like a book. And I'm just dying to meet the little louse. Maybe. Ah, uh, Los Angeles Daisy Tant again. <laughs> that was a relief. What is a relief, Miss Fogel? That Maisie and Miss Trent know each other. She might not be so, so difficult with a friend. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, now Miss Revere, perhaps you'd better model the gown for Miss Trent alone in the customer's booth. Oh, she has a fiery temper, you know. Simply detest the things. Simply detest them. Yeah, she always was the detestable type. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Now, you go right ahead and get on the good side of her. Well, it won't be easy. What makes you say that? I don't think she has a good side. Yes? Whom is there? Whom? <laughs> Why, just me, Miss Trent. A poor little hard-working girl who's been given the honor of modeling your lovely wedding gown. Oh, come in. Why, it's beautiful. Oh. Hi. Oh. That's right. Oh, hi, oh, as in Toledo, remember? Such insolence. I have never visited Toledo, mate. Uh, I mean, miss. <laughs> Don't strain your accent, honey. I won't give you away. You couldn't possibly, my dear. You see, even if you know me, 
switch you down. Uh, I Tell you. thought I did, darling. But people do make mistakes. I made one in Toledo. I left my suitcase unlocked. Well, some people are careless and they lose things. But some other people aren't careless. About uh, things or husbands to be? Both. Yes? Yes, little Mary was there. May we come in? Yes, we're just dying to see how you like my, I mean, our, I mean, your wedding gown. Oh, just a minute. Start modeling, Maisie. That's what you're being paid for. Oh, certainly, Your Highness. And may I wish you and your sucker to be a long life. That's thank you. <laughs> I know being married to you, it may not be a long life for the husband, but it will certainly seem like it to him. Why, you little... Now, just a minute, you silly. Now, Mr. Drinkwater, I demand, I demand that you discard this, this peasant immediately. Uh, yes, but Miss Trinkwater... Oh, you can't do that to her, Miss Fool. Just for opening your big trap, you little dried-up old mouse, you're through, too. Mr. Drinkwater. Uh, yes, yes, let me say anything you say. Now, wait a minute, Tilly. You can't do that to Miss Fogel. She Another make... word and I shall cancel my entire trousseau. As a matter of fact, I'm going elsewhere to have it made. Yes, Miss Miss Trent, now wait, but don't I mean that. Uh, oh, Mother told me there'd be days like that. Oh, Miss Trent, wait. We have other seamstresses. Well, maybe. Yeah, I know. Looks like we're both out of a job. Oh, I'm used to it, honey. But you, you've got a mother to support. Now, look, I made you lose this job, and I'm going to get it back for you. You are? How? 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 Well, there's only one way to do it. One way? What's that? I don't know. I haven't thought of it yet. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Get Tommy driving me home in your truck. I don't know how to thank you. Oh, there are ways. Oh. How far do you go, maybe? Just as far as thank you. And you might as well use both hands on the wheel. Okay, gorgeous. No harm trying, I always say. What do you always say? <laughs> I always say keep your eyes on the road. The Bonton department store wouldn't like you to smash one of the snazziest delivery trucks just to save car fare for an ex employee. Well, let them not like it. They only own truck driver Tommy Wilson from 9 to 12 and from 1 to 5.30. Before, between, and after, Thomas J. Wilson belongs to the theater. Only the American theater hasn't found it out yet. Oh, don't you worry, Tommy. You just keep on with that little amateur group of yours. Get yourself lots of experience. Well, nobody can say I'm not getting experience with my little theater group. I've played everything from a banker to a Texas oil millionaire. Mm, so is Daisy. Oh, forget about what that drip did to you, Maisie. You'll get another job. Yeah, but what about poor Miss Fogel with an old mother to support? Oh, that Daisy. I'm so mad I'd like to pull that blonde hair out of her head by its black roots. Oh, but huh? now Tommy, that little dog and that man, too. Ooh. Oh, that crazy jerk. Oh. Is he? Are they? Did you? No, Maisie, you can open your eyes now. He, he saved the dog? Yeah, what a flying tackle right <sighs> from the curb. What's the matter, hero? Don't you like living? Not particularly, darling. Darling. Now, don't get wolfy, bub. Just because you saved little Fido from becoming part of my radiator. Yeah, you're sure fresh for a man that almost got killed. Almost doesn't quite do it, darling. Would you like your friend to back up and try again, Amanda? Amanda? Mm -hmm. Look, bub, I'm not... Yes, my dear, but you soon will. Now, wait a minute, whoever you are. This girl is a friend of mine. Oh, I have no objection to that. Well, that's darn... Of you. you may have all the uh, uh, friends you want, darling, but I insist that you postpone your amorous meanderings until you're Mrs. Peter Drake Hunnicutt. The third? No, the ex. Oh. You're the fellow she's going to marry? Yes. Oh. But have no fears, my friend. All I ask is that you exercise a little uh, restraint. Only until after the divorce, of course. I will not have my family subjected to any more humiliation than is absolutely necessary. Look, Petey, you and me ain't getting married. You mean you're not going to hold me? To... I don't know about Amanda, but I'm not cheap. 
My name happens to be Maisie. Ain't it, Tommy? That's right, Mr. Honeycutt. Maisie Revere. Yeah. But, but the resemblance. You've got her hair, her eyes, her face. Oh, that's all right, mister. She's got a couple of things on mine, too. Oh, then you know Amanda. Yeah, I know her. Why don't you want to marry her? I thought you said you know Amanda. That answers the question. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Honeycutt, I wish I could help you. Hey, Maisie, I thought you don't like millionaires. Yeah, but he's different. Ordinary millionaires wouldn't risk their lives to save a little homeless mongrel. You really deserve a break, Pete. Thanks, Maisie. And Amanda is just the one who's going to break me. I wish there was something I could do, Pete. Well, Tommy, you could drive me downtown if it isn't out of your way. Sure, hop in. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I've got to meet my bride to be and take her to lunch. Yeah, I know a swell place. It's swanky. This the boy. Yeah, the cocktails are good there too. Yeah, oh, Amanda goes for that. They wouldn't put arsenic in by any chance, would they? Sure, but they charge extra. <laughs> this the boy is not of our way, Tommy. No. I got to drop by the playhouse to try on my wardrobe. In tonight's drama, Tommy Wilson becomes the Maharaja of Japursa. Tommy's an actor, you know. An actor? Mm-hmm. But this truck? Oh, I just drive this for fun. For fun? Yeah, I get a big kick out of eating. <laughs> oh, I see. And you, Maisie, what do you do? Oh, me? I'm retired. I have a private income. A private income? Yep. Every week, my solicitors hand me an unemployment check. Oh, <laughs> oh no job. No, your fiancé just unjobbed me. Well, perhaps I could help. Of course, I, I don't know how you feel about accepting help from a stranger. We wouldn't think of it, friend. Uh, well, I do have some rather close acquaintances in the business world. Uh, Maisie, uh, how much would you work for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy, one of my best friends is a theatrical producer. And I'm almost certain... Would you care to put that in writing? Uh, frankly, no. That's what got me into the particular little marital mess I'm in. Oh, that's it. You wrote letters to date. I mean, Amanda. That I did. Were they the kind that... Uh... That they were. Mm. So that's what Sister Daisy meant when she said nothing could stop her. She's got you over a barrel. Maybe I should feel flattered that dear little Amanda chose me for her groom. She has equally, uh, uh, letters from dukes, earls, and I dare say several assorted ex-kings. Yeah. I remember little Goldilocks always had a yen for royalty. Say, I'll bet she'd throw you over like that, Pete, if she had a chance to be a lady something or other. A something or other she is now. A lady she'll never be. Tommy, that's it, Maisie. I said something? Did he, Maisie? Well, it's a long shot, but I think I know that Amanda. She wants to have her cake unless yours is better. Pete, we're going to be at the Savoy for lunch, too. Who's we? You and me. Can you borrow it? Borrow what? Oh, don't fight me. That costume of the Maharaja, of, you know, that, that place that sounds like something spelled sideways. You mean uh, Japertha? Yeah, that's it. Tommy, get into that Hindu costume with all the trimmings and meet me at the Savoy. But what? Uh, who? How? When? Oh, so many questions. I'll explain the whole thing as I think of it. Step on it, Tommy. I don't know what's up your sleeve, but I want to thank you, Miss... Uh, uh... <laughs> Just call me Rita Hayworth. <laughs> Is Madame ready to order her lunch now? Oh, quite right. I'll have some of this chili jubilee, crepe suzette, beef saltone, and a little Neapolitan. Madame wants four desserts. Well, why not? The Maharaja can afford it. Can't you, Maha? Aha. Ah. Uh, very well. And what will uh, His Highness have? Uh, uh. Junto luku chapa tisu elewandu ijara anto. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, well, he's gone, Maisie. Have they noticed us yet? No. Amanda and Peter are too busy sneering at each other <laughs> to look around. Hey, this is serious <laughs> business, Maisie. What are you giggling at? Back a little, Tommy. That feather in your turban is tickling my nose. <laughs> Tommy, quick. Quick what? Amanda's looking over here. She's just been Make with some dialogue. She's supposed to think we're all wrapped up in each other. Yeah, but what do I say? Oh, it makes no difference. As long as it looks like you're being very attentive. Come on, say something, anything. Uh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Maisie. Yes, Ma. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, Your Highness, you're so romantic. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. Keep going, Tommy. She's looking at it. Good, good. Ah, uh, uh, my darling. R, S, T, U, V. Ah, oh, my Raja, U, V, W, S. Possible, Peter. What doesn't seem possible, my little vulture? That Indian prince or something. 
seems so vitally wrapped up in the conversation of that girl over there. Perhaps it's love, my dear. Love? You've heard of the word, Amanda. Some people use that as an excuse to get married. Vulgar, isn't it? Be as vitriolic as you like, Mr. Moneybags. Remember, I still have the letters. Right here, next to my heart. What heart? Oh, I don't know. I imagine I could be quite warm and vibrant for the right man. Like, for instance, uh, the Maharaja of Japurtha there? You mean they... I mean, that girl is latched onto a real Maharaja. One of the richest potentates in India, reputed to be worth some three or four hundred million. Three or four hundred million? Oh, I'll be back, Peter. I hope not, darling. Not more than I, darling. Just going to part of my nose. A little shy. There she goes, Tommy. Heading for the powder room. I'm going to powder my nose, too. Yeah, but I don't see how you... Wish me luck, Tommy. You need luck to powder your nose? Oh, never mind. Don't go away now, Maha. But, Maisie, my delivery truck. I've got a job to well, do. Well, so have I. And this is one kind of work I really love. <laughs> Maisie Revere, imagine meeting you here. Oh, why, Tilly. I mean, Daisy. I mean, Amanda. Imagine finding all three of you here in the powder room. <laughs> oh, darn, I forgot my compact. Well, here, darling. Use mine. Well, thanks. I'm so sorry about making you lose your job, Maisie, darling. But you seem to be doing all right, without it? Oh, you've seen Ugg. Ugg. Yeah, that's Indian for Maharaja. <laughs> Nice little compact, this, honey. Oh, my fiancé gave it to me. You may have it if you like. Oh, well, no thanks. My fiancé, the Maharaja, doesn't like me to accept diamonds and stuff like that from anybody but him. He gives you these things often? Oh, we'd better or else. Or else? You mean you've got him trained? No, just worried. Mm. <laughs> You're smarter than I thought, Maisie, honey. Well, I had a good teacher, honey. It was from you I learned that the pen is mightier than the sword, remember? Letters, man. Yes, day. Perfumed ones, too. Here, smell. Oh, I'm sure it smells expensive. I envy you, honey. What for? You've got expensive letters, too. Written in English. And that's Peter Hunnicott. Mmm. Yum, yum. Mm, that Maharaja of yours ain't no William Bendix. Yeah. But he insists we live in India, in one of his palaces. One of them. You drive a Cadillac and poor me, an elephant. Oh, gosh, that sure is romantic. I love elephants. You get a better trade-in on a Cadillac. Well, you ain't got no kick coming, Maisie. I'd change places with you like that. We could. Oh, we couldn't do that. Could we? Well, no, we couldn't. I guess. No, we couldn't, I guess. Well, I'm just stuck with that 300 million in romantic, mysterious India. May. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot in common. Mm -hmm. We both look enough alike to be taken for twins. Yeah. And if I dressed like you and you dressed like me, nobody would know the difference. Especially our fiancé. And even if they smelled a rat. Like us. They'd have to go through with the marriage. Or be disgraced. Because your letters from the Maharaja. And yours from the Playboy. Wouldn't look nice and print. And you'd wind up with Elephant Boy. And you'd just Cadillac mode. Yeah. <sighs> Nasty little connivers, ain't we? Yeah. <laughs> but all fair in love and war. Here's your letters, Mrs. Peter Drake Honeycock, the sea. And here's yours, Mrs. Maha. I'll never, never forget you for this. I'll bet you won't, honey. I'll bet you won't. <laughs> Easy, Maharaj. It's all over. Amanda can't get hold of you now. That's right, Tommy. Oh, <laughs> Maisie, I'll never forget the look on Amanda's face when the waiter brought the check. <laughs> yeah, for $42. <laughs> she turned as white as the tablecloth when I handed the check to her and said, Pay this, honey. I'll wait for you outside in my delivery <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah. And when she came to and found nothing but a pawn ticket and 12 cents in my purse, did she holler blue murder? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be sorry for her, Maisie, but I can't. Well, Pete, 
You and she are washed up. Well, maybe Peter's washed up, but the princess won't be washed up for a long time. What do you mean? Well, $42 is an awful lot of dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Meanwhile, a word from your announcer. again, here's Maisie. Well, I turned the tables on that money Mad used to be singing partner of mine. Now that it's all over, I wonder if she learned her lesson. Probably not, though. It's a funny thing. Some people think that money can buy anything. It's the way I look at it. A boy and a girl don't need a lot of this stuff. You can buy all the happiness you want for two dollars, the price of a wedding night. Well, now that the whole thing with Daisy in that swank restaurant is over, I sort of feel a little sick inside. One of those four desserts must have been a little too rich. I think I'll just walk home. The air might make me feel better. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. The Maisie program was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting Miss Southern were Donald Wood, Lorene Tuttle, Howard McNear, Byron Kane, and Maya Gregory. You, babe. Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> you all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear Maisie and Radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen... And Southern. But first, your announcer. Here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. Of course, that's just the name I use in show business. And for me, lately, show business has been slow business. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. The nice part of Brooklyn, mind you. In my neighborhood, we all had garbage cans. <laughs> the only reason me and my black suitcase ever left Brooklyn was... Well, gold is where you find it, like a fellow with smart brains once said. And that's how I happen to be in this little one-horse town of Standardville today. You see, last night I answered an ad in Variety and got a job as a hostess in a local dance palace. 
The only reason I took the job was because of sentimental reasons. I loved to eat. I had to dance with it, that upholstered foxhole. But the very next morning, me and my suitcase were walking down Main Street heading for the bus station. It was a long walk. My suitcase was heavy to lug and my feet hurt. I'd been on them all last night and so were those fellas I'd been dancing with. Hiya, beautiful. Can I give you a lift someplace? You're wasting your drool, stranger. I'm only going as far as the bus station. Bus station? What's the matter, baby? Don't you like our town? What's the like? Sure you won't change your mind about a lift, gorgeous, huh? Yeah, mister, I'm sure. And if you don't stop driving alongside me, I'll forget I'm a lady and slap you right in the foot. Long walk to the bus station, baby. Well, don't you worry any of your two heads about it, monster. I'll make it all right. I've got good legs. I'll say you have, sister. I'll say you have. No. I'll say you have. No. Oh, I kind of thought that'd get you. Come on, hop in, beautiful. Well, I... I really should say no. Look, baby, if you get in, I promise to take you right to the bus station. Well, this suitcase of mine is rather heavy. Too heavy for a doll like you to be toting around. Come on, drop the bag in the back seat, gorgeous, and, uh, you squeeze in up front here with me, huh? Well, you promise to take me right to the bus station. Oh, sure, baby, sure. I know a swell way to get there. A swell way? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, of course, the, the route is a little longer. Mm-hmm, but it's more picturesque. Huh? Through the woods where it's nice and quiet. And you can yell at the top of your lungs, but nobody can hear you. You guessed it, baby. Well, so long, Boy Scout. Give my regards to the other members of the Wolf Patrol. Oh, come on. Now, be a nice kid. I'm an okay guy. Ask anybody in Centerville about Jeff Brady. They'll tell you. Hmm. You just ain't gonna be happy unless I let you give me a lift, huh? Nope. <laughs> come on, get it. Okay. <clears throat> But if it's okay with you, Mr. Brady, I'd like to keep my suitcase in the front seat with me. Oh, sure, baby. Sure. Anything you say. <laughs> what do you got there in that suitcase? Diamonds and pearls? <laughs> oh, no. Just my equipment. Equipment? Yeah. I'm a professional knife thrower. <laughs> nice thinking, Maisie. That one hasn't missed yet. <laughs> Here's your ticket, Effie. Oh. Don't lose it now. Your bus leaves at 11.03. Gosh. You know, Hector, I never really thought I'd ever get up the courage to leave Centerville. Well, Effie, can't say as you rushed into it. Uh, uh, pardon me, Kirk, but I'd like to get a bus ticket. Well, you came to the right place for it. Like I was saying, hope you pack some real sensible clothes, Effie. I hear tell it sometimes get sort of nippy. No. Yeah, you might even expect snow. Sonny, if you're through with the frost warnings, I'd like to buy a ticket. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to be detaining you, miss. Hector, go ahead and wait on the young lady. I'll just stick her on my suitcase till my bus comes in. Okay, Ev. Well, Miss Nancy Pensy, where to? Four dollars and twelve cents. Hmm? That's all I got. How far away from here can it take you? Hmm, got any particular direction in mind? Nope. One place is as good as another when you're looking for a job. Oh, pardon me, miss, but I just couldn't help overhearing what you said about a job. Oh. I just left mine. I'm sure it isn't filled there. Oh, well, say that. Whatever it is, I'm sure I can handle it. Well, the work I did for Mr. Burton, he's my boss. I mean, my ex-boss. The work isn't very exciting. Oh, well, don't let these spit curls fool you, honey. All I want is a job that won't break me of a habit I've had for years. Eaten. Gee, if you could help me, I'd be terribly grateful, Miss, um, Miss Effie Baskin. Oh. And this here is Hector Slurpfogel. Slurpfogel? Uh, folks around here always call me just uh, Hector. <laughs> You're lucky. I'm Maisie Revere after my mother's favorite sister. Oh. Well, I'm very glad to meet you, Maisie. Indeed, oh. <laughs> well, likewise, I'm sure. Now, Effie, um, exactly what kind of work is it? Well, there really isn't too much to it. I opened the office in the morning and closed up at night. Oh, well, I won't have any trouble there. I'm very handy with the key, you know. Effie also swept up and brought J.B. his lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner? We work late, uh, every night. Oh. Only Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Oh, yeah. sort of a part-time job, huh? Well, after all, Mr. Burton deserves something for his money. That's right. He paid her $15 a week. Oh, well, for that kind of loot, a girl can't expect to just sit around and alone. 
Well, I'm in no condition to bicker, Effie. How do I find this Mr. Burton slave labor camp? Oh, oh, before I take you over and recommend you, Maisie, mm-hmm. I think you should know that there's a little more to the job. You see, Mr. Burton really hired me as an income tax expert. <clears throat> Hector. Yep. Four dollars and twelve cents worth of tickets, please. You don't know nothing about income tax, huh? Never needed to. I never had an income. Now, how's about that bus ticket, Heck? Well, let's see. Uh, you can get to Melville for three eighty. Say, Hector, isn't this the time of year they put extra help on at the cannery? Yeah, this is their big season. Ever work at a fish cannery, Maisie? Uh-uh. Any experience required? I don't think so. Well, if the fish are willing to take a chance, I am. One ticket to Millvale, Hector. There you are, Maisie. The buses are just outside in front. Yep. Here's your three eighty, Hector. I can use what I got left for a gas mask. Well, that must be my bus. Goodbye, Hector. Bye. Goodbye, Effie, mm. and thanks for trying to get me your old job. Oh, it was really nothing, Maisie. Anybody would have done this thing. Oh, don't you believe it, honey. Folks like you and Hector are the only chance the world has to keep from falling apart at the scene. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Goodbye, Hector. Goodbye, Effie, and thanks again. What, Maisie? What? You're crying. Well, I can't help it. I'm not used to people being nice to me. Bye now. Wait for me, driver. Wait for me. Yeah, okay, miss, but hurry, will you? I'm late already. <sighs> well, honey. Goody, goody gumdrop. Now, please be seated, will you, miss, and we will be on our merry way into the pale blue yonder. <laughs> okay, driver. I'm seated. You may start now. Uh, aye, aye, Captain. Oh, oh, maybe. Maybe you forgot your suitcase. Oh, so I did. Robbie, you'll have to let me off for a moment. Well, all right, okay, but don't take any longer, Princess. I'm two and a half minutes behind schedule already. Oh, well, I'll be right back. Yeah, please hurry. Life is so empty without you beside me. <clears throat> oh, here you are, Maisie. Oh, gosh, it would have been terrible if you went off without your suitcase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although there ain't enough clothes in there to feed a dieting moth. But this suitcase has been a sort of a buddy of mine. It's traveled with me all the way from New York to Hollywood. Well, goodbye, Ed. Maisie. Uh-huh. Did you say you've been to Hollywood? Oh, that's where I'm going. You are? Well, what do you know? Going to Hollywood, huh? Hey, miss, for goodness sakes, you know, the bus, the drive, peep, peep, remember? Oh, all right. You don't have to be such a screaming one. Well, bye again, Effie. I hope you have a nice visit in Hollywood. Oh, I'm going to live there, Maisie. And work in the movie studios. I'm going to write songs for all the big singing stars. Hmm. You a songwriter? Well, I never would have guessed it. But you never can tell, I always say. Of course, I only write the words. But the words are the most important part of the song. I always say. You know what I always say? I always say, them that don't want to ride in my shiny new bus, they don't have to. So there. <laughs> I think the driver's getting a little impatient, Maisie. Here. I'd like to have you have this. What is it, Effie? A copy of one of my song lyrics. I want you to have it as a souvenir. Oh. If you like. Yeah, I'd be flattered to have it, Effie. Thanks. And goodbye again. Someday I'll tell my grandchildren that once I met Effie Baskin, the famous songwriter. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Maisie, and have a nice trip. Yeah. Goodbye, driver. Now, you drive carefully. Oh, yes. Oh, I will, lady. And just to make absolutely certain that your friend gets there safely, I will only drive in the safety zone. A driver. Oh, driver. Yeah? You wouldn't happen to have a penny postcard on you, would you? Well, uh, uh, no, no, miss. It just happens that I'm fresh out. Oh, too bad. I thought maybe when we got to the next stop, I'd drop Effie a postcard. Uh, Effie? Mm. Oh, you mean your gopher-faced friend back there at Centerville? Oh, that's not fair. Effie may not be pretty on the outside, but she has a soul. She's beautiful on the inside. Well, I wouldn't know. I got bad eyes. I can't see very deep. Oh. Well, I mean, she thinks beautiful things. And I'll bet she writes beautiful things, too. Driver, uh, do you like to listen to song poems? Well, no. But I got a sneaking suspicion I'm going to. <laughs> well, let me read you one of Effie's masterpieces. 
Um, I wish I were in Peoria, where I could see much more of you. Mm. Oh, promise me you'll say I do, and I'll be there on the next two, too. <laughs> I'll be more than your maid. I'll be your buddy when we are married by Parson McGillicuddy. Little Effie wrote that? It wasn't Nick Kenny. Say, ain't that just a little bit corny? Well, it's worse than corny. It's succotashy. Mm. Well, I guess maybe junk like that is considered pretty groovy and sent of it a little. Mm. That's the trouble. Effie's going to try and sell it in Hollywood. In Hollywood? Oh, no, she is kidding. Hey, look, lady, if that's a sample of her talent... She had better start practicing how to starve to death. Sure. A good, wonderful person like Effie. There's no telling what'll happen to her in a hard, cold place like Hollywood. Driver. Yeah, miss? Turn back. Well, anything to make you happy. <clears throat> Turn back? Yes, and if you drive real fast, we can get back to Sandoval in time for me to try to talk her out of going to Hollywood. But, no, miss, I would like to help. I've got a bus full of passengers. Oh, look, I ain't been late once in 12 years. Driver. Would you go out of your way to avoid killing a chipmunk? Yeah, sure I would. Well, ain't people as important as chipmunks? Uh, look, miss, I don't even know this epi Yeah, character. I know. Yeah, I know. After all, what's a total stranger like Effie Baskin to us? We'll probably never see her again anyway. No, it's not that, miss. Sure, I'm... sure. Let her go to Hollywood with her corny song. What's it to us if she wanders around, homeless, broke, without friends? It ain't no skin off our backs if someday we pick up a newspaper and read where another would-be songwriter threw herself in the river. Hey, we're turning around. Hey, we're going back. What's right, the idea? Exactly. What is the oh, idea of this? Don't bother me, madam. I'm saving a woman from drowning. <laughs> The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern, will continue in just a moment. Once again, here's Maisie. Hector, oh, Hector. Oh, it's you, Maisie. What in carnation are you doing here? Well, I'm not trying to explain, Hector. Has Effie left yet? No. Oh, then it's not too late. 2863 gave me 10 minutes to talk to her. 2863? Yeah, that's the bus driver's number. He didn't tell me his name. Where's Effie? In my office, typing out another song poem called Let's Have a Bowl of Chili in Old Amarillo. Oh, brother. Hector, does anybody in this town really think Effie's got what it takes to write for Hollywood? Well, frankly, ain't anybody really think so outside of that professor. The professor? A uh, young music writing fellow settled here from New York a couple of years ago. Started doing pretty good, too. After he advertised in the Centerville Bugle for folks who wanted to make big money with their song poems. Oh, and for 50 or 100 bucks, he promised to write the music that would make the song poems commercial? Yeah. Claimed he had big contacts with the publishers? Yeah. Abby had lots of songs put music to by the professor. Gave every dime she made to that fellow. Oh, the poor kid. He's just the type that's a pushover for such a phony. Phony? Sure. Legitimate outfits don't make promises they can't possibly keep. Hector, yeah. we got to do something to keep poor Effie from running off to Hollywood and finding out about the song writing racket the hard way. Oh. And i got just ten minutes to uh... do it. Nine minutes. I'm going into your office, Hector, and have a talk with her. It won't be easy to change your mind about her gift, as she calls it. Effie sure sets a lot of store by Jeff Brady's opinion of her song poems. Jeff Brady? That's the professor. Doing real good, too. Got an office and a snazzy yellow convertible. Late 36 model, too. With a foxtail on the radiator cap and little black eyes that practically whistle at you? That's the skunk, Maisie. You know him? <sighs> like a book, Hector. Like a book. Yes, Brady is the professor, huh? Quiet, I'm thinking. When he 
it's noisy sometimes. It takes me all day to think. That's better. Hector, where's Brady's office? There's two blocks down there on Hill Street. You can't miss it. That yellow chicken wagon of his is always parked in front. Ah, now, Hector, listen. Effie has to find out Brady's been taking her for a ride. Yeah, so? So, I'm going for a ride. You? What about Effie? She's going for one, too, in the rumble seat. The rumble seat? Of Brady's car. With the lid down so she can hear, but not be seen. You feeling all right, Maisie? Well, don't try to understand what I'm doing, Hector. I'm not sure I know myself. Just get Effie in Brady's rumble seat and keep her quiet. Both of us? In the rumble seat? Mm, with the lid down. Now, how do I get her in there without explaining? Well, that's up to you. That's what I thought. Well, uh, where will you be, Maisie? In the front seat with Brady. If that light in his eye means what I think it means. <laughs> See you later, Hector. Well, folks, she's back. <laughs> Come on, climb aboard for last night, Gail. Oh, uh, I'm not going with you, driver. I'm going with Jeff Brady. <laughs> I have a little work to do, so if you don't mind following me down to Lover's Lane. Now, wait. Who, who in tarnation is Jeff Brady? What do you mean, follow you down to Lover's Lane? And also... There's no time to explain, but it's for Effie. It won't take but maybe an hour or so. No, so long, lady. If I never see you again, I thank you. Well, bye, 2863, and thanks. Anyway, I guess I'm just a soft-hearted fool. Oh, and if you should change your mind, Jeff's car is a yellow convertible with a foxtail on the radiator cap. Bye now, and wish me luck. I got a feeling I'm going to need it. Tall, dark, and challenging. Yeah, you. <laughs> you can come out from behind the piano, Jeffy. The knives ain't very sharp. Eh, maybe not, lady, but I happen to bleed easy. <laughs> now go away, please. I'm busy. Too busy to show a girl the way to the bus station? The long, scenic way? Uh, look, I'm really very busy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it? Uh, well, usually I walk back from an auto ride, but... This is the first time I've ever walked back to get one. I don't get it, gorgeous. Just this morning, you looked daggers at me. Yeah, a whole suitcase full of them. Oh, you just give up too easy, Jeffy. I was going to go out of town, but I missed the bus. <laughs> yeah, so I decided it was no use to also miss the boat, if you know what I mean. Oh, I think I do, yeah. Well, uh, shall we go, beautiful? Ah, hop in, doll. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Jeffy, when we get out to uh, this romantic spot, I'm expecting you to act like a gentleman. Mm. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yes. Aren't I being silly? Oh, but, De uh, uh, well, here, I'll, I'll put your suitcase in the rumble seat. Oh, huh? no, don't put it in there. Effie is... Effie? Uh, every time I leave my suitcase in a rumble seat, I forget it. <laughs> uh, just leave it in front with me by the door. That's better. Yeah, yeah, where it won't get in the way, huh? Yeah. Well, here we go. You comfy, baby? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm not crowding you too much, am I? Oh, not nearly enough, sugar. Not nearly enough. <laughs> oh! What was that? What was what? Well, I thought I heard voices coming from inside my... my... Oh, that. That was just my conscience talking to my better self. <laughs> silly, isn't it? What's silly? I have no better job. Well, are you ready, Jeffy? Little Jeffy's always ready. Well, baby, this is it. Sort of like a dream world, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's positively yummy. Yeah. And here we are. Yep, just the four of us. Four of us? Uh, you and me, two and us, make four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, baby, you're corny, but you're cute. Mr. Brady. Oh, come on, let's just be nice. Give us a kiss, huh? A kiss? Why, Jesse, I don't even know who you are. Of course, I know what you are. But what do you do? Oh, now, what difference does that make, baby? 
Oh, come on. Now, be nice. It and... said on the door that you're a songwriter. Now, there couldn't be any real money in that racket in this town. Oh, there is, baby. When you got dopes like Effie Bascom on your sucker list, you... Oh, you... I'm sure I just heard something in the rumble seat. I'm going to go out... And leave baby without her great big lover boy. Oh. Well, yeah. are you really warming up? <laughs> Come on, slip us those lists. Oh, huh? yes, darling. Before I... I mean, we... That is... Before. I'd like to ask you one very important question. Sure, honey. What is it? What's a sucker, Lou? Oh, for God's sake, that ain't important. Now, come on with that kiss. I ain't got all day. No telly, no smoochie, Jesse. Yeah. Well, okay. It's, it's a racket I've got. This town is full of stupid jerks who pay me to write music for their corny lyrics. I rave about the tripe they turn out, promise them publication, and that the stuff will be sung by big stars. Now, you satisfied? Come on, give me a kiss. Very satisfied. Oh, thank goodness. Now, come on, honey. Jeffy Weffy wants a kiss. And you're going to get one, too. You skunk. Oh! Effie, you shouldn't have knocked him out with a jack. Yeah, I wanted to do it, but Effie talked me out of it. The ladies first, you know. Oh, me. Oh. I've been such a fool to even have Oh, I'm and... sorry you had to find out about your song poems this way, Effie. I hope you'll forgive me. Forgive? I'll never forget you, Morphy. Never. I never even want to hear the word Hollywood again. Oh, no, you get over it, Ed. Oh. Work will make you forget. And from what I hear about your boss, he's the lad that can dish it out. You ain't kidding, Maisie. But say, you got a job that's got to be took care of, too. In Millvale, remember? Mm -hmm. Fly it over, Maisie, and I'll drive you over in this here skunk's car. Oh, well, that won't be necessary, heck. <laughs> I kind of thought you wouldn't let me down. Well, don't don't kid yourself, miss. This uh, just happens to be on my route. On your route? Hey, there ain't never been a bus on this road. Okay, so I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> Go on, get in, miss. Somewhat of a hurry. Sure, sure. Well, bye again, Hector. Take care of yourself, Effie. Lots of luck, Maisie. Bless you, Maisie. Oh, bless you. Oh, come on, will you, lady? I'm two hours late on my run already. Well, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm going to have to drive like blazes to get to Middletown before night. Yeah, I guess you will. Um, mi Middletown? Yeah, it's almost a hundred miles. Oh. No. No. It can't be. Uh-huh. This is the wrong bus. I'm going to Millvale. Oh, I'm sorry if I've inconvenienced you, driver. Inconvenienced me? Inconvenienced me. In just a moment, we will return to the adventures of Maisie. On my way to Millvale. Maybe I'll get that job tanning fish. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't. It probably ain't easy sticking fish in a can with one hand and holding your nose with the other. But maybe I'll run into nice people like Effie Hector and that bus driver in Millvale. It may be a small town, but it ain't the number of square miles in a place that makes it a nice town. It's the number of square people. Well, come on, little black suitcase. We can't wait till tomorrow for that next bus. Gosh, I wish my feet were high dramatic so I wouldn't have to shift them. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. 
Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. <laughs> Sheldon Leonard was heard as the driver, and Effie was played by Lorene Puddle. This program was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Hiya, babe. Say, how about a Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep. I'm like the man said, Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. By profession, I'm a chanteuse. That's French for singer, you know. Right now, I'm between engagements. That's an expression in show business that means if something don't happen real soon, I'll starve to death. Well, this morning, I was making the rounds of agents' offices, and I got a couple of offers. One of them was even for a job. <laughs> And then I chanced on a big war surplus company with a sign out, Help Wanted. And inasmuch as a job is a job, I opened the door. And I walked up to the man at the personnel window. <laughs> I had to eat. And I wasn't one of them choosy chan choosies. Yes, miss, what can I do for you? I'll take it. You take what? The job. How much does it pay? Oh, you mean our sign on the window? Yeah. Of course, I really don't expect it to be in my line. I'm a singer, you know. Well, I'm sorry, miss. We're not putting on any singers this week. But we are short of help. What kind of other work do you think you can do? Yes. I mean, what do you have experience at? Oh, well, what's open? Well, we can use a typist, comptometrist, sonographer, bookkeeper, billing clerk, lithograph operator. Well? Keep going. I'll tell you when you come to it. Am I getting warm? <laughs> not even close yet. But there must be something. Look, miss, all we take care of here is war surplus. Oh, then I... you ought to take care of me. I'm war surplus. Y you are? Yeah. I used to be a whack. Well, I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I'm afraid there's really nothing that we can... Gee, I, I drove an ambulance and trucks. Say, maybe you can use a truck driver. A, a truck driver? But you're a woman. Yeah, but women have stomachs, too. Or haven't you been down to the beach lately? But, and but... during the war, I drove trucks all over Europe and Africa. During bombardments, too. But, miss, this isn't Africa. This is Los Angeles. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to danger. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. Women truck drivers, it just isn't being done. Yeah, sure. Of course, during the war, women drove taxis, ambulances, trucks. But now that it's all over, you're right. It can't be done. Well, so long, chum. Sorry I took up your time. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Gee, why don't you look where you're going? Oh, I'm very sorry, miss. Here, here let me help you up. Thanks. Oh, gee. I've, oh, look, your elbow, it's all scraped. Oh, well, that's oh. all right. 
I got too much skin anyway. Oh, gosh, maybe you're killed. I mean hurt. I, I mean, maybe you better sit down. Well, now, maybe. calm down, uh, fella. Uh, you're all excited. Oh, oh, I, I, I can't help it. You, you see, I'm going to have a baby. You are? <laughs> Well, then maybe you'd better sit down. Oh, thank you. Oh, I mean, my <laughs> wife's going to have a baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it could be tonight. The baby, I mean. You know how it is. Well, no, I'm single. Oh. That's why I've got to be there I, to take her to the hospital. My wife. It's my first, you know. Your first wife? No, baby. Oh. <laughs> it costs a lot of money, and I can't afford to lose it. The baby? No, my job. Oh, right. I drive a truck, you know. Didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. For this company, I work nights. Mm -hmm. That's when they're always delivered, aren't they? Trucks? No, babies. Oh, I should have known. Yeah, gosh, I I, I shouldn't tonight. I shouldn't because I got a feeling that it's going to happen. But the money, I'm afraid to tell them, but I I must. Mustn't I? Huh? Don't you think? Well, uh, look, you'd better start from the beginning. I I think maybe I missed something. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm Charlie Pilsudski. How do you do? I'm Maisie Revere. Oh, how do you do? Well, not very well. I try to get a job here, driving a truck. You, you, oh, you drive a truck, but you're a woman. I know it and you know it, but does the truck? Look, I drove practically everything on wheels all over Europe. Gosh. Say, maybe... Yeah? No, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Hey, but on the other hand... Yeah, on the other hand. It won't work. No, it won't work, huh? But I just gotta take the chance. Maisie, will you do it? Sure. <clears throat> do what? Take over tonight's run to Frisco. Oh, the dough ain't much. Well, my stomach don't hold much. Oh, it'll be a big favor, Maisie. I begged off two runs this week already, and if, if I tell the boss I can't make it tonight again because my wife's time is... Getting too close, and I ought to be with her just in case. They'd fire you, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and jobs ain't easy to get. So I've heard. Okay, Charlie. I'll get your truck to Fisco. You'll still have your job. Your wife can have the baby, and. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, you're not backing out, are you, Maisie? No, but how am I going to get the truck past the checker tonight? He'll notice I'm a woman. I got it. I'll wear a sweater. Uh, a sweater? Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Hey, oh, don't you worry about that, Maisie. You just be at the loading platform at 11.30 tonight, But huh? the checker... Oh, Bill Hendricks is a friend of mine. He'll keep his eyes and mouth closed. I'll have the truck all loaded and ready for you to take off in a hurry. Good. I'll be there on time, Charlie. Oh, good. And I'll get that truck to Frisco for you right on time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, only one thing. Yeah? You're a woman, and if a cop should stop you driving a truck without a license, how will you get out of it? <laughs> Don't you worry about that, Charlie. Like you say... I'm a woman. Take it easy. Loading that loot on the truck, Lefty. And keep it quiet. What you so jumpy about, Pete? I took care we won't be this tight. Come on, come on. Let's get the rest of this stuff in the truck. I promised Shirley I'd be back in time to give her another lesson on picking locks. <laughs> She's ambitious, that girl of mine. My model's the same. Yeah. Wants me to let her do one of these warehouse jobs, but I keep telling her the boss won't go for it. Yeah. My Shirley's the same about that. But I keep telling her to stay home, read her comic books. You know, improve her mind. Yeah, education's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Hey, come on, I'll stop mourning about your girl. Let's get this load loaded. Uh, keep your shade on, will you? We ain't due at the renter's bus until 12.30. Yeah, but it's 20 miles to the turnpike road, and Black, you don't like to be kept waiting. Gaze yeah, impatient. <laughs> there ain't gonna be much room for any more stuff in here. Charlie loaded it pretty full. D- d- Charlie? Who's Charlie? Charlie Pilsudski, the guy with drives this here log. Oh, yeah. I seen his name on the license when I checked the gas hey, gauge. Sh- Doc Lefty. What's up? Quick, under the truck. With me. A cop. Where? Out there on the street corner. Under the light. Quick, quick. Under here. Uh, I kind of thought this was working out too good to last. Now we ain't going to be able to meet Blackie on schedule. Shh, 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 shh. Quiet. Quiet. We'll have to lay here till he go. And where do you think you're going, miss? Oh. Uh, oh, good evening, officer. I- it's a nice night, ain't it? Answer the question, miss. Oh, sure. It is a nice night. I mean, where are you going? 
Oh, well, I, um, I have to wait for my boyfriend in that truck. He, um, he, uh... Yes? He, uh, he, he, he... <laughs> and what's so funny? He, um, well, uh, he ain't there yet. You see, he's driving all the way to Frisco, and I'm bringing him a change of clothes. It's in that suitcase? Yeah. He's a very snappy dresser, you know. He must be. There's a bit of lace sticking out of there. Oh, well, um, that's mine. You see, I'm going with him. We're uh, getting married. Uh, so long, officer. Uh, well, it ain't safe for a girl to be waiting around in a dark alley all by herself. I'll just keep you company till he gets here. Oh, well, that won't be necessary, officer. I'll, I'll drive by his house and pick him up. Oh, oh you drive a truck? Why is everybody so amazed? Well, do you have a license? Well, sure I have, officer. You can't get married without one. I mean, do you have a license to drive a truck? No, but gosh, Charlie and me, we just got to get married. You see, um, I'm running away from home. I'm sorry, and... miss, but you got to have a license to drive a truck. We still have laws in this city. Uh, well, you see, my father don't want me to marry him because he's an Irishman. Oh, I see. And what's wrong with Irishmen? Nothing, but my father... Well, come along, young lady. I'm going to see that you get in that truck and pick up your fella. Yeah, your old man sure has a nerve trying to prevent you from finding true happiness with the son of old Aaron. Oh, thank you, officer. Yes, come along now. Can't keep the groom waiting. Oh, you lucky girl. He's coming up to the truck. Yeah. And he's got a thing with him. Yep. You just put down the rug. They're getting too close for comfort. I got to... Quiet, quiet. And keep down under here. Yeah, but she's getting in a truck. I suppose she drives it off. We'll be caught here oh, without... Gee, 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 you dope. Whoever heard of a dame driving a truck, you snoop. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, for a minute there, I was worried. Well, goodbye, officer, and thanks. Oh, forget it, miss. Just save me a piece of the wedding cake. I will, officer. Just as soon as we're Mr. and Mrs. Charles Pilsudski. Sure. Pilsudski? I thought you said your boyfriend was Irish. Oh, did I say Pilsudski? I meant old Pilsudski. Old Pilsudski? But that's he's an Irish. Goodbye, officer. Come back here. Come back here. Petey, yeah. don't look now. But some dames can drive trucks. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we got to run for Get you. your hands up. Get them up there. Now, wait a minute, officer. You're making a mistake, officer. If I am, I'll hate myself in the morning. Well, 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 look who it is. It's Lefty and Pity Boy. Are you still specializing in robbing warehouses, sir? Eh? Look, officer, we didn't do nothing. Well, don't worry me, boys. From now on, you'll be doing plenty about ten years. And so will little Goldilocks. Goldilocks? The cute little trick that's working with you. Yes, she won't get very far with that stolen truck. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Enchanted evening, I'll say. Hi, fella. Looking for a lift? I sure am, mister. Say, hey, you're a girl. Oh, what a pretty wet girl was that. Yeah. When the Chamber of Commerce had come to California and soak up the sunshine, they weren't kidding. Hop in. Don't mind if I do. Whew. There. Oh, it sure feels good to sit down again. My feet sure thank you for this, Mac. <laughs> Don't let the mustache fool you, honey. It's just grease. The name's Maisie. Maisie Revere. Oh, I'm Helen O'Rourke. 
All right? Uh, <laughs> so you're Irish. <laughs> well, what's so funny about being Irish? <laughs> well, don't get your shillelagh in an uproar, honey. I was just thinking of a fasty I pulled on a cop. A cop? <laughs> yeah, well, forget it, honey. You walking back from a little session of, come on, baby, be reasonable? <laughs> no. I'm hitchhiking to Portland for a job. At 11.30 at night in the rain? Well, it isn't easy to make an honest dollar, you know. Yeah, I've heard the rumor. Frisco's where I'm unloading this heat. I can take you that far. Oh, thanks. I'm supposed to start work since I get to Portland. Oh. Well, what at, honey? Waitress or stuff like that there? No. <laughs> you are now looking at Helen O'Rourke, girl lumberjack. Lumberjack? But that ain't woman's work. Well, uh, driving a truck isn't exactly feminine. <clears throat> Touche, honey. I'm just chauffeuring this dinosaur on wheels because a buck is a buck, like the saying goes. Well, I know there can't be a fortune in driving a truck. That all depends on what you consider a fortune, honey. Well, let's have some radio. We interrupt this program to bring you a late news flash. Attention, local police. Be on the lookout for a 10-ton truck believed to be headed north on the San Francisco coast route. See, we're on the coast route, Maisie, aren't we? Yeah, but I ain't stopping to look for no trucks. When you've seen one, you've seen them all. The truck, loaded with Army surplus material, was stolen earlier this evening from the warehouse of the Acme War Surplus Company. Say, Maisie, isn't this an Acme truck? Yeah, one of them. But Acme's a big outfit. What's losing one truck to them? The driver of the stolen truck may be armed, so proceed with caution. She is reputed to be a member of the notorious Blackie Leonard gang. She? Well, who ever heard of a woman truck driver? She? She is described as being about five feet two. <gasps> oh, don't look at me like that, honey. I'm only five one and three quarters. She's a glamorous blonde. Amazing, you Oh, that's silly. Who can be glamorous wearing faded blue overalls? When last seen, she was wearing faded blue overalls. Oh, well, how could that cop tell it was so dark? Cop? Oh, let me out of here. But, honey, Please. I, I, I All want to... All motorists are requested to report to the police immediately if you've seen this stolen truck and this desperate gun mall. Oh, Jeepers, oh, they'll give me 20 years in jail. That is all. That's enough. Oh, dear. What are you stopping here for? You're not going to kill... Shoot me. Oh, of course not, Helen, honey. I'm no murderer. I'm no nothing. Let's get away from this heat. All I ask is that you stick by me to the end. Oh. Look. A man just pulled up in front of us. He's getting out. Oh, he has a gun in his hand. And this is the end. Good work, baby. You got that rendezvous here right on schedule. Rendezvous? Oh. <laughs> oh, the tough part's all over. You don't have to be nervous no more, Shirley. Shirley? That is his lefty's goil surely, ain't it, Moidle? Yes, I mean, yes. <laughs> uh, pipe down, Shoyle. You don't want Pete to think his goil has gone chicken. Pete's goil? I thought you was lefty's goil. Oh, yeah, well, we keep changing fellas back and forth, don't we, Shoyle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we like variety. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, then maybe we could be more than just uh, associates in our warehouse robbing enterprises. You know, there ain't nobody that's got a better appreciation of... Feminine putritude and Blackie Leonard. Blackie Leonard? Oh, no. Sure, sure. Say, you used to a Pete and left these miles, ain't you? Oh, certainly. I mean, certainly. Might have just scream like that because, <laughs> well, you know how them Bobby Sockers scream for Sinatra. <laughs> you sort of ghost for me, huh? Yeah, Blackie. But I saw your voice. But, but... You heard me, Moidle. Blackie's mine, and if I catch you beating my time with him, I'll shoot you so full of holes you look like a new Buick. Now, ladies, ladies, don't fight over me, please. Till later. You know, we gotta get destructed a hideout before the cops spot it. And then, uh, baby, when we settle down nice and cozy like you and me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> but the Pete and Lefty... Oh, uh, you don't have to worry about them goons. For about ten years, the cops picked them up at a warehouse. Oh, but but how did you... Know how they got caught? Yeah. Oh, I got connections at headquarters. Well, no, she meant about her, uh, the truck, didn't you, Moidle? You're Moidle, I'm surely. What was that? Uh, I said, I'm surely glad we got away with the truck after the boys was nabbed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be back in a sec, doll. I gotta tell the boys to follow us down. Oh, 
What do we do now, Charlie? Uh, Maisie, uh, whatever your name is. Well, you just got to trust me, Moidle. I mean, Helen. And play along till I can think of a way out of this mess. But how are we going to get out? I don't know. I've never been in a horrible spot like this. I'm counting on one thing to get us out. What's that? Beginner's luck. Shh. Here he comes now. Okay, chicks, we're all set. Uh, move over, baby. Ah. Ah. Okay, you can get going now. Uh, get going? Yeah, it's got a hideout. The boys will follow us. The hideout? The hideout. Well, Lefty told you where it is, of course. Yeah, sure, he told us, but... but uh... Ah, now I know. Uh, you do? Yeah. After the long haul, you're tired, huh? Oh, yeah, tired. Yeah, tired. Yeah. Okay, shove over. I'll take a wheel. Sure. There. I'm really exhausted. Yeah, sure, I know. It's a long haul to the hideout. You know, I'll bet when you get there, you'll <laughs> be almost dead. Well, as long as it's just almost, mister. As long as it's just almost. <laughs> This here's it, Shaw. Yeah, I heard a lot about it, Blackie. So this here's your little gray bulletproof home in the West. Uh, this joint does need a woman's touch, Blackie. The uh, wall decorations sort of clash, don't they, Shaw? Yeah. It's a little out of date, too. They ain't using machine guns and rifles in French Provincial anymore. Yeah, because the joint's sort of cold look. Mm. Very cold. And I, and I don't think much of the painter what did the decor here. He slapped some brown paint in the wallpaper. Oh, that ain't brown paint, babe. That's just dried blood. <clears throat> blood? blood? Well, while the boys are unloading the truck, how's about you two fellows going into the kitchen and cooking up some grub, huh? Cooking? But but I can't... Oh, um... oh, oh. Now, don't give me that, babe. Lefty tells me you make hot cakes just like his mother used to make. Yeah, but you don't know what a lousy cook his mother was. Yeah. You'll find all the stuff you need in the kitchen. Of course, ain't much room to move around. I've got a couple of them uh, Navy wireless sets in there. In the kitchen? Didn't have enough room in the garage for all the swag we swiped. Wireless sets, huh? Come on, Moita, let's scrub up some grub. Maisie, you got a gleam in your eye. What's cooking in here besides food? A way out. Here, help me unwind the wire this wireless set. But we can't send messages on that. It's not connected. Well, if I work fast, it will be. You just keep an eye on the door and keep your fingers crossed. Here's where little Maisie's training in whack communications paid off. Gee, were you a whack? Yeah. And if I can't get this thing working real fast, I have a sneaking suspicion that both our children will grow up to be orphans. Gosh, Maisie, what if this doesn't work? What if nobody hears our SOS? Oh, please, Helen, don't talk. Just worry. If Blackie ever decides to come in here to see how, how our cooking is coming along, we'll be part of the wallpaper, too. Hey, Anna, how about the grub? It, it, it won't be long now, Blackie. Yeah, we're, we're flapping them flapjacks. You mean they ain't ready to eat yet? They ain't come down from the ceiling yet. <laughs> well, hurry up, will you? Some stuff. Sure, sure. Oh, dear. <laughs> contacted anybody yet, Maisie? Huh? Please? Well, I can't tell that, honey. All I can do on this thing is stand. I can't receive. How's about it, chef? Oh, just a couple of minutes more. We're we're also fixing some soup. Yeah, but you've been at it a half hour already. I know, but this is turtle soup, and you know how slow turtles are. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you just five minutes more, see? Just five minutes. Oh, gosh. Jake, you and the boys finish unloading the truck yet? Yeah, boss, we... Hey, where's the sky? In the kitchen, Jake. <laughs> and guess what they're cooking? A goose. A goose? Your goose. Here, read this. Uh, what is this, anyway? A little message I picked up whilst checking one of them wireless receiving sets we swiped from the warehouse. It's sort of interesting. Hell, let me see that. Uh... Kind of thought things was unkosher. 
Mm-hmm. You and the boys get the trucks loaded, Jake. We'll be pulling out of here as soon as I take care of some unfinished business. Check, Chief. All right, come, ladies. Ready or not. No, no, don't, Blackie. We're coming out with the crowd. Yeah, we're all finished. You sure are, ladies. You sure are. Here's the flap jacks, Blackie. The soup should be ready soon. I'll, I'll go back in the kitchen and wash it. Well, I'll go with you, Shoyo. I just love watching soup. No, 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 no. Please, ladies, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I don't like to eat alone. Uh, but, uh, I'm not hungry. Uh, and I'm on a diet. Sit down. Uh, amazing. Got a gun. A g- 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 Blackie don't like little g- girls sending messages for help g- on the wireless. A gun. Oh, he knows about... She, she fainted. <laughs> Imagine her being scared. <laughs> yeah. Now, why would you like it, babe? And the head or the back? Uh, in the back, I think. I just got a new permanent. Okay, chick. Anything you'd like to say before I let you have it? Yeah. Blackie, can I say just one word? Sure, go ahead. Help! Okay, Blackie, drop it. What? The cops! Huh? Like we got here sort of in the nick of time, miss. One second later, you would have been a dead cookie. Yeah. <gasps> oh! Uh, nothing to worry about now, miss. We got all the others. Oh, I didn't scream because of that. No? No, my soup. It's burning. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, that little caper is over with, and I'm still alive and kicking. And Blackie and the mob, they found out you can't sell government property and get away with it. That is, of course, unless you belong to the government. Yes, sir, the only thing that pays less than crime is television. Well, here I am in San Francisco with 18 cents in my kit. I'll get that dope from Charlie Till Sudsky till I get back to Los Angeles. Am I hungry? Guess I'll look around for a nice, clean restaurant and blow the bank roll. Am I worried about tomorrow? Not little baby. The way I figure, worry is like rocking in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it don't get you no prayer. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. (laughs) Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Bill Conrad, Sidney Miller, Mary Jane Croft, Harry Bartell, Herb Vigran, Ed Max, and Howard McNear. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say how about a little... Ow! Does that answer your question, buddy? The 
Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. <laughs> Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. For a time once, I thought it'd be changed to Mrs. Eddie Jordan. But I didn't marry Mr. Eddie Jordan because he had an impediment in his speech. He couldn't say words like, Maisie, will you be my wife? Well, so here's little bachelor Maisie. Instead of an ivy-covered honeymoon cottage in the pitter-patter of tiny feet, I am in a tiny fourth-floor boarding house room. And the only pitter-patter I hear is the rain dripping in through a leak in the ceiling. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Kennedy. Just a minute. Ouch. It ain't the landlady, Maisie. It's me, Merton. Oh, hello, Merton. Hi. What's the matter? Oh, I just burnt my finger. Every time I try to hide my percolator in a hurry, I always grab it where it perks instead of where it laters. Oh, gosh. Well, you got to watch that cooking in your room, Maisie. You know Mrs. Kennedy's nose. Yeah. You'd think I'd be more careful, wouldn't you? Yeah. After all, I've been sniffed out of boarding house rooms from Maine to California. Well, how's about joining me for a cup of coffee, Mert, before you run off to the salt mines? Uh, oh, oh well, gee, Maisie, uh, thanks, but I just have time to get down to the store under the wire. I just knocked to let you know it's okay now. Oh, thank you, Mert. But there's really no hurry. I'm only taking a cold shower this morning. Oh, how can you take cold showers on mornings like this? Well, gee, no choice. By the time I get to our community bathroom, our fellow boarders have taken all the hot water. Oh, well... You can take a hot one today, Maisie. I, uh, I saved my water for you. Oh, that's real sweet of you, Mert. Uh, say, Maisie. Yeah? They're having a dance at the Y Saturday night, and I... Mm-hmm. Well, all the fellas are bringing girls. And... Well, girls are nicer to dance with than fellas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I thought if, if you didn't have nothing particular doing... Merton Falsgruber. Are you inviting me to make with the feet with you? Well, gosh, Maisie, I, I know you being in show business, you meet, well, rich guys who are more exciting to dance with. Exciting? Don't you believe it, Sonny? I've had all I want of them retreaded old playboys. Oh, g gosh, then you mean you'd rather, I mean, somebody like me? Why, sure, Mert. At least with you, I know when you say let's go out on the balcony for a breath of fresh air that you're really interested in breathing. Yes, I am. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Maisie. Uh, then it's a date? Sure. My act closes at the theater Friday, so I'll be in the Miss clear. Miss Revere! Oh. Miss Revere! Oh, Mrs. Kennedy wants you, Maisie. Oh. I wonder what Miss Dry Rod of 1916 wants. There's a gentleman to see you downstairs, Miss Revere, and Mr. Eddie Jordan. Eddie Jordan? Eddie? Whoa! Maisie, what? I'm coming right down, Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> He's in here, Miss Revere. Eddie. Maisie. Gosh, it's really you. Yeah, it's me. Gee. Gosh. Now, that's what I call a hunk of scintillating conversation. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, we'd like to be... Uh, well, if you yeah, you mind. know how it is. <laughs> Maisie, at my age, I just know how it was. <laughs> Gee. Eddie, I'm so happy I could cry. This isn't the time for anything but this. Oh, Eddie, you sure know how. Now that I've found you again, honey, I I'm never going to let you go again. <sighs> <sighs> Maisie, why did you ever run out on me? Back in Scottsville, we were so, so... That's why I ran out. We were so-so. Look, I would have asked you to marry me a long time ago, honey, back in Scottsville, but... Well, you know what I was making selling insurance. Well, Eddie, I could have lived on your salary. I know you could have, but what would I have lived on? I left Scottsville because there was no future there selling insurance. And I left because there was no future there with you. 
Eddie, honey. Yeah? How did you ever wind up in this town? Oh, I just roamed around the country, looking for you mostly. I happened to stop off here, and luckily I found a job. Oh, doing what, Ed? Insurance. Oh, gee, that's grand. Salary isn't much. Mm. But it's nice, clean work, just enough money for a single man. Oh, we won't be in this financial rut forever, honey. After all, I've still got my engineer's diploma from college. Well, that's nice. In case things get real tough, you can always sell the frame. Someday, honey, I'll get a break. Someday, Dame Chance will smile at me. And you'll smile back, just like you do at all dames. Oh, Maisie, honey, stop it. You're the only girl for me. You always will be. Oh, well, I'm sure you mean it, Eddie. You've forgotten all about that arch rival of mine back in Scottsdale. Hmm. Funny, I can't remember her name. You mean Marsha Brent? Yeah. Funny how her name came back to you, just like that. Silly kid, that Marsha. But cute, didn't you think? You didn't think. Poor little Marcia. She sure tried hard to get me a job with her old man's engineering company. She sure stuck her neck out. Well, if he ever sticks it out again, I'll slap it right back in. Oh, why, Maisie, I do believe you're jealous. Me? Jealous? Yeah. <laughs> you're darn tootin' I am. Eddie Jackson, if I ever catch you even looking at another woman, I'll... Kill me? Yeah. The hard way. Like this. Ah. Oh. Beautiful way of going, honey. A beautiful way. Oh, and talking about going, I gotta get back on the job. Uh, suppose I meet you downtown at noon, honey, and then I'll take you out to lunch, just like always. Okay, Eddie dear. But I know you'll be tired after all that work, so I insist on carrying my own tray. <laughs> Your Mr. Jordan should be comfortable in this room, Maisie. Of course, it isn't as close to the bath as your room. Oh, I don't think Eddie would mind running up two flights, Mrs. Kennedy. He was very athletic in college. Uh, of course, he does understand about cooking in the room. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you and your fiancé ever feel that you don't care to go out to eat, well... Uh, yes? Uh, I could fix a pretty good dinner for you. Why, Mrs. K... I always thought that... that I'm a dried-up old prune, a hatchet-faced old woman with ice in her veins. Oh, I don't think that at all, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, you should, because I am. No, you're not really, honey. Honey. <laughs> I haven't been called that in 30 years. Man trouble? Uh-huh. May not show, Maisie, but love has kicked me in the face. Oh, it shows, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it has. Mm. Mr. Kennedy isn't dead. He... He ran away. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do... Well, there is, Maisie. Don't make the same mistake I did. Honey, I'm a little older than you. Huh? A uh, whole lot older than you. Yeah, that's better. And I found out a little too late, unfortunately, that men are just boys grown up. Oh, I don't think my Eddie's grown up yet. He gets a kick out of the strangest things. Yes. Uh, well, what I mean is kids like to have everything they do appreciated. They like to be flattered, patted on the back. Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, that's my husband, he used to make airplanes out of newspaper and sail them through the living room. <laughs> oh, that's really silly. Yeah, it's a lot sillier going through life alone. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, i got to meet Eddie for lunch. And I'll show interest in everything he does, Mrs. K. I'll interest him to death if that's what it takes to keep a man happy. Oh, smart girl, Maisie. It keeps men happy and also keeps their minds off other women. It does? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying your Mr. Jordan is the type. <laughs> After all, there are all kinds of men. Not when it comes to women, there ain't. <laughs> Maisie, honey, I can't remember when I've enjoyed lunch more. Wow, look at the time. i got to get back to the office. Oh, Eddie, not yet, please. Let's just sit here and talk. Uh, but, Maisie... Darling, I... what did you do this morning? Uh, you mean first thing? Yeah, right after you opened your eyes. Well, I got up. Oh, how thrilling. Thrilling? Yeah. Then what did you do? I washed. <gasps> you didn't. Of course, I always wash in the morning. Always? Certainly. Eddie, you're absolutely wonderful. Wonderful for washing when I get up? Well, yes. It's those little things that make a woman's heart thrill. Uh, look, Maisie, i got to rush back. Gee, Eddie, let's not stop this wonderful discussion. Uh, look, Maisie, I, I don't have time. I'm already late and my boss Oh, will be... just a few more questions. I'm so interested in the interesting life you lead. Now, 
Who works in the office with you? Oh, just a few fellas. Fellas? Uh-huh. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, Maisie, the boss, Mr. Evans, said if I'm ever the least now bit late again, me. he was going to... Now, tell me. Now, wait a minute. Who else is in your office? Look, the boss, Mr. Evans... Naturally. Is... Does he have a secretary? Yes, she's very nice. Oh, wonderful. She's about 60, I guess. Oh, wonderful. Maisie, the boss says... That yeah, but I, I guess he don't say smart things like you say. Afternoon, Jordan. Mr. Evans. You're late again, Jordan. You're fired. Goodbye, Jordan. Good... Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Oh, Ed... You mean that was your... Uh, yeah. I... Uh, now you can ask me all the wonderful questions you want. I've got plenty of time to answer them. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. <laughs> extra towels, Mr. Jo... Maisie, you know the house rules about... You know? And this is Mr. Jordan's room. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Kennedy. Eddie ain't here. He went back to the office to clean out his desk. Oh. Is he still sore at you about losing his job, Maisie? Oh, he sure is, Mrs. Kennedy. On the way back from lunch, he took the only empty seat in the bus and let me stand right in front of him. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. I guess an old schmo like myself shouldn't have tried to give you advice on how to hold a man. No, it was all my fault, honey. I was the one that admired Eddie right out of a job. Well, he couldn't be too mad at you, Maisie. He did move in here. That shows he still wants to be near you. Yeah, and he did let me carry his bags from his old boarding house. That shows he likes me a little yet, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah I guess so. And uh, he's bound to appreciate your unpacking his things for him while he's away. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie sure had a lot of stuff, but I put it all away in the dresser drawers, and real neatly, too. Well, you look all pooped out after all that unpacking and stuff. Suppose you let me fix your cup of tea in my room. Oh, gee, thanks. I'll be swell. Oh, good evening, Maisie. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy. Hello, Hello Merton. Merton. Hi. How'd it go at the drugstore today? Oh, not so good, Maisie. Gosh, I, I, w- I was so excited about our date for Saturday night, I, I missed on five ice cream sodas. Five, Merton? Yeah. I threw the balls of ice cream up a little too high. Oh. Did the boss notice it, Merton? No, no, no. Thank goodness Mr. Peabody almost never looks up at the ceiling. Uh, Merton. Huh? Uh, about that date Saturday night, I, um... Yeah? Um... Uh, uh, Merton, we have a new boarder. A man. Oh, gee, that's swell. Uh, he's Maisie's fiancé. Yeah. Swell. Well, of course, we had a fight. Oh, swell. I, well, I, I mean, too bad. But I'm sure they'll make up. It was only a small fight. Oh, too bad. Well, Maisie, do you think you'll make up by Saturday night? Well, I don't know, Mert. Eddie's very obstinate. Uh, 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 oh, gee, he is? I like obstinate men. Well, I, I gotta wash up for dinner. See you, huh? What about you, Maisie? You having dinner alone? I don't know, Mrs. Kennedy. I'll have to wait till Eddie gets back in the office. But I have my doubts. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm sure you'll forget what you did to him by tonight. Eddie forget? Mrs. Kennedy, you don't know Eddie. One of his parents must have been an elephant. Jordan, uh, I'll have my desk cleared out in a minute, Mr. Evans. You can stop clearing out your desk, Jordan. You mean you changed your mind about firing me? I never changed my mind, Jordan. There's a woman in the outer office to see you. A woman? If it's the same one I had lunch with, tell her no. No. I'll tell her. i got to get some fun out of life. Now, look here, you blonde... Hello, Eddie. Marsha. Marsha Brent, where did you come from? Well, my mother told me the stork brought me, but I've always had a sneaking suspicion. I mean, gosh, after all these years. Sit down, Marcia. 
gosh, you look beautiful. Even more beautiful than that uh, blonde you were expecting? Oh, I thought you were Maisie. Maisie? Yeah. You mean you've caught up with her at last? Yeah, and I ain't so glad about it. She interferes with my business, gets in my hair, drives me nuts. Oh, then I don't stand a chance. You still love her. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, then, I guess you'll be happy to hear about your new job. New job? Well, I stopped off here for two reasons. My uh, scouts finally located you, and I thought, well, maybe Maisie was out of your system by now. Uh Uh-uh. Science hasn't found a cure for girls like Maisie. Uh, But you said uh, job, didn't you? Yes, little Marcia isn't one to let her heart rule her mind. Eddie, I'm United Engineering Company now. Oh, yeah, I I heard about your father. Gee, I'm awfully sorry, honey. Please, Mr. Jordan, engineers don't go around calling their employers honey. Employers? Engineers? Got a new project, Mr. Jordan. A big electrical plant in Niagara Falls. Interesting? Niagara Falls? For a fleeting moment, I thought we might kill two birds with one stone, but, um... Interested, Eddie? In the job, I mean. Am I? Fine. I'm leaving for Niagara Falls on the 812 tonight. Think you can make the same train? Oh, that's a little faster. But, but sure. Good. I'll have the tickets and meet you at the station. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Wait till I tell Maisie. <laughs> Eddie, are you home? I sure am, Maisie. Come in, I want to tell you something. Well, I can hear you all right out here. Ah, oh, don't be silly. Come on in. All right. I'll leave the door open. Well, what for? Well, they can hear me better when I yell for help. Well, I'm not sorry at you, Maisie. Even if you did unpack my things. Well, I just thought I'd help. You're not sorry? <laughs> no. Eddie Jordan, you just don't care that I lost your job for you. You're completely indifferent. Listen, Maisie, honey, forget about that old job. I, I never liked it anyway. Honey, I, I've got great news for you. You feel like hitting me? No, I feel like loving everybody. Honey, I just got a new job. You did? Just the kind I always wanted, too. Oh. N- now I can get my whole life straightened out. After a couple of weeks at Niagara Falls, I'll be able to tackle anything. Oh, of course you will. I... Niagara Falls. Did you say Niagara Falls? I sure did, baby. Oh, Maisie, just think of it. Niagara uh, Falls next stop. I can hardly believe uh, it. Well, how do you think I feel? And do you know what I'm going to do there? Oh, don't tell me, Ed. It'll be so much more fun finding out for myself. Look, look, honey, I'll, I'll tell you more later. Right now, I've got to run out and get a few extra things I'll need. I, I better hurry. We're leaving on the 812 tonight. Oh, Eddie, honey, I can't wait to tell Mrs. Kennedy. Well, she knows already. I told her as soon as I came home. Uh, you told her before me? Well... Pretty sure I'd say yes, weren't you? You? Oh, Maisie, don't you understand? I'm, I'm just doing this to make you happy. Well, okay. But I'm not so sure this is going to work out. You and me are both in love with you. Well, oh, i got to hurry. See you later. Come in. Hi. Maisie, I, I was just wondering what kind of a corsage you'd like for Saturday. You, you going someplace? Yeah, maybe? I'm packing. Merton, Eddie and me are leaving for Niagara Falls tonight to be married. To be? Oh. Oh, then I guess it's it's off for Saturday night, huh? I'm sorry, Maisie. Oh, that's all right, Maisie. Lots of luck. I, I didn't like dancing anyway. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Uh, say, Maisie, Eddie just told me all about... Uh, you're packing. Well, naturally, Mrs. Kennedy, i got to have something to wear at Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah, it gets pretty cold up there, you know. Didn't Ed tell you? Well, yes, but he didn't tell me you were going along. Oh, well, I guess he's just bashful. He's never been married before, you know. Uh, well, he told me he's going with his new boss. Oh, that's silly. Even if Ed loved his new boss, he wouldn't take a man along on his honeymoon. It wouldn't be the same somehow. I've got a surprise for you, Maisie, you poor girl. Poor girl? Yes. Eddie said he's going with a... a... Marsha Brent. Oh, well, I wonder if I should pack any... Uh, Marsha Brent? He said she's a friend from Scottsville. Oh, but I never thought... Well, she's not the type for Eddie's wife. Eddie said her father died and left her everything. And he can't be happy with just money, either. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy, what'll I do? Well, I don't know what, honey, but whatever it is, you better work fast. Remember, his train leaves at 8.12. Yeah, there isn't much time. Mrs. Kennedy, hmm? this is an emergency. Come on. 
We're going to Eddie's room and help him pack. Well, why should we help him? Well, because if we don't, he's almost sure to catch his train. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy and I thought you could use some help, Eddie, so here we are. Oh, well, that's right, Eddie. Anything we can do? Gosh, that's well of you both, but I'm just about ready. Well, anyway, I'm glad you came. I'd hate to leave without saying goodbye. Oh, you're going to kiss me farewell, aren't you, Eddie? Maisie, not now. I've only got about 35 minutes yet, and there's a couple of important things I haven't done yet to see you now. Oh, like what? Well, I've got to check over my things before I close the police. I, you know, I might have forgotten something. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Uh, let me see now. I've got my pajamas, shirts... Are you sure you packed your pajamas, Ed? Yeah. Neckties, huh? underwear, socks. You'll catch cold without pajamas. No, I packed them. Toilet articles, shoes. Well, suppose the train is wrecked at night and you aren't wearing pajamas. Well, I tell you that... You'll I... be ashamed to let them rescue you. I packed my pajamas, Maisie. They're at the bottom of the valise. Are you sure? Not only sure, I'm positive. I'm absolutely certain. I am... I am... You what? I'm wondering if I did pack them after all. Oh, Ed, you gotta be sure... Come on, Mrs. K. Turn the valise over. Oh, with pleasure. Maisie, well, wait a minute. Oh, gee, you didn't have to dump all the things out on the floor. Oh, Ed, you did pack them. <laughs> what a relief. What a mess, everything. Oh, sit down, Eddie. Mrs. K and I'll do it for you. Oh, dear. Look how you've creased your things. Mrs. K, mm-hmm. help me smooth out these handkerchiefs. Yes. Oh, gosh, there's about 30 of them. Is that all? You'd better go over each one twice. Maisie, do you want me to miss the train? Oh, stop worrying. I called up five minutes ago, and the man told me your train is half an hour late. Yeah, well, I called up five minutes ago, and the man I spoke to said it was right on time. Oh. Well, you must have talked to the engineer. He's at the front of the train. <laughs> Look, haven't you got that valise packed yet? Yeah, i just finished. We got it packed all right, but you'll have to help close it, Ed. Closed easy enough before. <clears throat> What in the world did you put in here? Oh, you're just weak, Eddie. There's even more room now than before. There is. Well, there should be. I threw out that large tube of toothpaste. What'd you do that for? I need toothpaste. Well, you don't need the two. I squeezed all the paste out of it first. Holy smoke. Now it'll be all over everything. Oh, no, it won't. She squeezed it into your pajama pocket. Oh, fine. I'm sure glad I didn't forget to pack my pajamas. Yeah, isn't it lucky? And you'll be wearing them when you clean your teeth. Maisie, you think of everything. <laughs> oh, you got it closed. Finally. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, what time is it? Gosh, I don't want to be late. Well, it's... It, uh, Mrs. Kennedy. Huh? Oh. Uh, I don't know, Eddie. My watch stopped. Uh, Maisie, look at my wristwatch, will you? It's on the dresser. Uh, well, it isn't there now. It isn't? Gee, I've got to find it. I put it right there. Oh, Eddie, I just remembered. I packed your watch in the valise. Oh, swell. <laughs> What's the matter, Ed? I can't even lift this police. Ways a ton. I guess you got too much stuff in there, Eddie. Oh, gosh, it's only shirts and things. Isn't it a good thing I threw out the toothpaste, too? Doggone it. We'll have to open the police again. No wonder I couldn't lift it. Webster's unabridged dictionary. Maisie, why did you put this dictionary in here? Well, Eddie, you shouldn't have left it behind. You might want to read something on the train. Oh, what's the use? Now I'll have to run for it. Gee, I wish I knew what time it is. Maisie, are you coming? Yes, Ed. But it's so sad leaving your old home. Maybe forever. Maisie. Don't you want to see the bathroom just once more? He doesn't have to, Maisie. It's 8.15. What time did you say it was, Mrs. Kennedy? She said she ate 15 minutes ago. Oh, won't I ever get out of here. Mr. Jordan? Uh, Yes? Congratulations, and also there was a call for you from a Miss Brent. I took it. Uh, What did she say, Sonny? Yeah, yeah, what, Merton? I am not a sonny, pal. I'm almost 19, and she said to tell Mr. Jordan that she's taken the train to Niagara Falls herself. Stubborn, isn't she? Yes, very. (laughs) She went by herself. Oh, no, no. Yes, yes. She said if you miss the train, you might as well miss the job, too, sonny. Job? Maisie Revere. I was going up there for a job. Money, dollars, future, something I've dreamed about all my life. Oh, but, Ed, I thought that... Uh, well, um, I tried to detain you so... You... Th- so you... All this... You wanted me to miss that train, didn't you? Out! Out, all of you! I'm going to blow my brains out. Oh, what's the use? With my luck, I'd probably miss anyway. Don't worry, Maisie. You'll get over it someday. You shouldn't live so long, Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Maisie. 
there anything I can do? Yeah. Ask me about that date for Saturday night. I got a sneaking suspicion I'll be free to make it. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, I sure did at that time. But wouldn't you just know everything would get loused up? After more than two years, Eddie comes back into my life and then this. And now, as far as Eddie's concerned, I'm just a person to be forgotten. Like Whistler's father, John's first wife. Oh, well, maybe you'll get over it. Might as well trudge back upstairs to my room and have a good cry. If I have any strength left in my feet... After making that climb, maybe I'll just bend down and kick myself. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, B. Benaderet, Pat McGeehan, Joan Banks, and Joe Forte. Jack McCoy speaking. Hiya, babe. Say, how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember metro golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, you're announced. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. I don't ask anything of life and I don't get anything. Well, that's sort of breaking even, ain't it? I guess when I was a kid, I was vaccinated with a road map, because as far back as I can remember, I've been traveling. <laughs> right now, I'm in Reno. Oh, no, not for the usual reason. I ain't never been married yet. Also, I've been kicked around a lot by men of the opposite sex. And the way I figure it, there's only two kinds of men. Those you can trust, and the majority. Anyway, here I am in Reno looking for the Blue Peacock Club. My agent got me a job there as a singer. 
I'm supposed to sing sad songs to make ex-wives and ex-husbands homesick. So they'll hurry home, marry somebody else, and then come back to Reno and start all over again. Ouch! Say, Say why, why don't, don't you look, look where you... You! you. Jack Fuller! Maisie Revere. Say, Say what, what are you doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first, Dad. What are you doing in Reno, the world's most famous separation center? Well, it's this way, Maisie. I married a girl. Well, you couldn't have made a better choice. It ain't funny, McGee. You see, I love her. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Care to tell me about it? Well, it's this way, Maisie. Mm-hmm. I met Gloria. That's my wife. Mm-hmm. Right after I quit the job at the airplane factory you and I worked at. Oh, yeah. I remember that place. You were vice president in charge of training boat number 268, and I was in charge of 269. That is until the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> I liked you, Maisie. A lot. Mm. You were different. Yeah. But Gloria was different, huh? Yeah. Say, this isn't the place to pour out my heart. Uh, how's about a soda, Maisie? Love to. I'm a little dry after walking across the great American desert. You walked? Sure. The railroad only sells tickets to people with money. Some silly rule they got. Mm, golly, you must be real thirsty. Well, I could use a drink. I stopped off at a little mirage, but they were closed for lunch. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> Yeah, what'll it be, folks? I'll just have a Coke. What about you, miss? Well, I'll have a double chocolate sundae with coconut, mm, and uh, whipped cream, marshmallow, bananas, and some shredded nuts. No cherry? Well, of course not. You think I want to get sick? I hate myself for asking. One hash frozen. <laughs> and that's the story, Maisie. You see, after the wedding, I found out that Gloria wasn't exactly penniless. She had a fortune. That was terrible. Some terrible, I'll say. You see, her father was from Texas. He was a millionaire. Well, naturally. Well, when we got married, she agreed to live on what I make. Oh, I do all right. But one day... You had a fight. Yeah. Mm. How did you know we had a fight? Well, that's obvious. You were married. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't just a plain little disagreement. You see... Here's your Coke, mister. And here's your little tidbit, miss. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute, Sonny. I can't eat this. Who can you forgot a spoon. Oh, here you are, miss. Coconut, whipped cream, marshmallow. Now, Jack, where were we? Up to the breakup, I think. Mm. Maisie, I can't figure Gloria's change of heart. She still loves me. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah? Then why is she going to court tomorrow for a divorce? Look, Sonny, nobody asks you. Yeah. Maisie, you've just got to stop her from getting that divorce. Stop her? How can I stop her? Yeah, how can she stop her? Well, well I don't... Ah, come on, Maisie. Let's get out of here and go someplace where we can talk undisturbed. Here's your money, Long Ears. Yes, yeah, so along, Mr. Anthony. Sorry we can't stay for you to hear the rest. But this conversation is calculated to keep you in suspense. Hey, miss, you left your gum parked on the stool. Oh, that's all right. If I don't call for it in 30 days, it's yours. Well, you haven't answered the question yet, Jack. How am I supposed to stop the divorce? I don't know, but you've got to do it. Even if you have to kidnap Gloria. But kidnapping's a federal offense, honey. Besides, I won't have the time. I've got a job. Look, Maisie, I love her. Oh, dear. Well, now it's about starting at the beginning and letting me in on a few of the details. Like, what's all this about, hmm? Well, Gloria was away visiting Daphne Ashburn when, well, all of a sudden her letters stopped. Daphne Ashburn? Uh-huh. That don't listen like a gal you can trust. Could be. You see, Daphne's a distant relation, a cousin twice removed. Yeah, but she wasn't removed far enough, huh? If Daphne's mixed up in this, I haven't been able to find it out. And I've tried. I tried to see Gloria and get an explanation. And she wouldn't see you? She had me thrown out of her hotel for pestering her. Well, why don't you write her a letter? I've written dozens. I don't believe she gets them. In fact, Maisie, I'm convinced something funny's going on. And I want you to move into that hotel and find out. Hotel? Jack, when you move into a hotel, they always ask embarrassing questions. Like, when are you going to pay your bill? I'll take care of the expenses. Now, here. Here's a letter I've written, and if Gloria reads it, I think she'll give up this idea of a divorce. Some way I want you to get it to her and see that she reads it in person. Well, I'll try, but I'm not... Maisie, you've got to. You've got to find out who's poisoning Gloria's mind against me. You've got to stop that divorce. But, Jack, you're asking me to be a detective, a regular private eye. Please, Maisie, it means so much to me. 
please. Well, all right. But I've got a feeling that this may be one private eye that's headed for a punch in the nose. Bellboy, Miss Maisie. Oh. Come in, Jerry. I came as soon as you called in the no. Woo, woo, woo. Gee. <laughs> Must be this new sweater I'm wearing, Jerry. Your eyes are bumping against your glasses. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> Here's the eye short at Maisie. Well, you better put it on your forehead, Jerry. You look like you're running a temperature. <laughs> oh, okay. Say, Jerry. Hmm? Maybe I can use you. Huh? I mean, I'd like you to do me a favor over and above your line of duty. Well, I'm off duty at five. No, no, I don't mean that. Oh. Listen, Jerry. Hmm. I got to see a certain woman in this hotel. Do you know Mrs. Gloria Fuller? Gloria? Oh, sure, Maisie, sure. Of course, I don't like that Miss Daphne Ashbourne that's always hanging around, or that oily Dr. Clay's. Dr. Clay? Yeah, yeah, he's a doctor that treats Gloria. Oh. Only I, I can't see anything wrong with her, except maybe she's always sort of sleepy. Sleepy? Mm-hmm. Jerry. Uh, how, how can I get in to see her? Well, uh, her husband was snooping around here till they threw him out, and it's a rule not to let anybody in to see her. Oh, please, Jerry. Wouldn't you fix it? Just for little old me. Oh, when you flutter your little old eyelashes like that at me, mm. I'm your man. <laughs> uh, look, it, it, it's, it's the big suite at the end of the hall. Yeah, at the end of the hall. Yeah. I'm supposed to bring up Miss Gloria's mail about now. I'm a little late, so if... If you were to knock on the door, well, there you are. Oh, thank you, Jerry. And one more thing. Hmm. Well, what's Gloria Fuller like? Oh, she's a sweetie pie. Is it, so she ain't, ain't, ain't wanted by Uncle Sam. No, by Brother Jack. Yes, come in, Jerry. Excuse me, Mrs. Fuller, but... I thought you were Jerry, the bellboy. Well, who are you? I'm Maisie Revere, and I'm a good pal of your husband, and he loves you and wants you to read this letter, and he's such a swell guy. I think you're a fool if you divorce him, Gloria, and... Hey, wait a minute. You are Gloria Fuller, aren't you? This is her room, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm supposed to give you this letter if you are. So, here it is. Thank you, but I'm sure it's no different from any of Jack's other letters. Now, if you'll excuse oh, me... Oh, I... no, I, I was supposed to make sure you read it in person. I promised Jack I wouldn't leave till you read it. Oh, so. very well. <laughs> yes. Yes, just as I expected. Very well, you can tell Mr. Fuller that you kept your promise. And you'll see him and talk to him? Yes, in the divorce court tomorrow. Oh. Now, will you please leave? Gee, you know, from what Jack and Jerry told me, I thought you'd be different. Just what do you mean, different? Well, they said you were a sweetie pie. But to me, you turned out to be all crust. Such nerve. Why, you insolent cheap. Cheap? Look, sister, I've been called lots of things in my time. I'll but... bet you have. <gasps> now, please leave. I'm expecting friends for lunch. Don't worry, Tootsie. I'm leaving. And be careful with that lunch. Don't tip over your saucer of milk. Well, how do you figure that one, Daphne? Clay, did you hear it all? I happened to be bending over to tie my shoelace, and my ear came flush up to the keyhole. Say, what if Gloria heard it? Well, not a chance. Not with the sleeping pill I gave her. She'll be out for another half hour. Good. Now, here's another letter. Can you take it up to your room and fix it up before she wakes up? Naturally. I'll even have it fixed up before the beautiful Maisie gets through reporting back to Gloria's true loving husband. <laughs> and I just wish I could hear what she has to say about the girl she thinks is the real Gloria. <laughs> for you for two hours. Oh, well, I, I've been trying to help you solve this case, Maisie. So for the last couple hours, I've been upstairs peeping in at Miss Gloria's keyhole. Oh, did you find anything out, Jerry? Yeah. She has a birthmark oh, on her. Oh, never mind. See, if I didn't give my solemn promise to Jack, I'd call the whole thing off. The next time I run into little Gloria, I hope I'm driving a truck. Oh, gosh, but you wouldn't want to hurt Miss Gloria. Why, she's a doll. She's, she's out of this world. And I wish she'd stay out. Imagine that hunk of living proof that cousins shouldn't marry calling me cheap. Oh, well, gosh, Maisie, she sure looks like an angel, though. Just look at her over there. Where? I don't see her. Sitting at that table right over there. But that's not the woman I talked to. I mean, Jerry, 
Who's that tall willowy girl coming to the table? Well, that's Miss Daphne Ashbourne. Oh, it is. And she told me she was Gloria Fuller, the female female impersonator. Well, Maisie, where you going? Well, now we'll see who can call me cheap. Say you. This is the one, Gloria. Are you Gloria Fuller? Yes, I am, Miss Revere. Well, now I smell a rat. Oh, you do? Yes, rat. Gloria, did you know that this, this woman passed herself off as you and she read a letter from your husband and Jack's one of the nicest guys in the world? Yes, and... Miss Ashburn told me all about your visit at my suite. Oh, she told you, huh? Telephone call, Miss Ashburn. You can take it in the alcove there. Oh, no, thank you, Jerry. I'll take it in my room. Well, I hope you're satisfied, Miss Peroxide of 1950. Peroxide? Why, I... Miss Revere, please. Gee, well, she makes me think of her. I should wash out my mind with DDT. Miss Revere, I try not to think badly of anyone, so I suppose you don't know what was in Jack's letter. Well, I didn't read it like old Needle knows, but I know he really loves you. He does? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. No, he couldn't. In every letter he's written me lately, he's demanded money, a lot of money. That's why I broke off with him. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, here's the letter you brought. Here, I'll show you. Let me see. I don't love you so you can have your freedom. But I demand a 50-50 split of every cent you've got. Wait a minute. Is this Jack's writing? I'd know it anywhere. Oh, and dopey me. I thought he was a swell guy. I used to think so, too. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you, Gloria. And please, if I were you, I wouldn't let this hurt me too much. It does hurt us. Maybe I'm not as stout-hearted as you. <laughs> oh, sure. Stout-hearted Maisie, that's me. A heart of oak and a head to match. Well, I'll tell that Jack Fuller a thing or two. Hey, didn't you like him, Maisie? Where's the phone booth, Jerry? Oh, uh, right around this corner. I'll there. tell that Jack Fuller what a heel he is. Hey, here's a phone booth, Maisie. Oh, only there's somebody in it. But I tell you, Daphne, I'm not doing it. Jerry, that boy. Who is he? Sounds like Dr. Clay. I tell you no, Daphne. No. Uh-huh. And he's talking about Miss Daffy, Daphne Ashford. I was gambling, yes, and I've got to have some money. Now, look, you put 200 in an envelope and have Jerry the bellboy bring it to my room. Uh -oh. uh, why do you worry about money? We'll have plenty as soon as we get control of the Fuller Dame. Sure, call Jerry right away. Jerry, here behind the booth. Yeah, Maisie. There he goes. Well, I guess I won't call Jack Fuller after all. Jerry... Something's wrong here, and I'm going to find out about it. Yeah, and I'll help you, Maisie. As soon as I take that money to Dr. Clay. Wait a minute. You're not going to take it to him, Jerry. I am. Well, but, Maisie, I don't trust Dr. Claves. I don't like him. I don't like him either, Jerry. But before I get through with him, I think he's going to like me. You see, I know men. Really? How did you find out so much about men, Maisie? <laughs> I refuse to answer that, Jerry, on the grounds that it might incriminate me. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Zombies as you ordered, Maisie. Uh, hey, where's Dr. Claves? Under the table. Gee, on only 12 zombies? <laughs> and you should have seen him after number 11. He just sat there like Whistler's mother, rocking. <laughs> Did he talk? Yeah, he talked plenty. Oh, good, good. Oh, oh, oh by the way, the, the barman said if I didn't get Dr. Claves to sign the bill for all those drinks, he'd, he'd bust me one in the mush. I hate to wake him, but I... Well, I we it. might as well. Here, I'll do it. Dr. Claves. Dr. Claves, wake up. Time for your DTs, honey. Well, uh, was I? Oh, beautiful Maisie. Where you been all my life? Hmm, this is where I came in. Uh, uh, Dr. Claves, uh, would you please sign for these drinks? 
Are you able to sign for him, Dr. Clay? Who, me? Oh, I sure, hmm. sure, sure. Here's a pencil. I don't need but one pencil. I'm only handing you one. Hmm. Do you think you can sign, Dr. Clay? Huh? Why, if Claves can't sign, who can? I'm an, I'm an expert signer. Here. Mm. There. Uh, here are two more to sign. Mm. There. And there. Yeah. Thank you for signing. Uh, same to you, old pal. Drop in any time. Oh, he's out again. Yeah. You better make sure you can read his signature, Jack. Oh, sure, sure. I can read it, Maisie. I'll say one thing. He sure writes a beautiful hand. He... He waved. Well? These signatures are all different, Maisie. Huh? I mean, same name, but not the same. Gary, are you sure you didn't sample one of those zombies? No, 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 no. Look. Yeah. That's strange. One's all flowery and curly cute, and one's backhand, and one's a... Gary. Yeah, Maisie, yeah? Dr. Claves is a forger. And look. Here's a brand new blotter. He used to blot a letter. See if you can read what it says. Uh, it's all backwards like. Well, look, I- I'll hold it up here to the mirror and you read it. Ah. There. W- what does it say? Uh, well, oh, 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 it says, um, uh, uh, Dear Gloria, mm-hmm, yeah. I don't love you so you can have your freedom. Go on, dear, yeah. But I demand a 50 50 split of every cent you've got. That is it. Jerry, that's it. Sure, sure. What, what's what? Dr. Claves took the real letter Jack Fuller wrote to Gloria and he wrote this one instead. Oh. Now, listen, Jerry. Here's what we'll do. Uh, yeah, Maisie? We'll, we're, we're, we're going to take this blotter to the police's evidence. Uh-huh. You get us a taxi while I call Jack and tell him to meet us at the police station. Right. And hold the cab till I get downstairs. Right. I'm on my way. Hello, operator. Operator? Yes. I want the Hotel Belleville in a hurry. Mr. Jack Fuller, please. Drop that phone. Huh? You heard me. Go away, honey. Only one thing will stop me from making this call. Drop that phone or I shoot. That's the one thing. Miss Ashburn. Is that thing in your hand? It sure is, and I know how to shoot it, too. No, you don't. Don't try to hide that blotter. Hand it to me or I'll... Sure, sure. Who needs a dirty old blotter? Don't play possum with me, honey. So you're on to Claves and his penmanship act, eh? Yeah, and you can't get away with this, darling. Oh, can't I? No, you can't. I'll call the police. You'll do nothing because you'll be lying here on the floor bound and gagged. You wouldn't dare. Oh, no? I'll do even more. Just to give you something to occupy your mind, I will tell you what Claves and Gloria and I will be doing while you're lying here. Maisie, Maisie, the taxi's been waiting for an hour. Did you get tied up? Uh... Holy smoke, you did get tied up. Here, Maisie, let, let me take off this gag. There. What happened? Well, that Daphne Ashburn came in here with a gun, and she slapped Claves till she got him on his feet. Untie my hands, feet, Jerry. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Well, I, while I was lying there, tied up, she called Judge Carter and asked him to hear Gloria's divorce in his chambers today instead of tomorrow. Jerry, we got to work fast. Well, well, you just tell me what to do, Maisie. Well, go to the hotel, the hotel Belleville, and tell Jack to get over to, to the judge's chambers fast. Right, right. But Maisie, where are you going? Well, it's probably already too late, but I'm going to try to stop that divorce. <laughs> There being no further testimony and evidence in the case of Fuller versus Fuller, the court is inclined to enter a bill of divorcement in favor of the plaintiff. Now, Mrs. Gloria Fuller, if you will just step to my desk and sign... Yes, Judge Carter. I object. Your Honor, I object. And just who might you be, young woman? Well, I'm a friend of the goon. I mean, the groom. I mean, divorcee. I mean, I'm a friend of Jack Fuller, and he loves Gloria, and she doesn't really want a divorce if she only knew the facts. May we have order, please? uh, And although these are my private chambers, this is still a court of law. Mrs. Fuller, do you know this young woman? Well, I've seen her. Judge Carter, she's pestered Gloria before. She's a cheap, phony blonde. Phony! I'll show you the roots. I'll show you my baby pictures. Your Honor, would you allow me to speak for a moment as a doctor? I'll allow anybody to speak if they'll clear up this nonsense. All right, Dr. Claves. Thank you. This young woman is Maisie Revere. Hmm. I had a chance to observe her very closely earlier today when she came to me as a patient. I went to you as a patient. You were blotto and flat on your back. What? What is this? Please, Your Honor, I'm I'm demonstrating something, so I ask you to listen closely. 
Now, Macy, just how would you describe me to Judge Carter here? I'd describe you as the heel who's been forging letters to make Gloria believe her husband is after her money. Oh, that sounds fantastic. As you can see, Your Honor, this is obviously an acute case of hyperephronia. That's a lie. I never had anything but the measles. No, no, no. There, now, Macy, just, just be calm now. Well, Do you know the meaning of hyperephronia? Well, no. But I've been vaccinated and I can prove it. No, never mind. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Just what does it mean? Suppose you tell her, Your Honor. Well, I, uh, well, that is to say, I'm not too familiar with some of these uh, technical medical terms, uh, uh, but uh, I take it, it means that a person... Exactly, is... Your Honor, as yeah. nutty as a fur-lined fruitcake. Now, wait a minute. Judge, you don't think I'm off my trolley, do you? You're not even near the track. Now, just a well, minute. Well, you came in here in a most fantastic manner, and you've made some exceedingly wild statements which are unsupported by evidence. There, darling. Please, Stephanie. However, the court does not leave such matters to chance. Ha! Ah, there for you, darling. May we have order. As I was saying, the court's principal interest here is in seeing justice done to the person most concerned. Mrs. Fuller. Yes, Judge Carter. Now, I want you to consider your answer carefully, my dear. Do you want a divorce from your husband, Jack Fuller? Well, I... Of course I... you do, Gloria. You know all the things we planned. Well, I... Well, Mrs. Fuller? Well, I did love him, Judge, but... Yes, I do want a divorce. All right, my dear. Just sign Just here. Just a minute, Gloria. You still love your husband. He never did anything bad to you in his life, and all he wants is a chance. I don't, I don't. I did love him, but no, okay, I... Okay, okay. If you don't want Jack Fuller, I do. The way he kisses... Well... I object, Your Honor. <laughs> I always do, too, but Jack is so convincing. It's not true. Jack wouldn't look at another woman. You see, Jack, I told you she still loves him. Maisie, Maisie. Oh, Jerry, where's Jack? He wasn't in, so I left a message. And on the way over, I stopped at the police station to check on Dr. Clay. Yeah. You what? Jerry, quickly. They want him for forgery, don't they? Well, no, Maisie, they don't. Ah, uh -huh. you see, now, Your Honor. He's only wanted for grand larceny, embezzlement, swindling widows and orphans, and practicing medicine without a license. Come on, Jerry, let's get out of here. Oh, stop him, Your Honor, stop him! They won't get far, Maisie. Maisie? Maisie, I saw Dr. Clay's and Daphne running down the corridor. Is anything... Gloria. Oh, Jack, Jack! Gloria, did you... Did you? No, she didn't, young man. And you can thank Maisie here for saving her for you. Oh, shucks, it was nothing, kids. And Gloria, as far as Jack and me and that kissing stuff, <laughs> that was also nothing. Oh, Maisie, you're a real pal. The best pal a guy ever had. And you and I and Gloria are going to have some real times together, just <laughs> the three of us. Huh, Gloria? You will forget all this stuff that happened. All right, darling. Uh, but on one condition. I'll do anything, honey, anything. I don't trust a real close pal as beautiful as Maisie here. You don't mind, do you, Maisie? Oh, of course not, honey. Sometimes when I'm with a handsome man, I don't trust myself either. <laughs> so? So what? Well... If you even so much as smile at me again, you'll come right back here to Reno. Right, Flo? Right, Maisie. <laughs> Jack and I are going back home for a second honeymoon. Oh, but, Maisie, what about you? Oh, don't be silly, Jackie. What would I do on your honeymoon? <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Mm -hmm. And so Jackie and Gloria went back to Texas. Golly, those kids sure are proud of Texas. And I guess maybe they should be. After all, the United States is part of it. <laughs> Too bad the court couldn't do anything about little Daphne. She hadn't broken the law, only bends a little. But that wolf in she's clothing will be getting what's coming to her, no matter where she's run off to. There's one thing about being a louse. No matter where you go, you've got to take yourself with you. Well, come on, Feet. We still gotta find that nightclub. Gosh, I sure am tired from all that walking. Golly, why can't people be born with their feet higher up so they won't have to keep pounding the pavement?
You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Battleground, starring Van Johnson, John Hodiak, Ricardo Montalban, and George Murphy. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Hugh Studebaker, Stanley Waxman, Mary Ship, Bob Cole, Jerry Hausner, and Rhoda Williams. Jack McCoy speaking. Does that answer your question, Bobby? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, you're an outfit. Southern as Maisie. Yes, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. You know, some people are born with silver spoons in their mouths. They even go to finishing school. But my schooling was finished with a sixth grade. Of course, I may not be educated, but I ain't ignorant. There's a difference, you know. Maybe I don't know the score of Pagliacci or the Barber of Seville, but I sure know the score when it comes to men. Of course, there are some men you can trust. And someday I'll find one. Meanwhile, I'm still window shopping around. I'm in no hurry. I can still support myself in the style which I've forced myself to become accustomed. When I was a kid back in Brooklyn, we were lucky if we had three square meals a day. Now that I'm grown up and in show business, I'm lucky if I can get an occasional postage stamp to lick. Not this week, of course. This week I'm working. I'm appearing at the biggest theater in town. The manager auditioned lots of girls for the job, but I got it because of my voice. The manager liked the way I said, There's a better selection of seats in the balcony, folks. Mm hmm. I'm an usherette. I get 30 bucks a week and passes from wolves mostly. But at least I got a job. Oh, my goodness. I won't have it long if I don't get across the street and into my uniform. Sally, this is a busy intersection, but I just got to get across that street. Green light or no green light. Well, here goes. That quarter I spent for this police whistle was a pretty smart investment. Ouch! I'm dead! Oh, I'm sorry, miss. Did, did I knock you down? No, no. I'm just lying here with my ear on the ground to see if any enemy tanks are approaching. Oh. Are, are, you, are you hurt bad, miss? No, I don't think so. Oh! What's the matter? My head. It's all twisted around to my back. Oh, my gosh. Are you sure? Just look at it. Oh. No, it's all right. I just got my sweater on backwards. Somebody better get an ambulance. This kid shouldn't be allowed to drive these hot rods. Yeah, you should sue that crazy kid, miss. You ought to get the license number of his car. I think I have got it. On the back of my dress. Gee, I'm awful sorry, lady, but the, the light, it was green. At uh, least I thought it, it was. Bring it up. Go on now. Keep moving. You too, miss. I'm not so sure I can keep moving, officer. You see, 
I was just knocked down by that hot rod. That young hoodlum was driving. All right, now, miss, what's your name? Maisie Revere. I'm Jerome Smertzkebruggen. All right, whose fault was it? Well, not the kid's officer. He was born with that name. No, no, I mean the accident. A serious thing like this could lead to a jail sentence, Sonny. Okay, lock me up, officer. Put me behind bars for the rest of my life. I ain't got nothing to live for anyway. Well, now, young man, don't tell me a 16-year-old like you is tired of this little old world. I'm not 16. I'm 17. It's terrible. Hmm. Should happen to me. Such terrible. Well, I gotta get back to my job. I'm I'm sorry it was you that almost got killed, miss. Should have been me. Oh, now, come, come, Sonny. Aren't you taking whatever it is just a wee bit too seriously? Yeah, that's right, Sonny. There's lots of things a kid, I mean, a man like you have to live for. Yeah? Give me a for instance. Well, there's girls. Girls. Bah. I hate all women. Oh, so that's it. Puppy love, miss. Yeah, puppy love. Some girls treating them like a dog. You give a woman the best years of your life, treat her like a queen. Cokes, double chocolate sundaes. With whipped cream. Yeah, and that's a nickel extra. Yeah. Brown's drugstore where we all hang out is expensive, but do they appreciate being wined and dined? No. no. Do they want a real guy who gives them security, understanding? No. no. You can never tell what a woman really wants. But you're a woman. Well, that's how I know. Oh. Jerome, I hope you'll forgive me for butting in, but are you talking about any particular woman? Yeah, Florence Prince. She's gone all swoony over that icky Bobby Kent. Oh, she too, huh? And who's Bobby Kent? Bobby Kent's appearing across the street at the theater I'm working at. He's the country's number one bebop singer. Bebop? Yeah. That's a nervous breakdown set to music. Ever since that Kent character hit town, Florence has given me the complete slufferoo treatment. Slufferoo? Yeah, that's bebop for who needs you. Oh. Listen, Florence has every record Kent ever made. And since he started making that personal in town, she sees every performance. And after the theater closes, she locks herself in a room and keeps playing his records over and over again. Well, I don't mean she's gaga about him, Jerome. Yeah, maybe she just likes music. Then why does she burn incense while she's doing it? Oh, this ain't no ordinary garden variety crush officer. Little Florence is a real gone gal. You mean she's giving this nice boy the the slufferoo because that their Kent feller sings hot? Oh, hotter than hot, Chief. When that Kent character sings, they can serve the chocolate bars in Dixie cups. Let Florence have her pretty boy drip. Go ahead and arrest me, officer. She'll be sorry when I come out of jail a hardened criminal. Uh, uh, arrest? Do you wish to press charges, miss? No. I think Jerome's taking enough of a beating officer. Gee, thanks, miss. Okay, Sonny, scram before this nice, kind young lady changes her mind. And drive carefully. Carefully? Yeah, you don't want to get killed, do you? You do want to live. What's so special about living? (laughs) Well, miss, I guess you'd better get back to your job. There's nothing we can do about the kid's love life. Here, I'll walk you across the street. Thanks, officer. I am still a little wobbly. (laughs) Too bad about Jerome, isn't it? He's a nice kid. Yeah, if I were that girl's father, I'd shoot that Bobby Kent. Yeah. Say, I wonder. You wonder what? Well, I get a couple of hours off from ushering later. Suppose I talk to Kent. You know, explain about Jerome and Florence. Maybe he could do something. Well, like what? Well, I don't know. Maybe straighten this Florence out. Send her back to Jerome and Chocolate Sundays. I'm really worried about that boy, Chief. Oh, but he's a total stranger, miss. You wouldn't go out of your way to help somebody you never met before, would you? After all, he could have broke your back. But he didn't. He just broke my heart. Doodly, uh, uh, I'm coming. Oh, yes, miss? Uh, Mr. Kent. Oh, uh, you are the Bobby Kent, aren't you? Who else? What can I do for you, chick? My autograph, certainly. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Kent. Oh, my picture, then. Well, they're a dollar. The handler cost a mail on and stuff. I make very little on them, you know. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Kent. It's it's uh, it's just something to make a poor, lovesick kid live happily ever after. Okay, but it'll just have to be a kiss on my forehead. <clears throat> Look, chum. I don't want to cut in on that big love affair you're having with you. And I know I'm being a news. Oh, you're from the newspaper. Love my, love my, love my. Come in, Miss... Uh, uh, Maisie uh, Revere. Ah, and, oh, what can I do for you, Miss Revere? My life story, certainly. I was born in a little log cabin, not unlike Abe Lincoln. And when my father first saw uh, me, Mr. he Kent, said... Mr. Kent, I've come on more of a personal mission. Well, he said... Uh, oh, hmm. you're not here for a story. You're hmm. Just interested in Bobby Kent, the man. Yeah. So grow up, will you? Oh, the fiery type. Hey, I like that. How about 
dinner tonight, hmm? No, tonight I'm having dinner with my husband. Oh. Mm. Well, let's make it after dinner. Hmm? Uh, Mr. Kent, I came here to ask you a favor. Oh, a benefit. Well, sort of. Now, here's the situation. A certain boy named Jerome is in love with a girl called Florence, but she won't even look at him since you came to town. Oh, yeah, but that happens everywhere. Oh, uh, I'm sure it does. So one girl more or less wouldn't make that much difference to you. Uh, Mr. Kent, do you suppose you could tell Florence that you can't stand silly bebop schmoes? But that would be bad publicity. Oh, on the contrary, it'd be great publicity. I can see the headlines now. Bobby Kent, nation's foremost bebopster, spurns all 16-year-old girls. You'll make millions of friends. Of who? Well, of all 16-year-old boys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boys like records, too. You'll make a million dollars. Yeah, then I'll be able to give up bebop singing and go in for what I'm really destined uh. for. Opera. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Hello, Florence. I haven't seen you here at Brown since... It's merely a coincidence, Mr. Smertzkebroigen. I just chanced in here. What chance? Gosh, Florence, how can you be so aloof? You know what they were just playing on the jukebox? What? Our song. Yours, perhaps, Mr. Smertzkebroigen. My song happens to be Bobby Boy's dreamy theme ballad. Oh, he's real gone. I wish he was gone for good. So long, Florence. As far as I'm concerned, our engagement is over. Goodbye forever. Goodbye. I'll see you again tonight, maybe, huh? You will if you happen to be in the audience at any of Bobby Kent's performances. That does it. We're really through. I'm going to call up Clara Drunk. So who's stopping you? Well, this is Browse Drugstore, Bobby. Uh, can you recognize Florence? Well, hardly. I've never seen her. Oh. Um, say, Jerk. <clears throat> I mean, Soda Jerk. Yeah, miss? Uh, do you know a girl called Florence who's that way about a kid called Jerome? You mean was that way about Jerome? Now she's gaga about a guy called Bobby Kent. I don't know what she sees in that guy. Blind fool. Say, you're Kent, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Kent, would you do me a favor? Oh, I certainly. Drop dead. Now, look here, you, Miss Revere, did you hear what this kid told me? Yeah, to do? but oh, please I... hold off till we straighten out Florence. Is she here, Bob? That's her, miss, the one at the newsstand drooling at little Bobby's puss in a fan mag. Hmm. She don't look the type. She looks almost bright. Well, oh, Florence. Florence. Yeah? Here she comes, Bobby. Now, remember, you got to make her hate the sight of you. Okay, but this ain't going to be easy. She's got eyes, you know. Oh. You call me, miss? Hello, Florence. Oh! She recognizes you. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, I couldn't help it. You're so handsome, so debonair, so exciting. Get excited, Bobby. Wait, she hasn't finished yet. Oh, brother. Oh, gee, wait till the other girls hear that I actually, really and truly, honest to goodness, met Bobby Kent. I'm president of our local Bobby Kent fan club. President and scream leader. Get going, Bobby. Figaro, Figaro, you remember? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, so you're one of those silly kids that faint and scream and stuff like that there when I sing, huh? <laughs> so long now. Just a minute. Me, a silly kid? Well, I didn't mean exactly silly, is, but... Is that all you have to say, Mr. Kent? Well, it's all I rehearsed. Rehearsed? And Mr. Kent also forgot that he thought you were a dope. Me? A dope? But in a charming way. Look who's calling me a dope. An ignoramus like you. At least I went to school, stupid. And Bobby said you came out stupid, too. I did? Hey, that's pretty clever of me. Maybe I'll become a comedian instead, huh? Mr. Kent, I think you're just conceited, horrible, disgusting. No, just a second. Don't, Don't interrupt Bobby. She hasn't finished yet. I hate you. hate you. To think I gave up a nice, sweet boy like Jerome to dedicate my life to a drip like you. Well, Clara said she'd be delighted. <laughs> Lawrence, what are you crying about? Jerome, this, this Kent creature insulted me. He did, huh? Put up your hand, goon. Well, if you insist, Maisie, hold my mirror. Jerome, up. don't. Everything's straightened out. Except Bobby, boy, and I'm going to straighten him out right on the floor. Oh, well, I... Jerome, smash him. I will. Somebody hold my bubble gum. Here I come, chum. <clears throat> oh. Well, that's that. Now, will somebody please pick me up? Oh, Jerome, you're, you're solid and so strong. Strong. Gosh, that breakfast food really does what they say, doesn't it? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Bobby. Are you hurt? Well, I never look much with this eye anyway. Well, that's what I get for trying to get a girl to fall out of love with me and go back to her local yokel. What? Bobby, you'll spoil everything. You did that for me, Bobby? Oh, 
Oh, you wonderful. Sacrificing yourself, just like in the movies. Oh, well, Jerome, you really did it. Did what? Gosh, one minute it's me, then it's him. Women sure are peculiar. Come home with me, Bobby, darling. I'll put a beefsteak on your poor, dear, beautiful... But, Florence, quiet. She hasn't finished yet. Oh, gorgeous eye. Come on, Bobby, Mia. Well, Jerome, you sure messed that up good. I don't know what it's all about. Now Florence goes for that tent fella more than ever. She'll never even look at me again. Well, don't worry, Jerome. Girls like that will be falling for guys like you long after men like Bobby Kent have died, but not before. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. folks and line up two abreast along the curb. No pushing, lady. You'll get in to see Bobby Kent. Line up along the curb, please. Madam, you can't sneak in there. You'll have to get to the end of the line. Oh, the end of the line? Well, where is it, miss? Not too far, madam. Just go down to the corner, walk one block north, two blocks south, then a block east, and then three blocks west. Miss, will we all get in to see Bobby? Oh, hello, Miss Revere. Oh, hello, Jerome. You waiting to hear drool boy, too? Yeah, I had to see for myself what he's got that I ain't got that I wish he'd lend me some night when he ain't using it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, Jerome. But whatever he's got, he could make a fortune with it if he put it in bottles. Uh, Miss Revere, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I, I mean about lousing up your act at the drugstore. Yeah, it almost worked, didn't it? Uh, you and Florence still no speaky? Still know nothing. Oh. My life is finished. All I have are my memories. Well, they should keep you warm this winter. Girlie, I'm sorry, but you'll have to get to the end of the line. Oh, Miss, I've warned the manager all day today. You'll have to keep this crowd from overflowing into the street and blocking traffic. Oh, hello, Maisie. Hello, officer. I'm doing my best, but it ain't easy to handle this Kent happy mob. Yeah, I know. Since that guy opened here, my wife's been too busy running to the theater to cook me a meal. You too, officer? Oh, you, Jerome. Hey, Maisie, did you work on that bebopper like you said? Uh Uh-huh. Any luck? Well, get a load of the expression on Jerome's face. Yeah, no luck. Mm. Gosh, something should be done about that Kent guy. Yeah, we could write to Congress and have him declared unconstitutional. I told you, Miss, end of the line. Gee, you must have eyes in the back of your head. It's criminal, that's what it is. That little girl, she couldn't be more than 12 and standing in back of the line all night to hear a crooner. Somebody should talk to her mother. Well, go ahead, Chief. Her mother's at the front of the line. Florence is out of my life for keeps now. I heard that Bobby Kent promised to make her president of all the Bobby Kent drool clubs in America. Oh, no. Not Florence. Yeah, you'd think that a man like Kent would go more for, well, somebody, you, you know. Uh... Yeah. Say, that's it. Another girl. Huh? Come here, fellas. Got an idea. Yeah? Over here, fellas. What? Okay, Maisie. What goes? Look, kids. Girls all over the country write to Bobby Kent, Right. Right, but he never answers them. Maybe he can't write. Oh, just listen, please. Suppose, just suppose, mind you, that one girl did write an answer. And we had the letter. In Kent's handwriting. Well, how'd we get one? Well, I have a copy of his handwriting. Got an autograph to show my grandchildren. I wanted them to see what a dangerous age their grandma lived in. You mean write a letter supposedly from Kent? All fair in love and war, Chief, and this is both. Now, if a certain girl happened to have one of those letters... A real hot love letter. Mm-hmm. One that would steam the envelope open by itself. Well? Yeah. yeah. Now, here's how we'll all go about it. After Kent's last performance, he'll probably be in his dressing room. Well, Florence will be there for a while. They're going to work out plans to put the Bobby Kent fan clubs on an international basis. Oh, I see. Sort of a UNB bop, huh? <laughs>
Yes, miss. Can I help you? Yes. I want the sloppiest, biggest sweater you got to hang down to my bobby saw. She wants to look as close to 15 as possible. Oh, a masquerade party? More of a hunting trip. Oh, well, miss, here's the biggest sweater we have in the shop. Care to try it on? Yeah. Just drop it over my head. Oh, certainly. There you are. Gosh, that sure looks big, Miss Revere. <laughs> oh. Well, it's fine around the knees. I'll take it, miss. Yes, miss. Even that don't make you look, well, 16, Miss Revere. Oh, I will when I get my hair do did up in real cute makeup. Uh, here's your sweater, Miss. Thanks. And when I get working on that Bobby Kent, he'll be so gaga about me, he'll want to hug and kiss me. Will that be all, Miss? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Mr. Kent, it was sure super keen of you to invite me to your dressing room to, to discuss things and imagine you making little insignificant me president of all the Bobby Kent fan clubs in America. I'll think nothing of it, Chick. If you're a nice little girl, I might even turn over Canada and Alaska to you. Let's see who it is, Chick. Yes, Maestro. Golly, I hope whoever it is won't stay long. Oh, hello, Miss. You looking for somebody? Oh, sure enough, sure enough, am, honey child. I've come to see my drool boy. Drool boy? Mm-hmm. That's what we call him down south. Up here in enemy territory, he's known as Bobby Kane. Oh, you looking for me, girlie? Oh, drool boy, sugar pie, it's me. Maisie Bell, Ulysses Grant Lee. Ulysses Grant Lee? Mm-hmm, after my grandpappy, sugar. He was a part-time soldier in the war, remember? Fought days for the north and nights for the south. Oh, golly, you sure look as pretty to me as a mess of sour belly stew and a pot of goose grease. Are you sure we've met before, Chick? Am I sure? Yeah. Well, honey pie, don't you remember me from your fan club back in Tennessee? Remember the gals that wore the Bobby socks and no shoes? Well, Miss Lee, as a fellow worshiper at the shrine of Bobby Kent, I've got some good news for you. It's about the presidency of all the Bobby Kent fan clubs. Oh, them platinum tonsils here told you all about choosing me all as president of his fan club, you all. But, but he just appointed me president. Well, honey, he couldn't have chosen you over me. Why, just look at you. Your sweater isn't even sloppy. It is, too. But not like mine. Mine's a mess. Uh, just a minute. There must be some mistake. Yes, and I'd like to find out once and for all who made it. And so would well, I. Well, 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 I have proof, honey lamb, sugar pie, little mint julep. I got a letter that you sent me direct to my home in Georgia. Georgia? But a moment ago you said you came from Tennessee. Oh, did I? Well, you... Well, you've heard of those old rambling southern mansions. Yes. Well, I was really rambled. Now, this has gone far enough. I never wrote you a letter offering you the presidency of my fan clubs, and I can prove it. But I declare, honey, you sure have a mighty short memory. What? Why, well, here's a letter right here. A uh, letter? Let uh, me read it, Bobby. Your eyes may be as weak as your memory. Dear Maisie Bell, honey, sugar, sweetheart, darling. Well, you all better skip the first five pages and get to the beginning of the letter. I'll say, this is ridiculous. I'll don't... never forget those nights on your plantation when you took me in your arms and whispered tenderly, Maisie Bell, will you promise to be president of all my fan clubs? Yours very beboppy, Bobby Passionflower Kent. Well. Now, I never wrote such a stupid letter. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cute. You didn't write it, huh? Well, this looks exactly like your handwriting. But gee, thanks. Oh, I mean, it is. Oh, look, baby girl, chick, honey. You know you're the only girl for me, Gladys, don't Gladys. you? Gladys? My name is Florence. I keep thinking this is Detroit. Now, look, baby, I can explain. No explanation uh, is necessary, Mr. Kent. I'm going back to drool over Frankie Lane or somebody. Hello, Florence. Jerome. I just happened to be passing the theater, and I thought I'd drop by and apologize to Mr. Kent for punching him in the nose. Don't apologize, Jerome. Just punch him in the eye. No, no, don't. So long, folks. I'm going back to my hotel and have a good cry. I'm awful sorry for both of us, Florence, honey. But if it'll make you feel any better, you all can have the honor of being the president of the Bobby Kent Sand Club. I used to think he was solid, but I didn't think it was only between the ears. No, I'm through with Bobby Kent and all singers. All I want now is Jerome. If you'll forgive me for being such a silly drip. Oh, you're not a silly drip, Florence. You're a wonderful drip. I mean, you're... you're rare. Well, I, I guess you two kids want to smooch for a spell. 
So I'll scram out and leave you to your spark. And I'll just turn on Bobby Boy's radio before I go. Romance without music ain't nothing, no time, no place, no how. And now we bring you America's latest singing sensation, Floyd Boyd. Floyd Boyd! Maisie, you hear that? Now she's gone on him. Quiet, Jerome. Sing it, Floydy Boy, sing it. They're all alike, sooner or later. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. what makes a woman tick. I guess we're all romanticists. We go for a lock of curly hair that just won't stay put, a shy smile that makes you feel the fellow should be mothered. But some of those fellows who look like they need a mother, oh, brother. <laughs> it's funny, though. All girls have a crush or two. They moan and drool, put silly stuff in their diaries. But when the time comes to get married, they always pick on a plain, ordinary, nice, sensible fellow. And then they moan and drool about new idols. But there's a difference this time. They don't put the stuff down in their diaries, if they're smart. I think the real trouble with wives and husbands, too, is that they don't appreciate what they got. The grass always looks greener on the other side. Grass, huh? That being married and having a couple of kids ain't hay, either. I know if I had my choice, I'd rather have a husband who comes home every night and buries his face in a newspaper... And one of those Hollywood glamour boys who comes home and buries his face in the mirror. <laughs> I ain't saying that you can't dream about those handsome Bill picture stars. <gasps> Which reminds me. <laughs> I gotta get home and get to sleep. I got a dream left open from last night with Ben Johnson that I want to finish. just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical On the Town, starring Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Betty Garrett, and Ann Miller. (laughs) Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Hans Conrad, Gloria McMillan, Gil Stratton, Frank Gerstle, Jerry Hausner, Barney Phillips, and Virginia Agnello. Jack McCoy speaking. Remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer.
Now here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere from Brooklyn, USA. I remember I used to live near the river, and there was a view from our window. On a clear day, you could look out and see the laundry hanging out in the line. The boarding house I'm living in now ain't no Shangri-La either, and it's pretty far from Brooklyn, too. But my room is clean and the other boarders are nice, especially Eddie Jordan. Eddie's got educated brains, too. He knows everything. History, geometry, mathematics, and you'll pardon the expression, physics. Everything that guy knows, except how to make a living and how to keep a date. I haven't seen Eddie in a couple of weeks now. We had a fight, you see, and it was all my fault. But he apologized, so I forgave him. Now I'm sorry, Eddie, again. He's made dates with me night after night, and he's always standing me up. And after last night, I'm really burning up at him. Oh, pardon me. There's somebody pummeling on my door. Pummeling. That's the word Eddie taught me. Gosh, the things that man knows. Come in. Hello, Maisie, honey. Oh. Hello, Edward. What's the matter, sugar? You're looking at me as if you never saw me before. Oh, I've seen you before, but not lately. Where were you last night? I thought we had a date to watch television. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. Well, that's all right, Eddie. I watch the shows by myself. But believe me, it wasn't very romantic standing in front of the window of that radio store with utter strangers. Uh, look, honey... And in the rain, too. It was terrible. Well, I can explain why I didn't meet you, baby. I was in the library, wrapped up in Brown's hydrodynamics. Well, you're lucky. I didn't even have a slicker. That's a book on engineering, Maisie. I've been studying it for three weeks now. You see, Professor Brown has a new theory on making suspension oh, structures. Oh, why don't you forget that engineering stuff, Eddie? You ain't made a dime at it. And all you got for four years of college is a hunk of paper that says, to whom it may concern. But, Maisie... And if you ask me, to whom it may concern, don't seem to be very concerned. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Well, gee, I, I ain't saying that being an engineer ain't nice, but... Eddie, you got a job? Could be. Oh, that's wonderful... How much? Well, the salary, I'd say about $75. $75 a week? Mm -hmm. Eddie, we're millionaires. Oh, kiss me, John D. Mm. Come in. Hey, matey, do you, you, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, pardon me. Sit down, mate, and we'll be through soon. Oh, mm -hmm. Maisie. Eddie. Mm -hmm. I can come back later, Maisie. I sort of feel a little bit in the way. Oh, no, Merton. And I want you to be the first to hear the good news. Eddie's got a job. No. Well, congratulations, yeah. Ed. Well, I'm afraid congratulations are a little premature. Premature? Yeah. Premature. Wait a minute. I have to... Oh, you don't have to look it up in the dictionary, Maisie. Uh, that means uh, I, I don't have the job uh, yet. You don't? But I thought you... No, it's this way, honey. There is a draftsman's job open with the Bradley Engineering Company. The Bradley Company? Uh, Say, that's a real big outfit. They employ about a hundred people. With me, it'll be a hundred and one. That is, if old man Bradley likes my bridge. Eddie Jordan, what has your teeth got to do with getting a job? Uh, honey, that's why I was tied up to the library last night. Oh. Bradley advertised in the Engineer's Journal that he would award a job to the engineer who came up with the best sketch of a new suspension bridge that his company's contracted to erect over the river. And you won it? <laughs> That's a stupid question, isn't it, Maisie? Yeah, stupid question. Did you win it, Eddie? No, but I'm going to. I got a swell idea from reading Professor Brown's new book last night. And, honey, I've got a sneaking suspicion that it's just what the doctor ordered. Oh, you, you mean when Bradley gets a load of your sketch, he's bound to give you the job? That's right, Merton. Gosh, I'm so happy I could kiss you. Oh, please, Eddie, you're an engaged man, practically. He means me. Oh, well, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, but I've still got some work to do on that sketch. I'm going to need the professor's book for reference. I'll see you when I get back from the library. Oh, but, honey, couldn't I go with you? I get so lonesome being here by myself. Oh, I'll stay with you, Maisie. I don't get that kind of lonesome. Oh. Uh, look, honey, I've got to get that sketch into Mr. Bradley by tomorrow morning. The competition closes then. See you later, babe. Mm -hmm. I've got to pick up my notes in my room and get to that library. Mm -hmm. And I hope Gladys hasn't loaned out that book. Yeah, I hope Gladys hasn't loaned out that... Gladys? Yeah, Maisie, that's the librarian's name. Gladys Hornswoggledorf. 
Well, I guess I don't have to worry about leaving Eddie alone with anybody with a name like that. She's probably one of those dried-out old maids with a face like a prune, huh? Uh-uh. No prune? No prune. Oh. What's she like, Mert? Well, she's, um, quote... Unquote. Oh. And Eddie calls her by her first name, too. Yeah. Well, well that don't mean anything, Maisie. Mm, no, I guess that don't mean anything. Well, I've got my notes. I'm off to the library. Uh, just a minute, Eddie. I'll get my hat. Get your hat? What for? I just remembered. I haven't read a book in years. <laughs> Maisie, not so loud. We're in a library. Well, I didn't say anything, Eddie. People are trying to read, and your shoes bother them. Well, they bother me, too. I'll never buy shoes on sale again. Shh! Eddie, there's a strange man trying to talk to me. Oh, he just said, shh. What? Shh! Please, this is a library. I know, I can tell by all the books. Maisie, shh. That's much better. Over here, Maisie. Hmm. She's pretty, isn't she, Eddie? Who is? Gladys. Look, Maisie, I don't know what's cooking in that beautiful head of yours, but this is a library. I only come here to get books. Technical books. I'm working on a bridge. I've got plans. That's why I came along. I want to find out what those plans are. Please. If you folks want to stay here, you'll have to be more quiet. Oh, sure, Gladys. Oh. So this is Gladys, huh? Shh. Please, Miss. Some people come in here to read, and other people come in here for other reasons. Maisie, are you out of your mind? What? Answer the man, lady, so we can all go back to our silly reading. Oh, shut up. Miss, this is a library. You'll have to whisper. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, mister. Yeah? Shut up. Please. Now, if you can't be quiet, I'll have to ask you both to leave. Uh, Sure, sure. Don't mind Maisie Gladys. So you're the girl Eddie told me so much about. Yes. And you're the girl he told me so little about. Uh, Gladys, I'd like to take out something. Oh, sure, Eddie. Oh, don't get so excited, Gladys. You're not the something he'd like to take out, I hope. Uh, I'm talking about a book. I was using it yesterday. Professor Brown's Theory of Hydrodynamics. Oh, it hasn't been loaned out yet, Eddie. You'll find it back in the technological section, as usual. Uh, Thanks. I'll be right back, Maisie. Uh, I'd like to take out a book, too. Oh. Anything particular in mind, honey? No. Just something to walk around with on my head. I want to improve my posture. Oh. Oh, yes. Eddie. Yes? A new book on suspension bridges just came in. Yes. It's way back in the last aisle. In case you're interested, I'd be glad to go with you. Uh, Never mind, dearie. I think we can get along without you. But it's pretty dark back there, if you know what I mean. (laughs) That's why we can get along without you, if you know what I mean. Come on, Eddie. Eddie. Please, Maisie, don't bother me. Can't you see I'm working? Well, the library's no place to work, Eddie. You got your Professor Brown's book, so how's about coming back to the boarding house if you have to scribble things on paper? These aren't scribblings, Maisie. They're rough plans for that bridge sketch. I have to have it tomorrow for Mr. Bradley, remember? Well, why can't you take the book home and work on the plans there? Well, well, you won't be disturbed by looking up. Looking up? Yeah, at that Gladys. Maisie, when I look up, I'm just thinking. Yeah, but I ain't so sure I like what you're thinking. Oh, for heaven's sake, Maisie, please let me study. You be quiet. Shut up. Don't you talk to my... Don't you dare talk to my girl like that. Gee, he really loves me. This has gone far enough. What's the matter, Jealous? You're creating a disturbance. I'll have to ask you two to leave. Uh, But the book I haven't finished. I'm sorry, Eddie. But you know the rules. Yeah. Uh, Come on, Maisie. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. I didn't think. That's your trouble. You never think. Now I may never get to finish that bridge sketch. Maisie, I could shoot you. Well, I deserve it, honey. 
but I'm afraid shooting is out. Too bad. Yeah, you'll have to use a bow and arrow. A gun is too noisy for a library. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern, will continue in just a moment. I'm sorry about giving you that bum steer about Eddie and that librarian. This whole mess is my fault. No, it's mine, Merton. I guess I'm just a drip. Huh? And like all drips, I'm just something you can keep hearing and can't turn off. If I'd have just kept my mouth shut, Eddie could have had that book he needs so much to finish the plans of that bridge. Oh, don't feel that way, Maisie. Well, Eddie will get over it. He'll take you back. After what I did to him, he'd have to be out of his mind to take me back. Well? I don't aim to go through life with a crazy man. Uh, Come in. Oh, Eddie, it's you. Yeah. I wish it weren't. Eddie, where are I'm you? not talking to you. Oh. Merton. Hmm? Ask him where has he been. Okay. Eddie, where have you been? Hmm. Maisie, he says, hmm. Hmm? Eddie, she says, hmm. Tell her I used a little political pull and I got myself a library card to take out technical books. Oh, you did? Maisie, he said he thought... I heard him. Gosh, Eddie, now you can take out that book. Yeah, tell him. She says, yeah. But I just came from the library and somebody else took out the book. Tell her. And Maisie, he oh, just... Oh, but this is an emergency. Can't you go to that somebody and borrow the book till tomorrow, tell him? Uh, yeah, Eddie, uh, what she said, can't you? Bill Maddox is the one that borrowed it. He went to engineering school with me. Well, that makes it easier, don't it? Hmm. Merton. Hmm? Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. That makes it easier, don't it, Eddie? Yeah, for Bill to get that job with old man Bradley. That book had all my notes on the bridge sketch in it. You mean he's going to submit your sketch tomorrow to Bradley as his own? Probably. Tell her. Oh, let's stop this tell him game. This is serious. She says, let's stop this oh, tell him game. Shut, this up. Is... shut up. Shut Oh. Eddie, he can't do that. But he is, darling. Little Billy Boy has taken a room at the Brighton Hotel, a nice quiet room, where he can work without anybody bothering him. But he shouldn't get that job. He's not as smart as you. He's smarter. He has no girlfriend. Oh, mm. gosh. Well, ain't there nothing we can do? Ain't there nothing to keep him from turning in that sketch to Bradley in the morning? Oh, sure. Bill could suddenly get a nervous breakdown. And I know just the little woman who could bring it on, but fast. <gasps> Say, that's a wonderful idea, Eddie. I said something? Merton. Huh? Yeah. I I'm going to need your help. What? Can you get hold of a bellhop's uniform? A bell? Oh, yeah, sure. I know one of the fellas at the Brighton Hotel. We once double dated with a couple of chambermaids and bellhop's uniform? Yeah, for you. Maisie, oh. what's cooking in that head of yours? Don't ask questions, Eddie. Just get to work. C can you remember enough of that bridge sketch to get it down on paper by tomorrow? Yes, but Bill Maddox has a head start. He's bound to get his finished and submitted before mine if given half a chance to concentrate. Yeah, but he ain't going to get a chance, honey. Here's one little chambermaid who's going to drive him so crazy he won't be able to finish. Come on, Mert. Oh, good evening, sir. And what can I do for you? 
Don't shout. I'm a sick man. Terrible headache. I, I'd like a room, a quiet one. Do you have a reservation? I'm Philip J. Bradley. He, not the Mr. Bradley of the Bradley Engineering Company. Yes. I want a room just for the night. I can't sleep in my home. There's a cricket out in the garden someplace, and the noise is driving me crazy. Oh, well, there's always room for you at the Brighton Hotel, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> uh, you sign here. Okay. Oh, my head. I can't stand the roar of that pen scratching. I'm a sick man. I can't stand any noise. Headache, terrible headache. Uh, Mr. Bradley, I can let you have room number 701. Now, I'm sure you'll find it very quiet because the gentleman who has the room above you, Mr. Bill Maddox, also insisted on quiet. So I know you won't be disturbed. Are you sure? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mr. Maddox is going to be very busy working tonight. He's doing some drawing. Well, I hope he uses a soft pencil. In my condition, the slightest sound makes my temples throb. I'll take that room. Good. No, stop that awful clanging. I can't stand it. Sorry, boy, I'm sorry. Boy, boy, take Mr. Bradley up to room 701. Oh, oh, come in. Mr. Maddox, Mr. Bill Maddox. Eh? Uh, I'm the chambermaid here. I just wanted to find out whether you're comfortable. Oh, yeah, well, oh, very, miss. Oh, that's fine. We always like to have people who stay at the hotel yes, very comfortable. Well, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll get back to work. You see, I've got a very important bridge sketch I've got to finish. Oh, I used to play bridge one. Miss. Now, if we only had please, a third or a fourth, why would we Please. Huh? Now, this cable goes here. Um. And this one goes... Uh, you know something, Mr. Maddox? Uh, what? You shouldn't sit in that straight-back chair. That rocking chair is much more comfortable. Miss Cable. Uh, miss, I can't work in a rocking chair. Rocking makes me sleepy. Well, it won't rock if it was nailed to the floor. You look, Miss, I'm busy. Oh, that's really. all right. I... I'm not. Hey, Martin. What do you want, Miss? Say, what is this? Look, Bellhop, will you in this chamber, Miss? Nail the rocker to the floor? You. Certainly. Let's do it, Miss. Yeah, I just happen to have a hammer and nails with me. Good. Uh-huh. Mm. Ah, hand me another nail, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Now, that's good. Ah, that ought to do it. Yeah, won't budge. Please. Will you please go away now? I'm working. I thought I told you to stop. Well, that ain't us hammering. It must be an echo. A mic. It's coming from room downstairs. Now, look. Look, please. I've got work to do. Now, you two get out of here. Well, okay. Come on, Mike. Oh. At last. Now, now where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. This cable... This cable goes... Yeah, it goes here. And the angle of inclination is... Hello. You again. I'm sorry, but we chambermaids got to spend at least a half an hour in each room. Rules, you know. Okay. Okay. Just sit down. Any place. But be quiet. Sure. Sure. Now... Good. The angle, the angle of inclination is, is the angle. Must you hum, Miss? Well, I got to do something to keep me occupied. Uh, the angle. Come in. I didn't hear any knock. Oh well, no use waiting till the last minute. See, there it is now. Come in. Oh, fine. Good evening, sir. Would you care for a picture of ice water? Oh, get out. Okay. Now, now where have you... Now, where was I? Uh, the, the angle... Uh, You'll be sure to ring me if you change your mind. Get out! I'll never get this sketch finished. The uh, angle... Mr. Maddox, does it annoy you that bad? What? The water dripping from that leaky faucet in the bathroom. I can't even hear it. Oh, of course you can Listen real close. You? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can hear it. Now, it doesn't bother me, no. Oh, but it might. But ain't... A thing like that can get to be very annoying. I'd better go in and fix it. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Anything to get you out of the way. Now, the ang... Now, let's see. Uh, plumbers always start by banging on the pipe. Stop that! Stop that! I did. The dripping is gone. Now I can get back to work. Oh, now it's running. I better hit these pipes some more. Oh, that 
Uh, echo again. Miss. Huh? Miss. Huh? They want you to stop banging down there. Well, that's silly. I'm not banging down there. I'm banging up here. Young man. What the places do you want, you old goat? Oh, goat. I have the room just below you. Who's been pounding on those pipes? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. I've been banging away to get you to stop. And I've been banging away to get you to stop. Copycat. Now, look. I'm trying to get to work on some pipes. And I'm right. trying to get some sleep. And the slightest noise drives me crazy. Well, then why were you hammering downstairs? Why was I hammering? Yes, and stop raising your voice to me. You stop raising your voice to me. I have to. You're taller. <laughs> now, look. Both of you. i got to sketch the finish. So now, out. Out. Fire, out. Fire. 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 I'm getting out yeah, of here. Me too. Oh, my gosh. Where are you going, lady? Where am I going? Didn't you just yell fire? Yeah. Well, where is it? Down the street. I thought them fellas in here might like to go see it. Oh, you're wonderful, Mercy. You too. <laughs> now, where's that book with Eddie Skeppy? Oh, oh Skeppy. Oh. Oh, oh. Here it is, Maisie. Good. I'm going to rush him back to Eddie. Uh-huh. Yeah, but he'll love me even more when he sees how much I helped him in getting that job with Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Gosh, you really mean it, Mr. Bradley? That draftsman job is honest to goodness, mine. Yeah, that's right, Jordan. Your sketch of the suspension bridge was head and shoulders above all the others. You start working this Monday. Gee, gosh. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Bradley. Oh, what I need now isn't thanks, Jordan. It's a new head. The one I have now feels like a B-29 using it for target practice. Uh, uh, Mr. Bradley, sir, do you think you can pull yourself together long enough to meet Maisie? Uh... Maisie? My fiance. Oh, that. Uh, she's waiting outside to hear whether or not I... Well, you know. And now with my new job, we can finally get married. Everything that's happened, I owe to Maisie. Oh, sure, sure. Bring her in, Jordan. I always like to meet the little woman who stands behind the successful man. Thanks. Where do you meet Maisie, boss? You'll just love her. Come in, Maisie. Sure, Ed. Is it, um... Did he... I mean, uh, you know... Uh-huh. Oh, gee, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. Uh, Maisie, honey, I want my boss to meet you. Mr. Bradley, <laughs> this is Maisie Revere. Here, yeah, I'm very glad to meet you, Miss Revere. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. And I, 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 yai, 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 yai. Just a moment, Maisie. There, that voice, it sounds familiar. Uh, wait till I find my glasses. Oh, 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 um, Mr. Bradley, you don't want to cover up those great, big, beautiful eyes with glasses? Oh, they're really not very big. Uh, Maisie, honey, Mr. Bradley was kind enough to want to meet you. And he has a splitting headache, too. He ain't the only one. Let's go, Eddie. But what's the hurry? Yeah, wait a minute. There's something familiar about you. Me? You remind me of a chambermaid last night. She had a peculiar accent, sort of like she came from Brooklyn. Oh, Riley. Oh, utterly, utterly, Riley. Yes. Hmm. Uh, By Joe, that is rather a carry. Maisie, honey, Mr. Bradley's going to pay me $85 a week. $85? Uh-huh. I mean, uh, why, that's almost 40 pounds, Bob. Well, uh, do you think you and Eddie here can afford to get married on that, Miss Revere? Oh, can we? It's a pipe. Well, I'm... Pipe. Pipe. Uh, why, you're the one who was banging away at those pipes. Maisie. Uh, out, Jordan, and take this walking Chinese torture cell with you. But, but the job... Yeah, what about the job? Yeah! That's what I was afraid of. Out! Out! Then if I never see either of you again, I thank you! Uh. Well, Maisie? Eddie, honey, I didn't suspect... I, well, I didn't know that... Maisie you... Revere, answer me this. How can you get everybody so mad at you? How can you get into so much trouble? How can you pull so many boners in one day? It's easy, Eddie. I get up early. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
now, once again, here's Maisie. Well, that job was pretty close for Eddie. But as the janitor said to the man who just missed the cuspidor, close isn't good enough. I tried, though. But as the saying goes, there's a certain place that's paved with good intentions. And the way Eddie feels now, I bet he wishes I was down there paving. But am I worried that Eddie won't forgive and forget? Am I afraid that he's mad enough to call off our engagement? <laughs> You're darn tootin' I am. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Frank Nelson, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGeehan, Gerald Moore, and Jack Edwards. Jack McCoy speaking. Hiya, babe. Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> you all remember metro golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Anne Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. I was born in Brooklyn in 1900 and... Well, I was born in Brooklyn. You know, there's an old saying that clothes make the man. But I got a little story that proves that clothes also make the woman, if you know what I mean. It all started back in London, England. I'd gone over there with a musical review called Humpty Dumpty. Well, if you think Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall, you should have seen our flop. So there I was, stranded in London, and broke as usual. Luckily, I managed to get a job as a model at one of them hoity-toity dress saloons. Uh, I mean, salons that catered strictly to women born with silver spoons in their mouths. Well, one day, a couple of us mannequins were modeling gowns for one of them stuffy title dames. And uh, this, Ladies Five, is a creation of which Turnbull and Company is especially proud. I should like to call your ladyship's attention to the plunging neckline. I shouldn't think it would be necessary to call anyone's attention to the neckline, Mr. Turnbull. Plunging, indeed. It looks to me as if it were torpedoed. Remove it from my sight at once. Oh, but your ladyship, this is an exact replica of what has been worn in America. Mr. Turnbull, what is considered quite the thing in the colonies does not interest me in the least. Remember, I am an Englishwoman, not an Indian. And if you have nothing more suitable to show me, I'll oh, just... We do, your ladyship. We've just scads and scads and scads of the very latest, the very, very, very latest. Uh, next, please, next, please. Come on, come on, come on now. 
But while the next model paraded in front of her royal hastiness, I peeked through the curtains to get a closer look. And this gown, your ladyship, we consider poetry. Sheer poetry. I consider it waste, sheer waste. Kindly remove it from my sight. <laughs> yes, your ladyship, at once. Nothing seemed to please this warmed-over Yorkshire pudding. Her reaction to each gown model was the same. One nostril went up like she was trying to smell something, and the other one looked like she had just smelled it. Too bad, too, because she was young and beautiful. Next, please. Miss Revere. Her ladyship is waiting. Oh, coming, Mr. Tanville, coming. Ah, your lish. Here we have the very ultimate in gowns for la danse. Chic, revealing, and uh, yet it uh, exercises a certain restraint. I should like to examine it a bit closer. Come here, girl. Oh, sure, Lady Smith. If you don't mind, girl, my name is not Smith. It is Lady Smythe. Oh, sorry, forgive me. I mean, forgive me, Lady Smythe. Miss Rivera, if you don't mind, I believe her ladyship would like to see the back. Oh, right oh. There you are, Lady Smythe. Ah, oh, I see you are impressed. Nauseated is more descriptive of my reaction, Mr. Stonewall. Nauseated. That gown leaves hardly anything to the imagination. But your ladyship, after all, an evening gown is your... It's like a picket fence. It's supposed to protect the property and not obstruct the view. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, very well put, Miss Rivera, very well indeed. So. Don't you think so, your ladyship? If you really want to know the vulgarity of this person herself... A uh, little fur chapeau also comes with it. Yes, your ladyship, and it's just your type, too. Skunk. <gasps> well, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Well, maybe you should be, dearie, so you'll know how it feels to take it instead of just dishing it out. Miss Rivera, her ladyship is a customer here. I demand that this uncouth... Person be discharged at once. You do not have to demand, kiddo. I know I'm getting the gate, and I needed this job too. But I also need my self-respect too. Self-respect, indeed. And what would you Americans know about respect? Well, that cuts it. Now sit back and listen, Smitty. Mr. Turnbull, are you going to stand by and hear me insulted? Well, oh, frankly, I hadn't planned on it, Your Ladyship. But uh, now that you've mentioned it. I do believe I'd rather enjoy it. <laughs> Carry on, Miss Rivera. <laughs> aye, aye, chum. Mr. Turnbull, I will never purchase another thing in this shop. You never have, your ladyship. Well, I've never been talked to in this way in my life. In all circles. Well, that's just the trouble with your circle. Ever since you were born, you've been traveling in one. What? You never gave anything. Just I... took what you thought was coming to you. In other words, you and your kind are just... Just... Parasites? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Turnbull. Oh, keep at it, Miss Rivera. You're doing quite well. Or, uh, as you say in America, you're uh, cooking with petrol. Hmm. Lady Smythe, I've been around quite a bit. I've seen a lot of this world. And when you really get down to it, the only difference between rich people and poor people is that rich people are only poor people with money. Are you quite finished, Miss Rivera? Quite. Thank you. Good day. Oh, oh. oh, well, I, I guess I might as well get off my soapbox, Mr. Turnbull. I'm, I'm sorry I ruined a sale for you. Not at all, Miss Rivera. I enjoyed the, uh, <laughs> the ruining immensely. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to lay it on so thick, but... Oh, but if I may be permitted to make a comment, some of those things that you implied were quite true. But why you were haranguing Lady Smythe, Miss Rivera, I had an idea which I would like very much to discuss with you Later. Later? Why not now? Oh, come, come. We can't possibly discuss it now. It's, it's five o'clock. It's, it's time for tea. Oh, yes. One mustn't miss tea, must one. How would this table do, Monsieur Turnbull? Ideal, Henri, ideal. Don't you think so, Miss Rivera? Well, um, frankly, I'd feel less conspicuous in a corner someplace, Mr. Turnbull. Everybody seems to be staring at us right here in the center of the joint. I, I mean, restaurant. Well, that's exactly why I asked Henri to seat us here. You are, uh, constructed to, uh, track the eye. This Henri. Ah, very certainement, monsieur. Oh, gracias, monsieur. Well, uh, 
Now that we are seated, Miss Revere, shall we order first? First? Um... Mr. Turnbull, I, I think I should set you straight before we go any further. Set me straight? I... I, I don't believe I understand, my dear. Well, I... I don't would, monsieur and mademoiselle, care to order now? Well, mademoiselle ain't finished yet. Mr. Turnbull, um, about these clothes I'm wearing. Beautiful, Miss Revere, positively beautiful. The very finest ever created by Turnbull and Company. And on you, my dear, they are positively stunning. N'est-ce pas, Henri? Uh, tout à fait ravissant, mademoiselle. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Turnbull, I agreed to wear this outfit in your shop because you insisted on it. And, well, I'm grateful for a chance to wear nice things. I, I'm, I'm very grateful. Oh, come, 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 my dear. You really owe me nothing. Good. Now that that's cleared up, let's eat. <clears throat> well, I, I believe we shall order now, Henri. Would you care for a spot of tea, Miss Revere? Oh, no. If it's all the same to you, I think I'd prefer a drip of coffee. Very well. One drip of coffee. I'll just have tea. Ah, uh, oui, monsieur. Hmm. See, Mr. Turnbull. An outfit like this is one of the weaknesses of the weaker sex. <laughs> I wish I could always wear clothes like this. You can, Miss Revere. That is what I want to talk to you about. Well... So long, Mr. Turnbull. Oh, no, no, please, Miss Revell. No, don't be foolish. This may be a surprise to you, Sonny, but there are certain items that are not included in Lend-Lease. Miss Revell, look at me. Do I seem like the kind of man that your, that your insinuation suggests? No, but just because the tea kettle don't whistle don't mean that there ain't something cooking inside. Oh, Miss Revell, you are a very attractive woman. You wear clothes divinely. My clothes. Uh-huh. Now, when you entered this restaurant, you caused quite the effect that I had anticipated. The ladies here, they thought you were something other than a professional mannequin. Well, the ladies weren't the only ones who thought that. And the first thing that came into all those women's minds was, where did she get those clothes? That was the second thing that came into their minds. Miss Revere, how would you like to wear clothes like that always? Go to the most exclusive hotels and resorts and have more than enough money not to have to worry about tomorrow. Hmm. No strings? No strings. What's the gimmick? The gimmick? What do I have to do to win this British quiz program? Well, Miss Revere, since the war, barely enough customers have patronized my salon to pay the overhead. Mm -hmm. At one time, the rich came to my salon from all over England. Well, you can't expect that anymore, Mr. Turnbull. Now, the gasoline, I mean, petrol is racing. Even the rich can't afford to travel to Turnbull and Company. Exactly. But there is no reason why Turnbull and Company can't travel to the rich. Oh, you mean sort of a traveling salesman? No, a traveling saleswoman, Miss Revere. In other words, you. Me? <laughs> I never sold clothes in my life. You wouldn't have to sell. You just travel around at my expense to where the rich congregate. Oh, and all I have to do is casually mention where each garment I'm wearing is from, and the price. Exactly. And oh. when the ladies notice how the eyes of their attentive swains and husbands wander from their drab selves to <laughs> your, to your... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, go on, Mr. Turnbull. I, I think I see what you mean. Well, uh, Vanity will find a way to get to my shop in London and to purchase replicas of the clothes that you have literally been modeling. Oh, and for this I'll have all the things I ever wanted to wear. Yes. However, there's a... One slight catch. Well, this is where I came in. I mean, Miss Revere, frankly, many of the best families in England, they don't quite understand Americans. No. You're an actress, I know. I saw you, I saw the show you were in. Oh, so you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, if you would sort of act as if you were British. Oh. Well, well what do you think of this? Oh, how did you know, flute old Vino Rocknoff? Just received word from home that Peter and Mater were run down and killed by a tram. Well, who's the tennis? <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good. Well, Miss Revere, what do you say? Do you accept? Well, um... here's your tea, Monsieur Turnbull. And your coffee, Mamsel. So sorry to inconvenience you, old chap. But I should prefer tea. Tea? Is Mademoiselle changing her order? No, just my nationality. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> 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 
Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Lord Deveridge, I was just in the process of sorting the morning post. There's the usual letter for you, your lordship. From Lady Smythe, I presume. Uh, yes, sir. Tear it up. But, uh, destroy it, sir. Oh, but 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 it's scented. <gasps> oh, the most exotic perfume. Very well, Clark. You may smell it a few more times and then tear it up. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, dear. My only purpose in coming to this dull resort was to escape the obvious marital net that untiring woman seems determined to draw me into. However, I really didn't come here to burden you with L'Affaire Smythe. Would you be kind enough to telephone the groom at the stables and ask him to saddle up that grey stallion, uh, Firefly? Like a good fellow, hmm? Firefly, your lordship? Isn't he a bit, uh, spirited? Quite. Certainly your social staff can conjure up some activities more blood-tingling than whist or pin the tail on the donkey. Oh, but your lordship, Kensington Lodge has always been a vacation resort for, uh, well, people of more advanced years. Perhaps. But if some of your aged guests don't do something besides just sitting around under trees, they're liable to take root. Oh, I'd give ten pounds right now if I could feast my eyes on an exciting, beautiful woman again. Porter, you'll be careful with I my luggage. Say, my entire wardrobe consisting of 34 complete ensembles from Turnbull and Company, 326 Brewery Lane, London, all operations made free, is in there. Clark, I owe you ten pounds. <gasps> oh, she does seem quite a attractive, your lordship. Quite. The American G.I.s had an expression that aptly described that particular type of attractiveness. I believe the phrase was... Um... Oh, the uh, words to that effect. Oh, come, come, chaps. Kindly deposit my luggage at the desk and scamper out of my limousine and help my chauffeur and footman. I mean, feetman. <laughs> I have two, you know. Do help them, will you? Yes, it wants, madam. Oh, Thank you, madam. Oh, not at all, my good chap. Surely you've been given five pound tips before. Five pound tip, your lordship? She must be very wealthy, or American. Hard to tell what she is, with that accent. Yes, set down my hat box here, boy. And be careful. It's just put of my new chateau. <laughs> I mean chapeau. Pardon me, your lordship. Uh, yes, madam, uh, what may we do for you? Oh, uh, good afternoon, clerk. My good friend, Mr. Turnbull of Turnbull and Company, creators of the very artily art and feminine apparel, established in 1925, wired ahead, I do believe, for accommodations. Don't you know? Oh, oh uh, but, but of course, Your Grace. Oh, no. No, I'm Maisie, silly. Maisie Revere. I mean, yes, Lady Revere. If he failed to send the wire, I should be livid, but absolutely livid. <laughs> Lady Revere? Oh, I do hope there's been no mistake. But here's Mr. Turnbull's wire. Kindly book a suite for a Lady Maisie Revere. Oh, gee. The telegraph company left out a comma. It was supposed to say, book a suite for a lady, comma, Maisie Revere. I believe you dropped your glove, Lady Revere. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you were saying, Lady Revere, something about a comma, I believe. Oh, yes, yes, I... I was saying that should I like it here, I should be very glad to come again. <laughs> Didn't you know? Oh, I see. I'm I quite see. certain that you'll enjoy your stay here, Lady Rivia. Um, would you think it too presumptuous of me if I were to ask you to join me for tea? Well, aren't you the pushy one? I am not in the habit of partaking of tea with strangers, my good fellow. Oh. Well, I, um, I'm Lord Anthony Deverish, Lady Rivia. Oh, well, now that we've been introduced, I suppose it's all right. Well, that's very charming of you. Uh, shall we say out on the terrace, um, about 4.30-ish? 
Oh, well, I'm, I'm practically parched, Lord Deverage. Could we perchance make that three thirty-ish? <laughs> delighted, my dear girl, delighted. I merely suggested a later hour to give you ample time to uh, shower or tub. Oh, well, I'm much too, too parched to shower or tub. I believe this time I shall just basin. Uh, yes. <laughs> basin. <laughs> you have a delightful sense of humor, Lady Rivia. I, I'm frightfully glad we've met. Frightfully. Oh, frightfully, don't you know. I just checked with the housekeeper, and I believe your suite is all ready for occupancy. I shall have your luggage brought up immediately. Oh, thank you, my good man. Here, this is for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you indeed. <laughs> I was just going upstairs to my suite to change. Lady Revere, uh, perhaps we can ride up together in the same lift. Hmm? Oh, well, don't you think it might be safer in the elevator? Elevator? Mm. But, oh, isn't that the term used in America for, for lift? Oh, yes. Now that you mention it, I'm afraid I've been going to too many of those cinemas made out there in the colonies. You know, where a girl meets a man one minute and... Yes, and then the, then the next minute he invites her to dine. Yes. Things just don't happen that way in real life. Why, sometimes he doesn't even know what she really is. How true. Mm. And then scarcely two minutes after they've met, the boy and the girl always subconsciously find themselves calling each other by their first names. Yes. Yeah. So untrue to real life, what? Quite untrue. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll meet you at 3.30 for tea, Tony. And I'll be waiting impatiently, Maisie. Well, from the first moment Tony and me sipped our tea together, I knew I was a real gone gal. I forgot that I was just a clothes horse for Turnbull Company, because in the week that followed, Tony treated me like a thoroughbred. Maybe it was the tender way he lifted me onto my horse every time we went riding, and the gentle way he arranged the cushions on my chair after I came back. Maybe it was because for the first time in my life I was treated like a lady, not like just a dame. Oh, I tried to tell him the truth about me several times, but somehow the subject always got changed, or maybe I didn't try hard enough. Anyway, I remember one afternoon out in the terrace, I was having tea with Tony again. He didn't know it, but I was leaving the hotel that night. I'd wired Mr. Turnbull I was coming home and calling the whole arrangement off. Now, while I was sitting there at the table with Tony, I tried to think out the words to tell him that I was an all-American phony and hope that maybe he would understand. Tea, Maisie? Hmm? Oh, you've been miles away. Don't you think it's time to come down to Earth? Yes, down to Earth. Tony. Yes, my dear? Tony, I... 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 Yes? Uh, I think I'll have a cup of tea. Oh, certainly, my dear. You know, you, you seem a bit pale this evening. This tea will brace you up and make you feel like another person. Well, that's exactly my trouble, Tony. Since I've met you, I actually do feel like another person. Oh, Maisie, my darling, I... I was hoping that you thought that way. Because, well, since I've met you... Oh, please, I... Tony. Before you say anything, I'd, I'd like to ask you something. Oh, yes, my dear. Anything your heart desires. Anything. Tony. Yes, my dear. Would you... Would you... Yes? Uh, would you pass the lemon? Oh, certainly, my dear. Yeah. <clears throat> then crump it? No, just squeeze it. Hmm? Yep, um, Maisie, darling, are, are you sure that you're all right? Yes, Tony. I've got to tell you something that's been on my mind since... since... that... that day. Then I have to tell you something, too, Maisie. I've changed my mind about those boy and girl films that they make in Hollywood. Maisie, Please, I... Tony. Me first. Oh, yes, and naturally, my dear. Ladies first, huh? Well, that's the trouble, Tony. I'm not oh, a... Oh, hello, Tony. I do hope I'm not intruding. Pamela, where did you come from? In London, my dear chap. Just thought I'd drop by and claim my letters that you obviously haven't read. Oh, crazy, <laughs> darling. What's happened? What in the world are you doing with that napkin over your face? Oh, the spoon. It stuck me in the eye when I drank my cup of tea. Oh, my poor <laughs> darling. Look, perhaps I can help. Let me see you. Yes, my dear. I should like to see Tony's darling, too. Perhaps that will explain why you haven't replied to my letters. Oh, take your friend away someplace and talk, Tony, and don't bother about me. The spoon isn't stuck in there very deep, you know. Oh, don't be ridiculous, my darling. I wouldn't want any infection to set in. There, now, let Tony remove the napkin, hmm? There's a brave girl. There. Well, 
I do hope it's nothing trivial. <gasps> you! Hello. Pamela, have you and Lady Revere met? Lady Revere! Tony, this girl is an imposter. Pamela, I know you're just a jealous cat, but I will not have you talk in that manner to my fiancé. Fiancé? Tony, are you insane? No, kiddo, I'm the cookie that's insane. But, Maisie, your accent. Is this some sort of a game? Or... Obviously, darling. A game of blind man's bluff. You are obviously the blind man. Yeah, and you just called my bluff. Shall I do the honors, Lady Smythe? Or would you like to tell Lord Deverich the sad story of Maisie Revere, girl Schmo? Schmo? That, I believe, is American for stinker. Well, that's pretty close, honey. But if you don't mind, I'll take it from here. Very well, my dear. Tony, if you want me. And after this, this shop girl finishes her sordid tale, I imagine you will. I'll be at the airport. I'm flying back to London this afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Have a pleasant trip. And be careful that you don't fall off your broom. Maisie. Maisie, I just can't understand any of this. No. It's... No, when, when you're born with everything, I guess it ain't easy. What I've been trying to tell you all along, Lord Devridge, is that I'm just a sort of traveling clothes horse for Turnbull and Company. Oh, so that's the reason for the continual 326 Drury Lane London alterations made by Lil Waite. <laughs> yeah. It was strictly business till I met you. And then, well, I guess the moon got in my eyes. Maisie, you remember those American films we've been talking about? Yeah. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy finds girl. Well, you found me. Believe me, brother, right now I'd like to get lost. Well, I don't want you to get lost, Maisie. There are other films, too, remember? Uh, rich Man Meets Shop Girl. Rich Man Falls for Shop Girl. Shop Girl Goes Back to Shop. But Rich Man Follows Her, and they live happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey, you'd never sell that to an American producer. It's too commercial. Are you, Maisie? I, I mean... Uh, it, it, it wasn't only money in my case, hmm? Oh, no, it wasn't. Well, uh, it wasn't only your rather extensive wardrobe, nor your physical beauty with me, either. Oh, I know what you're trying to say, Tony, and thanks. But it won't work. Why not? Well, you're caviar, and me, I'm, I'm pickles. <laughs> well, pickles and caviar go rather well together when they're eaten. Yeah, but after a while, it can make you awful sick. I wouldn't mind. You were my nurse. No, Tony. We're from different worlds. And I just don't fit into yours. You're a lord, remember. And I'm not a lady. No, you're wrong, Maisie. You may not have that so-called blue blood in your veins. But you certainly are a lady. Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Maybe some of you are saying that I should have married Tony. See what happens. That marriage is a wonderful institution. Well, maybe marriage is a wonderful institution. But Tony and me, we, we just didn't talk the same language. There's one thing I did learn, though. It's always better to tell the truth than lies. At least when you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Well, get along there, feet. London is miles away. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Ramsey Hill, Ben Wright, Marvin Miller, and Alec Harford. 
Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say, how about a li- Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen... And Southern. But first, your announcer. Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. I've been around a lot, and believe me, I face more of life than Portia. But I'm just one of the forgotten people in this world, like Whistler's father. <laughs> By profession, I'm in show business, but right now I'm not working very much at it. Funny, though, when you're broke, there's only three times when you're really minded. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, yes, and when your hotel bill is due, which incidentally is today. I owe a month's bill on the tiny little room I took. Room looks more like a tea bag with walls. But I do owe the rent, and the hotel manager, Mr. Walters, is getting just a little impatient with me. I can tell that by the way he keeps changing the lock on my door. Also, I'm getting tired of climbing into my room through the transom, so... Well, there's only one way out of this mess, and I'm taking it. Hey, good evening, Miss Revere. Oh, oh, good evening, Mr. Walters. I, I, I was just going for a little walk. Yeah, how <laughs> nice. Do you always walk down the fire escape, Miss Revere? Oh, <laughs> is this the fire escape? Oh, didn't you know? No, no. I, I thought this was the staircase to the lobby. You see, I know the janitor always washes the staircase at night, and I... Figured this is where he puts it out to dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a natural mistake, Miss Revere. Is it? I, I mean, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, Miss Revere. So you were just going for a casual stroll. Yeah, it, it, it's such a nice night. And you decided to take your suitcase with you. Um, <clears throat> yes. In, in case it suddenly gets cold, I might want to change into something warmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you, you know how it is, Mr. Walter. Yes, I know exactly how it is, Miss Revere. Mm -hmm. I hate to bring this up at two o'clock in the morning out here on the fire escape, but you've been a guest at our little hostelry for four weeks now, and you owe us a matter of ninety-six dollars. Well, um... That, you must agree, is a lot of money. But on the contrary, Mr. Walters, I think for four weeks it is very reasonable. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> and now, Miss Revere, I feel silly about asking this, but when do you intend paying your bill? Uh, well, Mr. Walters, the reason I haven't paid... I don't is... believe that lie. How do you know you don't believe it? You haven't even heard the lie yet. I mean... Hey, come um, with me, Miss Revere. Uh, uh, well, uh, where are you taking me, Mr. Walters? Back into the hotel to work out your bill. Oh, oh, not as an elevator operator, I hope. I can't stand height. I even get dizzy when I lick an airmail stamp. I'll get the money for you, Mr. Walters. My agent is looking around like crazy. Hey, Miss Revere, you're going to work out your debt to our hotel as room clerk. Night room clerk. Oh, but I can't, Mr. Walters. I like to sleep nights. 
I can't sleep days. It's too light. Well, close your eyes and it'll be dark. Oh. Night room clerk you are and night room clerk you'll be until you wipe out your debt to but our I, hotel. I, I have no experience as a room clerk. Well, it's quite simple, Miss Revere. All you have to do is say no to everything. Oh. You certainly know how to do that. I should. I've been doing that since the first time I put on high heels. Oh, pardon me, Miss Revere. Hello, Hotel Mercury. Mr. Walters, the night manager, speaking. Who? Oh, heavens to Betsy. Oh, yes. Yes, Your Highness. Oh, of course, Your Majesty. The very best, Your Highness. Who is that? His Royal Highness, Baron Krabotchnik of Georgia. Hey, bellboy, front, hey, post haste, post haste. Krabotchnik? That don't sound like no southern name. Hey, Miss Revere, the Baron comes from Georgia, one of the countries in the Balkans. It's part of Russia. Naturally. Yes, Mr. Wallers, you rang? Oh, howdy, Miss Revere. Hi, Jimmy. How's tips been lately? Eh. Uh, well, there'll be much more, Jimmy, when Baron Krabotchnik gets here. Oh, just to think that soon we'll have honest-to-goodness royalty staying at our humble little inn. I'm so thrilled I could just swoon. Oh, Baron Krabotchnik, huh? Say, I've been reading about that guy. He's got more money than Jack Benny says he hasn't. Yeah, I recall reading the name in the newspapers. He's the fellow that just married that American showgirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, mm-hmm. this is no time for idle chatter. Oh. Hey, Jimmy, yeah. I want you to see that the housekeeper has the royal bridal suite ready for the Baron and Baroness. Uh, the royal bridal suite? Yeah, the one with the window. I wonder why he wants to stay... Oh, say, maybe the Baron's one of those jerks what don't like no publicity. Uh, exactly, yeah. Jimmy. <laughs> he expressly mentioned that that's the reason for staying here. He just can't stand newspapers. Then it's a good thing he ain't going to be in my room. That's what the walls are papered with. Uh, well, uh, Miss Revere, I must rush downtown and tell Mr. Covey, the owner of the hotel, the glad tidings, that we're having a royal bride and groom here. Oh, and Miss Revere. Yes? If the royal honeymooners arrive while I'm gone, <laughs> just show them right up to the bridal suite. All right. They're traveling incognito and probably... Probably won't give their right name. Oh, yeah. Uh, say, Miss Revere, did I hear right? Hmm? You the room clerk now? Yeah, Jimmy. I'm working my way through a hotel bill. Oh. oh. Well, you better go tell the housekeeper to air out the royal bridal suite for the Baron and Mrs. Baron. Oh, sure, Miss Revere. I'll do it. Uh, say, a man and woman just come in. They look awfully happy. Hmm. Probably never stopped at this hotel before. Well, I'd better get my sneer ready. Got to look real hotel clerky, you know. See you later, Jimmy. Uh-huh. There's the desk over there, Liebchen. Come on, do not be afraid. Oh, I'm just tired, darling. We've been all over town looking for a room. Guys, this is an awful way to spend your honeymoon night. Wandering around town. Oh, no, do not cry, my <laughs> little wife. I have a feeling that at this hotel a room they will have. Oh, golly, they've just got to give us a room here. They've just got to. I just couldn't spend my honeymoon night alone in my room at the... Why? No, no, Liebchen, you'll never be alone anymore. Remember, now you are Mrs. Johann Schmidt. It's now John Smith, honey, not Johann Schmidt. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, I keep forgetting. (laughs) I'm now a real American with a real American name. You were very wise, insisting that I change it legally, my darling. Well, that'll make it easier for you to get a job, darling. Uh Uh-huh. Now that we were married, who can tell? Pretty soon we may have a... (laughs) to support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must get a room, and we will. We owe it to our little one. Clark! Clark! Okay, okay, Sonny, you don't have to yell. I just ducked under the desk for a moment to fix my garter. Oh, I didn't see you. You were not supposed to. Now, what can I do for you? We would like a room. You see, we... (laughs) Oh, honeymooners. Yeah, yeah, and we would like a place to stay for the night. It is very important. Well, I'm sorry, folks, but the hotel is filled up and... Filled? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but you know how it is. No, we do not know how it is. We've just been married. Oh. I mean, uh, Miss, I, I demand that you accommodate us. You demand? Yes, we demand. Yeah, yeah, we, we demand the bridal suite. Oh, darling, the bridal suite? But that's so expensive. Bah, money. What is money? Well, frankly, I wouldn't know. I ain't come across any in a long time. Oh, <gasps> hey, you must be him. Him? No, I'm not him. I must. I mean, me. Now, do we get the bridal suite? Oh, yes, your highness. Highness? 
Hello, miss, you are making some mistake. My name is... John Smith. Yeah, John Smith. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, naturally. Sign here, your royal... Miss. Oh, yeah, your royal um, <clears throat> Smith, miss. <laughs> miss, what I wanted to say is that John Smith is not my real name. Of course not. It never is. Miss, I don't know who it is that you think we are, but whoever you think we are... Darling, I'm so sleepy. We are. Sure, sure, don't worry. Nobody will ever know, Your Highness. If you say you're Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, well, then you're Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Right? Right. Right. Well, here's the pen and here's the register. Well, what do I do now? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Front. Uh, yes, what is it, Miss Weaver? They're here, Jimmy. The couple Mr. Walters was expecting. Uh, yeah. D- Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, show John Smith and Minnie Ha Ha here to the bridal suite. Oh, yes, sure. Uh, this way, folks. I mean, your royal folks. Thank you. Come, darling. Uh, uh, good night, miss. Thank you. And uh, we would not like to be disturbed. Oh, don't worry. In case there's a fire, we'll put it out nice and quietly with soft water. <laughs> Good evening. I mean, good morning. Hotel Mercury. Oh, well, let me talk to Maisie Revere, honey. This is Maisie Revere. With whom have I got the pleasure? This is Hyman, your agent. Well, well. So it's nothing doing today. Don't call us. We'll call you Herman. Well, I'm calling you now, honey. You open tomorrow night at the Rialto Theater. A booking? A real honest to goodness booking? You mean it, Herman? Maisie, you ever know me to tell a lie? Answer the question, Herman. Yeah, it's all set. If you click on this one, baby... Well, I ain't promising nothing, you mind you, but uh, it might mean the palace. The palace? In New York? No, Boise, Idaho. Oh. Say, Herman, how much am I getting? Well, baby, things are pretty tough, you know. You'll have to take a little less than you usually get. I didn't think there was anything less than that. Well, okay, Herm, I'll be there. I still got my costume and my suitcase all cleaned and ready for just in case. Okay, baby. And knock him dead. Well, Miss Revere, I told the boss the good news. Oh, and you should have seen his face when he found out that Baron and Baroness Krabotchnik are going to honeymoon at his hotel. <laughs> Not a going to, Mr. Walters. Ah. Ah? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They've just gone up to the bridal suite. Oh, gee, they're a cute couple. Well, cute is hardly the word for it. The Baroness is supposed to be the most striking blonde in this country. Yeah, the way she giggles every time she... Uh, uh, blonde? Yes, yeah, practically platinum. Yeah. Miss Revere, didn't you... Well, the one I sent up was a brunette. A brunette? Well, in this morning's paper, she was a decided blonde. Well, I guess in the evening she decided on another color. Well, perhaps. Uh, women are that way sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't understand what she ever saw on a little shrimp like the Baron. Well, you never can tell <laughs> shrimp. The Baron is 65. <laughs> well, some shrimps are taller than others. Oh, no. No, you didn't. It can't be. Well, I'm, I'm afraid it can. But, but gosh, they acted a little like they were the real Baron and Mrs. Baron. His accent, his demanding manner. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Walters. You'll be quite a whole lot more sorry, Miss Revere. That bridal suite is reserved for the real Baron and Baroness Krabotchnik. Well, uh... Get those two imposters out of that suite, or instead of letting you work off your bill, I'll attach all your luggage. Oh, but you can't do that, Mr. Walters. My costume is in that suitcase, and I've got to open tomorrow night with my act. Miss Revere, I'm afraid you'll have to go on without that costume. But I can't. It ain't that kind of an act. That is my final decision, Miss Revere. Oh, Mr. Walters. Throwing a pair of honeymooners out is... Well, it's a dirty trick. Well, are you going to do it? Yeah, chum. As soon as I can think of a trick that's dirty enough. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
back to Maisie. Here we are, Miss Revere. Twelfth floor. Bridal suite is just down the hall. <clears throat> Thanks, Jimmy. Well, what's the matter, Miss Revere? Elevator ride a little too fast for you? Yeah. You better give me time to fasten my safety belt when we were up here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anything else I can do for you? Yeah. Next time you come up, bring my shoes. Oh, I mean about getting that fake Baron and Baroness out of the bridal suite. You ain't got long before the real royal Krabotchniks get here, you know. Yeah, that's why I gotta work fast and nasty. See, that, that singing job at the theater tomorrow night means an awful lot to you, don't it, Miss Revere? Yeah, and I just have to get those honeymoons out of that suite or Mr. Wallace won't let me have my costume. Well, lots of luck, Miss Revere. If you need any help evicting that couple, just holler. Well, if you hear any hollering, Jimmy, it'll be those honeymooners. <laughs> My own little wife. Here we are, alone in our own little bridal suite at last. <laughs> yes. Don't you want to kiss your bride, honey? Such a question. Come, Liebchen. Snuggle closer to your husband. Oh. How's this, darling? Wonderful. Oh, my little flower, do I love... What is it? The room clerk. There's a very important question I must ask you. Oh, fine. Just a minute. What a hotel this is. Well, hello, folksies. Comfortable? We will. Well, what is the important question you wanted to ask? What would you kids like for tomorrow's breakfast? Some nice three-minute eggs, perchance? No, we just want to be left alone. Yeah, good night, miss, please. Oh, all right, then. Good night. Hmm, such a question. At the time like this, food we want? Darling, I'm lonesome. Oh, thank you, Leach. Better now. What is now? How about a nice steak? All right, all right, anything to be left alone. This is our honeymoon. We have two steaks for breakfast, but tomorrow... And without potatoes. Good night. Good night. Oh, no. She's gone for good. Yes, alone at last. <gasps> My husband. <laughs> Fine. We don't have any potatoes. You'll have to take those steaks without something else. Get out! <sighs> okay, okay. Gosh, you don't have to get sore just because we happen to run out of potatoes. Good night. Good night! Well, such temper. Good night. Uh, Liebchen, I think for good she's gone now. Thank goodness. Alone at last. Oh, come, my wife. Kiss me. What did you say, darling? He said, kiss me. Oh, this is a terrible hotel. Yeah, I don't see how anybody can stand staying here. Neither can I. Miss, we are going to get out of here. Good. Tomorrow. Good night. Well. <laughs> I know I said I'd like to help you get them Smiths out of there, Miss Revere, but well, this idea sounds sort of risky. I know, Jimmy, but gosh, this is an emergency. It is? Yes. Well, okay, Miss Revere, okay, if you're sure Mr. Wallace won't get wise. Well, how can he? He's down at the desk waiting for the real Baron and Baroness. You have the key to Mr. Wallace's room, don't you? Uh, no, but I can get it from the janitor down in the basement. Good. Mr. Walter's room is right next to the bridal suite, you know. Yeah. And as soon as we get into Mr. Walter's room... We start making the racket that drives them phonies out of the bridal suite. Yeah, yeah. And we've got just a few minutes before the real Baron and his bride get here. And, Jimmy, hmm? I know you're taking a big risk, but I'll help you out when you, you get in trouble. Oh, but I never get into trouble. That's silly. Anybody that has anything to do with me always has trouble. 
Come on, let's get that key, Jimmy. I'm terribly sorry, Baron and Baroness Krabotnik. It was a terrible, terrible mistake about the bridal suite. I don't know what to say. Say, in my country, you would say nothing. You would be shot. The whole thing is ridiculous. This is a honeymoon. We can't just walk the streets all night. Do not cry out your beautiful eyes, my little bleeds. We shall have a place to stay tonight. Uh, well, Your Highness, you can always sleep in the lobby. We want a room. I demand that we be given the royal bridal suite. Throw those peasants out. But I can't do that, Your Highness. This is a democracy. Then throw those Democrats out. Surely you can give the couple occupying our suite some other room to stay. But, Your Highness, every room in the hotel is occupied. Oh, just a moment, Your Highness. <laughs> a nasty little thought just came to my mind. Nasty, schmasty, all we want is that sweet. For me and my little Boblochke. Yes, Boris. <gasps> so tired. Quick, peasant, before my bride falls asleep. Do already. Yeah, I, I, I'm buzzing the bridal suite now, Your Highness. Oh, there they are now. Oh, good morning, Mr. Smith. This is the night manager. Oh, please, sir, such language. Well, uh, Mr. Smith, it seems by some mistake you were put in the bridal suite reserved for the Baron and Baroness Krabotsny. Do not be gentle with the peasants, peasant. Kindness does not work with the lower classes. Take them out and shoot them. You can't take people out in this country and just shoot them because they're poor, Boris. You can't? Uh, yes, I, I know, Mr. Smith, but uh, would you mind if I moved you to another room, a room 1412? Uh, yes, it's vacant. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes, you can go right there, and I'll meet you at 1412 with the key. It is fixed, no? Yes, the bridal suite is yours, Your Highness. You can go right up. Oh, Boris, I'm so glad. Come kiss me quick. I'll show you the way. I know the way. I have kissed women before. <laughs> The room's empty. Mr. Walters must still be down at the desk. Oh, oh please, Miss Rivera, not, not so loud. We'll disturb the people next door. Well, that's the idea, Jimmy. Don't you remember? Uh, yeah, but I keep trying to forget. Okay, now, Jimmy, start the yelling. <clears throat> okay. This is a fine thing. I come home from a hard day's no, work. No, no, louder, Jimmy. Okay. <clears throat> come on. This is a fine thing. I come home from a hard day's work at the pool room, and what do I get? No supper. Well, a bum wants supper. He wants Supper. Now, wait a minute. Quiet, there's one more. He wants supper. Why don't you go out and get a job? A job, a job. I've been working on a job for three years. Yeah, what kind of a job? I don't know. I'm still working on it. Papa, don't hit Mom over the head with me again. Use the chair this time. Quiet in there, you. It's working. Boris, come back. I'm lonesome. We got him riled up, Jimmy. Keep going. Okay. A fine wife you are. Why, you ain't never washed my shirt. How could I? You're always wearing it. That's no excuse. Quiet in there. Stop that shouting. Who's shouting? Can a woman carry on an ordinary conversation with her own husband? Ah, <laughs> oh, shut up, Junior. Be quiet and drink your beer. Shut up. You too, Junior. Go play with the nice sticks of dynamite Mama bought you. Dynamite? A fine thing. We ain't got food in the joint, and you spend good money on toys. Well, at least it keeps them off the street. Don't pound on our door so hard. I got noise, you know. Can't you be quiet, low-lifers? Low-lifers? Sam throw this bum out. Bum! Do you know who I am? I am the Baron Krobotsky. I don't care if... The Baron? You know who I am? No. Thank goodness. Uh-oh. Uh, look, your Baroness, uh -huh. I can explain, I think. To the I... manager, you'll have to explain why you are keeping awake my bride and me next door. Oh. I am just fresh married on my honeymoon. Must you fight at two o'clock in the morning? Oh, but your highness, I thought... I mean, we thought... Um, well, Jimmy, say something to the Baron. Uh, oh, sure, Baron. I hope you and your wife will be very happy. Happy I will be if you two get out of here. Oh, gladly, Your Highness. But you're blocking the way. You wouldn't want us to jump out of the window. Would you? Say, what's all this rumpus about? Miss Revere, what are you doing here? Me? 
Oh, well, I thought, um, well, um, I, I wanted to get rid of the Smith. And, yes, um, sir, you see, Mr. Walters, uh, uh, we've, yes. that is, she. Uh, 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 um, any questions, Mr. Walters? Miss Revere, I'll talk to you alone. Uh, please go back to your room, Your Highness, and I promise you, you won't be disturbed anymore. And tell your bride I'm awfully sorry. Tell her you're sorry. You expect me to wake her up just for that? Good night, you, you Vladnoshkins. Vladnoshkins? What does that mean? I don't know, but we probably are. Uh, Mr. Walters, all this wasn't Jimmy's fault. He, he just came in here to try to stop me. Oh, Miss Revere. Hey, never mind, Jimmy. Miss Revere, if you had bothered to check with me, you would have found out that I'd transferred the Smiths to another room. Oh, then it's all right. Oh, gosh, I'm so tired. I could go to sleep on a park bench. I'm glad you said that, Miss Revere. You may have to. May have to? Yes. You see, I gave your room to the Smiths. Oh, no. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Here I am at three in the morning walking the streets in search of a nice, quiet hotel where they don't ask embarrassing questions like, can you pay for a room? Anyway, I got my suitcase and my costume back. But if I don't get some sleep, I ain't saying what kind of an act I'm going to put on tomorrow at the theater. I'm so sleepy that my act will be a novelty. It'll probably be the first time an audience has ever heard take me out to the ball game yawn. Oh, well, I ain't exactly broke. I still got enough to go off to an all-night movie. Well, here goes. Heads, it's the Apollo. Tails, the gem. It, it... Oh, it rolled right down the sewer. With my luck, wouldn't you just know something like that would happen with my last order? just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Hans Conried, Frank Nelson, Sidney Miller, Mary Stewart, Harry Bartell, and Alan Reed. Jack McCoy speaks. Babe, say how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer.
here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. I've done a lot of work in the theater, but I keep giving it up because I'm really interested in something steady, like eating. So I took a job as a traveling sales lady for a certain novelty company. And after three days at it, I can see why they call it a novelty company. If you sell something, it's a novelty. And when I took this job, I was supposed to be a house-to-house salesman. But they didn't tell me the houses were 20 miles apart. And I'm hungry, too. Guess I'll just leave my trusty old sample cases out here on the sidewalk and buy myself something to eat in this little hamburger joint. Mmm, gosh, those hot cakes and little sausages smell good. Yummy. Yes, miss, what can I do for you? <laughs> Thanks, I didn't think you noticed me. How much for hot cakes and sausages, my little man? I mean, well, 35 cents. Well, very reasonable. Very. The toast is free. Uh, good, then that's for me. Oh, miss, the toast is free only if you take the breakfast. Oh, kind of thought there was a catch to it. I'll take a cup of coffee. Oh, sure, miss. Don't... <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. I spilled some of the coffee into your saucer. Oh, good. I'm a little too tired to do it by myself. Oh, do you like drinking it from a saucer, too? (laughs) Well, not ordinarily, Sonny, but that's the only way I can drink it and keep an eye on my sample cases out on the sidewalk at the same time. Did you say sample cases? Uh Uh-huh. I'm a traveling sales lady. Oh, I see. Uh, What are you selling? Nothing. You're selling nothing? Mm Mm-hmm. Folks in this part of the country sure have a lot of sales resistance. Yeah. Here, I'll give you some more coffee. Oh, thanks. Miss, you ain't from these parts, are you? Nope. Brooklyn, New York. Oh, gosh, New York. (laughs) I heard a lot about New York. What's it really like? Like nothing you've ever seen, Mr. Um... Johnny, Miss. Johnny Clark. Oh, well, I'm Maisie Revere. Hi. Hi. Um, Johnny. Yes, Maisie? I think maybe you'd better stop pouring the coffee. The counter's starting to float. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I was just carried away, kind of. Gosh, give me the big city any time. There's nothing to do in these hick towns. No? No, look at this place. It's practically a cemetery with lights. Oh. Nothing to do. No place to go. And all those crazy laws. Crazy laws? Yeah. Why? Why? What are the city fathers against here, Johnny? You name it, and they're against it. Oh. We got all kinds of crazy laws. Oh, hi, Officer Riley. Uh, whose suitcases are those out on the sidewalk? There's one of them now. Oh, <laughs> well, those things are mine, Officer. I left them out on the sidewalk while I came in for a cup of coffee. Well, you should have taken them in with you. <laughs> oh, well, that's silly. None of my suitcases drink coffee. Keeps them up at night. Oh, one of them witty type persons. Look, <laughs> Officer Riley, she has. Oh, let had... me handle this, Johnny. What's wrong with leaving my stuff out in the curb? It's section 252 in the penal code of this township. That's what's wrong. That'll be $5, miss. Five bucks for parking my stuff on your crummy sidewalk? Maisie, please. Uh, that'll be $10, miss. $10? Don't tell me I got my junk parked on both sides of the street. You just broke city ordinance number 348, whereby oh. it's a misdemeanor by word or action to deride city property. And that sidewalk is city property. Officer, have you got rocks in your head? Uh, Ordinance 529 states that insulting an officer of the law in the pursuit of his duty is punishable by a fine of $5. Well, I'll take ten bucks worth of that. Officer Riley, I've met flat feet in my time, but this is the first time I met one who was flat at both ends. Maisie, please. And if you think you can pull that stuff on me, you ought to have your brain examined by a doctor. And if he finds a brain, somebody ought to have the doctor examined. Oh, Maisie, you're only making it worse. Here's your summons, miss. Be at Judge Murdoch's court tomorrow morning at 10 with $50. Oh, this is the most ridiculous... $50? According to Ordinance 833, it's a misdemeanor to talk in an unnecessarily loud voice before 9 a.m. Good day, miss. Now, officer. Yes? I haven't got the money. Too bad, miss. You're not going to like our jail. Jail? Johnny, would they... I mean, do you think that... I'm sorry, Maisie. Anything I can do? Yeah. Ask your chef to bake me a cake with a file in it. Come in. 
Oh, uh, I'm looking for Peter Rockford, the lawyer. I'm Peter Rockford, the lawyer, miss. Uh, uh, Revere. Uh, see, I, I sort of expected an older man. You're, uh, you're young. Well, miss, it isn't against the law to be young, is it? <laughs> well, it might be. Everything else in this town seems to be against the law. Gee, just get a look at what Officer Riley handed me. Mm. Looks like you had the book thrown at you. Yeah, I'm a regular one-woman murder incorporated all by myself. Um, Mr. Rockford, I need advice, and I need it bad. Well, I'd suggest you pay the fine. Well, I don't need it that bad. Look, do you tell all your clients to go ahead and pay the fines without fighting the case? Uh, you don't understand, Miss Revere. Oh, I think I do. You don't want to defend me because I can't pay you. Well, that's not true. It's, uh, well, my hands are tied. But your tongue ain't. You could tell that Judge Murdoch where to get off of those screwball laws. I don't want to go to jail and be a marked woman for life. You've got to do something, Mr. Rockford. I'm afraid I can't. You broke city ordinances, laws that are on the books. But they don't make sense. What's so terrible about parking a couple of suitcases on the sidewalk? Well, it's still the law, and the local constabulary enforces that and other archaic ordinances whenever the city treasury gets too low. But why pick on a poor schnook like me? Gosh. What am I going to do? I wish I could think of something. Come in. Hi, Pete. Oh, hi, Maisie. Just call me public enemy number one, Johnny. Uh-oh. Can't do anything, huh, Pete? Oh, and I don't think we can expect any mercy from Judge Murdoch. Oh, see, that's an angle. Angle? Yeah. After all, I'm a woman. Oh, Murdoch is about 60. Oh, too late, huh? If I had the 50 bucks, Miss Revere, your problem would be solved. Well, thanks, Pete. You're real sweet. But, but strangely enough, it's not me I'm concerned about. It's you folks in this town. How can you enjoy life here? Who enjoys it? Fine town against the law to talk loud. Against the law to kiss a girl in public. Against you the law to take... You can't even a... kiss a girl in public either? No. Oh, passed <sighs> after the War of 1812, just before the soldiers came home. If you can't kiss a girl, it's a wonder the soldiers wanted to come home. Yeah, yeah. Say... The newspaper should be interested in giving a lot of space to fighting a law like that. People are always interested in kissing. Hmm, I know I would be if they made it less expensive. Well, uh, it might help to bring to light uh, the other ridiculous outmoded bylaws if a case like that was actually brought to court and fought. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find two people in town that wouldn't mind kissing each other in public. You mean a man and a woman? <clears throat> that's the law, Sonny, of nature. And believe me, that's one law that makes sense. Yeah, but... Who'll we get? Folks in this town don't care much for that kind of publicity. Oh. Well, what about you, Johnny? You got a girl, haven't you? Yeah, I got a girl, but kissing her is out. We're not married yet. Oh. How about you, Pete? Me? Yeah, why not? You're tall and handsome, curly black hair, and the cutest dimple. Oh, shucks. I mean, you think there's a girl who'd want to kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be, honey. Could be. Oh, yeah, what do you say, Pete? Are you willing to play the part of the first part? Why, well, I guess so, but I'll need a girl to kiss. <laughs> who, uh, who we ask? Well, Petey, I don't have anything special to do right now. Oh, Maisie, no use sending you to shop around. You couldn't know any of the girls in town. No, I couldn't, could I? Mm, let's see now. There's Rita Howard. And... Yeah, the fellas all say that she's, uh, you know... Mm -hmm. She's got those protruding teeth, and every other one is missing. Yeah. Kissing her is like kissing a picket fence. Well, I got all my teeth. Uh, say, Johnny, uh, that Charlotte Phillips isn't a bad-looking dish. Yeah, but her brother is six feet eight. I ain't got a brother. We need a girl who doesn't talk much, don't we, Maisie? Yep. Let's see, now, who can we get? Don't ask me, chum. I gave up long ago. Say, I've got it. Yeah? Who? Maisie. Me? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. How did you ever think of it? Swell, then it's set. I don't know. Well, here we go again. Why not? Yeah, why can't you kiss Maisie? Yeah, why not? Well, you're hiring me as your lawyer. You're my boss. Well, what do you want, a raise? No, it's just that, well, business and romance don't go together. No? Have you ever been a private secretary? Well, let's see. If we're going to get ourselves arrested for kissing in a public place, we've got to pick out one that's real public. Well, then let's go to the park. But, Maisie, a cop only goes through the park every two hours. Good. Then we'll have lots of time to practice. Now, 
The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Peter, it's beautiful here in the park. The full moon shine and everything covered with snow. It sure is romantic. Pete, I said it certainly is romantic. Pete, I'm talking to you. Take off your earmuffs. Okay. There. Good. <laughs> See, it sure is romantic here, Peter. Well, say something. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, darling. Sheer poetry. I'm sorry, Maisie, but I'm cold. Well, it'll get warmer, son, much warmer. Johnny, you go find a cop. No, I'd rather stay here and watch. I got a lot to learn. You ain't the only one. Go find us a nice cop, Johnny. Okay, I'll, I'll warn you when he's coming. I'll whistle like this, Pete. And if everything's all right, you whistle back. If everything's all right, he won't be able to whistle back. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting. To... <laughs> well, I'll go smell out a cop. Yeah, and don't be long, Johnny. Now, look, Peter. We gotta make this kissing business look like the real thing if we want the cop to arrest us. You know, first we gotta get in the mood. Look, Maisie, we're just doing this thing for the people. Well, I'm people, and I like a little preliminaries before the main event. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Well, suppose you stop flapping your arms around yourself and flap them around me. But, Maisie, I'm just flapping my arms to keep my blood circulating. What blood? Take me in your arms, Pete. Okay. There. Satisfied? Yeah. Thrilled. Now what? Let's talk. About what? About the situation in Indochina, that's what. Oh, well, according to the latest reports, Indochina expects its government to... Oh, shut up already. I thought you wanted me to talk. Yeah, but about something of mutual interest. Me. Oh, <clears throat> what shall I say? Oh, anything that pops into your mind, like, uh... Maisie, you're beautiful, adorable, and stuff like that. Okay. Maisie, you're beautiful, adorable. Yeah, go on. Stuff like that. Oh, fine. Maisie, I... I mean it. You are beautiful, adorable. Oh, well, go on, Pete. Go on. Hey, kids, a cop. Which way is he looking? The other way. Well, don't bother him. He's probably tired. He's looking this way now. You'd better kiss her, Pete. Oh, you heard what the fella said, Peter. Yes, Maisie, come closer. Pete, that took my breath away. Hey, what's coming off here? My lipstick, officer. This man kissed me. Oh, he did? Well, how do you like that? Very much. Me too. Well, officer, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Yeah, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to congratulate you. She's a very pretty girl. Oh, do you really think so, officer? Uh, I mean, uh, what about the law? The law? What law? Pete, kiss me again. That law. Oh, you mean Statute 34529, Section B is amended, whereby it shall be deemed unlawful for two persons of opposite sexes to kiss, embrace, or give undue evidence of affection on the streets, in the parks, or any public place of gathering? Yeah, that's it. I don't believe in it. You don't? Well, don't you? But you gotta believe in it. Who says I do? I do. So do I. Yeah, you better arrest them, officer, before I call a cop. You keep out of this, fathead. <gasps> don't you dare call him a fathead, you... You fathead! Now, careful, me. miss, or I'll haul you in and fine you ten dollars for contempt of an officer. Ten dollars? Well, I got more contempt for you than that. Oh, well, that cuts it. I'm taking you in. Come on. Take your hands off her, officer. Oh, a wise guy, eh? Huh? Oh, just a couple of law-abiding citizens. Who insist on the protection promised us in the Constitution to be arrested for kissing. Yeah. Okay. I'm arresting you for kissing. Oh, at last. At last. Also for creating a disturbance, being a public nuisance, holding a public meeting after curfew hours, inciting a riot, and uh, but... walking on the grass. Walking on the grass? But it's covered with six inches of snow. Yeah, but under the snow is grass, and you're walking on it. Come on, both of you. Oh, 
feet. We should have quit when we were ahead. In here, Rockford. You only got two minutes to talk to her. Thanks, Mr. Jailer. Oh, hello, Peter. Are you free already? Look, Macy, they they only gave me two minutes. Well, that ain't much of a sentence. I'll probably get two years. I mean two minutes to talk to you, so I'll have to talk fast. Oh, yeah. Our case comes up this afternoon before mm-hmm. tough old Judge Murdoch. And I think we can beat the rap if you do exactly as I tell you. Oh, sure, Peter. What do you want me to do? Now, let me handle the whole thing. You know absolutely nothing. Well, you ain't kidding, mister, and today I proved it. I mean when we come before the judge. Let me do all the talking. Uh, time's up, folks. Okay, now remember, Maisie, not a word from you. I'll remember. Song, Pete. And when we come to trial, you won't be sore at me because I got you into this mess, will you? You won't sell me down the river. Maisie, I'll be hanged if I will. With that judge, that's possible, too. Hey, you got another visitor, Miss Revere. You want to see him? Hey, Miss Revere, I said, do you want to see him? Why don't you answer? My lawyer said I'm not supposed to talk. It's me, Maisie. Oh, (laughs) come in, Johnny. Thanks. And leave the jail door open, guard. It's stuffy in here. Oh, sure, miss. Anything you say. Oh, no, you don't. Two minutes, sonny. Two, uh, okay. Gee, it's nice of you to come and talk to me, Johnny. Oh. I'm tired of asking myself why I got into this mess. I got such stupid answers. Oh, don't take it too hard, Maisie. After all, stone walls do not a prison make. No? Well, you could have fooled me. Gee, this is an awful mess you're in, Maisie. Yeah. What are you going to do? Five years, ten years, it all depends on Peter. Oh. And whether the judge can be made to realize how stupid those outmoded laws are. Oh, stupid is right. Yeah. I've been reading up on some of the other laws, and they got some real comical ones. Yeah? Yeah. But did you know that this town still has a law in the books mm-hmm. that goes back to the Civil War? No. Yeah. It says, quote, No resident of this township shall harbor or give refuge to a southerner on penalty of life imprisonment or death. Unquote. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen yeah. if they tried to enforce that law today? Yeah. <laughs> hey, huh. Johnny, that's it, maybe. I said something? Could be. Johnny, Hmm. this Judge Murdoch, is he an old 60 or a young 60? Well, I've noticed him eyeing the local bells on Windy Corners, but I never heard of the old guy making an actual pass. Oh, then he's still susceptible. Look, Johnny, Hmm. my little plan might not be as legal as Pete's, but it stands a better chance of working. Uh, Johnny, you're my friend, aren't you? Till the end. Well, what I want you to do may land you in jail. That's the end. So long. No, Johnny, you gotta do it. Now listen. After I trap the judge, I want you. Hey, 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 hey. Court is now in session. His Honor Judge Elias J. Murdoch presiding. Peter. I gotta tell you something. Now, Maisie, and remember, don't say anything. Leave it all to me. But, Pete, I found a law passed during the Civil War that was. No the... talking amongst the defendants. Oh. What's the first case, Clerk? The city of Cornwall versus Peter Rockford and Maisie Revere. Uh, here are all the charges, Your Honor. Hmm, quite a few ordinances broken. About $300 worth, I figure. Nice work, Officer Jenkins. Thanks, Uncle Elias. Uh, Peter, Quiet, I want. Maisie, I'll handle everything. Your Honor. I can explain the charges listed in the complaint. The whole thing was a result of our unified efforts to make a test case of that ridiculous kissing in public law so that all the outmoded city statutes still in existence would be repealed. Oh, you did, eh? Miss Revere, do you have any testimony to give this court before I find you both guilty? I have... Your Honor, uh, what I'm telling you is the truth. Miss Revere can bear me out. Oh, she can, huh? Miss Revere, you know the charges brought against you. Tell me. Are you innocent? Uh, well, not entirely, Judge Honey. I know a little about the birdies and bees. Yes, and I insist. Uh, Maisie, what's come over you? You're, uh, <clears throat> you're from the South, Miss Revere? <laughs> I sure am, Judge Sugar. <laughs> I'm just a little old Dixie cup from way down yonder in little old New Orleans. <laughs> Maisie, I don't get this. Tell me, honey child, I mean, uh, Miss Revere, Uh what is this man to you? Him? 
Why, Your Honor, till he came over to me in the park and tried to kiss me, I declare I never saw him before in my whole life. What? Maisie. Frankly, I couldn't blame him for getting flirty with me, Judge, honey. I guess all you young men are alive. Young? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not that young, sugar. <laughs> I mean, girly. Uh, Maisie, this has gone too far. I've heard enough. So have I. Peter Rockford, I find you guilty of molesting this innocent girl in the public park. Oh, fine. Yes, $200. And six months in jail. Take him away, officer. Come on, chump. Maisie, I'll, I'll, I'll get you for this. Oh, did you hear that, Eli, honey? I'm scared. Powerful, sure enough, scared. Now, don't you worry, Missy. You'll be perfectly safe with that young masher behind the bars. Well, I know, Judge, you watch it, but I, I've still got about an hour till my silly old train leaves, and I'm, I'm scared being all alone in your city. Mm-hmm. Is there a place where a poor, helpless, but awful friendly little gal like myself can sort of kill a little time till my train comes in? Yeah. Well, uh... My house is just down the street, if you'd like to, uh, well, spend your last hour in town with me. Oh, will you all handsome? Coax me. Well? You talk me into it. Shall we go? You know, Eli, honey... It sure has been pleasant sitting with you here on this, uh, uh, you pardon expression, love seat. <laughs> yes, my dear, but you still seem to be afraid of, well, something. Hmm? You keep looking out the window as if you were expecting somebody. Oh, well, that's just for to have it, sugar. When I lived on my grandpappy's plantation, I always used to look out the window at, uh, at the tobacco trees. Tobacco trees? Well, uh, where I come from, the tobacco grows real tall. Oh, come in, Johnny. Say, how do you know who's out there? Uh, uh, just took a while, Gay. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. Well, well, I find you two together just as I thought. Why, Judge, honey, what does this perfect stranger mean by that? Yes, young man, do you realize you're breaking the law by bursting in here? On the contrary, Judge Murdoch, it is you who are breaking the law. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. Breaking the law? What law? A certain statute passed in 1863 whereby it is unlawful to give refuge or harbor a southerner of which this young lady is undoubtedly of. Me a southerner, you all? Why, that all is ridiculous, all ain't it all, Judge All. But, but that law is outmoded. Well, they, they just forgot to repeal it. However, it is still a law punishable by life imprisonment, death, or both. Oh. oh. Oh, we got to do something alive, honey. If I get myself involved in a scandal like this, what will my family in Atlanta think? Atlanta? I thought you came from New Orleans. Oh, uh, well, we move around a lot. <laughs> Young man, couldn't we all come to some kind of agreement to hush this disgraceful thing up? Yes, yes, I'll do anything. Oh, you will? Good. Then maybe you all would forget about those other silly, out-of-date laws like kissing in public and free anybody under arrest for violating the same, like that um, Peter Rockford man. Uh, all right. Uh-huh. I agree to the terms. Mm. Rockford will go free, and I'll see to it that those stupid laws are repealed. Oh, good. Uh, good. Uh, oh, Judge, I insist that you put this verbal agreement in writing. Here it is, already drawn up. Well, you were pretty sure of yourself, weren't you, young man? Yeah, honey, we sure were. What? Uh, I mean, we sure were cozy in here until this strange interrupted us. Hmm. Uh, sign the paper, Judge, honey. So we're all going to be alone again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> alone. Sure. There. Satisfied now? Uh-huh. Now, Johnny... Go get Pete out of the clink. Yes, go get Pete. Hey, you just lost your southern accent. Did I? Well, it may be a little late, drool boy, but I just decided to join the union. Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
now, once again, here's Macy. Well, that little caper wound up on the plus side for humanity. Me and my sample cases are on our merry way into the light blue yonder. I sure hated to say goodbye to Johnny, and especially Peter. After all, something might have come from our mutual attraction. The struggling young lawyer and me did have something in common. We both were broke. Well, little Maisie will just struggle along until Mr. Wright comes along. Yes, sirree, brother. When I finally put my finger in a wedding ring, I'm going to make real sure I ain't putting my foot in it, too. Well, get going, Steve, and be careful. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Louis Jean Height, Earl Ross, Peter Leeds, Frank Nelson, and James Eagle. Jack McCoy speaking. Say how about la- Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Macy, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Macy pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Macy in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere. I'm of the theater. Of course, I could have had speaking parts in legitimate dramatic productions that wasn't for one handicap. I was born with a Brooklyn accent. But I ain't kicking about that. Look at the handicap a skunk comes into the world with. Anyway, there's an awful lot of people in this world that are worse off than me. Of course, I have only one pair of shoes, but so what? I only have one pair of feet. So you see, that's why I'm out today on an errand of mercy. I'm going from door to door gathering old discarded clothes for the poor folks who ain't as blessed as you and me. Now, here's a house I'm sure has lots of old clothes they don't need. I can tell by that poster in the window, Alf Landon for president. They never throw anything away. Yes. Good morning, madam. I'm collecting old discarded clothes for the needy of this town. Well, goody, goody for you. Good day, miss. I've got a lot of things to do. Oh, please, madam. This is really an emergency. Why, there are little boys in this town who have to go around barefooted. You wouldn't want your little boys to go around without shoes, would you? I'd love it. Then maybe my furniture wouldn't get so scratched up. Now, if you don't mind... Are you sure you don't have something worn and useless around the house that you could give to a poor family? No, not a thing. Well, um, what about your husband? Don't be silly. What would a poor family do with my husband? Good day, miss. I'm sorry I have no clothes to give you. Oh. Well, um, what about your grandchildren? Grandch... Miss, I'm a very young woman. <gasps> oh. Well, perhaps it's that horrible-looking dress you're wearing that makes you look so old. The, 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 this dress makes me look old? Mm-hmm. Why, like you're at the age where a cup of tea would rest you. 
Well, I'm taking it off right now. Oh. And give it to some poor woman. There you are. Oh, thanks. Um, madam, I'm sure some poor person could use that girdle you're wearing. It's much too small for you, you know. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, my corseteer charged me $30 for it. She charged you $30 for that girdle? Yes. Do you think I was taken in? Yeah, but not enough. Well, you may have it, too, then, for the poor. Uh, Help me get it off. All right. (laughs) Yeah, who's there? I'm sort of a charity worker. I collect old clothes for poor, unfortunate people. Oh, good. I can use a suit and shoes. But I came here to see if you had some clothes you don't need. Are you kidding? I got an audition for a part in a play, and I'm sitting here wrapped in a blanket. Oh, are you an actor? I ain't an Indian. Hey, say maybe you got a suit or something I can wear for the audition. Well, all I've collected so far is a dress and a girdle. Say, I'm still making rounds for discarded clothes. Maybe if I had an idea of your size, I could dig something up for you. Open the door. Uh, You open it, lady. I'm too weak to turn the knob. Well, I don't know about shoes, but a suit maybe. (gasps) Bill... Bill Norton. Maisie Revere. Uh, Don't mind the way I look, Maisie. They ain't making these blankets with as much drape as they used to. Oh, gosh, Bill. It's good to see you again. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't seen you since we did that picture together in Hollywood. Hey, what have you been doing lately, Maisie? Oh, not bad. I got a chance coming up to audition for a tryout for a benefit. Uh, Mm Ah, oh, things not breaking for you, too, huh? Yeah, pretty slow, Mm. Bill. But that audition of yours for the show, Bill... You mean you don't have a suit to wear? No, oh, nothing but that one over there. Ah, oh, I see. Looks like a sunset with sleeves. Oh, I don't mean the color. Green with yellow stripes is real smart, Maisie. The latest thing from London. Everybody wears suits like that on the other side. Some smart, I'll say. Maybe you should wear that one on the other side. It probably looks better with the lining showing. Well, it's not that, Maisie. Take a good look at it. Ever see as many wrinkles in your life? Yeah. If it had cords, you could use it for a Venetian blind. (laughs) Oh, well, why not take the suit to the tailors and have it pressed? When do you need it for? Tonight, but, uh... uh... Oh, that broke, huh? Uh Uh-huh. And I can't budge from the room either, Maisie, in case a call comes from my agent for something better. Well, look, I gotta drop these old clothes off to a poor old woman who lives with her unemployed son, Roland, down in the slums. The salvage outfit gave me their address. And I'll take your suit to the tailors on the way. Oh, you know, Maisie, I don't think you've got a selfish bone in your body. Ah, don't kid yourself, Sonny. You should catch me racing for an empty seat in the subway. See you later. Oh, gee, Ma, I'm so excited and nervous. Just think this is my first job. And if I make good, Ma... I'll take you out of this here dump and buy you real nice clothes. Oh, Roland, my son, I'm so proud of you. When you were a little boy, your father and I thought you'd never amount to anything. But just look at you today. Ready to rob your face bank. Yeah. Well, it's getting late, Ma. I'd better get to work, huh? Son, are you crazy? You're not going to rob the bank in your new suit. Why not? Why not, he asks. Suppose you get shot, you'll get a hole in it. Say, who could I be, Ma? You duck in the kitchen, son. And don't let me catch you swiping any of them cookies I just baked. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a crook. Go on now. Okay, Ma. Yeah? What do you want, girlie? Good afternoon, you poor old thing. I'm handing out clothes to the needy. Can you use this dress, Ma? Oh, yeah, dearie. Bless you. Oh, well, then here you are. <laughs> uh, say, uh, that there suit over your arm... Uh, the green one with yellow stripes? Yeah. Scary looking, ain't it? Not for my son. In this family, the men folks are sort of used to wearing stripes. <laughs> Could you maybe let me have it for my role and maybe, huh? Oh, well, I'm sorry, Mom, but the owner ain't through with it yet. I'm just bringing it to the tailors to be pressed. You see, the owner needs it for a job. Oh, please, miss. My Roland needs a suit, too. He also has a job. Only he has to go there without a thing to wear. Hmm. Where is this job? In a Turkish bath? Uh, no. Oh. He's, um, shall we say, entering a bank. Oh, and the green suit matched the money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, gee, I'm awful sorry, but the owner of this Roland suit... would only need it for about an hour. Oh, 
Just long enough to cinch the job? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you might say that. <laughs> It's his first job, miss, and I promised his poor old father before he was electrocuted, before he passed away, that I'd do all I could to see that Roland got a chance to carry on the family heritage. Your husband was a bank worker? Exclusively. Oh. <laughs> and he always wanted Roland to follow in his fingerprints. I, I mean, footprints. Well, I promised... I promised you... Roland's father. Well, Bill, really don't need the suit till tonight. He can have it back in an hour. I'll press it for him, too. Well, all right. Here. I'll be back for it in an hour. Oh, thank you, miss. You're very good. Tell your friend I'll pray for him. Who was it, Mom? <laughs> Santa Claus, son. Look what she left you to wear when you robbed the bank. Gee, a green suit with yellow stripes. Yeah, uh, hey, ain't that going to be sort of conspicuous? That's the idea, Jake. Oh. When you get through with the job, the suit goes back to the goon that owns it. And then when the cops look for a guy wearing a green suit with yellow stripes... Oh, gee, Mom. You're the crookedest, connivingest dame I ever knew. Ah. You're just saying that because I'm your mother. <laughs> Say that again, Maisie, slowly. What happened to my suit? I told you, Bill. I was walking along the street when this boy came up to me and said, Give me that suit, lady, or I'll shoot. Hmm. And what did this boy look like? Well, he looked like he meant it. Maisie, I don't believe you. You mean you don't believe a man held me up? Man? Before you said it was a boy. Well, he grew up. How could he grow up so fast? Vitamin pills. Oh, Macy, I, I have an audition tonight, and I want you to get me that suit right now. You mean the green one? Yes, the green one. And I want it before it gets dark. Oh, it won't get dark, Bill. It'll always stay green. Get me that suit. Uh... <laughs> the money from the Second National Bank job, Ma. Believe me, $28,000. Well, it's about time you got back. What took you so long? Well, on the way out, I stopped to get my pocket check validated. What a dope. Here, here's the green suit with the stripes that I wore. Uh, Ma, there's a little bullet hole in the sleeve of the coat from one of the guard's bullets. Well, thank goodness it just went through the sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, if I was shot through the heart, it might have given me heartburn, huh? That must be the dame back for the suit, son. Huh? You go into the bathroom and take a bath. Okay, Ma. Uh, where are my toy boats? They're still in the tub from last month. Hello, Mom. I came back for the suit if your son is through with it. Oh, he is, dearie. Here's the suit. And here's a dollar bill for your kindness. Gee, a dollar just for lending your suit. It's real generous of you. Golly, I hope Bill never finds out where this came from. I hope nobody finds out. Maisie, there's something funny about this. Funny? When you took this suit, it was in perfect condition. And now, look, there's a hole in the sleeve. Hole? Oh, <laughs> uh, that, um, 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 a moth ate it. A moth? Mm -hmm. There are powder marks around the edge of the hole. Powder? Oh, well, maybe it was eaten by a lady moth. Oh, Maisie, that burnt hole in the sleeve couldn't have been done by a moth. And where did this dollar bill come from? The mint in Washington. I see. No, D.C. Look, Maisie, Now, what I... are you going to do with the dollar? Frankly, I haven't thought about it very much. Maybe I'll buy myself a couple of yachts. Ah, oh. <laughs> I'm glad you can still make jokes. That means you've forgiven me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how about this dollar? Well, now, that's what I've been thinking. You ought to take that dollar to the bank and start an account. That way you'll never be so broke again. Uh, Maisie, do you think we can find a bank that'll handle as large a sum as a dollar? Well, sure. I'll wait outside while you get into your suit, and then we'll go down to the Second National Bank and open an account. <laughs> But 
But you must have gotten a look at the crook, Mr. Grindle. After all, it was at your window that he stole the money. But I didn't see the hold-up man's face, Inspector. All I noticed about him was that he had a red handkerchief over his eyes, and he was wearing a green suit with yellow stripes. A green suit with yellow stripes? Yes. Nauseating combination, don't you think? Yeah, disgusting. Yes. Yeah, thank goodness all those dollar bills were marked with X's. Grindle, if you should ever run into the hold-up man, do you know what you're going to do? You mean, after I faint? Uh, yes. If any of those marked dollar bills show up, I want you to call me. I'll be in the president's office for a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> Maisie, I-, I feel silly coming into a big bank like this and opening an account with a measly dollar. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Bill. Thrift is a wonderful thing. Yes, folks. And what can I do for you? I'd like to open... Oh, my a... goodness. Oh, the green suit. Gee, I knew that suit was terrible, Bill, but I didn't think it would scare people. Ooh. Look, Tella, I'd like to start a new account here. Start a n- new account? Mm-hmm. Well, if you're all out of new ones, we won't mind taking one that's already started. Look, I want to start my account with this. Oh, a dollar. See, Bill, and you thought they wouldn't accept such a small amount. <laughs> You thought you weren't wanted. Oh, you're wanted all right, sir, but badly. Oh, gee, thanks. Uh, you stay right here. I'll be back in a teensy-weensy second. Maisie, Maisie, there's something screwy about all this. I think so, too. You do? Yeah. Bill, that clerk was sure anxious to get your dollar. Maybe this bank hasn't been doing much business lately. <clears throat> uh, these are the people that uh, wanted to open the account, sir. Well, we did, but we've changed our minds. Goodbye. Wait a minute, lady. I've got a gun. Well, gun or no gun, you can't force us to open the account. Now, look here, you. You're, you're making a mistake. You made a mistake when you came into this bank with that green suit to make a deposit. Well, we didn't want to deposit the suit, just a dollar. Yeah, look at this dollar. Under Washington's picture is an X. You mean Washington couldn't sign his own name? You're under arrest, both of you. Under arrest? Yes, for robbing this bank. Maisie, Maisie, what's all this about? Where's all the rest of that money? Search me. Gladly. I didn't mean you, you wolf. Well, come along. I'm taking you both to headquarters. Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. the story, Miss Revere. This whole thing is just one horrible mistake, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry we put you to all the trouble of arresting us. So long, Inspector. Just a moment, Miss. The cell door is closed. Well, you open it at once or one of us is going to be mighty sorry. One of us? Yeah, me. Yeah. Miss Revere, you're a very pretty woman. You've got a lot to live for. You don't want to spend the next 20 years of your life behind bars, do you? Well, frankly, I haven't given it much thought lately. I never planned very far ahead, you know. Oh, now, look, Miss Revere, you can do yourself a lot of good if you listen to reason. Jail isn't a place for a girl like you. Well, that's what I keep telling you, Inspector. Open the door, please. Sure, sure. But first, Miss Revere, I'd like to make you a little proposition. (gasps) Why, Inspector? Uh, Please, you don't get what I'm driving at. And you don't get what you're driving at. What I'm trying to say, Miss Revere, is that if you turn state's evidence and pin that bank job on your boyfriend, Norton, you can walk out of here a free woman. It's Norton we're after. But Bill didn't do it, Inspector. He's just an actor. Yeah? How'd he get that bullet hole in his suit? Well, some actors ain't as good as others. Look, I know who robbed that bank, and I can prove it. While you're in jail, Miss Revere? Oh, I didn't think of that. 
Okay, chum. I'll talk. Now you're cooking with gas. Well, when I tell all I know about Norton, he'll be cooking with electricity. Yeah, fine, fine. Okay, Sarge, bring Norton in. Go on, Inspector. In here, Norton. Macy, Macy, are you all right? Don't talk to me, you worm. Worm? What are you sore about? You're the one that got us into this. Don't give me that big Louie. Big Louie? Alias Benny the Dip, alias Sam the Log, alias Terry the Pirate. Say, what is this? You can stop making with the innocent act, Norton. Your lady friend has confessed. Confessed? But she didn't do it. Of course I didn't, you rat. Maisie, what's gotten into you? Now, a little common sense. Norton, you're going to jail for 50 years. But, but I can't do 50 years. But do as much as you can. I mean, I've got to be out of here by tonight. I've got to audition for a part in the play. I'm a an actor, Inspector. An actor. Yeah, and a pretty good one at that. Yeah. When you showed me all that dough you robbed from them other banks, you made me believe you won it on a sweepstakes ticket. Maisie, that's ridiculous. Look, Inspector, I can prove I wasn't even in that bank. My landlady... Won't see you for a long time, Norton. Lock him up again, Sarge. I'm on, Scott. Take your hands off of him. Well, that cleans up this case. Miss Revere, you're free. Thanks, Inspector. So long, Bill. And just to make sure they don't keep you in jail more than 50 years, I'm going to send you a calendar. Wait a minute. Did you say she's going to go free, Inspector? Like a boy, chump. Like a boy. Oh, so that's it. I'm the fall guy. Maisie? Maisie, how could you do this to me? I thought you were so good, so kind, so warm-hearted. Ah, shut up. Take him away, Sarge. He's gotten on my nerves. Yeah, on mine, too. Gee whiz. Ain't he a hollering one? Come on. Yes, yeah, so long, Norton. See you in court. I think not, Inspector. Yeah, hey, now, don't you start, Captain. We got the guy that robbed the bank, and I can prove it, eh, Miss Revere? What else? You'll have to find a new pigeon, Inspector. Norton here's got an airtight alibi. I have? I mean, uh, I have. But he can't have an alibi. Norton's landlady said he didn't leave his room all day long. Well, Maisie? Well, don't be mad at me, Bill Norton. I was only doing this to get the goods on the real crook. Yeah, but I don't want the real crook. Yeah, I mean, get the goods on him. Well, I think I know who it is. The old lady's son, Roland. Roland? You think you can get the goods on him? Well, Roland's a man. So? So, I'm a woman. So? So, didn't your father ever tell you about the birds and bees, Inspector? Oh, you mean... <laughs> Why, Inspector, you're blushing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll need a little help on this caper, Inspector. A good actor. Well, Norton is an actor. <clears throat> well. Yeah, but this isn't my kind of work. I, I only act for money. There's a $500 reward for the capture. Uh, what do you want me to do, Maisie? Well, I ain't sure yet, but here's the general idea. I'll drop in on Roland and make like a gun mule. Yeah, that's Maul. A mule is a jackass. Yeah. Like I was saying, I'll be a gun mule, Bill. Give me a few minutes alone with Roland. Then you... Oh, gosh, Mom. Where are we going to put all this loot from the bank? It sure takes up a lot of room, huh? That's your fault for taking only one dollar bills. Didn't they have any tens and twenties? Say, Mom, mm. it, maybe I could have a couple of bucks to maybe take out a girl. Take out a girl? You, Roland? Well, shucks, Mom. I gotta do something for excitement. I ain't getting a kick out of them comic books like I used to, you know. Well, you stay away from women, Roland. They're slow poison. They are. They are. I'll go see if I can find a safe place to stash the dough. You keep an eye on it. Yeah, sure, Mom. Never mind, dames. Just watch the dough. Oh. Yeah. Who is there? It's experience, Roland. Experience? I don't know nobody by that name. I'm a girl, Roland. I'm Roland. A girl? Yeah. You've seen girls in ballrooms, ain't you? They're the ones that dance backwards. Let me in, handsome. Oh, gosh. A woman. In just a second. Hello, tall, dark, and... <clears throat> Blackie from Shy sent me to look you up. Blackie from Shy? Eh. Uh, oh, I don't know a Blackie from Shy. Oh. You know Whitey? No. Nope. What colors do you know? Well, as a brownie... That's that... it. Brownie sent me to look you up. Oh. I just got out of Sing Sing, Roland. Oh, you did? Sing Sing? But they only have men there. Then I got out just in time, if you know what I mean. Just in time? 
You don't know what I mean. Say, you're even handsomer than Brownie told me. Uh, yeah, hey. Does you mean it, hey? I sure do, hey. Come closer, Roland. Much closer. Oh, uh, I, uh, hey, 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 stay away from me. You female, you. My mom told me that women are slow poison. But what's your hurry? Come on, kiss me, handsome. I'm in the mood. Oh, gee, you really think I'm handsome? When I'm in the mood, anybody's handsome. Come on, shoot the lips to me, doll. Okay. Here, here hold my bubble gum. So, just like I thought, there is another man. Heavens, it's me husband. Oh, sit down, mister. We'll be through in a moment. You're married. Hey, you didn't tell me. You didn't ask me. I meant her. I didn't know he was back, Roland. I ain't seen him in years. Well, I was in prison in Afghanistan. Fine time to let me know. Why didn't you write and tell me where you were? I couldn't spell Afghanistan. Roland. Oh, Roland. Don't look at me. I can't spell it either. I mean, I'm sorry I got you into this mess. Don't shoot him, Butch. Don't shoot him. Shoot me? Too late, babe. Well, how will you have it, Roland? In the back or through the head? Oh, well, my head's been aching with... Shoot me! He's desperate, Roland. Give him anything to leave us alone. Give him money. A money! A money! Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, um, look, all I got is the dough from the bank job. They're only ones. Ones? Yeah, I'm only a beginner starting from the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Let me have the dough. Yeah, but look... You better let him have it, Roland. He's a killer. He's a very bad actor. Who's a bad actor? Why, Miss Revere, I'll have uh, you know Bill, that I... this is a fine time to get hammy. Hey, there's something fishy here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. I, 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 I... Okay, I, reach for the sky. Ay, 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 ay. Look, Mom, don't shoot. I can explain. Save your breath, honey. You ain't got much more breathing left to do. Well, son, what are you waiting for? Do something. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll phone the cops, Mom. Save your nickel, Roland. We're here. She sure got here fast, didn't they, Mom? Why, you... Drop the rod, Mother. We got you very nicely covered. Gee, you got here just in time, Inspector. Well, there's your loot. Yeah, and there's your crooks. Yeah, Inspector. Oh, look out, Mom's getting away. Yeah, she won't get far. The joint's surrounded by cops. Well, tell them if they have to shoot, to shoot her in the hand. Why? Some poor old woman can still use that dress. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. mother is safely behind bars, I can breathe again. I let Bill take all the reward money. He did miss out on getting that acting job. Besides, he needed the money more than me. But there's one good thing about being broke. Anything that happens after that's an improvement. Well, like the fellow said, the best things in life are free. And when he said that, he just wasn't beating his gum. Take a little thing like water. Simple, ain't it? But did you ever try to take a bath without it? And air. Just try breathing something else and see how far you get. Well, I still got some old clothes collecting to do for the unfortunates. So if I happen to knock at your door from this for some discarded things, don't turn me down. You know, you'd be surprised to find out how warm you can feel if you give your old coat to somebody who really needs it. <laughs> just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Joan Banks, B. Benaderet, Frank Nelson, Pat McGeehan, and Peter Leeds. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>
Hiya, babe. Say how about... Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcement. <laughs> Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. For a while I thought maybe, perhaps there was a chance it would be changed to Maisie Jordan. But my boyfriend, Eddie, well, ever since he's been old enough to hold a steady job, he hasn't. It's not that Eddie's lazy, but you see, he went to college and studied stuff like 14th century Flemish poetry. The art of rug weaving amongst the natives of Abyssinia and all that stuff there ain't a buck in. Eddie barely makes enough money to pay his room rent, so we stay home a lot. Also, we uh, both room in the same boarding house, and, oh gosh, it must be awful late. I'd better run up to Eddie's room and wake him up or he'll be late for work. Eddie? Eddie? Who's there? It's Maisie, Eddie. You told me last night to make sure to wake you up at 6.30. You remember? Hmm. What time is it now? I don't know. I don't have a watch. What time have you got? Maisie, how can I sleep with all that noise? That's what I can never understand. That loud snoring would wake anybody up. Maisie, would you please go away and let me be? I've got, uh, I've got 28 minutes yet before I have to give my all to Bixel's department store. Men's Accessories Department. I know. And I thought I'd give you a little extra time to relax before work if I brought you a little coffee. <sighs> okay, thanks. Uh, just pour it under the door. But, Eddie, it... Oh, well, I might as well get up now. I can't sleep anyway. Good. Slip on something and let me in. Sure, sure. <laughs> oh! Ooh. Eddie, what happened? I slipped on something. Okay, you can come on in now. Good morning, Eddie, darling. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Look, the sun is shining. <sighs> Maisie, that's the moon. Oh. Say, uh, what's that gray stuff? Your coffee. Oh. You'd sure make a wonderful wife. Oh, Eddie, this is so sudden. Let's get married real soon. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, how soon, for instance? Well, I hate to rush you, but would after lunch be too soon? Maisie, you know we can't get married on what I make at the store. As a matter of fact, I'm not so sure Bixel's department store feels that I'm exactly indispensable to the merchandising world. Eddie, they haven't said anything. You haven't been shooting spitballs at the floor walker with brand new imported French men's garters again, have you? You promised me faithfully you'd be the perfect salesman. It's not that, Maisie. It's just those I'm not buying. I'm just looking. Those kind of customers that I've been getting. Maisie, I, I just don't like morons. Eddie Jordan, if you don't like morons, you don't like me. Huh? I mean, if, if, you, if you can't try to make a living, then I don't mean enough to you. But you do, Maisie. You're the most wonderful, marvelous, gorgeous, most beautiful... I'm not listening to a word you say. Maisie, don't interrupt. Now, well, let's see, where was I? Most beautiful. Oh, yes, the most beautiful girl in the world. But you deserve better than me. You deserve a real man. I don't want a real man. I want you. You could be a success, too, Eddie. You'd only put your shoulder to the wheel instead of your head. Maisie, I want to talk to you. It's it's very important for both of us. But first, I have to get dressed. Okay, get dressed. And I'll wait for you down in the parlor. Good. And while you're down there, ask Mrs. Kennedy to make out my board bill for this week. Oh, paying your board bill, there must be something wrong. Eddie, what's this all about? Well, I'll be down in ten minutes and tell you, Maisie. Meanwhile, if you don't mind, I have to shower, shave, and polish my shoes. Polish your shoes? Eddie Jordan, have you met a new girl? 
So long, Maisie. I'll see you downstairs in ten minutes. And that's what Eddie said, Mrs. Kennedy. What do you think this mystery's all about? Well, that's hard to say, Maisie, honey. When any of my boarders want to pay their bill before I threaten to turn off the lights in their room a few times, there must be something wrong. Oh, gosh, Mrs. Kennedy. Do you think maybe Eddie's lost interest in me? Well, Maisie, it could be another girl. After all, Eddie's a man. Yeah? I said he's a man. Oh, I know, Mrs. Kennedy, but there are men and there are men. Eddie's different. Yeah, different. Mm. A new face, a snazzy figure means absolutely nothing to him. Yeah, means absolutely nothing to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, honey, that's that. What game shall we play now? Mrs. Kennedy, I happen to trust Eddie implicitly. Nothing you could say would make me believe that he's interested in another girl. No. No. Any idea who she may be, Mrs. Kennedy? Oh, Maisie, forget it. There's nobody else in Eddie's life. And if there were, he'd tell you about it. Yeah. Well, that's that. Now, what other game shall we play? Games? Who's playing games? Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy and me, we were just playing, um, canasta. Without cards? Well, yes. You see, we're both just learning it, and we're not good enough at it to play with cards. <laughs> uh, Maisie, I'd like to talk. No. Oh, good. I've been just dying to find out what this is all about. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, this is uh, sort of private. Yeah, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, I, I think your coffee's about to bubble over in the kitchen. Oh, yes. Don't you think you ought to watch it? What for? I've seen coffee bubbling over lots of times. It comes up in the... Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll, <clears throat> I'll go into the kitchen. Uh, bye, kitties. And if you happen to talk real loud, I thank you. Well, Eddie... Oh, uh, you mean the talk? Yeah, the talk. We're alone now. Nobody can hear us. What? She said nobody can hear you. Oh, uh, thanks. You're welcome. You might as well come back in, Mrs. Kennedy. I don't like to strain my voice. Oh, uh -huh. well, if you insist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maisie, honey, I'm not fit for this store salesman work. It, it, well, it doesn't do anything to me inside. Except feed it. But this is a salesman's job. I I just can't sell things. Well, you sold me, honey, and I don't buy easily. You got everything to make you a success, Eddie. You're cultured and you're cultured. Yeah, what else? Well, you, you write beautiful love letters. Yes, but it so happens you can't make money writing love letters. I had a girlfriend who did. She sold them back to the banker who wrote them. Maisie, honey, I've made up my mind. I finish work at the store tonight. And then this little piggy is going far, far away to seek his fortune. Going away, Eddie? Any place in particular, Rover Boy, or are you just going to ad-lib it? Well, gee, Eddie, I, I don't want to hold you back from anything you really want to do, but where do you plan to go? Well, Horace Greeley said go west. Eddie Jordan, have you been talking to strange men in bars again? Maisie, Horace Greeley is an old newspaper man. Oh. <laughs> he died quite some time ago. Probably from starvation. There's no money in old newspapers. I wouldn't know. You know something? Maybe I'll get a job on a ranch and be a cowboy. Oh, that's silly, Eddie. You can't be a cowboy. You don't even play a guitar. I'll take lessons. Yes, sir. I think I'll really enjoy being a cowboy. I can see myself now milking a cow in a ten-gallon hat. You mean instead of in a pail? Oh, don't be so silly, Mrs. K. And don't you be silly, Eddie. You don't know how to milk a cow. Well, you don't even know where it keeps its crankcase. Look, honey, I have to do something to make a living. I have to eat, you know. Yep, and you might as well start with some breakfast. Nobody can make a real good fool of himself on an empty stomach. I'll fix you some grub, Tex. Gee, I'm sorry to be letting you down like this, Maisie, but... Well, I gotta latch onto something with a future... I'll never get rich selling men's socks. But, Eddie, you just gotta stick to something. You just can't go roaming around the country trying to earn a buck. Why not? You do it, don't you? But it's different in my case. I'm a woman. So what? There's no difference between men and women. There must be, or they wouldn't have special nights for each at Turkish baths. Oh, don't be corny. And don't you be so stubborn. I'm giving you good advice. You don't want to spend the rest of your life being a flop, do you? Oh, so I'm a flop. Yeah, but in a nice way. Yeah. 
So long, Maisie. Where are you going, Eddie? To work. But you haven't eaten your breakfast. I might as well get used to going without breakfast. Oh. Well, here it is, Eddie. A nice hot dish of oatmeal. Where'd Eddie go, Maisie? To work. He wasn't hungry. Something was bothering him. What something was bothering him? Me. Good, good morning, Maisie. Good, good morning, Mrs. Kennedy. Good morning, Merton. Good morning, Merton. Uh, well, what's wrong, Maisie? Have a fight with Eddie? No, thanks. I just had one. Eat your breakfast, Mr. Sunshine. Got a special today. You got your choice of oatmeal. What's the choice? Take it or leave it. Oh. Maisie, honey, you aren't eating. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. K. I'm not hungry. Every time I think of poor Eddie, I get a lump in my throat. Every time I eat Mrs. Kennedy's oatmeal, I get a lump in mine. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, well, I just cracked that joke to cheer you folks up, folks. Save your comedy for Mr. Jordan Mert. He's the one that needs cheering up. Gil, things ain't from breaking good for Ed. Um, how's about a slice of toast, Mrs. K? Sure, Mert. What kind? White or whole wheat? No, it makes no difference. I want to put it under the leg of the chair. I got the wobbly one again this morning. Here, Mert, you can have my chair. I'm finished. Okay. Oh, but Maisie, honey, you got to eat something. I'm not hungry anymore, ever since Eddie said he's going to quit his job. Who's going to quit? Mm. Right in the middle of the contest? Contest? What contest? Mm. Oh, haven't you heard? Heard what? Mm. And he didn't tell you. Who didn't tell me? Oh, Eddie. Mm. Gee, Miss Kelly... This jam is good. Oh, for goodness sake, Merton, what is it? Strawberry, I think. I mean the contest. Yeah, oh. what's it about? What happens? Take the spoon out of your cup while you're drinking your coffee. And what has it to do with Eddie? Uh, huh? Oh, oh, well, you see, the store is having a contest and giving prizes for the one who wins. Wins what? The contest. Merton, stop talking so much and saying so little. Yeah, you're an elevator operator, not a politician. Now, the salesman and the sales lady who sell the most stuff by closing time tonight wins a $500 prize. Say, they've got about 200 salespeople. Oh, yeah. I guess that's why Eddie's so discouraged. He's probably close to the bottom in the amount of sales made so far. Uh uh. He ain't close to the bottom. He isn't? He isn't? Nope. He's at the bottom. Oh. Uh, well, there's one good thing about it he can't go any lower. Hmm. Well, Maisie, honey. I can't very well blame Eddie for not telling you. The contest was the final straw that decided him on quitting the store. The poor boy was ashamed of being such an awful flop with his order book. Yeah, poor Eddie. He's such a helpless little schnook. I guess the only person he's ever been able to sell was me. You know, what that boy really needs is for something to happen to give him faith in himself. Yeah. Like maybe by some miracle winning that prize at the store. Mm. Yeah, if he only had imagination like Henry Carter, he'd stand a chance. Who's Henry Carter? He's in ladies' girdles. I hope the dear boy finds them comfortable. I don't. Don't, don't you? Oh, I mean, he sells them. Henry's lead man in the contest so far. And you know, the funny thing about it is that most of his customers are men. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Most men are just interested in what goes into the girdles. <laughs> That's how Henry sells them. With mm-hmm. women already in them? Say, that store carries everything, doesn't it? No, let me finish. You see, Henry sells all those girdles to men by demonstrating how funny their wives look when they're struggling into one. Oh, say, that's showmanship. (laughs) Imagine Henry winning that contest because of a simple little idea like that. Yeah. He's going to win 500 bucks just because he found something new that appealed to men. I've got it. Got what? What? Well, it ain't new, but it's appealed to men before laughs. Women. Women. Yeah, Mrs. Kennedy. You've heard of bazaars where men kiss women for charity. Oh, yeah. Well, what I mean is that Eddie could maybe win that selling contest if he had an idea behind it. Well, I'm that idea. I'm giving out kisses today at Vixel's department store. Uh, I don't get it. You will if you buy a pair of socks. Pair of socks? Yeah, that's it. And I've got a slogan. Buy a sock from Eddie and get a snack from Maisie. What do you think? I think it's worth a try, Maisie. Gosh, imagine kissing all those men. Uh, I don't like it. How do you know? Have you ever kissed any men? I, um, I mean, well, Eddie wouldn't like his girlfriend kissing strange men so as he could be a success. Oh, that's silly. Look in the movies. 
Stars with husbands and families kiss Jimmy Stewart and Van Johnson, don't they? Doesn't mean anything. It's a living. Yeah. And if that ain't living, I don't know what is. Mm. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right, Maisie. Good. Then you then you'll help me, Merton. Help you? Oh God. Gosh, I don't think a man would want to kiss me. Especially when I need a shave. No, no. I mean, let me use your elevator as a sort of a display case. My elevator? You mean you... you Yeah, and if you do, I won't forget. Now, don't say no, Merton. Say you'll do it. Oh. Oh. Okay, Miss Kenny. Okay, I'll do it. More jam, please. No, no, no. Not like that, Merton. Look me in the face and say you'll do it. Come on now. Look me in the face. Please, Mrs. Kennedy, not while I'm eating. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. gentlemen, from Mr. Jordan, Miss Revere here will give the buyer a kiss. Uh A kiss? From this doll here? Well, let's get a better look at you, baby. Uh Uh-uh, chum. Please don't handle the merchandise. Oh, wow, I'm sold. Yeah, me too, baby. Ninth floor boy. Roger. (laughs) Take him away, Mert. Just show your sales receipts, gentlemen, and collect your kiss here on the main floor. Yeah, yeah, and remember, gentlemen, for five dollars worth of merchandise bought from Eddie Jordan... You kiss me. For ten dollars worth of sales... I sort of help a little. And for $20? Eh, uh, for 20 bucks, mister, all you do is hold on. Oh, wow! Here goes the savings of a lifetime. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go, gentlemen. Get with it, boy, boy, boy. Get with M for Maisie Flight, now taking off. Over. <laughs> I saw these shorts first. I saw them first. Let go! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, you just turn those shorts in half. Good. Wrap my half, clerk. Here's your money. You never mind wrapping my half, clerk. I'll take them like they are. Clerk, I'll take these socks. Okay, but first put my shoes back on. Those socks were mine. Well, they're mine now. Here's your money. Well, aren't you going to wait for your change, mister? You, you've got something coming to you. You ain't kidding, friend. My lips are all puckered up for it. Say, I don't get this. I must have sold $10,000 worth of merchandise. Never mind the gab, Clay. Like, here's your dough. I'm taking these bedroom slippers. 30 pairs of bedroom slippers, mister? All right, so I'm a centipede. Now, out of my way. I'm in a hurry. Everybody's in a hurry. What's the rush Wrap for... this up for me, will you, Clark? Wrap this? But it's just a sign that says mark down to three ninety eight. Yeah, okay, here's four bucks. Keep the change. I'm in a hurry. Say, somebody answer me, please. Why am I the only salesman on this floor that's doing a land office business? I don't know, Jordan. It's phenomenal, but it's phenomenal. Oh, hello, Mr. Grund. I think you'd better get them to send some more merchandise up here. The only thing that has been bought is the counter itself. Say, Clerk, that wouldn't be for sale. No, mister, the counter is not for sale. Oh, nuts. Or is it, Mr. Grund? Oh, hardly, Joe, but hardly. Oh, my word, Jordan, in all my years as floor walker here in pictures... I've never seen merchandise move so fast. Why, it's fantastic. Oh, it's but it's fantastic. Now, keep this up, Jordan, and you'll outsell Henry Carter. Gee, and win that 500-buck prize with one day of sales. Hey, hey. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Grunt. Uh, what can I sell you today, sir? <laughs> what have you got? Well, I'll take I've, it. Hit uh... you, don't fight. Come on! <laughs> Now, there's a fellow with sales resistance, Mr. Grunt. Amazing, Joe, but it's me. How'd you do it? Oh, isn't hard, Mr. Grunt. You see, I learned the real art of salesmanship at college. The other salesmen here at the store just don't seem to have, well, uh, my flair for merchandise. I'm taking these socks, clerk. Sure, just put the money in my pocket. I'm tired. You're not too tired to see Mr. Bixler, I hope, Jordan. The owner of the store wants to see me? I say, clerk, clerk, uh, clerk, why would I... Go away, boy, you bother me. Oh, gentlemen, Go on, get away. 
like that. Uh, well, I believe I can let Mr. Bixell have a few minutes of my time, Grun, my boy. Oh, that's good of you, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Bixell wants to see you down at his office at once. At once? So that is, if you can spare the time. <laughs> I believe Mr. Bixell is so impressed with your phenomenal sales methods that he's uh, considering promoting you to sales manager. <laughs> Wise move on the old man's part. Well, I can make a feeble effort to hold down the fort until you return from Mr. Say, Bixell. how much are those? Well, I'll take them so long. Well, not bad, Mr. Grun. You learn real fast. Well, I'm off to see the old man. <laughs> No checky, no kissy. Here's mine. Thank you. Next, please. Here's mine. Thank you. Next. Hey, that was only a kiss on the forehead. Well, after all, you only spent a dollar. You come up a little, mister, and I'll come down a little. <laughs> Next, please. Uh, here, missy, I bought $80 worth of merchandise. Oh, well, that's nice work, Grandpa. <laughs> Hold him up, Mert. Roger. Uh, Here goes uh, my white whiskered friend. Smile now, please, so as I can locate your lips. Hey, what goes on here? Here, let me through. I'm sorry, mister. You've got to wait your turn. You... Mr. Bixell. Young man, I asked you a question. I'm sorry, Mr. Bixell. I'm being buzzed. Passengers, you know. I didn't hear any buzzer. Well, I never wait till the last minute. Well, there you are, Grandpa. Oh. Next, please. Yeah, miss, I'd like... Get in line, mister. They'd all like to. Yeah, I'd like to know what this is all about. Well, at your age, you should already know what it's all about. Miss, yes. I did... Oh, the impatient kind. Okay, where's your sales check? Your sales check? No sales check, no kisses. Next. Miss, do you know who I am? I don't care if you're old chowderhead Bixel himself. No slips, no lips. Next. Bixel is a chowder head. But he's got to be not to recognize a great ability like my boyfriend. Miss, do you know who I am? I'm chowder head Bixel. I don't care if you're... You're chowder head? Well, you know who my boyfriend is? No. Thank goodness. Come with me, miss. I'd like to see you in my office. Uh, office, huh? Well, it's so long, fellas. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. But here, I'll blow you all a kiss. Oh, there, share it among oh, Let me get this straight, Miss Revere. Giving out kisses for sale. Oh, well, that's right, Mr. Bixell. Eddie needed to win that prize to give him courage and self-assurance. So while he was carrying on for dear old Bixell's on the ninth floor... You were carrying on on the main floor. Um, well, um, you're not going to keep Eddie from winning the contest, are you? You're not going to fire him, are you, huh? Are you? Is this selling merchandise with kisses, Miss Revere? Whose idea was it? Well, Mr. Bixell, I kind of thought it was a crazy idea. Well, I think it's marvelous. Oh, so did Eddie. When that boy gets an idea that he thinks is great, he sticks to it. Hey, Jordan thought up this sensational merchandising stunt. Uh-huh. That's rather difficult to believe. Yeah, ain't it? I mean, you've underestimated Eddie. He's got brains. Well, I never noticed it. Well, that's because they're so hard to see. They're inside his head. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a more convenient place for them. Well, Eddie has lots more great ideas for selling stuff, Mr. Bixell. Uh, Miss Revere, I have practically decided to make Jordan our new sales manager. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Bixell. I'm so happy I could kiss you. Well, Miss Revere, why don't you? But, uh, uh, Jordan uh, hasn't sold out everything in the store. I can still buy something from him uh, if you'll accept the sales stuff later. Oh, you don't have to, Mr. Bixell. This is our house. Come in. I was told that you wanted to see me, Mr. Bush. Maisie. Hello, Eddie. You know you've got the loveliest boss. Oh, you're a lucky chap, Jordan, having a girl who thinks so much of you. Maisie, I never thought you could do a thing like this. But it's done now, Eddie, and now you're the new salesman. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are, Jordan. If I had any doubts before, this lovely girl has convinced me. Obviously, you old Rue. What? You're... Eddie, you're making a big mistake. You're the one that's making the mistake, you... you... you vamp. Vamp? 
If the only way I can get ahead is for my girl to play up to the boss in that disgusting manner, then I don't want to get ahead. Jordan, how dare you? Eddie, don't spoil everything. You've just gotten a big executive job. You don't have to punch clocks anymore. No. I've got something I'd enjoy punching very much more. Jordan, stand back. I'm warning you. Eddie, don't, Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Well... Just don't stand there, Maisie. Help me up. And out, Miss Revere. He's fired. Get your time and don't come back. I don't want my money. Well, you better take it, Eddie. You're going to need beefsteaks for both those black eyes when we get home. Both? I only have one black eye. I know, but we're not home yet. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, poor Eddie. He's still suffering from the foot and mouth disease. Every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it. Frankly, I couldn't blame Eddie for being amazed at what he saw in Mr. Bixell's office. He had a perfect right. Too bad Mr. Bixell had a perfect left. But Eddie was unreasonable about not listening to my explanation. I know if I caught Eddie kissing a strange girl, I'd listen to his reason first before I'd call him a liar. I know I may sound cynical, but I've been around a lot, and I can always tell when a man is lying. If his lips are moving, he's lying. <laughs> Funny thing, though, I'm not really mad at Eddie for making that big blunder. At least he showed that he really loved me. And to a woman, love is the most valuable commodity turned out by a man. Well, I better get down to the butchers and buy that beefsteak for Eddie. Hmm. I wonder if there's a special cut for black eyes. <laughs> You've just heard the adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included B. Benaderet, Frank Nelson, Howard McNear, Pat McGeehan, Peter Leeds, and Sidney Miller. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer.
now here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the fella said. Maisie Revere. And I'm a showgirl. An out-of-work showgirl. I just quit a nightclub because the manager wanted me to show a little too much. So I just packed my old black suitcase and hit the road. It was way out west where men are supposed to be. Only for miles and miles I didn't see any. Then as luck would have it, I stumbled up to a farmhouse and the farmer, a really nice widowed gentleman named Jed Parker, surprised me by offering me a job. And I surprised him by taking it. <laughs> I'd never worked on a farm before and I never realized what a leisurely life farm work is. You cook the meals, draw the water from the well, feed the chickens, clean the house, churn the butter, scrub the laundry, and simple little chores like that. Well, you'll have to pardon me now, folks. I've got to get to work. Well, how's it coming, Maisie? Oh, good evening, Mr. Parker. Evening? Maisie, it's morning. It is. <laughs> and how come it's so dark? <laughs> you still got your eyes closed. Oh, <laughs> Yes, I'm still not used to getting up so early, boss. Oh, I know farming is hard work, Maisie, but it's done you a lot of good. It's making a new woman out of you. Well, gee, you're, you're very kind, Mr. Parker. Oh, you're the one that's kind, Maisie. You can stay here as long as you want. I like you. <laughs> and Timmy worships the ground you walk on. And I think that son of yours is a wonderful boy. Handsome, too. Oh, you really think so, Maisie? I mean, Miss Revere. Timmy, you got everything that Van Johnson has. And I pity the poor girls around here when you start breaking it in. Van Johnson? Sure. Oh, you're just laughing at me. <laughs> no, we're not, Timmy. You're my little sweetheart. I am? Gosh. <laughs> well, stop blushing, sweetheart, and go down and get the mail. Yes, uh, oh, yes, sure. Pa, uh, would you like to walk down to the mailbox with me, Maisie? I want to ask you something, uh, well, sort of personal. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to keep a while, Timmy. I still got these rugs to beat. Oh, okay, Maisie. I'll be right back. Yeah, Maisie, let me beat those rugs for you. You must be tired. Uh-uh. Beating rugs is the one thing I enjoy. I keep imagining each rug is a personal enemy of mine. <laughs> well, okay, then. I'll get to work. Hmm. Now, on with the fun. My agent, <coughs> the guy that sold me these tight shoes, <coughs> the cricket that kept me up last night. Ouch! Oh, I'm sorry, Cricket. I didn't think you were listening. Miss, I'm not a Cricket. I'm Judge Snodgrass. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Judge. But you shouldn't hide behind rugs. Where did I hit you? In the... Never mind, never mind. Oh, that low, huh? Well, that's what you get for snooping. I was not snooping, Miss. I've got the farm the other side of the fence. And say, I ain't seen you around before. You ain't Jed Parker's new wife by any chance, are you? Nope. One of his kinfolk, maybe? Nope. I'm just staying here. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. Now, what's on your nasty old mind? You tell Jed Parker for me that I won't have his hens laying eggs on my property. Oh, no you, Sonny. From what I've seen of hens, when they're going to lay an egg, they're going to lay an egg. You ain't heard the end of this, young woman. Well, I better get back to my place. Morning air is not good for me. <coughs> got a cold in my head, and I don't want it to get down to my chest. Well, why don't you just tie a knot in your neck? <laughs> I'm back, Maisie. See, isn't that Judge Snodgrass walking down the path? Yeah. Seems like the judge and our hens don't see eye to eye. Oh. Um, any of that mail for me, Timmy? Oh, uh, no, just the weekly paper and some bills and my dancing lesson. Dancing lesson? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's dancing that I really wanted to ask you about, Maisie. Oh? Yeah, but will you do me the honor to accompany me to our high school dance next Saturday night at 8.30, formal? Oh, well, Timmy, I'd love to, but... Gee, think of the difference in our ages. Oh, what difference does a year or two make, Maisie? A year or two? Oh, Timmy, I love you. You do? <laughs> Honest? When did you first know? I mean, am I... Am I interrupting something, old chap? Oh, well, Timmy, your voice suddenly got older. Oh, <laughs> hello. I, I don't think we've met. Uh, Ronald Thornton, a neighbor, miss. And how do you do? Well, likewise, don't you know? I'm Maisie Revere. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Say, you ain't, I mean, uh, aren't a farmer, are you? Uh, Maisie, about the dance. Well, I came to this country principally to study American agricultural methods, uh, mostly animal husbandry. Oh, I never knew animals actually had husbands. 
I just thought they sort of ad-libbed those things. <laughs> Maisie, uh, I'd sure like to take you to that dance. Well, that's a joke, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I mean it. I'd like her to go with me. No, I meant about the animal husbandry, Timmy. Oh. I made her dropped over to find out if you've seen her. Oh, no, no. Her old lady keeps her under lock and key. Maisie, about keeps the... Keeps who under lock and key, Ronald? They're having a three-piece band and... Oh, the girl the... I love, Mr. Vieira, Joan Hooper. Oh. It's a lost cause, I'm afraid. But why? I'm sure Maisie likes to dance. No, I mean my chances of marrying Joan. But why, Ronald? If the boy and girl are in love, that's all that matters, I always say. And that's what I always say, too. This means an awful lot to me, Maisie. I know it does. And we must do something about it. Yeah, sure, Maisie. When it's the real thing, we must make the most of each precious moment. That's right. We should bring Ronald and Joan together. We... Ronald and Joan? Sure. But how, Miss Rivia? Frankly, I'm going a bit out of my mind. You ain't the only one, Maisie. Timmy, come here at once. Just a minute, Timmy. Pop. Oh, all right. I'll see you later, Maisie. Now, Ronald... If you don't mind my button in, what's the score between you and this Joan? Oh, well, Mr. Dear, I, I suppose I'm too madly in love with Joan to have any pride left. If, if only I could see her once in a while. Gosh, the love bug sure has bitten a big chunk out of you. <laughs> yes, but, but Joan's mother simply abhors the idea of her daughter marrying a mere farmer. The Hoopers are sort of the local upper crust, you see. Oh, uh, Prue, what's the upper crust anyway? Just a bunch of crumbs held together by their own dough. Say, what that Joan needs is a little spunk talked into her. What's her phone number? Oh, I couldn't telephone her. Her mother knows my voice. But she don't know mine. And I've got an idea how to get her out of the house. But, but... but... There's no buts about it. You want to have children someday, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. But Mrs. Hooper would never forgive Joan and me if we got married. And your children would never forgive if you didn't. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I would like to talk to Mrs. J. Crosley Hooper, please. This is her. I mean, she. Who is this? I mean, whom? Oh, uh, well, this is the society editor of Whom's Who. I mean, uh, Who's Whom. We are inaugurating a new supplement to our publication, Mrs. Hooper, entitled The Most Outstanding Debutantes of the Year. And your daughter, Joan, has been selected as one of them. My kid? I mean, my daughter, one of the most outstanding debutantes of the year. Wow! I mean, really? Uh, yes, really. We should like to take a picture of Joan to publish in our forthcoming edition. Uh, would you have her come out to the Jed Parker farm immediately? I mean, immediately. The Jed Parker farm? But why not take the picture right here in our $178,000 home, surrounded by the culture amongst which she was born? Oh, that's a very good question, Mrs. Hooper. Have her at the Parker farm immediately. That is, unless you don't care to have Joan's picture appear in print. Oh, sure, sure. Keep your pants... I mean, <laughs> don't be impatient. Uh, Joan will be there. Au revoir, my dear. That's French, you know. Really? Well, you could have fooled me. Goodbye now. Joan! Joan, come downstairs at once! For just a minute, Mother. What's all the ruckus about, Gussie? Crosley, how many times must I tell you to desist from calling me Gussie? You know what you should call me. Yeah, but I don't like to do it in front of our kid. I mean, now that we're accepted into society, I wish you'd refer to me as Augustine. And take your feet off the dining room table. Well, don't get all head up, Gussie. I got my shoes off, ain't I? Please, Crosley, don't be vulgar. It's our Joan. They want her picture took as one of the most outstanding debutantes of the season. Well, gee, what do you know? Our little stinker in society. <laughs> Making her debut. Not debut, egghead. It's a debut. Debut. Yes. Anyway, this will be wonderful for Joan. She'll meet new men. Now, look, Gussie, why do you have to interfere with a poor kid's love life? Pooh. Marry a farmer. Our Joni will be brought up amongst culture, not agriculture. Think of our family position. <laughs> family position? Eh? What family position? Mine, Crosley, naturally. After all, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And a tin tray in your hand. Crosley! Uh... <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, darling.
darling, it's been so long. I, I didn't dream that I'd find you here at the farm. Well, it's old Miss Revere's idea. She, she brought us together. Oh. Yeah, but the thing is to keep you together. And there's one real yummy way. Marriage. Will you, Joan? Oh, gee, I'd love to. But, Mother... What's that old crow got to do with it? Please, that old crow happens to be my mother. I mean, well, despite what she's done, she still loves me. Well, so do I, darling. And uh, don't you want to marry me? Oh, I do, Ronnie, in the worst way. Well, then do it without your mother's consent. That's probably the worst way. But, well, but... <laughs> why not? You're both old enough, aren't you? I mean, for a license. Well, I'm 28. And I'm almost 18. I'm 17 and 7 eight. Well, that ain't exactly a December and May wedding, but there, there is a sizable difference in your ages. Oh, and you think that's not good? Well, maybe I've done too much thinking. Look, you two wait here. I'm going in the barn and talk to Timmy Parker and get an innocent bystander's opinion. Timmy! Oh, Timmy! Here I am, Maisie. Oh, Timmy. Huh? I want to talk to you about something very serious. Something serious? Yeah. How do you feel about marriage? Well, I think that... Huh? M me? M marriage? Yeah. I feel that that's the only answer to our problem right now, don't you? Well, but, Miss Revere, I mean, Maisie, this is so sudden. Well, I know, Timmy. It was for me, too. I'll have to ask my pop what he thinks first. Oh, I, I know he'll bring up the matter of the difference in ages. Oh, but that doesn't matter when two people both want each other so desperately, does it? Doesn't it? I mean, of course it doesn't. Uh, does it? Well, that's a question I want you to answer, Timmy. Oh, well, I guess when it's bigger than both of us, who are we to fight against it? Then the answer is yes? I, I guess so. Uh, but when? When? Right away, of course. Right away? Well, sure. Timmy. Hmm? What do people in this town, people madly in love who can't wait, do to get married quick like without waiting for a license? Well, 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 oh, they they drive to Quigley. Judge Wiggins there don't ask too many questions. Good. Well, I'll go to Quigley. All? Sure. The four of us. Joan, Ronald, you and I. That'll solve the witness problem. What? Oh, oh, yeah. I've got to have witnesses. I can be ready as soon as I finish my algebra homework. Oh, I'm so glad that you and I both see eye to eye on this desperate step. Oh, golly, Timmy, I'm so happy about it, I could kiss you. Oh, please, Maisie, not now. Later, when it'll be legal. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. <laughs> Judge Wiggins, I hope we're not keeping you up. Well, yeah, I do all my marrying nights and my sleeping days. Couldn't you folks come back later to... Judge. Uh, no, I'm sorry, old chap, but we, we just couldn't wait. Isn't that right, Joan? Oh, no, darling, just couldn't. No, and I'm in a hurry too, Judge, so put some toothpicks under your eyelids and start. Well, we can't without Timmy. Where is that boy? Yeah, where is the other witness? Yes. Hmm? Here I am, Macy. I was just making a just-married sign for the back of my... I mean, our jalopy. I love tradition, Maisie, don't you, dear? Sure, honey, sure. Well, we're ready, Judge. Judge. Oh, dear, he's gone to sleep again. I say, Judge, old chap, do open your eyes and let's have at it. I'll wake him up with his gavel. Uh, ten dollars to ten days. Uh, oh, yes, a wedding. Uh, uh, take your places. Okay. Uh, do I take the bride's hand, Judge? Oh, well, hardly, old boy. I'll do that. You? Well, naturally, Timmy. Then after the ceremony, he goes on a honeymoon with the bride. He goes? Say, that's going a little too far. 
Don't you think so, Joan? Well, of course not. I, I, I expect it. You do? Jimmy, didn't your father tell you about the facts of life? Yeah, but gosh, he must have skipped something. Maisie, won't it be a little embarrassing to have Ronald along on our honeymoon? Well, of course not, Timmy. You see, our honeymoon? Yeah. Timmy, I'm the one that's getting married. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Joan, but Maisie asked me first. Well, I'm afraid there's been a mistake, Timmy. She's marrying me. Are you, Maisie? No, he means Joan. He and Joan. He and J- Hmm. Oh. Oh, well, silly of me to think I'm that... sorry, Timmy. Oh, yeah. so am I, Timmy. You're not the groom. You're just the best man. I mean, the best kid. Shit. Oh, fine thing. I had to put on my new jeans for nothing. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? Judge. Judge. Pop out of it, my lad. Yeah, wake up. <laughs> yes? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, sure. Uh, 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 dearly beloved, uh, we are gathered together... To witness the marriage of... Hurry up, Easter. Judge. i got to get back to high school, and so does the bride. Timmy. The bride. Uh, how old are you, my dear? Uh, old? Old. Uh, you have to be 18 to get married. If not, you must have the consent of your parents. Oh, fine. Uh, well, miss, how old are you? 20. Uh, 22. <laughs> Seems to be a slight difference of opinion. Uh, ah, so, I'm just in time, huh? Yeah, Mr. Parker, it's almost over. Timmy... You're not marrying that, that show person. Well, now, I say, old chap, you've got this thing all wrong. It's that, 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 that actress I've had all wrong. She's not going to marry my son. Oh, well, Mr. Parker, it's Joan and Ronald that are getting married. Oh. Uh. Well, shall we start again? I'm, I'm a tired man. Do you, Joan, uh, Where's her folks? Home. Go ahead, Judge. Do you, Oh, Joan? then they gave the consent, huh? Couldn't be married unless they did. Joan's underage, you know. Do you, Joe? <laughs> underage? Oh, now look what you've done, Mr. Parker. Oh, please, Judge, please. I love him. Yeah, I'm sorry, little girl. You come back when you're 18. And now, good night. Well, oh. Dad, you sure did it. Oh, my mother will never give her consent. She wants me to marry a blue blood. Yeah, red clashed with her carpets. Oh, gee, kids, I'm sorry. Well, Mr. Parker, I'm not through yet. Some way, I don't know how. I'm going to get these two kids married if it has to be over your dead body. And at the moment, that's a very tempting idea. Crosley, Joan, listen to this telegram. Oh, isn't it too, too thrilling? It's from Ronnie's sister, Lady Millicent Smythe Smythe. His sister is a lady? Yes, you lucky girl. And it seems that Ronnie is really Lord Sir Baron Duke Thornton. Lord Sir Baron Duke? Not Count also? Oh, silly boy. Counts are French. And dear, dear Ronnie is British. I never knew Ronnie had a sister. Oh, and an immensely wealthy one. The dame's loaded. I mean, (laughs) quite well off. Listen to the rest of the wire. I am passing through the colonies en route to South Africa to visit the diamond mines Mater and Pater left to me and Brater. Brater? Crosley, didn't you learn anything at school? That's Latin for brother. Lady Millicent obviously has educated brains. But to me, she sounds like a screwball. Joan, dear, that is hardly the way to speak of your future sister-in-law. Sister-in-law? Oh, you mean me and Ronnie? Oh, Mother! Exactly. Now, here's the rest of the telegram. Suggest you arrange wedding my brother and your daughter whilst I am there. We'll arrive at four, coming direct to your residence. Your daughter is a very lucky girl. Signed, Lady Millicent Smythe Smythe. She's lucky? Why, Ronnie's the lucky one to get a girl like Joan. Oh, who cares who's lucky, as long as I'm going to be Mrs. Lord Sir Baron Duke Thornton. Well, I'd better hurry and get into something nice for the wedding. Well, Crosley, aren't you going to get dressed for the wedding? Dressed? You you mean a tie and everything? Yes. And wear your tails like you did at the opening of the opera. Tails? And no brown shoes this time. Okay, all right. Oh, darling, it'll be a beautiful ceremony. And we'll have dear, dear Judge Snodgrass perform it. Oh, I know he'll be just delighted to meet Lady Millicent. (laughs) Well, Crosley... You haven't said a word about the lovely plans I have. Aren't you going to say something? 
Raw, raw, raw. Curious too. Lady Millicent Smythe Smythe. Well, well, cherry oh, pip pip, be boss and all that sort of thing. Oh, Ronnie, my dear, dear brother. Ronnie, it's uh, hello, Millicent, old girl. It is quite a surprise seeing you. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Jolly seeing you again, old girl. I, I I trust everything at the old castle of ours is quite uh, jolly. How are the moats? Uh, the moats? Oh, they're fine. They send you their dearest regards, you know. <laughs> All sorts of greetings from your cronies in Leicester Square. But that's Lester. Oh, yes, yes. Lester sends his regards, too. <laughs> Laid up, the poor chap is. Hurt his leg. It's some game of spot. Oh. Cricket? No, broke it. Broke it? Oh, <laughs> such a delightful sense of humor. <laughs> oh, so this is the lovely bride. Oh, oh, dear, no. I'm her mother. Oh, and so young, too. Jidoo. Jidoo. This is the bride, my daughter Joan. Jidoo. Jidoo. I'm her old man. Jidoo. Jidoo yourself. Put it there, sister. Uh, but what, where? Oh, uh, you you mustn't mind my husband, Lady Smythe. You see, he, he was raised on a ranch. Well, what say? Shall we get this wedding what not over with what? Uh, yes, yes, I believe I heard the judge's car pull up a moment ago. Judge Snodgrass. Well, I'm here, ready to perform the ceremony. Howdy, Crosley, Joan. Ronald? Oh, oh Judge Snodgrass. <laughs> Judge Snodgrass, this is Ronnie's sister from England, Lady Millicent Smythe. A oh, no. Fair to Midland. Lady Millicent, what are you doing with Joan's veil over your face? I well, just thought I'd wear it till after the ceremony. My face gets chilled from the draught. Well, Lady Millicent, I'll, I'll get you something else. A pillow, perhaps. Oh, oh, don't bother, really. The veil will do. We British are quite used to rushing at you now. Well, Joan needs that veil more than you. Uh, that's what you think. Now, nobody's holding up the wedding of my daughter to the man she loves. Yeah, let's get it going. I gotta get the doctors for another treatment. Some fresh girl hit me plumb on my sacroiliac over at the Parkers this morning. Uh, may, I mean, Millicent, uh, let Joan have the veil and let's go on with the wedding. Our train leaves shortly. Yes, our honeymoon train. Yeah, so give us that veil. Oh, <laughs> Rosalie, you shouldn't have. If I ever see that girl again, I'll... You! Yes, Crosley, you shouldn't have. But Judge Snodgrass, you know Lady Millicent. I know her, and believe me, she ain't no lady. Now, listen, you old goat. Just because I happen to be working at the Parker farm. Oh, working. Oh, oh my, I think I'm going to faint. She ain't royalty. Oh, but she did it for us, Mother, for Ronnie and me. Yes, we love each other, Mrs. Hooper. Joan will never marry this farmer. Do you hear me? Never. Like heck she won't. That's the spirit, Pop. Crossley, how dare you talk like that? Shut up, Gussie, shut up. Oh, now, see here, Mr. Hooper. Judge Snodgrass, would you like to be a little angel? Well, sure. Then drop dead. Oh, Crossley. Crosley, you haven't spoken to me like that ever. Not in 20 years. Then I'm 20 years late. Then we can be married, Father. You're darn right you can. Oh, oh Joan, yeah. darling, at last. Well, if Mrs. Hooper's against it, I won't perform the ceremony. But we'll miss our train. No, you won't. We're all going back to Judge Wiggins over in Quigley in a hurry. And Joan. Yes, maybe. If we're ever going to get Judge Wiggins through it, you'd better bring an alarm clock. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
now, once again, here's Maisie. Well, so Joan and Ronnie were married, and I sure hope they live happily ever after. And they will if they remember one important thing. It isn't the saying of I do at the wedding ceremony that's important. It's the things they do after that count. For instance, if you have an argument with your wife and she's right, come to her and admit it. But if she's wrong, take her to the movie. Well, I gotta hit the road again. Living out in the open ain't for a city gal like me. All that health can kill a person. She is a long way back to Brooklyn, especially if you're traveling by thumb. Well, gotta get going. Come on, feet. Mush. <laughs> Just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included B. Benaderet, Ben Wright, Hans Conried, Sheldon Leonard, Will Wright, Earl Ross, Sammy Hill, and Sidney Miller. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs> your question, buddy. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the fella said. Maisie Revere. When I was just a kid, I had to leave school to help support the family. My old man was the superstitious type. He wouldn't work any week that had a Tuesday in it. So naturally, I always hungered for a real formal schooling. And finally, my dream came true. Today is graduation day. Gosh, I'm nervous. There on the platform is Professor McVicker handing out the diplomas. When the professor called out my name and asked me to come up for my diploma, I was so excited I almost swallowed my gum. Maisie Revere? Yes, honey. Uh, I mean, Professor. Miss Revere. Yes. As a reward for your conscientious efforts, those long, grueling hours of study, this institution awards you its highest badge of merit. Your diploma. Oh, gee. Now, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I? I. Your name, please. Your name, please. Oh, I mean, Maisie Revere. I promise never, by word or action, to violate the sacred trust with which I have been endowed. So do I. Uh, uh, Miss Revere, it gives me no pleasure whatsoever to present you with this diploma. Oh, gee, thanks, Professor. Golly, just think. Now I'm a full-fledged manicurist. Now, um, what barber shop do I go to work at, Professor? Miss Revere, I'd like to recommend you to the shop where I get my nails done. You would? Yes, I'd like to, but I can't. Oh. You have graduated at the very bottom of your class. Mm. This institute demands perfection before we can recommend you to a barber shop. 
After all, you did flunk hangnails. Mm. And your half-moon instructor tells me you handled the cuticle pusher like a snowplow. Well, I did get four out of five correct on the daily manicuring exams. And the student I worked on said I should get an A for speed. Oh, really, Miss Rita? Which student was that? Oh, uh, there she is out there, the one with the bandage on her hand. Yeah, uh, yes. Well, well, now, here's the name of a barber shop that might need the services of a capable... of a manicurist. Oh, uh, Joe's Tonsorial Parlor. Oh, gee, thanks, Prof. It isn't a large shop, mind you, Miss Revere. Only two chairs and a copy of Esquire. But Joe might be interested in putting you on. Oh, gosh, Professor, you're a sweetheart. I don't know how to show my gratitude. Well, Miss Revere... There is a way. Should anybody ask you at what school you learn manicuring... Yes? Do us a great favor and don't tell them. Uh, goodbye and good luck, Miss Revere. Hello, Joe's Thonsorial Parlor and Shaving Solarium. Put your face in our hands. Joe speaking. Hello, this here is Nick the Boogie speaking. Is Steve the Barber there? Oh, uh, sure. Steve, there's somebody on the phone for you. What's he want? What do you got? Well, tell him I'm busy. Hey, put down that racing form and answer the phone. It's Nick, your bookie. Oh. I told you lots of times to ask him not to call you during business. Hey, look, Joe, someday a horse of mine will come in and then you'll be working for little Stevie. Ah. Give me that phone. Hello, Nick. Hi, Steve, Nick. When I get thrown your door away on the day. Laugh and water in a second. Two bucks on the nose. Got the dough, Stevie. Oh, gosh, you know me, Nick. Mm-hmm. Got the dough, Stevie. Well, don't worry, Nick. I'll have the dough for you if I have to get it honestly. Now, you just stop around. If I'm out to lunch, I'll leave the dough for you. Okay, sucker, I'll be there. So long. Now, Joe, how about a buck and a half? Huh? Oh, no. Oh, you'd loan a measly piece of change like that to somebody you know, wouldn't you? Yeah, sure I would, stranger. Oh, I'll pay it back tomorrow. That nag's coming in, I tell you. So is Mr. Hotchkiss. I still owe him $52 on these barber chairs. And all I got is 35 bucks. I got troubles, too. When am I going to get the other, uh, 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 the, uh, the rest of the money? Look, I'm telling you, Joe, it's a cinch. Two bucks on laughing water and we'll be sitting on air. Yeah, so will the customers. If Mr. Hotchkiss don't get his money today, he's taken out the chairs. Um, good morning. I'd like to see well. you. Well. <whistles> Hi, babe. What's cooking? Looks like you are. There's steam coming out of your eyes, buddy. I'd like to see Joe, the boss. Are you it? No, but little Stevie don't like responsibilities. I'm as free as a breeze. Well, why don't you blow? All I'm interested in is the boss man. Is he around? Uh, Joe's right in front of you. Where? Look down. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, um, Mr. Joe, I'm Maisie Revere. Hi. Uh, well, they told me at the school from which I have just graduated from which that you might have some use for a manicurist. I'm sorry, Maisie. We don't need a manicurist. We already outnumber the customers two to one. Hey. Uh, hey, wait a minute, Joe. There's a man looking in the window. Maybe he can be converted into a customer. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Shave, haircut, mud pack, massage, shampoo? I'm just looking. Ah, oh, well, uh, why don't you come over here where you can get a closer look? Sun lamp, shoe shine, facial, singe? No. Manicure? Sure. Uh -huh. Do I get the job, Joe? Oh, oh go, go right ahead, Maisie. This is the first customer we've had all week. Oh, thanks, boss. Now, sir, w will you sit down, please? Sure. What are you doing tonight, sister? Tonight? Yeah. Taking my judo lesson. <laughs> Any other questions, mister? Hey, well, in that case, I'll, uh, I'll just have a, a manicure. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, how do I start again? Oh, now, look, miss, oh, I was only... Oh, don't tell me. I'll remember I... in a minute. Oh, yeah. First, I gotta file your nails. Give me your hand. Hey, miss. Yeah? Don't you think I better take off my gloves first? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought you'd like to keep them on while I did your nails because it's so cold in here. <laughs> well, here I go again, mister. Wish me luck. All 
all finished, Mr. Perkins. Come back again soon after the scars heal. <laughs> sure. It was worth everything just having my paws held by... by such a doll. <laughs> Bye, Miss... Goodbye, Harry. Gee, what do you know? Harry gave me a dollar and a half tip. A dollar and a half? Say, Maisie, could No. You... Ha, smart girl, Maisie. Don't listen to that Lindlaus. He's trying to chisel enough to bet on a horse in the fifth race. It's running in the second race. I'm talking about when it comes in. Well, Joe, hmm? am I hired permanent? <laughs> You're hired. Good. Now, how about lunch? Hey, it's a good idea. I'm starved. Oh. Look, you watch the shop, Maisie. In, in case a man comes to collect a bill while I'm gone, give him the $35 in the cash register. It's a sort of a part payment on these two barber chairs, see? I'd like to make it more, but uh, things ain't been so good. Well, don't worry. I'll take care of it. No, Maisie, you must be starved. You go out to lunch, I'll stand guard over the money. I know. You don't leave a rabbit loose in a field of lettuce. <laughs> Bye, Maisie. Bye, boss, and hurry back. I got a dollar and a half of lunch to eat. Come on, Steve. If you want to watch something, watch me eat. But gosh, Joe, I should wait for Nick. He's coming in for that $2 bet on laughing water. Come on, come on. I'm saving you money. Oh, good morning, sir. Well, well, something new has been added. Yeah, I'm the manicurist. Anything I can do for you today? Uh, I mean, besides that. We got a special on haircuts. Seventy-five cents or two for a dollar and a quarter. No, thanks, baby. I don't have two heads. Hmm. You could have fooled me. Well, maybe a manicure while you're waiting for the barbers to come back from lunch. Oh, some other time, gorgeous. Right now, I'm strictly business. I'm here to pick up some money. You? Yeah. Oh, oh, you're the man I've been waiting for. Hmm. Lots of dames tell me that, sugar. Lots of them. No, I mean the man he told me to give the money to. Here you are. Thirty-five dollars. Thanks, baby. Here's your receipt. I did... Thirty-five dollars? Yeah, well, he said he'd like to make it more, but, well, uh, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, I know. Poor Jack's been losing his shirt. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm here, I'm sure he'll do much better. Hmm, pretty sure of yourself, ain't you, sister? Well, I should be. Getting four out of five right every day ain't bad. What if I did it? Four out of five every day? Say, that's a terrific average. Well, all my teachers thought so, too. Teachers? Hmm, at the school. School? Hmm? You mean they got a school now where they teach you how to make a living at it? Well, certainly. There's no guesswork about a thing like that. It's a science. Yeah, so I hear. The only one I lost out on was hangnails. Oh, hangnails, huh? Mm hmm. Scratched. Sure, what else? Gosh, baby, you're terrific. Well, uh, go to scram now. See you later. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You forgot my receipt. Oh, sure, sure. For the 35 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Here you are. So long. So long. Hmm. He signed it Laughing Water. That's funny. He didn't look like an Indian to me. Ah, well, I'm back from lunch, Maisie. Maisie, where are you? Over here, Joe. I'm putting fresh towels in the hot towel cabinet. Oh. Gosh, Joe, I had no idea you stayed at so many hotels. Huh? Oh. <laughs> I, I get around, Maisie. Hey, tell me, did the man come from the chair money? Yeah, yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Oh. He took it and left. Yeah? Wasn't he sore? I mean, didn't he argue because it wasn't enough? No. As a matter of fact, I didn't think he expected that much. Yeah, that's funny. With me, if I'm a nickel short, he raises the roof. Well, with me, he was as gentle as a kitten, Joe. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Let's have it. Oh, back again, Mr. Hotchkiss. Back? What do you mean, back? Macy, look who is here. Oh, good morning, sir. What would you like, a manicure? Sure, sit down. Come on, no stalling. Give. Uh, give? Macy. Yeah, Joe? Where is it? It? Oh, oh, oh. you just go through there. It's the first... Look, start to the... don't try to razzle-dazzle me with comical stuff. Where's the money for the chairs? 
the money. But Maisie gave it already, didn't you, Maisie? Yeah, but not to him. Huh? No, it was another fellow came in for money, an, an Indian. An Indian? Yeah, tough-looking one with a mean jaw. When he smiled, his chin made a fist. Oh, fine. That was Nick. Well, Joey, I'm waiting, and you know me. I know from nothing. Look, look, Mr. Hotchkiss, please. We can straighten this out. All I need is a little time. Sure, take an hour. That's little enough. And if you haven't got the money, I'm yanking those barber chairs out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maisie. Maisie, now you've done it. I'm going to be put out of business. Gosh, Joe, how was I supposed to know I gave it to the wrong guy? Look, he even gave me a receipt. Let me see. $35 on laughing water. Maisie, this is a receipt from a bookie. A bookie? Oh, my gosh. I just put a barber shop on a horse. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. to let you keep these barber chairs if you could raise part of that $35. Say, 25 bucks. Uh, yeah, but how are we going to raise 25 bucks? I don't give the answers, Joe, just the questions. Maybe we could raise the prices of haircuts. Where are we going to raise the customers? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Besides, Joe's only got an hour to get up the cash. Hey, I've got an idea. Yeah? yeah. I know. Oh. 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 Look, why can't we... Uh... Yeah? 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 No, it won't work. Oh. Well, suppose I go to Mr. Hotchkiss and beg for mercy. You know, throw myself at his feet. No, no, maybe... Maybe I better do it. Huh? Yeah, in your case, it's a much shorter throw. No, no, I made the mistake and I'll talk to him. It's true he may throw me out in my ear, break my arm or stick his goons on me, but I'm the one who loused up everything and I'm the one that should go. Well, fellas... Well, what? Ain't you going to talk me out of it? No. Hmm. And I thought you were gentlemen. Come in. Mr. Hotchkiss, I'd like to appeal to your better nature Just about... Just a minute, please. I'm on the phone. Look, I don't care if she is 75 years old... No, and I don't care if she's sick either. She owes me $20 for furniture, and if I don't get the money at once, out she goes into the street. Yeah, I know she's my own mother, but that makes no difference. Business is business. Yes, goodbye, Father. Yes, miss? Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, uh, I'm the manicurist at Joe's Barber. Oh, right? yes. That little matter of $52. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Hotchkiss, you couldn't be as mean as you look. <laughs> Want a bet? Uh, if Joe doesn't hold on to that job of his, his, his poor kids will go hungry and maybe starve. No clothes, no food, no home. Walk in the streets, cold, hungry. Nothing to live uh, please, for. Please, miss, say no more or I shall break into tears. Money, money. There are, there are other things in this world besides money. Well, don't tell me what they are. It'll only confuse me. Miss, I want that money, and that's all. It so happens I have a one-track mind. One-track mind. Oh. Oh, well, um, that's why I'm here, Mr. Hodgkiss. You didn't happen to lose a receipt for a horse bet when you were in the barber shop this morning, did you? Young lady, I never bet on horses. Oh. Oh, well, then I guess this receipt dropped out of Mr. Fairchild's pocket while he was getting a shave. Mr. Fairchild? Uh-huh. 
The multimillionaire is sportsman who bets on horses and makes a fortune. Last year, he made a million dollars on them. That's just oodles and noughts, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> However, that receipt didn't drop out of my pocket. Now, about the $52... Oh, well, that'll have to keep. I simply must return this receipt to Mr. Fairchild. The race goes on in an hour, and if this ticket should happen to fall into the wrong hands... Well, $35 at 99 to 1 would be... Uh... $3,465. Oh, gee. You're faster at figures than Jack Benny. Well, I must return this receipt to the filthy rich, money to burn, enough to get all the cars, yachts, and pretty girls he wants, Mr. Fairchild. Uh, yes, uh, money, girls. Um, <clears throat> just a minute, miss. Uh, I have coming to me $52, which you don't have. <laughs> and this Mr. Fairchild person has a chance of winning $3,465, which he doesn't need. Now, how about it? Why, Mr. Hotchkiss, I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. Well? Oh, well, I hardly think it's fair to let you have Mr. Fairchild's race receipt so as you can forget all about the $52 Joe owes you. And how did you suspect I had that in mind, miss? Oh, just took a while, guess. Well, what do you say? Is it a deal? Well... If you'd rather not... Oh, you just talked me into it. Here's the receipt. Goodbye, Mr. Hotchkiss. Ah, laughing water. Ninety-nine to one, three thousand four hundred and sixty-five dollars. Oh, hutch kiss, you sly old fox. I could kiss you. Hutch kiss? Uh, Did you get the money from Joe the barber? No, I got something better. Something better than money, eh? Hutch kiss, have you been drinking? Where do you see, boss? See this receipt? 35 bucks on laughing water in the second race. Information straight from the pocket. I mean, mouth of the richest horse better in the country. Do you have rocks in your head, Hodgkiss? No one can win money on horses. But, um, and anyone who would wager good money on anything as unpredictable as a horse race is a complete idiot. Um, hello? Oh, it's for you, boss. Who is it? Your bookmaker. Oh, give me that phone. Hello, Benny. What's that? Okay, okay, I'll send you the four grand to last. See, by the way, Benny, you know a horse named uh, Laughing Water in the second? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah, thank you. Well? He says Laughing Water's a dark horse. He is? Uh-huh. He has yet to come in before dark. Hodge Kiss, if you don't get that 52 from Joe and bring it right to me, you're out of a job. Don't worry, boss. I'm going back to Joe's with this race receipt and get that money or the chairs. Believe me, Joe, you got nothing to worry about. I tell you, laughing water is ready. I just come sure. from the stable. Yeah, I thought it was just that cheap hair tonic you've been using. Here, just gaze your eyes on that nag's record. You see, right. Laughing Water, 1938, finished 10th. 39, finished 9th. 48, 41, 7th. You see, Joe, she's moving ahead. What's she been doing since 1941? Resting, Joe, resting. Just lying back under a tree with her hoofs crossed behind her head and resting. Saving her strength. For nine years? Uh-huh. Now she's ready. She's a cinch. Cinch, Joe, huh? Steve, I ran all the way back. I got news for you. Great big fat news. I got news too, Maisie. Laughing water is ready. For what? The glue factory? Look, fellas, before you go any further, I got a chance. No, Maisie, look. That... Look, I think, I think Steve is a writer. We got a chance. Let them take the chairs. When our horse comes in, we'll be able to buy new ones. Mm -hmm. And, Maisie, I won't forget you. If the horse wins, I promise you will be in clover. In? You mean under? Oh, now, let's see. Look, fellas, Don't I... let her kid you, Joe. The race is in the bag. And we're holding it. Amazing. You don't seem to be happy about this. Look, Joe, I don't know how to tell you this, so... Yeah? So I won't. All I can say is... Later, Maisie, later. It's just about race time. I'll turn on the radio. But I don't... Good, good. And, uh, they're off. Eighteen horses in a cloud of dust. Hey, where's the laughing water? Probably behind the cloud. Joe, I want... Like a boy takes an early lead. Bushwhacker is on the rail. Rifkin and I spoke a bunch together. And look, one of the horses is still having trouble getting out of the starting gate. Probably laughing water. It's 
Laughing Walter. What else? Oh, fine. Don't worry, Joe. She'll get out and win. Laughing Walter's heart pumps fighting blood. Too bad it didn't pop into her feet. At the first quarter, Dollface is in the lead. Yeah. She's now three lengths ahead of the field. Well. There's Rep. Kim and Lass Vogel neck to neck. And while that goes, Laughing Water. Where? 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 Laughing Water is gaining fast, running like crazy. It won't surprise me if she caught up with her jockey. Lost to her jockey? What's her jockey doing? Probably when they had to clear the pebbles out of her way. Now at the three-quarter mark, Dollface is four lengths ahead. Uh, Rifkin and Lassvogel have ducked out of contention. They would. It's now between Bushwhacker and Dollface. Hey, you miss. I want my money and my receipt back for the chair. Don't bother us, chum. Just pick up a razor and cut yourself a piece of throat. Yeah, we're listening to the race. We got a lot of dough on laughing yeah, water. Me too, <laughs> but I'm going to get it back. Sorry, chum. Too late. Now they're heading into the stretch. It's a doll face and a bushwhacker. Yeah. Doll face and bushwhacker. And whoa, here comes laughing yeah, water. Yeah. No, no. Laughing water. Come on. Come on. Come no, on. no, no. Don't water. come laughing water. Don't knock yourself off the filthy gold. Here comes laughing water. Yeah. Running like a man. She's third. Yeah. She's a second. Mr. Yeah. Hoskins, did you say something about wanting your chair received back? Are you crazy? Come on, Mappy Water. Come on. Your yeah, baby needs new shoes. Little Joe needs a new shop. Little Maisie needs a mask. Come on, Mappy Water. You can't lose. You can't lose. But try, honey. Try. And here's the winner, ladies and gentlemen, the Laughing Water. Oh, yes, hey. folks. A 99 to 1 shot one. Uh-huh. You hear that, Maisie? <laughs> Aren't you happy? <laughs> Well, say something. Ra, ra, ra. Stand by, folks, for the official report from the judge. But, well, Maisie, the ticket. The ticket? Yeah, yeah, on the horse. Well, um, Mr. Hotchkiss here, he, uh... Yeah? He, he, uh... He... <laughs> if you're thinking about what I'm thinking, Joe, I've got it. Got what? The receipt. Oh, oh Maisie, you didn't. I... I exchanged it with him for... Oh, you're going to hate me. Mm, on that, you can bet. We made nothing. Look, Joe, I I thought I was doing the right thing. Oh. I guess I'm just a meddling fool. You can say that again. I'm just a meddling fool. And your fire. Thousands of dollars you cost me and my shower. Oh, Mom told me there'd be days like this. Just a minute, folks, just a minute. What? What's this? A foul has been claimed. Yeah, uh, yes, the judges have disqualified laughing yes, water. Well, it Steve. seems a horse can't win a race without a jockey. Oh. Now, here's the winner. Dollface. What? Does that mean your horse lost? No, chum. Your horse lost. And you're out exactly $52, so then, yeah. <laughs> oh, Maisie, oh. you're wonderful. I could kiss you. Lift me up, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, fellas. Just a touch of genius, that's all. Oh, to me, it was everything. You paid off my debt, and we still got the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Now we can starve sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. like the fellow just said, but not at Joe's Barbershop. It seems that a famous pianist who was given a recital tonight came in for a manicure. And, well, I ain't saying how many of that piano player's fingers I damaged, but I sure hope he knows how to play chopsticks. Well, I gotta eat tonight, so might as well prowl around for a pawn shop. Hmm. I wonder how much I can get on a pair of manicuring scissors. Slightly bent. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern.
Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Howard McNear, Ted Osborne, Ken Christie, Tom Tully, and Peter Lees. Jack McCoy speaking. Hiya, babe. Say how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the fellow just said, Maisie Bevere. There ain't nothing particularly particular about me. If you saw me walking down the street, you wouldn't give me a second look, if you were a woman. With men, though, it's different. But I really don't pay strange men no mind, because I'm sort of kind of engaged to Eddie Jordan. He lives in my boarding house. Eddie don't make much money, so... That's why I was glad when Merton Falkscrubber, the cute kid who lives in the third floor back, got me a job with his newspaper. A small local sheet called the Flatbush Bugle. <laughs> Merton was just an office boy there, but he talked the publisher into trying me out as a motion picture editor. I guess I really got the job because the boss figured I knew about movies since I once acted in a picture. <laughs> anyway, tonight I got two free tickets to the opening of my favorite star's picture. None other than Chester Drake. I had to write a review for the picture, so I took Eddie along, figured he might pick up a few pointers from Chester. And believe me, that Casanova of mine could use a few lessons in the art of lovemaking. Eddie. Yeah? What do you want? Wake up, lover boy. I think I see a couple of empty seats down front. Maisie, for goodness sake, we've changed seats nine times over. I know, but gosh, don't you want to sit down front? Be closer to Chester Drake? What for? I can smell him clear back here. Oh. Shh, lady, I came here to see the picture. Sit down in front. Shh, quiet. Chester's going to speak. Oh, Sylvia, beloved, I adore that dance. Being so close to you, feeling you so warm and tender in my arms. Oh, gosh, Eddie, those are beautiful words. Why don't you ever say things like that to me when you make love? But, Maisie, I do say nice things to you when I make love. I mean, besides slip as a kiss, chick. A girl likes a little build-up stuff first. Sylvia, darling. Oh. Sylvia, my beloved one. <sighs> Come, kiss me. There he goes again. With that guy, kissing is a disease. You should catch it already. Then you do love me, Herbert. Really and truly love me. Love you, darling. If you left me, I'd die. So leave him already, Sylvia. Quiet, I want to hear Herbert's answer. You should know it by heart. We've seen the picture four times already. Yeah, lady, why don't you leave already? I can't. I don't remember when we came in. Take me into your arms. 
Dearest one. And make me forget my husband. Please, darling. Make me forget him. Oh, yes, my beloved one. Come closer. I want to ask you something that is more important to me than life itself. Maisie. Yes, Eddie. I've been wanting to ask you something, too. Oh, yes, Eddie. What is it? Can I have my bag of popcorn back now? Oh, sure. Here. And if that's as much romance as I'm going to get out of you, we might as well leave. Hooray! Well, Eddie, we're home. Gee, it's a nice night, ain't it? Just look at that moon. Oh, no, some other time, Maisie. I got to get up tomorrow morning. Got a job, you know. Well, wait a minute. Ain't you going to kiss me goodnight for a while? Look, Maisie, why the sudden yen for that mushy stuff? Stuff? Chester Drake wouldn't call kissing a girl stuff. Well, I'm not Chester Drake. All right, I know. Don't rub it in. Oh, you've just been seeing too many of those Chester Drake pictures. Oh, Eddie, why can't you be more like him? I've been wanting you to act romantic like him for so long. So long. So long. See you in the morning. Uh well, good night, Mr. Jordan. And if you have a dream tonight, leave me out of it. I ain't talking to you anymore. Hey, you better hurry, Maisie. You don't want to be late for the office your first day. Oh, come on in, Merton. Just putting my breakfast dishes away. Oh, I... They, my super hot rod's just downstairs, Maisie. Ah. Oh. I'll give you a lift down to the office if you want. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, and I got a swell idea for that review of the Chester Drake picture, Mert. Oh? You're gonna be you're gonna be proud you recommended me for the job. <laughs> oh, I'd go all out for you any time, Maisie. Merton. Yeah. You remember what you promised to do last night when we had that long, interesting talk about me? Oh, sure, you, sure, Maisie, but Yeah. Well, gee, it ain't going to be easy to talk to Eddie and make him apologize for all the nasty things you said to him. Oh, it's easy, Mert. Oh. Just go in and tell him that I was wrong, but that I forgive him. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait out here. But yeah, yeah, you you do that. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, I'll leave the door open. I might want to leave in a hurry, and they're making keyholes so narrow lately. <laughs> Who's there and what does she want? And, uh, no, it, it's me, Eddie. Merton. Are you busy right now? Oh, no. Come in. Oh. Eddie. Eddie, the reason I'm here is because Maisie... Wa- I mean, I think... She thinks... Um, you think that she... Eddie, what a stack of pin-up pictures. <laughs> yeah, Mert. They're really stacked, ain't they? Wow. I met them all when I was overseas during the war. Uh, yeah, they sure are. No, no. No, I can't get weak. I, I mean, Maisie... Wa- Stacked. Wowie. You don't know. Sure do. She thinks I ain't romantic. <laughs> uh, she should know. No, she shouldn't, Ed. I mean, you don't know what you're doing. Wait, get a load of this. To Oven Lips. Huh? From his ever ready Fifi. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, Oven uh, Lips, uh, what's cooking? Uh, Maisie, I, well, I didn't so know long, that. Hey, Mert, don't, don't leave me now. Sorry, I gotta get back to my room and rinse out a few things. Hmm. Well, Rembrandt. What do you have to say about this private little art gallery of yours? Maisie... You're uh, lying. Now, wait a minute. How do you know I'm lying? Your lips are moving. I'd I'd give you your engagement ring back if it wasn't so tight that I can't get it off my finger. You could with soap. Who asked you? Goodbye, Eddie. Now I'll never see you again. But, honey, we had a date to go sit in the park tonight. Okay, but after our date, I'll never see you again. Oh, gee, Maisie, I know you're all broken up about Eddie, but look, we go to press in 20 minutes, and you still have that review to write on Chester Drake's picture. All right, Mert. It'll be the last review I'll ever write. Just be there. How about that picture review? You'll have it, Mr. Jones. Well, what are you crying about? Well, I'm a woman. So? 
Francis, what does the woman need an excuse to cry? Yes, I guess you're right. Well, get that review finished and make it good. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be, Mr. Jones. Maisie says she's got an idea that's not only sensational, it's also good. Oh, oh fine, fine, fine. Come along, Merton. We've got work to do. You can pick up Maisie's coffee after she gets through. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, so long, Maisie. And uh, don't worry about Eddie. Remember, you still have me. Oh! <laughs> well, I better get started. Last night, I went to see the latest Chester Drake picture. And it was so sad, I really... Was it that sad, Maisie? Oh, hello, Helen. I was crying because of my boyfriend, Eddie. We we never want to see each other again. Oh, another woman. A whole war full of them. Well, sounds like a little different than the usual run-of-the-mill <laughs> stuff I get for my advice to the lovelorn column. I wonder how he'd feel if there was another man in love with me. Somebody like... like Chester Drake. Well, honey, from my experience with men, I'd say that a slight suspicion like that would make your chum come crawling back to you on his hands and lips. Yeah. Wouldn't be too hard for Eddie to believe that Chester Drake knew me. After all, I was out in Hollywood for some time, and... and... Oh. Why don't I? Why don't I what? Write a letter from Chester Drake to me. Let it fall into Eddie's hand. Sort of accidentally, like. Uh-huh. Have it fall out of your purse while you're paying for his lunch. Yeah. Then he'll start pitching woo again, and I'll be there to do the catches. I think it's a crazy idea. Oh, you like it, too. Uh-huh. Oh. This review can wait. The love letter can. Right. Now, here goes. Ah, maybe, beloved. I cannot forget those enchanting hours neath the palm trees at Pismo Beach when I held you close in my A-R-M-S and pressed burning, passionate kisses on your willing L-I-P-P-S. Where are you going, Helen? To get a glass of water to cool off. Yeah, get one for me, too. Just say the word, oh, my darling. And I will leave everything and fly to you on wings of love, and we will be married in Capistrano. Oh. How how do you spell Capistrano? Well, Peru is a romantic place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we will be married in P-E-R-U, period. My darling one, my beloved... My pearl of beauty. Oh. Yours truly, Chester Drake. Oh, that should do the trick. Mm. I don't even know any of the people concerned, and already I'm so jealous I can scratch somebody's eyes out. Yeah. Now, all we need is some perfume to sort of soak the letter in. Oh, I got some in my office, Maisie. Cost $20 an ounce blue. Mm. It's called Perhaps Later. Hmm. For $20 an ounce, it should be called Positively Now. Come on, let's go get it. Hey, Maisie, Mr. Jones said you better have that review. Oh, she's gone. Oh, this must be it in her typewriter. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it. Wowie! Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Yeah, Mert? What's up? Where's that picture review of Maisie? Uh, right here, Mr. Jones. Just feed your corpuscles on this. Oh, yes? Let me see it. Uh, ah, Maisie, beloved, I cannot forget those enchanting hours in Prisma Beach and burning passion. Oh, this is a love letter from yeah. Chester Drake to Maisie. Yeah. What about the review? This is the review, Mr. Jones. The something special Maisie promises. A review not of Chester Drake the star, but Chester Drake the man. Yeah, and what a man. Yeah. Hey, Pete! Sam, uh, tear out the front page. Uh, we got something hot for our readers. Hot. Uh, but hot. Hold the presses. Hot. Hot. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Helen. Perfume will evaporate. My stuff didn't. Some of these reporters will drink anything. Well, no, you searched for any of this stuff. We wasted almost an hour already. Now, all I have to do is take this letter. It's gone. Gone. Hi, Maisie. Helen, uh, you looking for something? Yeah, something that'll get me everything I want. Oh, and the boss is happy enough to give it to you, too. 
The paper hit the streets a few minutes ago, and it's selling like wildfire. Hit the streets? Yeah. What about my review? Well, that's what's doing it. That love letter Chester Drake wrote you is the biggest front page yarn that Greenpoint has ever had. Oh. Love letter? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it, it was printed? Well, sure. With a picture of you I kept in my watch case. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you were right when you said you had a great idea for the oh. review. It... Well, Maisie, don't just stand there and stare at me. Say something. Maisie, say something. Help. <laughs> The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Maisie with their motion picture editor talking. Maisie, this is the man that you're engaged to marry. Oh, don't be so indefinite. Which man that I am engaged to marry? Oh, so it's true what I read in the paper about you and that Chester Drake. Ah, you mean the madly, desperately in love with me so that he can't eat, drink, or sleep, Chester Drake? Yeah, so that's why you were so interested in seeing Chester Drake's pictures. You knew that recap Romeo in Hollywood. Well, he's as pretty as some of those pin-up girls of yours, oven lips. Believe it or not, Maisie, I really bought those pictures when I was overseas. And they cost me practically every Hershey bar I had. Well, Eddie, I'm going to tell you something about this Chester Drake business. And I'm going to tell you something about it, too. I'm going to punch out Roman nose of his so hard it'll be Roman all over his face. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Eddie. But Chester's way out in Hollywood, and I'm sure you don't have that much of a reach. I don't need it, sweetheart. It so happens Gooey Louie is staying at the Ritz Plaza Hotel. Oh. And little Eddie is going over there right now. Uh, I'll teach him to try and steal my girl. Eddie, what are you going to do? For further details, read your daily newspaper. The obituary column. Oh, Oh, jeepers. I'd better get down to that hotel and warn Chester. Since Eddie's been taking those vitamin tablets, he don't know his own strength. I am but exhausted, Cynthia, my dear, dear wife. These personal appearances take so much out of one. I'm going down to the beauty parlor in the hotel and have my hair done. And uh, while Mama is gone, don't let me catch you turning what's left of your charm on any of these local frantic females. No, perish the thought, my dear. You know your little Chester. Uh Uh-huh. That's why I insisted on coming along on this personal. I knew there was some reason. Yes. Well, I'm going now, Lothario. Oh, women, women. Chester, my love, why did you ever have to marry? Come in. Uh, Mr. Drake, Eddie Jordan read it, and he didn't know I wrote it, because when Helen and me went out with the perfume, Merton thought it was a scoop, and Mr. Jones printed it. What is this, a synopsis of what's happened so far in a radio well, uh, serial? Well, look, look, there's no time to talk. Eddie's mad because he thinks it's true, and he doesn't know about me because that's how he is. And now you see why you have to leave town, don't you? Not exactly. Well, gee, you ain't very bright, are you? Uh, say it again, please. Perhaps I've missed the code word. It's Eddie, you dope. He thinks it's your fault. What's my fault? What I did. And what did you? You did. Oh. You get, that must be my wife. If she catches me here with a blonde, she'll kill me. Do something, miss. What do you want me to do, dye my hair? Oh, heavens to Betsy, she warned me. Open up in there, you, you philanderer. Oh. Yeah, my wife sounds like she caught a cold. That's Eddie. Eddie, who's Eddie? Gee, you don't know nothing, do you? If he finds me in here, he'll believe that Helen and I wrote because of the argument. What argument? How can you be so stupid? I take lessons. 
but you've got to hide. I, I think, quick, into the, uh, you'll pardon the expression, bedroom. All right, but you'll explain everything to Eddie, won't you? Uh, explain what? Oh, fine, you haven't even been listening. Yeah, I'm a rude one, aren't I? Get into that room now. Mm. Chester Drake, you should be ashamed of yourself. How could you do it? Do what? You know what I'm talking about. Wanna bet? You probably didn't mean a word of what you wrote to her. Now, look, Sonny, I'm afraid this isn't one of my bright days. Exactly what is everybody so excited about? Oh, so you haven't read the newspaper? No. Well, then get a load of this, you, you, Benedict Arnold. Look, and on the front page, too. Oh, Maisie, beloved, I cannot forget those enchanting hours beneath the palms at Pismo Beach. Say, who wrote this? You Louse. know very well who wrote it. Nick Kenny? Don't try to squirm out of it, Louse. You wrote it. When I held you close in my arms and pressed burning kisses. <laughs> I did? Come, come, Sonny. Leave us not pretend. But I never saw this, this Maisie, so help me. You don't know Maisie? Gesundheit. You don't... Say, who sneezed in there? Oh, that, uh, uh... The... <laughs> Mice? Sneezing mice? Yes, yeah, they, they probably came down the chimney and caught the flu. <laughs> Don't you get it? Yes. And I'm going to open the door. And if who I think it is is in there, you're going to get it, too, in space. Okay, come on out, ma... Ugh. Say, uh, who's the dame with the blanket wrapped around her? Me, Indian squaw from Chester Drake's Indian Sand Club. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Well, uh, well, well. Hello, Maisie. How? Uh, my goodness, now I'm going to get it. And how? Yeah. Well, here you are, Not Captain Over. <coughs> well, there you are, Maisie. You always told me you preferred your ham cold. Um. <laughs> You'll never see me again. Goodbye, beautiful. Goodbye. I didn't mean you! Hey, he really hit you, Chester. That means he loves me. Chester, I just picked up a local newspaper and I just couldn't believe that Hello. my own... Oh, well, I believe it now. The same girl is in the picture in the paper. Well, Cynthia, I can explain, I think. Yes, uh, Mrs. Drake, I, I don't want your husband. Well, darling, then we both have something in common. I don't want him either. Oh, but Cynthia... You can't leave me. Goodbye, Chester. I'm leaving for Reno. Write to me every month, even if it's only a check. She's gone. Oh, she'd be sorry if I were dead. Yeah. Nettie'd be sorry if I were dead. Dad, let's do it. You mean that... Well, no, no, I can't die. My, my contract strictly forbids it. No, I mean, if I pretended, we'd both live again. Yes. Yeah. They'd have to believe the truth from a dying woman. Uh-huh, and forgive a dying woman's mistakes. Look, Chester, huh? here's the way we'll go about it. We'll have somebody phone Eddie, and then... How's that, Chester? Terrible. You've got to put more life into your dying. Chester, are you in there? My wife. Now, turn it on good. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm dying, dying. I'm sinking fast. Come in, please. I'm going, going. Chester, before you sent word that you wanted to see me, I called up that newspaper and talked to a certain I'm felon. I'm dying, dying. Oh, is she still here? Temporarily, my dear. She says she's dying. Oh. Well, what I wanted to say, Chester, is that thing in the paper that... Before I go, Mrs. Drake, I want to make a confession. I don't know your husband. I wrote that letter because... <laughs> Chester, hmm? must you smoke that pipe? Oh, I'm sorry, stranger. Uh, do go on. You were saying... I wrote it to make my boyfriend jealous. You see, Cynthia... I am innocent. Oh, of course, of course. You see, Chester, I found out that water, the letter... Water, water, get me some water. No, I'll get some from the bathroom sink. Let it run a little first. Oh, 
No, I'll get that. Somebody's out in the hall. If it's my Eddie, tell him to hurry. I'm singing fast. I'm singing. Oh, you can speak plainer than that, dear. Where is she? Is she still... I mean, I got, I got, I got a phone call. She isn't... Is she... Oh, you're probably Eddie. Yeah. The one she's putting it on for. Putting it on? But I thought she took something. Yes, acting lessons, and she should sue the school. But why? To make you forgive her. Huh. Well, I, I guess I'll go in now. Thank you, Mrs. Drake. Oh, and please tell your husband I'm sorry I punched him in the nose. Oh, don't be sorry. Everybody's got to get a little fun out of life sometimes. Go on in now and have a laugh. I will. Who's there, please? It's Eddie, honey. Oh. Oh, Eddie. I'm glad you came. I'm dying. Oh. Well, in that case, I won't stay long. Don't you understand, dear one? I'm going to heaven. Well, have a nice trip. Eddie Jordan, you don't even seem to care that I'm dying. Well, stop dying already and I'll take you out to lunch. I know the whole gag. Before I go, I... Oh. You do? Yes. Come on, I'm starved. You forgive me, Eddie? Sure, baby, I forgive you. How could I ever do anything else? And do, do you still love me? Maisie, I think you're a pig-headed, silly, arrogant, meddling, spoiled, childish brat. Ah, he loves me. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. what not to do for love. And there's no use trying to understand what love really is. It's just a lot of things that don't make sense. Makes you happy and sad, considerate and selfish. Makes you tell the truth and also lie. Sometimes you want to laugh, most of the time you cry. Well, I gotta get back to my paper and pick up my check. <laughs> yeah, for that little Chester Drake act, I got fired. But I'm not worried like people with money are. If I get held up, all I got to lose is my life. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Key to the City, starring Clark Gable, Loretta Young, Frank Morgan, and Marilyn Maxwell. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included B. Benaderet, Hans Conried, Howard McNear, Pat McGeehan, Lorene Tuttle, and Sidney Miller. Jack McCoy speaking. Hiya, babe. Say how about a little... Ow! Oh. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Golden-Mayer's famous Maisie picture. 
just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you always have seen and loved on the screen and Southern. But first, your announcer. <laughs> Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. Right now, I'm a chorus girl in one of those intimate reviews that are put on especially for the benefit of rich old bankers with girlfriends who think they can sing. Jeepers, I don't know what it is about showgirls that turn schoolboys into drool boys and a banker with dough into a schmo. But since I've opened in this tired review, I've received all kinds of proposals, even including marriage. Yes, sir, I've got Matt. Let me take you out of all this tinsel and glamour baby pitch from all kinds of men. Some who look like they must have just landed on Plymouth Rock, and some who look like they just crawled from under it. Oh, gosh, I'm going to be late for the matinee if this cab don't get a move on. Cabby, cabby. Yeah, babe? Step on it, will you? I gotta get to the theater in time for the opening chorus number. I'm the only one who knows the words. We shall make it. Do not make yourself unnecessarily, Maisie. Yeah, we girls are fine if we're... Oh, you call me Maisie. Do I know you? Gosh, you should order. I'm the fellow that sits in the same seat, first row, seat A1, and the second balcony at every one of your performances. <laughs> well, look, Cabby, I appreciate all the fans I can get, but I didn't think my singing and dancing was that special. Oh, do you sing and dance? <clears throat> yeah. I do other things in that stage besides just come out with very little on. Well, what do you know? She's talented, too. Yeah. And I'm being paid to prove it, Cabby, so step on it, please. Sure, babe, sure. I'll get you there in time. You will see. Thanks. Eyes will appreciate it. Well, take it easy, Bob. And try to drive this cab a little closer to the ground. I'd like to get to the theater in one piece. Sure, babe, sure. Say, you uh, got anything on tonight? Oh, no more than the usual costume. I mean, uh, how's about a date? Save your dough, stranger. Oh, look, Maisie. I know I ain't got as much to offer as all them rich swells that hang around the stage door. Oh, I don't go out with them either. Driver, watch out. There's a truck just ahead. Don't worry, babe. I don't own this cab. <laughs> Gee, that was a quick stop, wasn't it? Maisie. Maisie, where are you? Up front here with you. Oh. Well, here we are at the stage entrance. You uh, feel okay, Maisie? Yeah. You do? Then why are you shaking your head from side to side? My nose is caught in the windshield wiper. Oh, there. I stopped it. Oh, thanks. Uh, what do you know? Here we are. Well, Maisie, why don't you go into the theater? I thought you was in a hurry. I am. I'm just looking to see if Jasper's in the alley. Who's Jasper, your dog? No, but he follows me around like one. If only there was some way to get him out of my hair. Well, I know a couple of guys, and for a few bucks. Uh, no, friend. No. Oh, it wouldn't cost you nothing, Maisie. I wouldn't let a woman pay. I'm a gentleman. Hmm. I don't see the lovesick calf around. Well, how much do I owe you, cabbie? Oh, me. Please, Maisie. Would Romeo take money from Juliet? Uh, look, Romeo. The name is Pete. Pete Hagen Schmittenfeld. How do you spell it? My kid butter helps me. Oh. <laughs> well, look, Pete. I'm used to paying my own way, and I don't want no favors from anybody. Now, how much do I owe you? Well, if you persist, $3.40. Three forty? Um, wait, I'll, I'll look at my purse. Um, see if, um, um... Well... <laughs> Thanks for the ride, Romeo. <laughs> hi, Pop. Uh, hi, Maisie. Better crawl into your costume and get ready for the opening number. The audience out there is getting impatient. Some of them are starting to walk out. What? Even before the show starts? Any mail for me, Pop? Yeah, one. Where is it? Right behind you. Behind uh, me? Uh, hello, Maisie. Uh, 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 uh. 
Oh, Jasper. I wish you'd please stop falling behind me like a bustle. Oh, gee, Maisie, I ain't hurting you by just watching and wanting to be near you, am I? No, but you're hurting yourself, Jasper. Believe me, nothing can come of all this. You're a nice fella as fellas go. And as fellas go, she wishes you would. Would what? Would go. I don't uh, know. Uh, oh, Maisie. Maisie, the first time I saw you on the stage, I knew I can't live without you. Force yourself, Jasper. Force yourself. Uh, well, I gotta get dressed. So long, Jasper. Well, and if we never see each other again, I thank you. Oh, look, I, I, I'll wait for you after the show, Maisie. No, Jasper. After this performance, I'm going out to eat. Oh, gee, will you be alone? I hope so. Do you mind if I come along and watch you eat? Well, it won't be very interesting. I don't eat any different from anybody else. Uh, oh, then can I wait outside and just look at you through the window? Oh, no, thanks, Jasper. Please leave me alone. I have to get dressed. Okay. I'll wait for you right here till you're through your act. Oh, brother. Oh, 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 oh I almost forgot, Maisie. <clears throat> I brought you this present. What is it? Gumdrops again? No, a jar of peanut butter. Peanut butter? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, just what I always wanted. Gee, you mean it? What else? Now, some girls want diamonds and furs, but give me peanut butter any time. It's so rich in calories. Oh, yes, and it's very good for the health, too. Peanut butter builds bones, you know. Yeah. Too bad I can't use a few extra bones. Uh, oh, Maisie, I... I, I, I oh. Oh. Ah, this is as far as you go, Jasper. Oh. No man's land. N no man... Oh, I, I, I see, I see. Hi, Maisie. Better climb into your costume fast. We're going to our opening number in two minutes flat. Yeah, Hazel. Flat is right. These Corrines couldn't carry a tune if it was strapped to their backs. Hand me my costume. Where is it? Right there. Under the powder puff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Thanks. Hey, wasn't that your one-man fan club Jasper I shot a moment ago? Uh-huh. <laughs> he gave me a gift, too. Really? Mm. Jasper? Mm. What? Here. Have some peanut butter. Oh, you can Nope. Jasper's very practical with his gifts. When a girl gets furs and diamonds, people are inclined to talk. But with peanut butter, nobody can talk. It sticks to the roof of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Maisie, honey, why don't you get wise to yourself? Look, I got a date with a couple of live wires. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Include me out. I got other plans. You mean you prefer to go out with that direct proof that cousins shouldn't marry Jasper? No. The only person I'm interested in going out with is me. I happen to be partial to my type. I don't get it. Then why don't you get rid of the goon? Well, Jasper's like the measles. When you get rid of it in one place, it busts out someplace else. Oh, you mean you'd like to get him out of your life? On a very permanent basis, but painlessly. I don't like to hurt anybody. You got any trade secrets you can let me in on, Hazel? Oh, sure. Number four. Number four? Needling. Oh. When the prospect don't look like he's got the dough to make it worthwhile to give him of your time and uh, charm, you start hinting very broadly. For stuff. Oh, like jewels, furs, and things like you couldn't possibly afford, huh? Uh-huh. And when he realizes that you're only out to take him... Oh, he gets disgusted and goes back to his job. Or to his wife. You can't miss. Are you sure? Well, this thing I'm wearing... I ain't peanut butter. Well, the treatment's pretty rough, but the only way to get rid of a tooth that's bothering you is to pull it. Come on, you two dames. The curtain's going up. Sure, sure. Just putting on my costume. Well, for goodness sake already. What's holding it up? Just prayer, chum. Just prayer. <laughs> Can I walk you down to eat now? Oh, all right, Jasper. You won't mind the way my arms look. Well, what, what's wrong with your arms? No bracelets. Oh, Maisie, you are so beautiful. You don't need bracelets on your arms. Oh, sure, sure. You don't care if I freeze to death. Oh, I do, I do. If you're cold, why don't you just put on your coat? I'd rather freeze. All I have is that beaver coat that's ten years old. Oh, it, it don't look like you've worn that coat for more than a year. I didn't, but the beaver wore it for nine. Oh, d did he? 
I, I, I've never seen you in this kind of mood before, Maisie. You, you're always so cool and, and calm and collected. Yeah. Well, from now on, I'm cutting out the coolness and the calmness and stick strictly to collecting. I'm a woman. Oh, yeah. In that costume, there ain't any doubt about it. <laughs> and I am also tired of having nothing but licorice sticks, gumdrops, and peanut butter. Huh? I want things that every chorus girl needs. Oh, sure. Things that can be hot. Ha, 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 hot? Hmm. Uh, anything I can do, Maisie? Well, there certainly is. If you want to keep seeing me, you'd better rush right down and get me something nice. Oh. I don't care what it is, as long as it's a diamond bracelet. Oh. Uh, well, well, where will I get the money? Oh, please, Jasper. I'm not the kind of girl that tells a man what to do. Oh, gosh, Maisie, I, I never thought you were the kind of, of a chorus girl that was just interested in money. Goodbye, Jasper. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, sir. Hmm? Oh, I didn't mind at all, clerk. I've just been looking in the showcases. You sure got a lot of expensive-looking jewelry in there. No, well, we had just oodles more, but just a few minutes ago, some horrible chap burglarized the store. Oh. Made off with, oh, so many thousand dollars worth of our stock. Oh, gee, that's a shame. I, I do hope you get it back. You wouldn't say that, sir, if you had to dust it every night. Now, what may I show you today, please? W well, I'm looking for a bracelet. It's for a girl. Ha. I think she really likes me. Well, goody, goody for your side. Now, our bracelets run from $12 to $10,000. Oh, oh. Uh, I'd like to look at the twelve-dollar one. Twelve, eh? Yes. Please step this way, Maharaja. Thank you. I you see, sir, Maisie, it, she's very particular about the jewelry she wears, so I don't want anything cheap-looking. Oh, of course not, sir. Why, I can tell by the casual way you wear your cap that you are nothing but the best. Yes, sir. Uh, this $12 is all I could borrow from the store I work at. You see, I, I borrowed it from petty cash. Yes, and pettier cash I haven't seen in a long time. Now, here's our $12 bracelet. Oh. Of course, you have a choice. Uh, what is the choice? Take it or leave it. Oh, gee, it is pretty. Uh, what kind of stones are those? Well, now I'll tell you. We pay a kid $4 a week to bring in empty beer bottles. And it isn't because we want to get the deposit back. See. However, if you'd care to go hog wild, we have something with a diamond in it for eighteen dollars. Eighteen? Makes one feel kind of faint, doesn't it? Mm. Now we can take the twelve dollars down now, and you pay the rest in easy installments of twenty-five cents a week. Oh, for how long? You should live so long. Well, I. I... I guess I can manage it. Capital. Uh, gee, uh, is the diamond perfect? I mean, there isn't any flaw. Oh, my dear chap, in that diamond, there's no room for a flaw. Oh, that's nice. I'll bet Maisie will be surprised when she sees this diamond. Oh, yeah, she's probably seen a diamond chip before. But I just bet she's never seen a diamond splinter. <laughs> And when I told Jasper I want a diamond, he got an expression on his face like a hen trying to lay a square egg. Are you decent, girls? Sure, Pop. Come in. And have some peanut butter. I feel like celebrating. <laughs> well, from what I hear, you've got good cause for celebrating, Maisie. Oh, then you've heard about Jasper, huh, Pop? Not only heard, but seen. Maisie, you're smarter than I thought. Oh, it was nothing. Well, it must have been something. One of the girls just told me she saw Jasper running out of a certain high-toned jewelry store with a big bulge in his pocket. Yeah, now I have nothing to worry about. Uh, jewelry store? With something in his pocket. Uh, well, well, Maisie, this worked out better than we planned. Oh, fine. This is where I came in. Ah, looks like our little Jasper must have some dough stashed away for romance. Maybe. Maybe when he gets tired of you, a little Hazel can move in. 
Well, I can't understand how Jasper can afford anything like a bulge. What jewelry store did he get it from, Pop? Oh, that gal didn't say exactly. Just said it was from a shop that had just been robbed. Well, let's get back to the job. A shop that had just been robbed? Hey, the guy has more stunk than I thought, Maisie. He must have thought a lot of you to stick up the giant. Oh, but he didn't. I mean, he couldn't. I mean, do you think so? Well, that stunk. Oh, boy meets girl. Girl wants jewels. Boy no got more. Boy hold up store. Boy gets jewels. Yeah, in 20 years. Oh, Hazel, poor Jasper. Instead of getting rid of him, I just drove him into a life of crime. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Jasper. He'll be caught and sent to prison maybe for 20 years. Cheer up, Maisie. Maybe Jasper will be lucky. Maybe he won't live that long. Gosh, I disillusioned him about women altogether. He was looking forward to getting married someday and settling down. Yeah, and having little ones. Yeah. Now, if he wants little ones, he'll have to make them out of big ones. Who's there? It's Jasper, Maisie. I've got something for you. Oh, the loot from the jewelry store, Caper. Quick, Jasper, come in. Hello, Maisie. Oh, gosh, have you been crying? Yes, yeah, Jasper, and it's all your fault. My Oh, come fault? in, quick, Jasper. Close the door. Yeah, what, what? and Hazel, pull down the shades. Uh, is there anything wrong, Maisie? Well, everything. The cops. Oh, raided again, huh? No. Jasper, did a cop follow you here? No, just a dog. Are you sure it wasn't a police dog? No, it was a cocker spaniel. Well, maybe it was a police dog in plain clothes. Did it have flat feet? Well, I, I didn't notice, really. I, I was sort of running. You see, I was in a hurry to bring... Shh, shh, Jasper, yeah. this dressing room may be wired. Oh, uh, what? Hazel, you go out and keep your eyes peeled. Right, me. Don't worry about anything, Dillinger. D- Dillinger? Uh, my name is... Never mind. You won't have a name long if you don't watch out. You'll have a number. What? Jasper, you got to hide out till it blows over. What blows over? Jasper, I know. Y- you do? Well, gosh, then, would you mind telling me? Oh, don't act so innocent. I know about the jewelry. You do? Oh, you can't keep nothing a secret anymore. Oh, <gasps> then it's true. Well, Macy, you said you wanted something real expensive. Yeah, but I... I never expected to wind up with a terrible thing like... Like... You know? Oh, then you're disappointed, huh? Oh, I'm more than disappointed, Jasper. I'm ashamed. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'll go right back and get something else wait, for you. Wait, wait. In, in a... Oh, Jasper, what have I turned you into? Well, nothing. You... And what about your future? I, I... What would your boss say if he found out how you got that jewelry? Oh, he wouldn't mind. I've done it lots of times. <laughs> you have? Yeah, it's always such a little bit that I take that he always forgives me. Oh. Besides, I always put it back the day after I take it. Oh, my gosh. The police. Uh, 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 Quick, Jasper. In the shower. You gotta hide. But there might be girls in there taking a shower. Well, close your eyes. Quit in there. Maisie, if you take your arms off me and let us talk this thing over oh, for a get while. get in there. Oh, I don't know what you're so mad oh, about. Stop you're sweet. Me. I, I am, Maisie. I was sweet. just thinking if you needed a cab tonight, I was... Take your hands off from on yon damsel, chum. Look, Pete, something's been happening. Maisie, I've just done what I've done because I can't live without you. If you don't remove your hands from off this female girl, you dressing room wolf, I shall smite you like you've never been poor, oh, been smitten. Pete, Pete, you don't understand. Maisie, tell me what's wrong. If I made a mistake, I'm sure I can rectify it. No, Jasper. I got you into this, and I am going to take the rap. Rap? What rap? I'm going to give myself up. Why? Goodbye, Jasper. I've been a fool and I'm the one who should pay. Go far away, Jasper. Find another girl and marry her. Oh, no. Raise a family. Start all over again. You mean raise another family? Maisie, are you out of your senses? No, I've just come into them. Goodbye, world. Pete. 
Don't let Jasper here follow me. Don't worry, babe. I won't. Uh, uh, don't leave. Ma- Maisie, wait. Wait for me. You heard the lady uh, chum. Now get back or else. Oh, yeah? Or else what? <laughs> Does that answer your question, chum? Jasper! Jasper! Maisie just... What happened to Jasper? I just convinced them that following a lady ain't being done no more. I hauled off and knocked them out. Oh, quick! A glass of water! Sure, lady. You gotta bring him to... What for? Does he need two glasses of water? Well, I mean, there's something he should know. Maisie's on her way to the cops to confess a crime she didn't do. He can't, but she can't. But she is. And she feels that she really is guilty. But she cannot sacrifice herself. She is so young and so beautiful. And she won't like it in jail. I know I've been there a couple of times. I got it. Got what? I done it. Did what? How do I know? I wasn't even there. But I shall go to the police and confess all. Are you crazy? If being in love is crazy, then I guess I am. Goodbye, miss. And after I'm up the river, tell Maisie to write to me, and I'll write back. As soon as I learn how. She ain't run me again, Chief. That makes 16 bucks you owe me now. Hey, stop gabbing and deal the cars, Hennessy. For a cop, you talk too much. Come on, come on. I want to get even. Hey, miss, what do you want? I'm here to confess. I did it. That's nice. Did what? Whatever was did. Play a card already, Chief. Okay, okay. Don't rush me. I'm here to make a full confession, and I... No, not that card, Chief. Play the ten of spades. The ten, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, there. Hey, Jim Rummy, that's 20 on me, Chief. Hey, look, lady, let me lose by myself, please. And hey, now you were saying... I am the guilty one. I robbed the store. Yeah? What store? Well, the one that was robbed. I know, but what's the name? Maisie Revere, what's yours? Uh, hey, don't mind her, Chief. Probably one of them cranks or thrill seekers. Yeah. Yeah, let me cut the cards this time, Hennessy. What for? You don't let me cut when you're dealing. How would you like to be out pounding a beat again, Hennessy? Here, Chief, cut. Yeah. Chief, I robbed a jewelry store. That's nice. Play a card, Chief. Yeah, there. Hey, what jewelry store did you rob? What ones do you have? We'll load it. I'll play no, the... Uh... not that one. You stay out of this. I'll play this one. <laughs> it's Jim Rummy no. again. Yeah. Is this Marty Pan? Now, look, lady, I got no time for cranks with silly confessions. I'm a busy man. The deal again, Hennessy. I am no crank, Chief. I stole some jewelry. Yeah, what jewelry did you steal? What's missing? Well, a load of loot was taken from Johnson's shop on 5th. The crook got away with a bunch of bracelets. Well, that's the one I robbed. Johnson's Jewelry Shop. Now, what time did you do it? Well, how should I know? I just stole bracelets, not a watch. If you're the one that knocked over the joint, where's the stuff you swiped? I, um, I lost it. Lost it? How? I can't play gin rum either. <laughs> that does it. Put the cuffs on a Hennessy. You do it, Chief. I'm dealing. Oh, yeah, sorry. Stick out your hands, miss. Here. Stop, why don't you? Pete, what are you doing here? I've come to give myself up for the crime. I robbed the bank. Pete, you're crazy. You ain't kidding. No bank's been robbed. No? Then I held up the gas station. No gas station's been held up. Now, what crime did you commit? Give me a hint, somebody. Play a card, Chief. She didn't do it, I did. Quiet, I can't concentrate. I think I'll play the five of diamonds. Stop. Why, you think he needs a five of diamonds? Jasper. Jasper, go home. Oh. Don't believe him, Chief. He's just trying to protect me. I did it. No, I done it. And I can prove I robbed that store. No, the whole thing's a mistake. Nobody robbed anything, Maisie. Jasper? You mean there was no robbery? You didn't... Jack of hearts, Chief. Oh, thanks. It was all a mistake? That's gin, Chief. No. I'm sorry, Maisie. Now everything will be different, won't it? Different? Yes. Now that you wanted to take the blame for a crime you thought I committed, it proves that you really love me. And from now on, mm. I'll never, ever leave you. Oh, no, no, no. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
again, here's Maisie. Well, I guess that little caper with Jasper proves that love ain't always blind. Sometimes it's just a little cockeyed. From now on, when it comes to trying to make a man fall out of love with me, little Maisie's going to be as careful as a nudist crawling under a barbed wire fence. Not that I'm through with men. I'm just waiting for Mr. Wright to come along. The man for me is one who's handsome, smart, and exciting. If I can't find that, I'll settle for one who thinks I am. <laughs> oh, well. Jasper wasn't so bad. At least he paid me some attention. And a woman would rather be looked over than overlooked. Well, I guess the coast is clear now. I can sneak out of the theater without Jasper seeing me. Oh, Maisie. Maisie. Oh, my gosh, here comes Malicious again. And I ain't in the mood for any more peanut butter. No, no, Maisie. Maisie, look! Homemade jelly! <laughs> Just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Key to the City, starring Clark Gable, Loretta Young, Frank Morgan, and Marilyn Maxwell. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Hans Conried, Sidney Miller, Ted DeCorzia, Earl Lee, Peter Leeds, and Frank Nelson. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs> Babe, say how about you and I... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said, from the place that tree grew in, Brooklyn. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. But I took the name of Maisie Revere because I figured after I became a star on the stage, they'd be able to save money on electric bulbs when they put my name up in lights. Oh, I could have been a star, too, all right, but I wanted to get there the hard way with my talent. So today I made the grand tour of the theatrical agencies again. But got the same pitch. Nothing today. Don't call us. We'll call you. I was a little tired having walked about a million miles. I'll bet if I were wearing open-toed shoes, my feet would have sneaked out and left me. Anyway, I just about made it to the park, and I was just about to flop down on one of the benches when I heard the cry. <coughs> oh, what's the matter, little girl? You lost? Oh, well, don't cry, honey. You got plenty of time for that when you're grown up and married. Tell Maisie what's wrong. Little Sammy, he just fell in. Oh, well, maybe if I told you a story, you'd feel that. Fell in? Right there, in the lake. 
I don't want him to get drowned. I don't want him to. Oh, well, don't worry, honey. He won't get drowned. Here, hold my shoes. There's nothing here at all, honey. <laughs> the only sign of life around here is that duck. That's little Sammy. Well, maybe I'd better... Sammy is a duck? Why didn't you tell me? He didn't ask me. Oh. Please get Sammy for me, lady. Mommy said if I lost at him, she'd kill me. Hmm. It's a very tempting idea. But here's your duck anyway. Oh, what are you belly aching about, Sammy? You just got your feet wet. Oh, here's your pet, honey. <laughs> that water was cold. Oh, thank you, lady. I'll mention your name when I say my prayer. Well, thanks. What is your name? Oh, just refer to me as stupid. I think the party concerned will understand. Come on, Sammy. Mommy's waiting for us over there, under the shady tree. Well, well, Miss, we look a wee bit moist. Did you fall in the lake? No, I jumped in. Jumped in? For a bit of a swim, perchance? No, I sometimes get lonesome, and when I do, I feel like talking to fish. You wouldn't have a towel on you, would you, officer? No, I'm fresh out. Oh. But I'm sure they'll have some up at Belfield Hospital. Belfield? They got some nice padded cells for people who like to talk to fish. Oh, well, I was just kidding, officer. I jumped in the lake to save a life. Oh, well, that's different. I'll have to report this. What's your name and address? Maisie Revere. Mm-hmm. 1325 East 12th Street. You can send the medal there. Mm. And who was it you pulled out of the water? Little Sammy. Oh. What was his second name? <laughs> well, I didn't ask him. You see, I don't talk very good duck. Duck? Duck? Yeah. That's what I jumped in to save from drowning. Oh, very brick. You jumped in to save a duck from drowning. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a little crazy, don't it? I hope they have your size straight jacket at Belfield. I'm not crazy, officer. Honest, I'm not. Oh, of course you ain't. You just happen to enjoy having conversations with fish and like to give swimming lessons to ducks. <laughs> Come along, miss. No, you don't. Come back here. Come back. Hey! Well, I'm all packed, Mrs. Kennedy, and I'll send you the back rent as soon as I can. Maisie, honey, you shouldn't run away like this. You're not crazy. I know it, and you know it, but do those psychiatrists at Belfield know it? No. No nut houses for me, Mrs. Kennedy. I saw what it did to Olivia de Havilland in the snake pit. Well... Goodbye, Maisie, and don't worry about me. If the police come and question me, I'll say that... It... Oh, my goodness. The police. They're, they're here to take me to Belfield. What'll I do now, Mrs. Kennedy? Uh, 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 here, put on this apron and, uh, and and pretend you're the maid. Oh. Start sweeping the floor. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how's this? Uh, not bad. Not bad. Uh, now try using the broom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I knew I forgot something. All right, I'm coming. Keep your straight jacket on. I mean your shirt. Hey, pardon me, I'm looking for a young There's lady. There's nobody here by that name. There isn't? Well, she's also known as Maisie Revere. But she never lived here either. And besides, she ain't coming back. Who are you, miss? Me? I'm, um... I'm, uh... uh she's the maid. Yeah, the maid. Oh, and now will you please raise both your feet? I gotta sweep under them. The maid, eh? Mm-hmm. Do you always wear your hat when you sweep? My hat? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> well, you see, I, um... Uh, um... Mrs. Kennedy. Well, uh, she, um... She just started working here. Yeah. And I don't know whether I'm going to like it here yet. No. She's the temperamental type of maid. You say two wrong words to her and she quits. But, miss... Those are the two words. I quit. Send my suitcase, madam. Goodbye. Now, wait a minute, miss. From the description I was given, you resemble the Maisie Revere I'm looking for. You see, she's a girl Oh, well, that's just a coincidence. Most of us women are girls. Now, if you don't mind... A very pretty girl. Oh. (laughs) About five, two. Oh, one and a half. Beautiful blue eyes. Really? Lovely hair. (laughs) Skin like satin. Well... (laughs) Look, Sonny. Oh, please don't interrupt the nice man. Go on, mister. A gorgeous figure. No kidding. Oh, that's not Maisie at all. Is it, um, Hilda? It ain't. I mean, uh, by yump and yiminy, it ain't. No. Maisie is tall, thin, and lumpy. She has a face like a horse. 
an attractive horse. But that would only interest another horse. Look, if Sea Biscuit ever gets back, tell her that Philip Carter from Millvale was here to tell her about her uncle's will. Goodbye. Will? Will? Will. Oh, well, wait a minute, Will. I mean, Phil. I mean, Mr. Um, don't go. I'm not really what you think. I'm, um... Yes? I'll get it. Oh, my goodness, a cop. I'm looking for a girl. <clears throat> well, I hope you find one. Goodbye. Her name is Maisie Revere. Where is she? Nobody seems to know, officer. All right, Bob. What are you doing here anyway? Well, I'm looking for Maisie Revere. When I find her, I've got some news about an inheritance. And when I find her, it means the nut house. Well, don't look at me. I don't even know her. Um, what did she inherit? Well, her uncle Never left mind. Her... I'm asking the questions here. You, pretty face, when will Maisie Revere be back? Oh, well, I don't know. I wasn't talking to you. I mean you. Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, gee. Yeah, who are you? Uh, well, uh, um, but she's the maid here. She's um, sweeping up the dust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? In that hat? No, in the dustpan, silly. Wait a minute, officer. Just what is this Maisie Revere wanted for? Well, yeah. um, she's supposed to be crazy because she jumped in the lake to save a duck from drowning. <laughs> silly, ain't it? Uh, wait a minute. If you don't know her, how could you know that? Well, well uh, um, uh, you better go now, officer. We've got a lot of straightening out to do. I'm staying here till the dame comes back. When she does, tell her she inherited a newspaper. Well, she ain't coming back. She... What newspaper? Look, I'm asking the questions around here. I'm sorry. That's better. What newspaper? Her Uncle Patrick's. Look, enough of this. I'm going to search his house. Now, out of my way. Now, just a moment, officer. Do you have a search warrant? What? Oh, yeah. Now we got him. Do you have a search warrant? Officer, do you have a search warrant? According to Amendment 7 of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of the United States, any attempt to search without a warrant is considered an invasion of the civil rights. I... Yes, officer. It's an invasion of, uh, of, of what he said. Uh, you didn't know that, did you? Yeah, okay, okay. I'll get out of headquarters and get a search warrant. That's the trouble with the law. Too many laws. Well, I'll see that he stays out. Don't go away, uh, Hilda. Well... Now we're alone, Mr. Carter. That's right, Miss Revere. Oh, you know who I am? Look, those initials on your blouse, M.R., that doesn't stand for Mickey Rooney. (laughs) Yeah, besides I'm too tall. Say, um, you ain't a detective or a cop. (laughs) No, I've been running your Uncle Pat's paper. Uncle Pat? Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't know I had an Uncle Pat. Well, Patrick knew it, it seems. Poor fellow. It took me months to treat you. Didn't have much to go by, you know. Oh. And Uncle Pat, uh, when he... uh, uh, Did he suffer? No, Maisie. He died the way he lived. Fighting. Oh, a boxer. (laughs) No. No, believe me, in Millvale, there are plenty of things to fight. Crooked politics, graft, corruption. Now that you're the new owner of the paper, Maisie, it's up to you to fight Mayor Kendall and his crooked machine. Oh, but I don't know anything about newspapers, except that they all cost a nickel and they come in mighty handy when you got a hole in your shoe. Miss Revere, I didn't come all the way from Millvale to hear jokes. I'm here to make sure you don't dispose of the Sentinel. Well, you mean somebody'd buy it? Mayor Kendall and his gang in power. Now that your uncle is gone, Kendall and that crooked lawyer of his will stop at nothing to get control of the paper. But, Maisie, you mustn't sell it. Will you come back to Millvale with me and fight... Will you come on the next train? Well, this is kind of sudden. But, um, how about the cops? How will I be able to get out of town? Well, you just stay here, Maisie. I'll pick up the tickets and go down to Belfield and straighten out that insanity rap. Oh, See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I'd uh, like to send a telegram to Benjamin J. Kendall, Millvale. Have prepared airtight release for Miss Revere to sign, giving ownership of paper to you. Stop. She couldn't know actual value of papers, so we'll try to keep the price down to a maximum of $5,000. Stop. I'm going to see Miss Revere now. Anticipate no trouble. Signed, Ezekiel Lang. <laughs> Hello, 
know. Maisie, Phil Carter, you are now legally uninsane. Oh, you fixed it, Phil. <laughs> There's a man on his way over right now with a release from Belfield Hospital for you to sign. A release? Yes, waiving any claims of suit against Belfield for any mental anguish caused you. Oh. All you do, Maisie, is sign the release and you're in the clear. Oh, gee, that's a load off my overloaded mind, Phil. Oh, well, there's somebody at the door, Phil. Did I not? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Miss Revere. Yes. Well, my name is Lang, Ezekiah Lang. And I have a very important legal matter to see you about. Oh, well, come in. Thank you. <laughs> so you fellas sure work fast, don't you? <laughs> in our business, you got to work fast. I know. Phil Carter just told me about you. Uh, oh, he did, huh? Yeah. He said you got a release for me to sign. You want to sign it? Of course. That'll prove I ain't crazy. Yeah, it'll certainly proves something. Oh, well, uh, here's the release, and we're prepared to pay you $5,000. $5,000? Okay, then $6,000. 6000 Yes. Say, maybe hanging around with all those nuts, some of it rubbed off on you. All right, all right. $7,000, and not a penny more. $7,000? Yes. Well, uh, this means you relinquish all claims, of course. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Where do I sign? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, here, sign right here. Okay. Yeah. Good. And here's your 7000 in cash, Miss Revere. And your duplicate copy of the sale. Uh, I mean, release. Thanks a million. You're welcome, 7000 <laughs> bucks and gift wrap, too. Wow. Where did you get that kind of loot? For signing that release from the hospital, Sally. Oh, for a minute I thought it... 7,000 bucks for signing a release from an insane asylum? Mm hmm Maisie, are you sure that you're all right up there? All right? Why, this proves I've got brains I ain't even used yet. He started out with a measly five grand, but I played cagey with Mr. Lang and hit the jackpot. Oh, I see... Lang? Mm hmm Maisie, not... not Ezekiah Lang. Yeah, that's the dope. See, see, here's a copy of the release from the asylum. Well, let me see that. Oh, no. Oh, no, Maisie, this isn't a release from Belfield. It isn't? No, you just signed away your newspaper to those crooks. Oh, my gosh. Yes? Uh, I'm looking for Maisie Revere. I have a release for her to sign from Belfield. That's me. Take it back. Take it back, but miss, this paper proves that you're not crazy. Here, look at this paper. What's that? This proves I am. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. It could have been worse. Mr. Lang did give me $7,000 for the newspaper. It's chicken feed. Well, I can feed this chicken for a long time. Maisie, there's more to a newspaper than just money. A newspaper gives you the chance to say something. Well, I'm not interested in saying anything. Oh, Maisie. Well, maybe it ain't too late, Phil. Maybe if I talk to Mr. Lang and return the money, maybe he has a soft spot. Maisie, if he has, it ain't in his head. Mm. Beside all Ezekiah's probably rushing back to Millvale on the next train, the one we were supposed to take. Well, but if I sort of talk to him on the train... Maisie, don't kid yourself. The only woman that nearsighted old crook even bothers to talk to are widows with money. That's the way he made his pile, selling unsuspecting female stock in Texas oil wells that don't have any oil. Oh, I didn't think there were any places in Texas without oil. Say, Phil... 
Mm. Did you say that Ezekiah is nearsighted? Without his glasses, he's blind as a bat. Oh. Why, Maisie? Something cooking in that brain of yours? Uh Uh-huh. It's a long shot, but with your help, it might work. Hmm? Now, here's the idea, Phil. We'll both get on that train. I'll go to my compartment. You find Lang and get rid of his eyeglass. Well, sure. And then what? Well, you know the old saying, you can catch more flies with honey? Yeah, but Maisie... Just call me honey. Well, well, Ezekiah Lang. Imagine finding a teetotal like you here in the club car. Oh, hello, Carter. Oh, just celebrating a little victory, that's all. <laughs> you know, Lang, hey. the way you pull the wool over Maisie Revere's eyes deserves a great big slap on the back. <laughs> uh, uh, easy there, Carter. You almost knocked my glasses off. Only pair I got with me. Oh, that's good. I, I mean... When I think of how you outwitted a smart guy like me, <laughs> I gotta laugh. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, no hard feelings, then, Philip, my boy. Nope, nope. You're smarter than me, that's all, Ezekiah. I knew that. When you make up your mind to do something, you put it over with a bang. <laughs> oh, now you did it, Carter. My glasses. You knocked them off. Are they broken? Wait, I'll look on the floor. They are now. Oh, shucks. What do I do now? I can't even find my way back to my compartment. Oh, where's a Kyle? Let me help you. Here. Here, take my arm. Thanks. Uh, where is it? Here, right here. Oh, thanks. Say, what happened to your coat sleeve? Feels kind of moist. Oh, you got your hand on my mouth. Oh. oh. Come on, Ezekiah. We got to take good care of you. Very good care. <laughs> Well, here's your compartment, Ezekiah, old boy. Uh, thanks, son. Now, uh, where's the door now? Right here, old boy. Thanks, Carter. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Ouch! Uh, uh, what was that? You just sat down in my lap, big boy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get off. You don't have to, sonny. You ain't heavy. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I... <laughs> I thought this was my compartment. I can't see very well. The glasses, you know. (laughs) Don't go tall, dark, and nearsighted. Sit down beside me. Hmm? You're good-looking, and I'm in the mood. No, I don't think I... Uh, You really think I'm good-looking? When I'm in the mood, anybody's (laughs) good-looking. Sit down. I'll peel you a grape. Uh, uh, You know, it um, suddenly got very warm in here. Hmm. I sure appreciate your company, Ezekiah. Oh, thanks. And I... Say, how'd you know my name was Ezekiah? Uh, just took a while, guess. Hmm. You wouldn't be going to my town, Millvale, by any chance, would you, uh, sweetie girl? <laughs> <laughs> no, worse luck. I'm going way out west where men are. Oh. Uh, my third husband, or was it my fourth? No, it was my fifth. He left me some cash when he knocked off, and I'm looking for some place to invest it. Invest? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Say, uh, you wouldn't be interested in uh, maybe... Oil stocks? Of course. Oh, that's good, because... Say, how did you know I was going to mention oil stocks? Simple. You strike me like the oily type. Hmm? <laughs> no offense, man. Oh, of course. Oh, of course not. Well, now, uh, <laughs> if you want to invest your money... Maybe I could sort of help. Well, that's sweet, chum, but I just couldn't impose on a total stranger. Oh. What would you take me for? All you've got. I mean, a woman like you should be protected for the future. Now, I happen to own some shares in a valuable oil company. Well, sugar, (laughs) all I have is $7,000 of hard-earned money. Hard-earned? Took me five husbands to accumulate it. Oh, tough. Hmm. Well, by a strange coincidence, the 100 shares I have to sell happens to cost exactly $7,000. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Here's the money, friend. Uh, yes. Um, is it 7000 I really can't see it. Well, uh, here, I'll riffle the bills for you. Yep, exactly 7000 
Now, honey, where's the stock? Oh, the stock. Oh, well, uh, I've got a hundred share stock certificate right here in my pocket with my papers. I, uh, here, uh, can you pick it out for me? No glasses, you know. <laughs> Broken the club card. Mm, my pleasure, handsome. My pleasure. Uh, oh, careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it, handsome. Uh, Just what I've been looking for. Uh, now, you just sign it back. I mean, over to me. Yes. You'll get your money, and I'll get my new, uh, my stock. Yes. Yeah. Here's a pen. Thank you. Now, that's my finger. Oh. This is the pen. Oh, yeah, yes. Now, you just sign here. With pleasure. Not on your hand, Bob, oh. on this piece of paper. Oh, yes. yes. For, uh, for a moment, I thought you were tickling me again. <laughs> well, friend, this is a very ticklish proposition. Uh, well, that's that. Yes. Well, I guess I'll go back to my own compartment now. <laughs> Good night, girlie. Hey, silly boy, don't go out the window. Oh, shucks. I'll find the door. Just turn me around and All point right. me at it. Good night. Good night. Well, I guess this must be my compartment. Oh, oh, pardon me, madam. <laughs> Happy now? Oh, ecstatic, Maisie. We've got the paper back, and now we'll show those crooks who they're fooling with. You know, Maisie, when I look at you now, it's it's with different eyes. Well, there's nothing wrong with the old ones, Filthy. To me, now you're... Well, you... Oh, gee, I didn't think you noticed. Maisie, you're going to be proud someday that you're Maisie Revere and not somebody else. Oh, but I am somebody else. Hmm? Uh-huh. Maisie Revere's just my stage name. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. Uh, Phil, what's the matter? Maisie, old Pat's real name was Revere, not O'Connor. I, I guess in my haste to find the heir, I didn't bother to check close enough. Oh, I might have known it. I'm the wrong one. Not the Maisie Revere who inherited the paper. I, I'm sorry I made such a mess of it. Me too. Well, I guess it's goodbye, Phil. But, but where are you going? Back to Belfield. After what I went through without asking questions, I guess I belong there after all. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. <laughs> that, I wound up without a newspaper. Some people come into the world with nothing and others go out with nothing. Me, I'm different. I just have nothing all the way through. I guess maybe if I was a different kind of person, I could have bluffed my way through as the Maisie Revere who did inherit the paper. But telling lies is just too much trouble. You always got to remember what you said. Well, here I am back home in Brooklyn again, searching for a way to keep the wolf from the door. By myself, mind you. There's one thing I've found out. If you want a helping hand, the best place to look for it is at the end of your own arm. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Key to the City, starring Clark Gable, Loretta Young, Frank Morgan, and Marilyn Maxwell. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. 
Supporting cast included Ken Christie, Mary McGovern, Peter Leeds, Sidney Miller, Will Wright, and B. Benaderet. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say, how about a little... Ow! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Macy, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Macy pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Macy in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the fellow just said, Maisie Revere. Yeah, I was born in Brooklyn, right in the very shadow of the promised land, Ebbets Field. <laughs> I guess I'm no different than any girl who works for a living. I read the morning paper to see what's new with Dick Tracy and rush down to the subway. In New York, five million people ride the subway every day. And I always manage to get into the car that has the five million in it. That's why, as long as I can remember, I've had one ambition. To have a car of my own. And this morning, it looked like my dream was about to come true. I kind of felt I could afford a used car because I was working at the Fulton department store and the job looked steady. I'd been on it three days and hadn't been fired yet. So I went down to a used car lot to pick up my first car. I didn't really have the money yet to buy anything, but I didn't think it would do any harm to look. You won't make a mistake, Miss Revere, to buy this car. Just listen to that motor. Let's do it purr. What'd you say? I said the motor's so smooth you can hardly hear it. You better talk louder. The motor's so noisy I can't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, never mind. I don't think I'm interested in this convertible cement mixer. Just let me off at the nearest subway station. I'm going to be late for work. Uh, let's not make any hasty decisions, baby. We're a reliable firm. Every car we sell, we stand behind. Well, stand behind this one, buddy, and push. I'm in a hurry to get to work. Oh, now look, chick. Every car we sell is guaranteed. You you give me 80 bucks and I'll give you this ju uh, lovely car and no questions asked. Well, maybe. But first, I'll have to drive it myself. Step on the brakes and stop there in the corner of Third Street. Okay, baby. Well, I guess 4th Street will do. Now, let me get behind the wheel. Okay. There. Miss! Miss! Look out! Well, i got to be going now. Got to get to the store. Now, wait a minute. Just look at that car. It's all smashed to bits. Yeah. And I just nudged that pole with it and it fell apart. Well, on second thought, I don't think I'm interested in buying that particular car. Well, bye now, and thanks for your courtesy. Oh, no, you don't. Come on into that drugstore with me while I phone and tell the boss. Now, wait a minute, mister. There's only one type of man that can order me around. Yeah. And you're the type. Hello, smiling Frank's used car lot. Smiling himself talking. Hello, boss. This is Jack. 
Hey, you remember I took that Revere dame out to demonstrate the green coupe? Uh, you mean that 1928 model? No, no, no. The old one. Well, we're out here on Sunland Boulevard. That car's a total wreck. Naturally, that's why I'm letting it go for 80 bucks. Now, look, boss, I'm trying to tell you. The dame drove it into a telephone pole. I want you to send the wrecking car to pick it up. Car's on Sunland between 8th and 9th. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll send the truck. Where's the car exactly? Closer to 8th or closer to 9th? It's from 8th to 9th. Hey, boss, what'll I do? The dame's outside the booth waiting. What's to do? You collect the dough and you get out back here and take over for me for a while. My cheeks are getting sore from all this smiling. But she ain't got the dough. She's only a dame that works as a sales girl in a department store. Well, so what? You know what to do. Okay, boss, okay. But my heart won't be in it. Well, girlie, I just told Smiling Frankie what happened. And? He stopped smiling. Oh, I'm sorry. He has his lovely teeth. So have you, baby. It's a shame. What's a shame, signed, worried, stiff? What'll happen to them bicuspidors of yours if you don't come across? Oh, please, mister, I don't know you that well. I mean, for that wreck you just wrecked. That'll be $80.34, approximately. 34 cents? Yeah, that's for the tax. Ah, oh, you mean the things that held the car together. <laughs> well, okay, I've got just enough money on me to pay it. The price of the car? No, the tax. I have grave fears, doll, that that will not do. Oh, but gee, suppose I can't raise the money. What will you do? <laughs> that's what I thought. Well, and why are we late this morning, Miss Revere? Well... A likely story. It's this way, Mr. Snark. I had an accident in a car. Well, that's a new one. No, it was an old one. Um, Mr. Snark, I'm in trouble. I'm glad. I need $80. Indeed. Isn't there any way I can borrow an advance on my salary? Well, you might talk to Mr. Endicott, the store manager. He sometimes lets down the bars if there's a female concern. Oh, yeah. I've heard about him. He's a greyhound. A greyhound? Yeah. Too fast to be a wolf. <laughs> Who's there? I'd like to see you, Mr. Endicott. Oh, a girl. Well, how are you? Uh, Mr. Endicott, I'm Maisie Revere, and I work here, and, well, I don't know whether you've noticed me. Of course I've noticed you, Miss Revere. You're a girl, aren't you? And a very pretty girl. Oh, Mr. Endicott, you say that to all the girls here. Yes, drooly little devil, aren't I? You know, what can I do for you, my dear? Well, um, it's this way. I need $80, and I need it badly. Really? How badly? Eh, not that badly. Well, I can <laughs> dream, can I? Well, um, all I want is a loan against my salary in the future. Well, Miss Revere, it's against the policy of the store to advance money to an employee. Oh. But to a friend, a lovely, understanding friend. Uh, look, mister, maybe I ain't so smart when it comes to punctuation. But I was taught that it ain't correct to end a sentence with a proposition. Yes. Goodbye. Miss? Oh, miss, would you kindly wait on me, please? Oh, I'm sorry, madam. My mind was on something else. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like some perfume, please. Oh, yeah, sure. We have a very fine selection. Passion, mad desire, wild love. Uh, don't you have anything for a beginner? Oh, yes. This bottle of surrender. Very potent, you know. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. If you've got a date with a man, don't use any of this stuff if you're bluffing. It's uh, $20 an ounce. Oh, well, I'm interested in something better than that. Do you mind if I just look around a bit? Oh, not at all. Mm -hmm. Smells yummy. Howdy, babe. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, it's you. You got a good memory for faces. That's good. Yeah. Because if I don't get that 80 bucks, it'll be nice to remember what your face used to look like. You mean you're going to take me for a ride, maybe? Uh, no, no. You've already had your ride. Oh. And now you better pay up. 
And if by some condition which is beyond your control, the dough ain't forthcoming, me and the boys will await your explanations outside. In our bulletproof, blood-proof, scream-proof car. But you can't wait out there. You'll get a ticket for parking. We're used to living dangerously. So long, girlie. And just to remind you, we'll be out there waiting every so often. We'll blow our horn to remind you of our presence. Oh, you're kidding, ain't you? Just playing games, huh? Ain't yeah. you? Yeah. But we play for keeps. So long, baby. Bye. Oh, Miss. Miss, how much does this bottle cost? Why, Miss, what happened? You look like you've just seen a ghost. I have. Mine. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern, will continue in just a moment. Remember me, your customer? Oh, yes, sir. I mean, lady. I mean, oh, yes, you, Hilm. If you don't mind, I'd rather have a bottle of perfume. Oh, well, you're in luck. We have that, too. I'm so glad. I'll take this bottle of first love. Wrap it, please. Sure, that'll be Dixie Sours. I mean, $60. <coughs> oh, Jeepers. Oh, you broke the bottle, you clumsy fool, and all over me. Oh, I'm sorry, it... It won't happen again. You can say that again, Miss Revere. You're fired. Good. Look at me. I'm a mess. Well, you can't blame that on me. What have we here? Well, this awkward girl dropped a $60 bottle of perfume all over me. $60 worth? Such unpardonable clumsiness. I'm leaving this store and never shopping here again. Oh, please don't go, madam. You won't be annoyed by this sales girl again. Miss Revere, leave immediately, but... Miss me... Revere, don't you dare leave this store. Why, thanks, Mr. Endicott. Why, you're not the louse everybody says you are. Oh, yes, I am. Miss Revere, you're going to keep on working here till you pay off the price of that bottle of perfume you broke. Oh, I'm proud of you, Mr. Endicott. That's the nastiest thing you've ever done. But, gosh, it'll take me weeks to pay what I owe you, and... and uh, oh, I'll be glad to stay in this store and work day and night to do it. Now, you'll probably have to. Well, Miss Revere, since you're staying on, get busy this instant and show this lady another bottle of perfume. But I'm so nervous right now. All right, Miss, all right. I'll take this bottle of desire at midnight. Oh, well, yes, Miss, I'll wrap it. <gasps> oh, jeepers. Oh, another bottle of perfume all over me. I won't be able to sleep with myself tonight. Well, you can always sleep in another room. And shop in another store. Goodbye. Mr. Endicott, may I fire her now, please? Well, uh... oh, I'll work it off, Mr. Endicott. Day and night I'll stay here and clean up after hours and scrub floors. I'll sleep in the store and never even leave. I know I've broken two bottles of perfume, but I can do better. Yes, but in a department without glassware, lovely breakable glassware. Mr. Snark, come, Miss Revere. <laughs> Miss Revere, I'm sure you can't break anything here in the curtain department. Dreamer. Oh, uh, yes, madam. Anything I can do for you? Yes, thank you. I'm doing over my salon, miss. The decor is going to be strictly Louis the Fourteenth. Oh, that's very good taste, madam. That's one of the nicest Louises. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> do you have anything in curtains to match this old antique vase? Yes. I mean, yes. Uh, something quite uh, shishi, if you don't mind. To set off this priceless bit of pottery. It's been in the family for yours and yours. The vase hard. Yours. Oh. Oh, that bit of fluff there seems to be the type of brocade I've been searching for. Would you please hold the vase while I feel the texture? Oh, certainly. Gosh, this vase sure is delicate. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> 
Oh, I did it again. Oh, my beautiful Walt. I think I'm going to faint. Wait for your turn. I'm first. Miss Rivia, what was that crash? Oh, you didn't. Uh-huh. I shall sue the store for the full value of that vase. Two thousand dollars. Good day, miss. What's so good about it? Miss Revere, do you know how much you owe the store now? I thought you were keeping score. Exactly two thousand one hundred and thirty dollars. Gee. You're going to stay here and work. Do every nasty little chore that arises until your debt is paid. Oh, well, gee, at that rate, I won't really have time to leave the store. Probably not. Oh, well, gosh, that's the best news I've heard today. Let's see now. Ah, the luggage department. Leather. I'm certain you can't break it. Well, any... it ain't going to be easy, but I can try. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Endicott, the manager, talking. Who? Oh, the First National Bank. Yeah, I know the guards were here to pick up the day's receipts, but I didn't have it ready yet. I had a little trouble with the girl. What? Uh, no, in a business way. Uh, no, don't send the guards again. I've already packed the money in a suitcase. You're not bad. $113,000. Yes, I'll be right over there. Goodbye. Here we come in. Oh, but Mr. Endicott, you'll have to do something right away. She's breaking the place all up. That Revere girl again? Oh, no, sir. Mrs. Van Norbert. She claims that one of our sales girls broke a $2,000 vase of hers. Oh, sounds like Miss Revere's department. <laughs> Why didn't I just fire her? I don't have the brains of a two-year-old idiot. Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Endicott. <laughs> I, I mean, you'd better do something to calm Mrs. Van Norbert. She threatens to sue the store unless she gets reimbursed for that vase. She's at the complaint department now, and she's raising an awful, if you'll pardon the expression, stink. Okay, okay, I'll go right down. Here, take this suitcase and put it in my car, and be very careful with it. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, my, a beautiful piece of luggage, this. I've never seen a pigskin bag with gold edging like this before. It must be worth a fortune. You're not kidding. Now get going with that suitcase. Uh, yes, sir, at once, sir. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see you. What? Did I knock you down? No, no, no. I'm just sitting here practicing my yogi lesson. Oh, I... Help me up, please. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, mm, pardon me, madam, but you smell... I should. I'm wearing $130 worth of perfume. Oh. I've been sniffed at from one end of this store to the other end. Oh, oh. Oh, my ankle. Oh, uh, does it hurt bad? Oh, I think it's broken. Take me to your store, Dr. Quick. Uh, yes, 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 ma'am. Oh, oh, my, such a day. Here, lean on me. Oh, no, no, I can't. You'll have to carry me. Oh, but I can't with this suitcase. Well, put it down. Oh. I may want to use this ankle again. Now, be quick. Uh, but, but the manager How said that I... How would you like a nice, big, fat lawsuit on your hands? Oh, but we wouldn't, ma'am. Here, I'll leave the suitcase by the counter and rush you to the doctor. Upsy daisy uh, uh, Now, hurry. And you don't have to hold your nose, either. <laughs> Well, here we are in luggage, Miss Revere, and for the first time I can breathe easier. I can't. That woman I splashed all that perfume over must have been down here airing herself out. I mean I can breathe easier because I feel fairly certain that you can't break any of these pieces of luggage. Hmm. Looks like this nervousness of mine must have caught on. One of the suitcases fell off the counter. Oh, this pigskin job with the gold edging? Mm-hmm. Well, well, what are you waiting for, Miss Revere? Put it back on the counter with the other luggage. Oh, sure, sure. Gee, it sure is heavy. It feels like it's already packed for a trip. Well, Miss Revere, I must get back to my department. I'll take over and sell. Sell like crazy. Yes, sir. Crazy selling is my specialty. Oh, here's somebody that looks like a customer. Um, what can I do for you, sir? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what you got that's cheap? Well, how about some nice luggage in case you want to go someplace? Hey, hey, nope. I've already been someplace. Now, here's a lovely suitcase. This one. Oh, it's yes. It's genuine pigskin, and we throw in that gold edging free. Gee, it sure looks smart-like. Hey, but it's a little dirty. 
Well, you know how pigs are. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's on sale. Everything on this counter is three ninety five. Well, mm-hmm. I think maybe I'll take that one. Here's your money. Oh, yes, sir. And here's your change. Oh, thanks. I'll just take the suitcase with me. Gee, will my wife be surprised when she finds out what I brought? <laughs> Gee, it sure is heavy. I <laughs> How could you leave that suitcase I gave you just lying around? You're nothing but an idiot. A nincompoop. A... A... Moron. Yes, thanks. Oh, that's all right. Now, where did you leave that suitcase? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, It was right here alongside the luggage counter, sir. Oh, hello, Mr. Endicott. Anything I can do for you? I'm looking for a pigskin suitcase trimmed with gold. With gold? Oh, I'm afraid you're a little late. I just sold the only one we had. Sold it? Uh Uh-huh. Miss Revere, how could you do a thing like that? Well, Mr. Endicott, I got other talents besides just breaking things. Miss Revere, do you know how much that suitcase was worth? Well, I'd say about a buck and a half because it looked a little used. But I got three ninety five for it. Oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, yes. And it wasn't easy to unload it, either. I had to do quite a selling job. Miss Revere, for your information, that bag was worth $113,000. Oh, Mr. Endicott, you and your mock-up. Miss Revere, that suitcase was filled with money. Oodles of money to go to the bank. A hundred and thirteen thousands of dollars. Thirteen. Miss Revere. I know. Now I owe you a little more, don't I? Get out, you're fired. But I can't. Outside, they're waiting for me. I might get killed. Oh, gee, that's swell. You're fired too, Scott. Me? But I didn't think Mr. You... Endicott, you can't fire him. Oh, yes, I can. Now out of my way. I've got to get that money back. I'll call the police. I'll offer a reward, $1,000. Two thousand. Do that. Gee, a reward. Oh, that would solve everything. Pay for the wrecked car. Gee, is there anything I can do, Maisie? Well, just pray that I can find that goon I sold the bag to. He couldn't be very far from the store yet. <laughs> I forgot he was still waiting out here. Well, baby, you got the dough. Don't bother me. I'm looking for a man with a pigskin face and gold edging. I mean, a bag with a stupid face. Look, miss, the dough. Well, yeah, that's why. Did you see anybody that fits that description? No, and I'm glad. Now, about the money. And the police will soon be here. Uh, the cops? Mm-hmm. Well, so long, miss. Uh, forget what I said. I was only kidding. But Mr. Endicott sent for a Yeah, so long, babe. Um... Did you find him yet, Maisie? No, but oh. half my troubles are over. What? I'm out here talking to you, and I ain't even dead. Oh, Maisie, are you all right? Yeah, but I'll be all right if I find that guy with the suitcase. Uh, say, miss, I like to talk oh, to you. Oh, go away, mister. I'm looking for somebody. I... Oh, say, it's you. Oh, well, sure it's me. I could have told you that right away. Uh-huh. Oh, the bag. You've still got it? Yeah. And I changed my mind about buying it. It's too heavy to carry. Oh, yeah. Here's your money back. Oh, thanks. For a minute, I thought I was going to be stuck with it, though. <laughs> well, we're, we're a reliable company. And, mister, I'm so happy I could kiss you. Uh-huh. There. Mmm, gee. Mom told me shopping was fun, but I didn't think it would be this kind of fun. Oh, there you are, Mr. Endicott. I did it, I did it. Here's the suitcase. With all the money, I think. Here, let me have that bag. There, there. I've got to see if all the money's there. Here, yeah, it's all there. Well, how can you tell without counting it? I used to work in a bag. Well, how about it? How about what? The reward. Reward? Yeah, you remember. Before you went to call the cops, you said reward, money, bucks, green stuff, 2,000 of it. <laughs> that was before I got it back. Oh. Goodbye, Miss Revere. Scram. Oh, but Mr. Endicott, you gave your word. There he is, Sarge. The quick with the suitcase. Yeah, yeah, fits the description. Pig skin with gold trim. Hey, hey, just a moment, officers. You've got me wrong. Correction, we've got you right. With the money. Put the bracelets on him, Hennessy. My pleasure. Look, you're making a mistake. I'm the manager and I can prove it. Okay, start proving. Well, certainly. One of our sales girls is right here. Miss Revere. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, were you addressing me? Of course I'm addressing you. Tell these policemen who I am. Me? <laughs> 
I never saw you before in my life. Did I, Scotty? Yes. Huh? Oh, of course not. Well, let's go, Raffles. Yes, no, no, wait a minute. You know I'm the manager of the store, remember? Well, how should I know? I don't work here, remember? Let's go, Tubby. Well, somebody's got to know me. Scott, Scott, now look. You'd do a favor for a friend, wouldn't you? Certainly, stranger. Oh, no. Well, of course, there are ways of people suddenly remembering people... Aren't there, Scotty? Uh, oh, yeah, so I've heard. Now, please, miss, have a heart. Well, I'm trying to think back. And I believe that I can remember better when I'm rewarded about $2,000 worth, maybe. Yes. Come on, Bob, I'm double paid. Now, now, wait, wait. Okay, okay, $2,000 worth. And a couple of jobs back? Yes, yes. And better working conditions and better pay and two weeks vacation for everybody? Yes, yes, anything. And a chance for the salespeople to get nasty with the customers once in a while, like during the war. And a whole hour for lunch and a chance to sit down and rest. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Here's Maisie. And so I finally told the truth about Endicott and cleared my conscience. Funny thing about a conscience, if you've noticed, it doesn't stop you from doing something you shouldn't. It just stops you from enjoying it. With the reward money, I settled for that breakage, and now I'm broke. But there's one good thing about having nothing. Things can't get any worse. Well, it's back to the subway for me again. Gosh, I hate to get into that musty, crowded thing. I must remember to go to the zoo this Sunday for a breath of fresh air. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Nancy Goes to Rio, starring Anne Southern, Jane Powell, Barry Sullivan, and Carmen Miranda. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Sheldon Leonard, Sidney Miller, Gerald Moore, Joan Banks, Peter Leeds, Frank Nelson, and Shep Menken. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say, how about a little kick? Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer.
here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. But I changed it to Maisie Revere when I was bitten by the show business bug. Hmm. If I'd known what I was getting into then, I would have bitten back. For about a year now, I've been hoping to have my name changed again to something real permanent, like Mrs. Eddie Jordan. But my boyfriend, Eddie, can't afford to get married on the salary he's making, so you can understand why we don't go out much and why I get so excited, like today, for instance, when Eddie and me are going to a fancy costume ball for charity, and Eddie and me are going in class, too. We're taking a taxi to the subway. Right now, I'm at the costumers trying on costumes, and... Ouch! Mr. Clark, have mercy. Hey, sorry, Miss Revere. Did I get another pin in you? Yeah, so take it easy, will you? I'm going to the ball masquerading as a belle of the gay 90s, not as a game of darts. I just asked for a few simple alterations. And Miss Revere, what you've asked me to do to this gay 90s dress is not a simple alteration. It's a major surgery. Yeah, and I've been taking it without any anesthetic. Ouch! But stand still, miss. <laughs> you wanted the bustle changed for something else. And you're going to just it. Ooh. Yeah, but if you decide when I'm through with the alterations that you don't want this costume, you know what? What? I'll just hate you. Well, don't worry, Mr. Clark. This is really the one I want. Honest. Yeah, honest and truly? Mm-hmm. And no changing your mind again? No matter what? Uh-huh. Raise your right hand and swear. Gladly. Here goes. No, 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 you clumsy. You, you ripped the sleeve and ruined the dress. Oh, well, Miss Revere, and what have you got to say for yourself? Well, I think I'll take that Queen Isabella costume after all. Oh, no, no, no. I... Well, just for that, I'm going back home and make my own yes, costume. Make you Mr. Clark, you have just lost the customer. Well, thank you, Miss Revere. It's losing customers like you that brings a little sunshine into my life. Now go, please, and make your own costume. Well, don't think that I can't. Goodbye. <laughs> She's gone. Oh, she's gone, gone. Oh. Can I borrow your scissors? No, no, and get out. Out, out! Oh, all right, selfish. I won't do it, Maisie. I absolutely won't do it in that final. Oh, gosh, Eddie, you gotta. The ball is tonight, and there ain't no time to sew something up for you. Besides, I used all the material I could find around here to make my Madame Dewberry gown. Hmm. Madame Dewberry, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Sounds very, uh... Well, that it is, Eddie. You should see it. It has a bare midriff. And in front... Maisie, don't look now, but in Madame Dewberry's day, they didn't wear gowns with a bare midriff. I know, but I couldn't help it, Eddie. The shower curtain I made it out of had a big hole in it. And wait till you see the wig I fixed up. Just like Dewberry wore. The loveliest shade of pink. Pink? Dewberry's wig was white. I know. But they don't make cotton candy in that color. Cotton candy. Mm. Well, at least your costume shows ingenuity. Well, so does the one I thought of for you, Eddie. And imagination, too. I ain't gonna do it. Eddie Jordan, you don't love me. I do, honey, but I love myself a little, too, and I absolutely refuse to crawl around on my hands and knees with a wash tub over my back just because you happen to think I should go as a turtle. But, Eddie, you might win the prize for the most novel costume. Look, darling, I, I don't want to start an argument. Neither do I. Good. So you just go as a turtle and there won't be any. Oh, the only way for a man to win an argument with a woman is with his hat. With his hat? Yes, just grab it and run. All right, Eddie. Go like anything you want. Only you'll be losing out on a chance to get that first prize, which is $500. Five, huh? Say, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And if a certain party had that much money, a certain party could ask a certain party a certain question, the answer to which would be certainly the certain party would marry the other certain party. Uh... Hello, Maisie. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Hello. Mert. Hi. I'd like to ask you a question, Merton. Huh. What would you do if you were me? Well, if Don't I... try to think first, Merton. Answer without thinking like I always do. I mean, if you could get $500, would you be a turtle? Well, I don't know. If I was a turtle, what would I do with $500? You see? Well, I don't mean that kind of turtle. I mean people turtle. Huh? She means I should be one. Oh. With a wash tub on my back. 
A turtle with a wash tub on your back? Yes. Eddie, have you been smoking pablum again? Oh, it's just a costume, Mert, for the ball tonight. Oh, that. All I can say is if I have to crawl around on my hands and knees all night, I'm not going. Nobody's going. I sat up all night trying to figure out something clever for Eddie and... Well, what do you mean, nobody's going? Well, Mr. Devlin, call the ball off. Ah, uh, there's good news tonight. But Mr. Devlin can't do that. Tickets have been sold, and it's for charity for the hospital. I know, but it's Devlin's mansion where the ball was supposed to be held, and he just decided he ain't going to go through with it. And that's what I came in to tell you. Oh, but he can't do that. He promised. We've got an architect working on the plans for that hospital. Gee, I can't understand what made him change his mind. Well, who knows? Maybe this morning he got up on the wrong side of his bank book. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I'm going down to see him and find out for myself. I'm from Vermont, you know. Maisie, that saying is from Missouri. Not when you talk to Mr. Devlin. He's a Republican. And you can't back out now, Mr. Devlin. Over 400 tickets have been sold, and the orchestra's been hired. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Revere, and I'll try to explain my reasons for withdrawing the use of my home. Well, okay, I'll try to understand, but it ain't going to be easy. My biggest customer is J.J. Randolph of Memphis. Now, he buys billions of safety pins from me every year. Hmm. J.J. must have a lot of babies. <laughs> no, no, just one daughter, Prunella. She's arriving today to spend a few days at my house before going out west. Naturally, as the daughter of my biggest customer, I have to entertain her. Oh, well, then the costume ball tonight would start her off with a bang. Oh, and there's a costume I saw this morning that's real snazzy. The one that Salome danced in. Well, somehow I don't think Prunella would care for dancing tonight. Oh, uh, well, then we could get her a costume like Whistler's mother and she can sit around in a rocking chair all night. You don't seem to get the point of why I'm calling off the ball tonight. Prunella is a girl. So what? That could happen to any baby. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, being a girl, she'd feel sort of left out of things. You know, a big ball and she without a partner? A male partner? Oh, well, may maybe we can get her a boyfriend. W what kind of a looking girl is she? Well, um, I haven't seen her lately, but uh, you've seen pictures of plastic surgery on the face labeled before and after? Yes. A Prunella looks like during. Oh. Now, of course, if we could get a volunteer to make the supreme sacrifice and be Prunella's escort tonight... Uh... You'll let us use your house for the ball is scheduled? Yes. Yes, I would. Oh. Uh, have you any particular man in mind, Miss Revere? Yeah. But tonight he better not be too particular. It's my boyfriend, Eddie Jordan. But I think he loves me enough to go out with another girl. You're a fine girl, Miss Revere. Remember, you're doing this for a hospital. Yeah. And after Eddie sees the date I got for him... I will probably be the first patient. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Eddie. Well, I'm still waiting. Aren't you going to tell me what you said to Mr. Devlin that made him change his mind about using his home for the costume ball tonight? Well, Eddie, it's a long story. You see, um, I'm a woman and he's a man. Yes. Well, does that answer your question? Yes, it answers it. But ball or no ball, I'm not showing up there as a turtle and that's final. Well, anything you wish, Eddie. After all, I don't want... You're giving in without an argument? But sure, Eddie. After all, in things like this, the man is the boss. And the woman, she's nothing. Well, now you're talking. Of course, that ain't really much of a job, boss over nothing. <laughs> well, tonight's your night, Eddie. You can go to the bar as anything you wish, even as the world's most eligible bachelor. 
stay. Being Don Juan sort of appeals to me. I'll tell you what, honey. I'll go grab me a costume and pick you up here about eight tonight. Uh, well, um, I'm not going tonight, Eddie. Maisie, you're not sick. No, but somebody else is. He's, um, he's my cousin. Well, Maisie, isn't this rather sudden? Oh, not at all. He's been my cousin for years. Well, you never told me you had a cousin? Well, sure, everybody's got a cousin if they think about it. This one is related to me by marriage. By marriage? Yeah. You, you see, they were married. Who? His father and mother. Well, I expected that. You did? <laughs> Everybody else in the family was surprised. Eddie, um, you ain't going to find it easy to believe what suddenly happened. No, but I'll force myself. Well, that's real sweet of you, honey. You see, I've got to sit up with my cousin because he, um... Well, he just caught the measles again. Oh. Well, darling, I can't let you expose yourself to this dread disease alone. I'm going to be right with you to the end. Oh, no, Eddie, you can't. You mustn't. You might catch me. I mean, it. No, this is my problem, Eddie. I alone must brave being exposed to the horrible danger. But, Maisie... And I want you to carry on like nothing had happened. Go to the ball, dance, sing, enjoy your... Uh Uh-huh. Maisie, I very seldom dance with myself. I guess I'm just not the type. Oh, well, you don't have to go alone, Eddie. I- I've arranged a date for you. Well, well, you have changed, honey. Uh-huh. You always told me you wouldn't trust me out with another girl. Oh, but I'm not afraid of this one. I mean, um, I'm sure you'll like Prunella. Prunella? Uh-huh, with the accent I'm a prune. That's um, the way she pronounces it, I mean. Oh, and what sort of looking girl is dear Prunella? Well, uh, he resembles a picture star. Which one? Lassie. What? I said, hmm, let's see how I can describe her. She's sort of, um, well, um, different. Oh, is she pretty? Hmm, she's very intelligent. Is she pretty? And a wonderful dancer. Is she pretty? And she dresses very smart. What about the face? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. She has one. I'm glad. For a minute you had me worried. I thought maybe she looked like a human anteater. Oh. Then you've seen her. No, and I don't intend to. I'll take the measles. No, Eddie, you've got to be Prunella's date tonight. you just got to. But, Maisie, I can't even look at a girl like this Prunella must be. You know I've got a weak stomach. Yeah, but a kind heart. And it's for a worthy cause, Eddie. Won't you, huh? Won't you? Oh, gee, gosh, Maisie. And I'll be able to break away from my, um... um, Cousin. Yeah, thanks, my cousin. I'll get away about 11 tonight, and I'll meet you in Mr. Devlin's garden, and, um... And what, Maisie? Well, we'll talk. But there might be somebody watching, honey. Well, in that case, we'll have to talk. Okay, Maisie. Okay. Brunella's got herself a date. Yes? Oh, good evening, miss. I'd like to see Mr. Devlin, please. I've got good news for him. Oh, he always upstairs putting on his costume for the ball tonight. Can I help you? Well, yes, I'll. Say, what kind of makeup do you use, honey? You look positively yummy. I don't wear any messy old makeup, sugar. Everything you see about me is just plain below me. All we southern guys are just natural. See, I come from the tobacco country. Well, I could have guessed that. You're so round, so firm, so fully stacked. Well, here I am, Miss Sevilla. Everything's set, I hope. Yeah, Eddie Jordan can be expected here any minute. I hope Prunella will try to look, well, presentable at least. Ah, so well, honey. Because Eddie didn't want to... Uh, your Prunella? Uh, time has been quite kind to her, eh, Maisie? A little too kind. Don't you all worry about Eddie boy having himself a bold, honey. After all, keeping men interested is my business. Yeah, and you sure got an attractive sample case. I sure appreciate your putting yourself out for me, honey. Yeah, but I'm afraid I may be out permanently. I mean, Prunella, 
Eddie may not be your type. You see, he's a man. That's my type. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I must tell the servants that the ball is on for tonight. I expect you to save a dance for me tonight, Brunella. Don't count out of too much, sugar. I may be too busy with Eddie, boy. I hope. Oh. Oh, I'll get it. Well, good evening, y'all. Yeah, good all to y'all, y'all. I understand a certain Major Revere was coming over here, and I'd like... Why, thank you, mm. sugar. Hey, well, here I am. Let's go, Mr. Um, um, Gluckenfeld. Gluckenfeld? Maisie, are you out of your mind? I was, but I ain't now. Come on, Mr. Gluckenfeld. Goodbye, Abigail. Abigail? Oh, sugar, you made a mistake. Just almost, honey, just almost. Come, chum. Well, it's all set for the ball, and... Oh, you must be Eddie. Yes. I see you're here early to see Primella. Well, the cat's out of the bag, and I'm holding it. Come on, Ed. Not so fast. This gorgeous creature is Prunella? This handsome man is Eddie? Yeah, I'm Eddie. Oh, Prunella. I'm leaving. Are you coming, Eddie? Do you think I'm crazy? No, but I can dream, can't I? I'll be delighted to be Prunella's companion, her very close companion tonight, for charity, of course. <laughs> Bye, Maisie. Give my regards to your cousin with the measles. Your cousin has the measles? Oh, I'm so sorry, honey. Is there anything I can do to help you tonight? Yeah, you can catch it. Well, Eddie, I'm going. So long. Likewise, I'm sure. Well, I better get into my costume for the bowl. I'm going as a member of Queen Elizabeth's court. Uh, yes, Brunella's going to be a lady in waiting. So don't you be late, Eddie, honey. I won't. You're just what the lady's been waiting for. See y'all shortly, sugar. <laughs> Look again, Merton. Are Eddie and Prunella still in there dancing as close together as before? Oh, well, wait, 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 Maisie. Wait till I get up a little higher in the tree so as I can see better. All right, go on. Oh, oh. If he gets any closer, he'd be behind her. Oh, fine. What's he, what's he doing now, Mert? Well, well he, he's saying to her, Prunella, when you're so close to me, my heart beats louder than a dollar watch. How do you know that from way out here? You can't read lips. No, but I can read eyes. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, yourself. Eddie's look as big as balloons right now. Mert, I just gotta find out what Eddie's saying to that sneaky Dixie cup. Oh. I'm going in. Well, well, well you better be careful, Maisie. You'll rip your costume. So what? The only reason I made myself for a Madame Dewberry was because I thought I might sneak in a dance with Eddie when that Prunella got tired of him. Oh, she ain't tired. Wonderful legs that gal has. Oh. Wonderful. Now, look, Mert. Huh? I've got an idea. I want you to cut in on Prunella and dance with her. Me? Dance with her? Well, will you do it for me, Mert? Oh, but I'll do it for me. <laughs> that gal's got everything. Yeah, include Nettie. You just dance Prunella over to where I'm standing, Mert, and leave the rest to me. Uh-huh. I'll get down from the tree first. What? what, what, what? Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Maisie, did you hurt yourself? Where did you fall? I ain't saying, but I should have taken that costume with a bustle. <laughs> Oh, frankly, I was a little shocked the way y'all tore me out of Mr. Jordan's arms, sir. Uh, Are you northern as always, Adam Patchwood? Oh, I ain't a Yankee sugar doll. I'm just a youth from the South. I come from Miami, Florida. Shut up! Uh, you have a New York accent. Uh, well, I was born during the tourist season. Uh, uh, uh. Sir, don't be uncouth. Yes, huh? sir. When you're with a lady, you gotta be cool. Oh, so you're not with this gal, ain't you? Mm -hmm. I can tell, even with your mask. And you're a Prunella. <laughs> Having quite a lark with Eddie, ain't you, honey? Oh, yeah. He's so handsome and so interesting. He was telling me a little while back how he used to play football. Yeah, we kind of suspected that by the passes he was making. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, honey. <laughs> I'm afraid my whole glass of punch splashed all over you. Yeah, uh, ma'am, how could you be so clumsy? Practice, sonny, practice. Oh, look at my costume. Now my whole evening is ruined. That's nice. I mean, I'm sorry, honey. Look, why, why don't you you slip into my costume and I'll wear yours? Well, I really shouldn't. After all, it was an accident. 
But there's Addie, of course. Yeah, another accident. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, babe. You two can change in the powder room, huh? Okay. Well, in case you get changed before me, Miss Revere, you'll dance with Addie, won't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, you wouldn't mind taking my place with him for a while, would you? Keep him from being lonesome. Would she? Uh, 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 uh. It'll be a pleasure, kiddo. A real pleasure. <laughs> Well, so I finally found you out here in the garden, huh? I've been looking all over for you, honey. Yeah, well, sugar nanny, honey. Did y'all miss your little prunella? Prunella? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, you, uh, look a little shorter than you did a while ago. Well, naturally, honey. Those burning kisses of yours wore me down. Kisses? Didn't y'all kiss her? I mean, me? Oh, yes, but, uh... Those were only rough samples. <laughs> well, I'd sure like another sample, sir. Like before. Here goes, honey. Well? Heaven. Plain heaven. Ouch! Say, if you liked it so much, what's the idea of slapping me? That's because of what you Yankees did during the Civil War. <laughs> Maisie, I found you at last. I've been looking all over the place for you for three hours. Everybody I talked to said... I know. Told you the rumor that I'd left town with a broken heart. Yes. Say, you know about that rumor? I should. I started it. Eddie, I've been crying my eyes out. Oh, you shouldn't, honey. They're such nice eyes. Gee, you really think so? Eddie, you got nice eyes, too. Yeah? Thanks. Of course, it's too bad you can't keep them focused on one woman at a time. But I do see very well with these eyes of mine. For example, if my eyes weren't so good, I might have thought that you were really Prunella, wearing her costume and her drawl. Oh, Eddie, then you know. It was me you kissed, not her. Oh, Eddie, how can I be so stupid? I don't know. But don't change. You mean go on being stupid? No, beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh, gosh, Eddie, it's midnight. They're going to announce the winner of the $500 prize. Yes. And say, that lady-in-waiting costume you're wearing stands a swell chance. It's very, uh, well, you know, expensive looking. Well, it should. It belongs to Penilla. <laughs> say, oh. What's so funny? I was just thinking, wouldn't it be a ride if I won the prize with her costume and we could get married on her money? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 500 bucks. Come on, let's go in. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the judges have decided on the winner of the prize for the most imaginative costume. And here it is, folks. Miss Prunella Randolph's costume won first prize. Eddie, did you hear that? Oh, what? The judges have decided that Miss Randolph showed great imagination. When, with a mere shower curtain and some cotton candy, she made herself an authentic Madame Dubarry costume. Oh. <laughs> Maisie, don't look now, but you outsmarted yourself out of our wedding money. Yeah, but I've still got the groom, I think. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. again, here's Maisie. Well, I guess that little episode proves that people never change. People like me, I mean. When I was a baby, I used to amuse myself by putting my itty-bitty foot in my mouth, and I've never stopped. 
When I get into a spot now, every time I open my mouth, I still put my foot in it. I know in the case of Maisie versus Prunella, I acted jealous, inconsiderate, distrusting, and suspicious, which just proves that I'm a normal woman. Well, after what I've learned tonight, I've just made a resolution never to be jealous again, and... Uh-oh. There's Eddie dancing with a little red-headed job. Hmm. As I was saying, I've just made a resolution never to be jealous again. Starting tomorrow. Oh, Eddie... Eddie, time to go home, right now. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Pat McGee, and Howard McNear, Lorene Tuttle, and Frank Nelson. Jack McCoy speaking. Say, how about a little... Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere. I also was born in Brooklyn, in a cold water flat. But I've been in hot water ever since. Yep, ever since I could remember, I've been kicking around the world trying to earn my daily bread. And when you're trying to earn your daily bread, you got to run into a lot of crumbs. For example, if you want to, for instance, there was a big Danny Metcalf. Danny had a big dimple in his chin, and when he smiled, his whole face caved in. I'll never forget the day I met him. I was working at the information desk of a small hospital in a small town out west. The pay wasn't much, but my meals were thrown in. Anyway, on that particular day to which I am referring, I was behind the desk with a fly swatter in my hand to keep away the flies and the interns when a rather nice-looking young fella comes up. Pardon me, miss. Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Who does the buy-in for this hospital? Well, that depends. What are you selling? My eye. Ah. Oh. Sorry, this ain't a used car lot. We don't buy parts. Well, miss, how can you be so cold-blooded? I ain't. It's just that a hospital ain't no place for jokes or a screwy publicity stunt. Oh, look, miss, do I, do I look like a comedian or a publicity hound? No, but that don't mean nothing. A hunk of celery don't look like it sounds like either. And if you did need money that bad, there must be an easier way to get it. Yeah? Like how, for instance? Well, you can borrow on your life insurance. You can't get life insurance in this town when you're on Big Dan Metcalf's list. Well, what about this Big Dan's list? 
Say, you're pretty nosy, ain't you? Yeah, but I'm trying to save your pretty eyes, each chum, if you'll let me. You mean... You mean you'd actually like to help a perfect stranger? Well, why not? Well, I... Uh, Miss Revere, quick. Get Dr. Howard, emergency. Well, he's in surgery, doctor. Good. I got a patient in the ambulance that's going to need the works. Some poor guy named Jerry Platt. What? Machine gun. Yeah, drill full of holes right in his car. Uh, hey. How'd you know how he got it? Well, Jerry had the store next to my newspaper. And when he didn't pay... Uh... I, I, I just took a wild guess. Well, you'd better have a more believable answer than that, mister. The cops might want to ask questions. Yeah, it ain't easy to get away with murder in this town. It is when your name's Big Dan Metcalf. Huh? What's that? Uh, I, I shouldn't have said that. Why? If that's the man that did it, you should tell the cops. Don't you think so, doctor? Think what? Well, that the name he just mentioned should be arrested. I didn't hear him mention the name of Big Dan Metcalf. Did I, mister? Nope. Never heard of him. Hey, what is this? Now, look here, Doctor. I'm sorry, Maisie. I'm in the business of saving lives. I know, and but... And if you don't mind, I'd like to save mine. I may need it later on in life. Well, I don't get this. Mister, if you... He's gone. Who's gone? The man that was just here. I didn't see anybody. Oh. So that's how it is, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to see somebody right now. The chief of police. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Maisie, if you don't keep out of this, you'll wind up at the bottom of something. The bottom of the river, wearing a cement girdle. Well, just the same, I'm going to the police. Well, it's your funeral, baby. Anything I can do? Yeah. Talk me out of it. It's about time you're back, Lieutenant Burns. Yeah. Did you look over that car that that Platt fellow was machine gunned in? Yeah, Chief. Big Dan's torpedoes have been getting a little careless. Found fingerprints all over the doors. Oh, fingerprints, huh? Now, don't worry, Chief. I wiped them off. Oh, good. Yeah, but I wish he'd figure out some other way to get them storekeepers to come across with protection money. If these shootings and bombings get in the papers, we'll have the... Uh... FBI on our necks. <laughs> don't worry, chum, don't worry. Nothing will get in the papers. Hmm? Even Johnny Clark's on Big Dan's sucker list. Not only ain't nothing going to get printed about Dan's uh, tactics, but Johnny himself is also kicking in with protection money to stay in the newspaper business. Johnny? Yeah. I thought he had red blood in his veins. Oh, he has. And he wants to keep it there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Dan has a milk dry and so scared, I hear tell that Johnny's putting an eye of his on the market to get payoff dough. That's uh, a smart cookie, that Danny boy. <laughs> yeah, miss? What can I do for you? Well, I, I want you to arrest him. Arrest who? Well, this is no time to ask questions. He might get away. Now, look, miss, look. Calm down. Now, start from the beginning. Okay. I want you to arrest him, the man who did it. I know, I know. Well, if you know who did it, how come he ain't in jail already? Look, miss. Who did what to who, when, why, and where? Oh, this ain't no time for details, officer. I'm Maisie Revere. I work at the hospital, and this morning a man came in that was machine gunned. I want you cops to arrest Dan Metcalf immediately. Big Dan Metcalf? Yes. Uh, you you must be mistaken, miss. Uh, Big Dan is a respectable citizen. Oh, yeah, of long standing. Well, he's been standing too long. He should be sitting in an electric chair. He's the one that machine gunned the, that... Uh, um... Jerry Platt? Yeah, that's the name. Well, how about it? Are you going to bring in this Big Dan, or ain't you? We've been trying for years to pin something on Big Dan, ain't we, Chief? We have? I mean, we have. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, chums, this Big Dan is guilty. Yeah, but with no proof, our hands are tied. Well, my hands ain't tied, and I'm going to bring that guy in and make him confess. Oh. Well, by appealing to his better nature. Um, appealing to Big Dan's better nature? If you ask a silly question, you got to expect a silly answer. See you later. Burns, I better call up Big Dan and warn him that Revere dame is on her way over. Yeah. I got a feeling there's going to be trouble. Yeah, but Chief, she's a woman. I know. That's why I got the feeling. <laughs> You just have to be more careful the way you do things, Dan. I know I'm only your lawyer, but you just can't go on putting the squeeze on little people forever. Oh, why not, Kendall? That's what little people are for. When are you going to stop? 
When are you going to have enough money? Don't be silly. There is no such thing as enough money. Now, if you don't mind, Kendall, I have a lady waiting for me in the outer office, a Miss uh, Revere. What she want? Me. You. So Chief Benson told me over the phone a little while ago, it seems Miss Revere is concerned about that machine gunning this morning. This, uh, this Miss Revere knows you had the guy rubbed out? Yeah, I understand she suspects it. Oh, fine. What are you going to do about it? Oh, come, come, Kendall. Let's not ask silly questions. You mean you're going to shoot her, too? Of course not, Kendall. I've sent to Chicago for Fingers Jugan. But you, you can't kill a woman, boss. Uh, maybe she won't talk. Nonsense, Kendall. Did you ever meet one who didn't? But uh, what about Fingers? He's an outside goon. Can he be trusted to keep his mouth shut? He has no choice. I got enough on him locked up there in my safe to send us all to the chair. You keep a record of your whole career in crime locked up in a safe? Why? <laughs> And what you heard, Kendall, I'm a bit of a ham. Oh. Now run along to your habeas corpuses and leave the lady to me. You can go in, Miss Revere. Mr. Metcalf. Well, well, well. So you're Miss Revere. I'm delighted to meet you, my dear. <laughs> the pleasure's all yours, Danny boy. <laughs> uh, sit down. Please do. Thank you. Cute-looking secretary you got outside there, Mr. Metcalf. Oh, I've seen nicer-looking pans under an icebox. <laughs> Don't mind Monk's looks. He got those ears from beer. But they do use them to open the bottles. Well, well, well. I see we have a sense of humor, Miss Revere. Not when it comes to murder, we ain't. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Uh, Mr. Metcalf. Yes, Miss Revere? You're the most despicable person that ever lived. <laughs> You're so right, my dear. You admit it? Yes, I'm rather proud of it, as a matter of fact. It's the nasty people in this world that are remembered in history, remember? As Shakespeare so aptly put it, the evil that men do lives after them. <laughs> Julius Caesar, you know. Huh? Julius Caesar, he was stabbed by Brutus. Oh, another one of your hired killers, huh? Hired killers, Miss Revere? I know it was you who had poor, innocent Jerry Pratt knocked off. So I understand. But you have no proof. How do you know I have no proof? Well, I have, shall we say, friends in the police department. Oh, so that's it. The cops are on your payroll, too. How can you get away with it? Oh, you needn't have any concern for me, Miss Revere. I can afford it. Well, I can go higher up with what I know. They have a district attorney in this town. Oh, yes, yes. A very fine district attorney, too. <laughs> the best that money can buy. Oh, He's on your side, too, huh? Why not? It's a very comfortable side to be on, Miss Revere. I'm uh, certain you would find it so. Now, listen... You have a certain nuisance value, Miss Revere, so I'm offering you a business proposition. Say, uh, $5,000. Uh-uh. Ten? Uh-uh. Try 25000 <clears throat> Very well, 25000 Uh-uh. Miss Revere, I will not be played with like a cat with a mouse. But you're not a mouse, Mr. Metcalf. You're a rat. Goodbye, Big Dan, and I do mean a goodbye. Just a moment, Miss Revere. Exactly what are your plans? You're wasting your time seeking the aid of the law to convict me, you know. For further details, read your daily newspaper. I'm so sorry to burst your bubble for you, Miss Revere, but in this town we have only one newspaper, and the editor might be slightly hesitant about printing what he knows. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Perhaps not, but I am. As a matter of fact, he'd... Give his right eye for me. Oh. So you're the one he wanted to sell it for? Yes. Johnny Clark has a fairly successful newspaper, a comfortable income, and his wife and child like to eat. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do anything to his wife and kid, would you? Oh, you're forgetting, Miss Revere. I'm a louse. I know. And I'm going right down and talk to Johnny and tell him that if he doesn't expose you, his life and those of his family and fellow citizens would be a living death. Miss Revere, you remind me of my mother. I do? Yes. She couldn't keep her trap shut either. Now, I'm warning you, Miss Revere, don't meddle in this thing. So long, Mr. Metcalf. Miss Revere, I'm warning you. And I'm warning you. So long, big shot. See you in court. Yeah, boss. Monk, get me fingers, Jogan. <laughs> The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern, will continue in just a moment.
now back to Maisie. But can't you see, John, the only way to deal with a skunk like Dan Metcalf is to print the truth about him in your paper. Maisie's right, Pop. Now, never mind, Junior. This is man's work. But you go and set up the type for tomorrow's edition. Yeah, and I got just the headline for it. Big Dan Metcalf, a murderer. I'll set up the type for the headline right away, Pop. Oh, wait a minute, Junior. Maisie, how are we going to prove that Big Dan's a murderer? Well, that's simple. All we got to do is get evidence. True. Then how are we going to get the evidence? But how are we going to get it? How are we going to get it? Yeah. You got any ideas? Well, one of us could break into Big Dan's safe. Yeah. yeah. But who? Got any ideas? Metcalf keeps a listing of all the payoffs and stuff in that safe. I happen to know about it. Well, I could make a try to open that safe. Um, Dan wouldn't kill a woman if he caught her, would he? He would. Uh, yeah. Like we were saying, who are we going to get to break into that safe? Dan had it built special, burglar-proof. The only one who could open it would have to be a specialist. Yeah. Say, Fingers Dugan could do it. Who's Fingers Dugan? Only the best safe cracker in the country, that's all. He's sort of retired from that racket, though. Just hires himself out for killings now, I understand. Well, at least that keeps him from being just a bum, I guess. Yeah. Say, yeah. that job would be a cinch for Fingers. If the FBI hadn't sent him to San Quentin. But he's back, Pop. I saw him this morning in a saloon. Junior, what were you doing in a saloon? Looking for you, Dad. Ever since this big Dan business started, you've been lushing oh, Never up. mind. Uh, never well, mind. then we're set. One of us will get fingers to open Metcalf's safe. Uh, which one of us? Uh, any ideas? Well, I, I'm a married man with a kid. And I'm a kid with a married man. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, no, no, Maisie. You don't look the part. He, he wouldn't do it for a mere stranger called Maisie Revere. No, but he might for Minnie the Mall. Who's Minnie the Mall? He's just looking at her, Junior. Minnie the Mall. The toughest lady gangster since Jesse James. Maisie, are you out of your mind? That's a silly question to ask. Of course I am. There you are, Maisie, right off the press. This should do the trick. Let me see. Want a dead or alive or both? Minnie the Mall just escaped from Alcatraz. Alcatraz? But that only has men. Yeah, that's why I had to escape. <gasps> Get a load of the rest of this ad. Wanted by police in 48 states, Minnie the Mall, alias Moitle the Moiterer. Gee, Maisie, and that picture looks just like you, too. Uh, I don't know, Maisie. Your nose seems a little long to me. Well, that ain't no nose. I'm smoking a cigar. Well, here I go. Off to find Fingers Dugan. Gosh, Pop, Maisie sure is brave. Yeah, a wonderful girl. Well, I might as well go into the composing room and set up the type for tomorrow's headline. I've got a feeling our troubles are over. Or just starting. How are all the presses, Pop? Good afternoon, Sonny. Oh, what can I do for you, sir? I understand a certain Maisie Revere was here. I'm here to investigate, well, so-called accident. that happened to a Jerry Platt. Now, I understand Miss Revere knows something about it. Well, she just left. Well, that's too bad. This was important. It was very important. Uh, say, what's this on the desk? Wanted Minnie the Marl, alias Moitle the Murderer. Uh, she didn't want any strangers to see that. And I can't say as I blame her. Yes, that's very interesting. Very indeed. Well, goodbye, Sam. So long. Oh, by the way, who shall I say call? Uh, here's my card. I'll be back. Who was that, Junior? I don't know. He left a card. Sylvan Howard, Special Investigator, FBI. FBI? Oh, Maisie, you just turned into a federal case. Yeah, miss? What do you have, hey? Nothing, hey. I'm looking for a Fingers Dugan, hey. Is he here in this saloon? Oh, fingers, eh? Hmm. You see them two cauliflower ears over there? Yeah. Well, he's between them. Thanks. I mean, thanks. Um, say, Meathead. Are you perchance fingers, Dugan? And what if I am? You don't have to get nervous with me, chum. I was told to look you up by a pal of yours. Yeah? What pal? What pals you got? Well, let me see now. There's, uh, 
Is uh, Duke Watson? Yeah, he's the one that told me to look you up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, what do you know? I ain't seen Duke for ten years. What's he been doing? Ten years. It figures. Say, uh, who are you, anyway? Are you kidding, hey? I'm Minnie DeMall. Here, get a load of my publicity. Oh. Hey, hey. A mighty tough little cookie, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Say, fingers. Yeah. If you ain't busy tonight, maybe we took a team up and do a job tonight. Nah, I can't do it tonight, Minnie. I, I got to knock off a dame. Anybody I know, hey? No, I don't think so. This uh, dame, her name is uh, Maisie Revere. Oh, I see, Maisie Revere. Maisie Revere? Yeah, yeah. Big Danny Metcalf was just in here to see me. He made the deal. Hey, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't know what this here Maisie Revere looks like, would you? Uh, nope. Do you? Yeah, nope. I'm glad. Yeah? Uh, I'm glad I run into your fingers. I got a better deal for you than bumping me. I mean, uh, her. That is, if you got noive. Boy, certainly I got noive. You hoive? I mean, you have? <laughs> well, now, look, tall, dark, and... Uh, <clears throat> tall, dark. There must be a million and a half bucks in this here job. It's Big Dan Metcalf's safe. Now, I can't rob the safe of a guy that's a customer of mine. It ain't ethical. It ain't? No. Well, okay then. I'll just have to team up with Boyt the Bum. Boyt the Bum? I never heard of him. Ah, oh, you're kidding. Boyt's just about tops in the racket. He's so good he opens the safe with his feet. Yeah? What's he do with his hands? Holds them over his eyes just to make it tougher. Oh. Well, hey. Hey, look, there's nobody better than Fingers Dugan. Why, I was once called the Josie Itaibi of safe cracking. Tell you what, come on. You take me down to Big Dan's joint and I'll show you. Gee, fingers. Sure is dark in here in Dan's office. Maybe we should turn on the lights? No, nothing doing. If Voight the bum can open a safe without looking, so can I. The big show off. Hey, somebody knocking at the door. That's my knees. Oh. I think this here is the safe. Oh, good. Hurry up. It's all right. I'll have it open in a minute. Here goes. We first turn the dial. <laughs> Sorry, wrong dial. Ah, here, here, here's the safe. Now, Minnie, you just watch me open this. No, not with your feet, fingers. This is no time to be a ham. Open it with your hands. Well, all right, I will. I still got that dame to knock off, so I guess I better hurry. Yeah. Let's see. Now I face turn it left. Which is left? Oh, yeah. There. Uh, there. There, I open it. And the hard way, too. Lefty. Wait. I'll turn on the desk light and see if the stuff's there. Yeah. Here they are. Big dance, pay off records. Fingers, all our troubles are over. Yeah, I'll say they're over. Just look at this here hall. Hey, there must be a million bucks in this pile. Maybe more. Maybe a hundred thousand. Fingers, you can't take that money. It's stealing. Yeah, it's... That's bad? Oh, who's there? It's me, Maisie. Say, who's that? Oh. Oh, oh he's a member of my mob. He's, um... Um, Davey the dope. Hey, now, wait a minute. He called you Maisie. Well, that just shows you what a dope he is. I just came over to tell you to hurry. Uh, uh Minnie tomorrow. Yeah, Minnie. There's a guy from the FBI in town. The feds? Hey, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I got what I want. And now Dan Metcalf yes, will we'll get on. the chip. Dan. Nice of you to come visit my humble office again, my dear. Oh, gosh. Hey, now, look, boss, I can explain what I'm doing here. You see, I didn't really mean to take this dough. I just wanted to show Minnie the mile here that no safe ain't safe with me around. <laughs> and a masterful job you did, too, Mr. Jugan. Oh, isn't that... Except this isn't Minnie the mile. This is Maisie Revere. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Well, come on, Junior. Let's go home. It's past your bedtime. Fingers. Yeah, boss? Now you have an extra meddler to eradicate... You eradicate? That means rub off. Junior, don't help him. 
Look, Dan. Please, Miss Revere, don't try to stall. Yeah, get the job done quick, Fingers. Hey, the cops. Yeah, we got a benefit to attend, eh, boss? Yes, for poor Jerry Platt's widow. You won't get away with this, Dan. No, there's a guy here from the FBI. FBI? FBI. You're uh, kidding, ain't you, son? Oh, no. It's quite true. This is the guy. Well, welcome, mister. I'm Maisie Revere. Uh, How do you do, Miss Revere? The bartender at the Silver Crown happened to overhear your plans for tonight. That's how I found you. Say, mister, what are you doing here? Merely investigating a, an accident that happened to a certain Jerry Platt. Well, there was no accident, Mr. Law. Big Dan here was responsible for the murder. Murder? Well, this is interesting. Please, Miss Revere, you can't prove it. This stuff I got in my hands in a copy of the Kinsey Report. Yeah, we got you all now. Okay, Dan, let's go. Go? Yeah, we're arresting you for the murder of Jerry Platt, ain't we, Chief? Yeah. Mister, tell him down on Washington that we local cops don't let nobody get away with murder. But look, you two men are... Turning state's evidence to save their own hides, aren't you, coppers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, take him away, Chief, and Fingers here with you. Uh-huh. Come on, rat. Yeah, sure, officer. I mean you, Dan. Very well, gentlemen. But you won't get away with this. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on. Well, mister, looks like the local murder incorporated just went into bankruptcy. Yeah, sure was a lucky thing for us that you showed up in time. That bunch sure turned chicken when they met up with a member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Federal Bureau of Investigation? Sure you. Say you are, ain't you? On your card it said FBI. Well, that's true, but uh, I was merely investigating whether we should pay a claim to the wife of the deceased. You see, FBI stands for... Fidelity Benevolent Insurance Company. Oh, no. <laughs> and those crooked cops in Big Dan thought that, that he was... Oh, brother, what a switch. <laughs> 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 hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I laughing about? I have to pay that insurance claim. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, so ended that. Big Dan found out he wasn't so big after all. I guess the lesson we can learn from that little episode is that you gotta really keep on the alert if you're crooked. The law is sort of like a nightgown. While you're sleeping, it creeps up on you. Well, I gotta get back to the hospital now. Get along there, Pete. Little Maisie's heart took a beating all day. Now it's your turn. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Johnny McGovern, Donald Woods, Peter Leeds, Howard McNear, Sidney Miller, Sheldon Leonard, Bill Conrad, and Junius Matthews. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say, how about a lo- Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? 
The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. like the fella said, Maisie Revere, from Brooklyn. High dramatic Maisie, you might call me. Ever since I can remember, I've been shifting from myself. Originally, I'm from show business, but the last vehicle I was in closed after five performances. So I had to do something to live, and as luck would have it, I came across an ad in the paper that said, Secretary wanted to assist author, little knowledge of typing and shorthand required. So I applied for the job. After all, I couldn't think of anybody who had a littler knowledge of typing and shorthand than me. Anyway, the professor agreed to try me out, and gosh, I'm so nervous. Today's my first day on the job, and I just gotta make good. Miss Revere? Miss Revere? Come, come, we have some dictating to do. Well, just a minute, Mr. I mean, Doc, I mean, uh, Professor Elliot. I'm in the kitchen here washing your dishes. Well, you've been in there an hour, Miss Revere. Aren't you finished washing those dishes yet? No, but I'm up to last Thursday's breakfast, I think. Oh, uh, never mind that for now, Miss Revere. We have a chapter on electrification due to atomic radiation to dictate this morning. Do come out of the kitchen, please. Uh, but, but, Professor, I... I insist. Drop what you're doing at once. Okay. Miss Revere, what was that? I dropped what I was doing. Oh, well, you needn't have taken me so literally... Now, are you ready to take some dictation? Yes, as soon Good. as I... Uh... Atrification due to atomic radiation. <clears throat> Recent tests at Kwajalein and other Pacific islands have proved that humans and animals exposed to atomic bombings on microscopic examination have displayed unmistakable evidence of atrophy of the... Um, uh, um... Any question, Mr. Rear? Well, just one, Professor. Yes, yes, what is it? Do you have a pencil? Uh, you have a pencil? Well, it makes taking dictation much simpler, you know. Yes, so the rumor goes. Yes. yes. Secretaries off times bring pencils with them, Miss Revere. I know, but gosh, I was so excited about this job, and when you're excited, you, you can't remember everything, you know. Uh, how true. <laughs> well, here's a pencil, Miss Revere. Thank you. You ready now? Shoot. Don't tempt me. Now take this down. Atrification due to atomic radiation. Recent tests at Kwajalein and other Pacific islands have proved that humans and animals exposed to atomic bombings on microscopic examination have displayed unmistakable evidence of atrophy of the limbs. Got that, Miss Revere? Well, all except one thing, Professor. Oh, what's that? What came after atrification? Uh, due to... Uh, is that all you got, Miss Revere? Just the first word. Well, it was a big one, and by the time I got through writing it Miss Revere, I'll... you're supposed to be a secretary. Can't you write shorthand? Well, of course. Good. Now, let's start from the beginning. Shorthand takes me longer. It does, eh? Uh. Well, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. How true. Uh, take this down in longhand. I'll want two copies. Oh, yes, Professor. And the typewriter's over there. Mm -hmm. Now, let us continue. Atrophication due to atomic radiation. Have you got that, Miss Revere? Yes. Atrophication due to atomic radiation. Now, wait, wait, I'll get another sheet of paper. Atrophication Revere, due to... Miss Revere, exactly what are you writing on the second sheet? Well, the same thing as on the first. You said you wanted two copies. Typewritten copies, Miss Revere, typewritten. Oh. Now, wait a moment. You can type, can't you? Um... I think I'll go in and clean up those broken dishes now. They might bring ants, don't you think? Miss Revere, without a knowledge of shorthand and typing, how did you expect to hold a position as a secretary? Well, you're going to hate me when I tell you this, Professor. Probably. 
But I didn't think there was any hurry about getting down what you dictate. According to the mail on your desk, the publishers don't seem to be in a hurry to publish your books. They're fools, Miss Revere. Blind, unseeing fools. All they're interested in is cheap trash to feed love-starved souls. Well, there are an awful lot of love-starved souls, Professor. That trash you're talking about brings a little sunshine into their lives. I'm trying to bring light into their lives, too, Miss Revere. Make them see that unless civilization takes time out to examine the direction it's taking, there might soon not be a civilization to examine. Oh, sometimes I think maybe I'm insane trying to aid humanity. Sometimes I think it isn't worth saving. Oh, but it is, Professor. And you mean you're trying to make this world a better place to live in? Miss Revere, you were never a soldier, were you? No. I don't think I could pass the physical. Miss Revere, please, I'm serious. I was in the war. The war to end wars, the greatest war in the history of mankind. A very expensive war, $500 billion it cost. Gosh, that much. Yes. That's an awful lot of money, Professor. We complain about the high cost of living instead of the high cost of dying. It doesn't make much sense, does it? No, no, it doesn't. You mean, if we took that $500 billion and spent it on people instead of guns... There'd be no reason for wars, nothing to fight about. Gee, that's wonderful. Well, I hope the publisher I sent the first few chapters to thinks so, Maisie. Oh, come in. Good morning, Professor. i got some mail here for you. Oh, thank you, Harry. Okay. Uh, Miss Revere, this is Harry, the elevator boy. Harry, Miss Revere. Hello, Harry. Uh, I thank you. Uh... That big envelope is from a publisher, Professor. Good news, I hope, at last. Hmm. Not good, huh? He's returning my manuscript. Oh, gosh, Professor, that's too bad. I had hoped that this one would sell. Manager's been getting mighty anxious about the rent, you know. Well, tell him he'll get his money as soon as the professor's book is sold. What's it called, Professor? Maisie, I'm calling it off. You are? <laughs> See, that's sort of a short title for a book. Don't you think so, Harry? Oh, yeah, and it's easy to remember, too. Off by Professor Hillary Elliott. I mean, I'm not going ahead with a book. I'm through with writing. Finished. Over. Oh, but you can't do that, Professor. Oh, Professor, you can't just chuck it now. Oh, but I am. I'm going to make money, you hear me? Lots of it. And live in a decent place, not like this upholstered dust bowl. But, Professor, success ain't measured by how much you got. It's what you got to give. Well put, Miss Revere. Well put. I thought so. Yeah, but unfortunately, success nowadays is gauged in terms of intrinsic values. Yeah, the professor is right, I think. I mean in terms of worldly goods. Ha! What's so funny? I was just remembering that tomorrow is the anniversary of my entrance into the wide world. Ten years ago, I graduated from college. And my classmates chose me as the man most likely to succeed. Well... Yes. <laughs> Harry, tell the manager I'll pay him somehow. I'm leaving tonight. Tonight? Tonight? But what's the hurry? Can't you start starving to death next year? No, I go tonight. Because tomorrow night I'm invited to an alumni dinner. Oh. You don't like alumni. They don't taste good, maybe, huh? Oh, they're delicious. But at that dinner, one person will be named top man of his class. That means the one who has accomplished the most since graduation. Oh, and you're, you're sad because you think it might not be you, huh? Because I know it won't be me, and I can't blame them. Well, by now, I'll be back for my thing. Well, now, look, Doc, don't go now. Let's kick this thing around a little longer, say for a couple of years. Yeah, sure, Doc. What's your hurry? Because I'm expecting a fellow graduate to pop in on me today to inquire about my financial assets. I want to save myself the embarrassment of emptying out my pockets and showing him. Uh oh. Oh, oh. oh gosh, Miss Revere. You, the professor scrammed in such a hurry, he ripped his coat on the doorknob. He's going to look even less successful now. Harry, I've got an idea. The professor is discouraged about his work because he ain't had no recognition, right? Right. And he's disgusted with himself because one of them alumnuses of his graduating class is going to find it out when he gets her. Well, that's where you're wrong, chum. Y you mean you got a plan to keep the doc from running away, Maisie? Mm -hmm, that I have, Harry. When that man comes from the professor's college class to check on his financial position, yeah, Doc Elliott's going to be the most successful guy he ever heard about. You mean... You're going to make him think the professor is rich? Rich? Harry, when that guy gets a load of the professor's muscles, he's going to think he got him from carrying his money to the bank. Uh, here you are, sir. Fourth floor. Thank you, son. 
What's the number of Professor Elliot's apartment, please? Uh, 401, right across the hall, sir. Say, uh, pardon me, you you must be the one Maisie's expecting. Maisie? Yes, sir, Maisie Revere, the professor's secretary. She said to show you right into the joint when you arrive. Uh, this way, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, son, I don't yes. know who this Maisie person is expecting, but I am from the Treasury Department. Huh? And I'm here to check on Professor Elliot's last tax report. Oh, you... You're not from the college? I mean, that aluminum stuff? No, just that gold and silver stuff. Gold? Gosh, you mean the professor owes the government money? No, no, as a matter of fact, his report showed so little income, he has a refund coming to him, I believe. I'm just here to check further. Oh. Oh. Uh, Oh, hello, Harry, sir. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but I was busy fixing up my stockings. (laughs) Cheap pair, you know. Every time I walk, they run. (laughs) Um... This is the fellow, Harry. Uh, I'd like to talk to you, Maisie. I'll yeah. talk first, son. Bit of a hurry, you know. Miss Revere, my name is Hinchley. I'm here to ask a few questions about Professor Elliot's income. Oh, I'm glad. Come in, Mr. Hinchley. I've got plenty to tell you. Thank you. But, Maisie, this man is here about money. He wants... The professor to contribute something for charity. But I'm sorry, Mr. Hinchley. I don't think the professor can. Oh, boy, that was close. Well, you see, Mr. Hinchley, the professor has to stop sometime. Last year, he gave a million dollars to charity. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Professor Elliot gave a a million dollars to charity? Maisie, you're making a mistake. Oh, yes, how silly of me. He didn't give a million at all. No. No, it was two million. Oh, 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 oh. Harry, Mr. Hinsley knows how many O's in two million. Miss Revere, what you tell me is rather difficult to believe. Yeah, ain't it? I mean, uh, don't judge Professor Elliot's wealth by this scrubby apartment. All billionaires are eccentric, you know. Billionaires? Why I said what you tell me is hard to believe, Miss Revere, is because we understood Professor Elliot's income for last year to have been only $2,000. Oh, it was? Yeah. $2,000 a day. Oh, fine. You see... He doesn't pay taxes to the government. He just calls them up every year and asks them how much they need. Maisie, the professor ain't gonna like this. I know, but he's very modest about being filthy rich. But I think people should know how successful he is. Don't you, Mr. Hinchley? Oh, yes, 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 indeed. Miss Revere, there's one other person I'd like you to tell about Elliot's fabulous income. My superior. Oh. You mean the head of the investigating committee? Yes, you might call him that. And Mr. Jones. Uh-huh. He'll be around to check further on uh, Diamond Jim's enormous wealth. Now, goodbye now, and thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hinsley. And I hope you'll recommend that the professor gets everything he deserves. I think you can count on that, Miss Revere. Uh-huh. Well, good day. Harry. Mm. What did he mean by that last remark? Well, that's sort of obvious, ain't it? Oh, you sure fixed the professor up good. You mean you think they'll choose him? From now on, he'll be a somebody, a name? No, a number. Harry, I don't get it. Maisie, I've been standing here trying to tell you all along that Henchley ain't from the College Aluminum Committee. He's from the Income Tax Department. Income Tax? Sure. Oh, my gosh. And he believes all those lies about the professor's income. Yeah, he was here to refund dough on last year's tax. Now they'll probably send him to jail for defrauding the government with a false tax return. Oh, Harry, I got the prof into this mess, and I'm going to get him out of it. How? Well, there's only one way to do it. One way? What's that? You got any ideas? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Maisie. Uh, 
Well, let us come to order now, gentlemen. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you. Fellow alumni, I'm pleased to announce the results of the votes to choose the most successful member of our good old class. Here, here. By unanimous agreement, the committee has decided upon Professor Hillary Elliott. Oh, 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 oh. And, uh, Chairman Jensen, I should like to congratulate the committee on our choice. Of course, others of our esteemed class have been more successful financially in the ten years since graduation than our confrere, Dr. Elliot. But after all, there must be something more important than money. Like what, Mr. Cabot? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. In the many years since I've known... I'll Professor answer that Elliot. question, Mr. Cabot. Humanity is more important than money, brother graduate. Hear, hear. And Dr. Elliot deserves the honor of being selected the most successful graduate of our class because of the many great works he has written to make this world a better place in which to live. Uh, Mr. Cabot. Yes, Mr. Chairman? I now appoint you as a committee of one to call upon Professor Elliot and uh, we'll check on his uh, financial status. Uh, financial status? Mm -hmm. But I thought money wasn't important. Uh, true. But before we bestow this great honor on Dr. Elliot, we must ascertain whether he is, uh, well, that is, uh, that he isn't, uh, uh... Make sure that he ain't no bum. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. We must make sure that the good doctor has some source of revenue. Very well, Chairman Jensen. I'll check on Elliot and report back to the committee later in the day. Hear, hear. <laughs> I don't know about your plan, Maisie. Uh, are you sure you know what you're doing? But you know me, Harry. Answer the question. Okay, I'm sure. Good. Now, look. That man from the tax department said his superior was coming back for further details. And we've got to make sure he gets the impression that I made a mistake and that the dock is broke. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's the superior now. Now, Harry, remember, we got to make him believe that the professor hasn't got a pot... To... Yes. Well, never mind. Come in. Good afternoon. I I'm looking for Professor Elliot. What for, Bob? Uh, well, I was sent here to check on his financial condition. Ah, that bum owe you do too. Uh, bum? I was under the impression that Professor Elliot was doing fairly well financially. Fairly well? <laughs> you hear that, Harry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that guy ain't got a dime. Nah, when he goes to the park, they change the signs from do not walk on the grass to do not eat the grass. But, but, but this office of his... Oh, it's all going back to the finance company. They sent me here to take back the stuff, Bub. Sure, he hasn't made a payment on it for eight months. Oh, that's hard to believe. How about six months, then? Uh, I mean, uh, I was led to believe Look, that... the poor professor can't make both ends meet. He can't even make one end meet. Uh, no, but I thought... poor Professor Elliot spends all his time in the park by the lake. Oh, but and I'm And watching the kids throw stale bread to the ducks. Yeah, it's a good thing he can outswim the ducks or else he'd starve. Oh, I've heard enough. Thank goodness. Poor chap. This certainly changes everything as far as Professor Elliot is concerned. Good day. I have to make my report. Uh, au revoir, mademoiselle. Uh -huh, the same to you, senor. Oh, oh I'm terribly... Pardon Sorry. me, sir. I didn't see you coming. I... Oh. Sam Cabot, of all people. Oh, hello, Elliot. I'm glad I ran into you, Sam. Say, how about a cup of coffee? Oh, sure, sure, Elliot. For a fellow classmate, anything. Here's a dime. What is this? Oh, you needn't be so proud with me, Elliot. I know. Know what? About how broke and hungry you are. Too bad, too. Now I'm afraid your election as most successful man of our class is out. You mean you are going to choose me? Yes, yes, on your literary achievements. But when that girl in your office told me that you were, uh, well, uh, a pauper, well, you know how it is. No. But I'm going to find out. Oh, hello, Professor. I... What's the matter? You look like you just lost your best friend. No, Miss Revere, but you're close. I only lost the honor of being elected the most successful man of my class. Miss Revere, why did you do it? Do what? My dear young lady, I wasn't born yesterday. Well, of course not. You couldn't have grown so much in one day. Why did you tell that man that I was a pauper? 
Oh, you mean the investigator? Yes, for the Alumni Award Committee. Alumni Award Committee? Oh, gosh. I thought he was from... From where? Uh, I refuse to answer that until I talk to my lawyer. Miss Revere, I'm expecting an answer. What is this all about? Um, I'm afraid to tell you, Professor. But I will when you're alone. I'm alone now. No, you're not. I'm with you. <laughs> have you got everything set, Harry? Yeah, I sure have, Maisie. All right. I fixed up a dozen telegrams congratulating Professor Elliot on the great books on peace that he wrote. Okay. I got them from Yale, mm -hmm. Harvard, mm -hmm. Princeton, mm -hmm. William and Mary. William and Mary who? That's a college, Maisie. Oh, yes, of course. I wanted to make sure that you knew. Uh, Maisie, I still don't understand how you persuaded that Mr. Jensen to come here. Oh, it was easy. I just got down on my knees and begged him. Oh, you're wonderful, Maisie. He wouldn't come when I tried that. Well, naturally. You don't have my knees. I... Come in. Oh, good evening, Miss Revere. I am here as you wished. Oh, do come in, Mr. Jensen. Miss Revere, you had some proof to show me of Professor Elliot's importance in the sciences. Oh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Here, take a chair. Mm -hmm, thank and you. read these telegrams. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Very impressive. Well, naturally. They were written by great brains. Gee, thanks. Shh, Harry. Uh, this one here, Mr. Jensen, was sent to the professor by the principal of Harvard, congratulating him on his work in splitting the atom. Dr. Elliot split the atom? Well, not exactly. He just cracked it a little. Yeah, and after that, even a kid could split it. With a toy hammer, I imagine. Well, I'm back. I've got my ticket and everything. Uh, Jensen, what are you doing here? Oh, well, um, he, he was just leaving, aren't you, Mr. Jensen, please? No, I do believe I'll stay a while and read these other telegrams of congratulations. Oh, but I'm leaving. I've got a dog to feed. No, you don't, Harry Talbot. You don't have a dog. I'll buy one and then feed it. Miss Revere, oh. what's this telegram thing all about? Uh, well, Professor Elliot, I cannot tell a lie. You can't? No, but I'm going to try. Professor Elliot, you're not going to believe this, but um, you've suddenly become quite famous. Quite, Elliot. According to these telegrams, you are the idol of such chaps as um, Georgie Bernie Shaw, who King Gustav of Sweden, oh. a half dozen college presidents, and Willie Shakespeare. Shakespeare, he's dead and buried. Tell him to move over. I'm going to be joining him. Look, Professor. Now you look, Miss Revere. Haven't you made enough of a of a, a... jerk? Yes. Thanks. Mm. Oh, Maisie, you made enough of a fool of me without using telegrams from stooges to make it any worse. But, Professor, all I wanted to do was... Come in. Professor Elliot, I know I'm not smart like you, oh. but... Uh... Pardon me. My name is Jones. I'm looking for Professor Hillary Elliot. I'm Elliot. Good. I am head of the income tax department. Oh, another stooge. Maisie, tell him the game is over. I don't want to play. Oh, well, look, Doc, I have a confession the to make. The Doc has the confession... When he intends to pay the million bucks he owes for last year's income tax. Well, Elliot, this is interesting. A million dollar tax. Oh, that's silly. I don't owe a million. No. No, I owe two million. Or is it three? Let's not be pikers. Professor, shut up, will you? Visiting days are only once a week. Now, look, Mr. Jones, you can drop your masquerade right now. You'd oh, better I... come with me, Professor Elliot. J. Edgar Hooper wants to meet you. Go away, funny man, before I lose my temper. Professor, will you listen to me? No! Elliot, for the last time, come along. I wouldn't want to use force. Why not? I'm in the mood for it. Well, you Keep are Keep away from me, it. Stooge. I'm warning you. Professor! Oh! Miss Revere. I couldn't help it. She got in the way. Maisie. Maisie, are you all right? Speak to me. Say something. Elliot, this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't lost your temper. I checked on this whole uh, farce this afternoon. Miss Revere was merely trying to rectify the false impression she gave to the tax department. What false impression? Well, Mr. Jones, Professor Elliot neither earned a fortune last year, as you were led to believe, nor is he the pauper our alumni committee thought he was. Gosh. And Maisie was just trying to... Looks like it, Doc. She stuck her chin out for you plenty. Yes. Poor child. Lying there so pale. So still. So beautiful. Maisie. Maisie, open your eyes. Mm-hmm. Speak to me just, just once. Mm-hmm. 
I'll, I'll never give up my work. I'll turn out all the books you want me to. Well, you put that in writing, Professor, and you've got a deal. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, I couldn't blame the professor for being mad. He had a perfect right. Gosh, my chin feels sore. That tax man had a perfect right, too. Well, it was worth it, though. Giving the professor the courage to carry on and help give this world a chance to at least break even with itself. You know, it's a funny thing. Just a few short years ago... All the civilized people in the world were fighting, and the cannibals were at peace. Makes you think a little, don't it? Well, I gotta get back to my room. I got some unfinished worrying to do. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Gerald Moore, Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Donald Wood, Junius Matthews, and Sidney Miller. Jack McCoy speaking. Babe, say, how about a look? Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie. You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear a Maisie adventure in radio, featuring for this performance that glamorous star of the screen, Audrey Totter. But first, your announcer. The Adventures of Maisie with Audrey Totter as Hazel. Hazel Laverne. <laughs> Laverne ain't my real name, but in show business, who's is? How I got to know Maisie and love her for the swell type person she is is when we were in a burlesque chorus together. I was a punk kid in them days who didn't know my left foot from my right foot, which, thank goodness, in a burlesque chorus ain't no drawback. Gee, Maisie sure was swell to me in those days. Treated me just like a kid's sister and stuff like that there. <laughs> That's why when I got a call from Maisie's landlady, Mrs. Kennedy, that the poor kid was in some kind of trouble, that I rushed over to her boarding house from the burlesque theater I was working in without bothering to change. Out of my costume. Oh, 
Hey, yeah, miss. That'll be 80 cents you owe me. I'll have to, driver. Have to what? Owe it to you. I don't have any money on me. You don't seem to have much of anything on you, baby. <laughs> Pull you back your eyes, chum, to push the lenses out of your glasses. Uh-huh. I didn't have time to get into street clothes. My friend Maisie needed me. Maisie? Well, not Maisie Revere. Yeah, hey, you know her? <laughs> Everybody knows the Florence Nightingale of Myrtle Avenue. Oh, what a girl. When I was sick and couldn't work, she'd drive this here cab for me. Oh, I wondered what had happened to your fenders. Yeah. But about the money driver. Uh, forget it. Any friend of Maisie is a friend of mine. In case you need help, be it either physical or of a pecuniary nature, you can just call on Lattice Lost Kramolowski. Oh, well, I'll remember. Mm-hmm. I, I got to get to Maisie and see what this is all about. So long, Mr. Uh, <laughs> so long. Yeah, bye, lady. Oh, uh, say, you forget these. Oh, my fans. Yeah. Good thing I use the big ones for today's show. Yes, who did you... Who? I'm Hazel Laverne. Oh, uh, for a minute I thought I was seeing a blonde ostrich. Well, it's my costume, Mrs. Kennedy. When I got your call, I was in the middle of my number and I just dropped everything. Oh, it's a good thing you remembered to hold on to those fans. <laughs> Come on in, Hazel. If any of those drunks from the corner saloon came by and saw you, Alcoholics Anonymous would get some new members. What's with Maisie, Mrs. Kennedy? She's been in an accident, huh? Maybe heaven forbid. No, Hazel. She just has laryngitis. Laryngitis? Uh, Gosh, that sounds like something very expensive. Yes. If I hadn't called a doctor, it would have just been a cold. But for five bucks, the doctor has to call it something classy. Maisie will be all right in a week, honey. Now, don't you worry. Oh, then she's in no trouble. Only of losing her job if she don't show up today. And that's why I sent for you, Hazel. Sure, sure. You want me to go to her boss and explain? No, no. You see, her boss is a man. Oh, well, that makes it easy. (laughs) I can be awful convincing with a man. Uh, So I hear. But um, he's an inventor. Invented a house of the future. You know, one of those uh, modern affairs where everything is hidden? (laughs) Oh, Sure. I think. Well, Maisie was hired as a demonstrator, and if she don't show up, she'll lose the job. Maisie, she don't know I sent for you, Hazel, but I thought, well, maybe you could take over as demonstrator of that house of the future until she gets her voice back. Well... All at a girl, Hazel. Now, the sample house ain't far from here. It's out Long Island somewhere, and I can get Merton to bring you to the place. Merton? What's that? A C&I dog? Oh, no. One of my boarders. He's got a car of a sort, and Merton would give his right arm for Macy. Well, what do you say, Hazel? <laughs> Just call me Lefty, Mrs. K. Just call me Lefty. I'm just dying to see this house the future, Merton. It must be a dream. Yeah. Maisie tells me it's got everything, Hazel. I'm just wondering, do you think this Professor Tucker will let me take over for Maisie? He sure will, Hazel. You've got everything, too. Never mind, Mert. Keep your eyes on the curves in the road, not mine. I'm just a little too old for you, Sonny. I know. But you like to listen to the whistle of the train, even if you know you ain't going anyplace. Hmm. Hey, tell me more about the professor's house, Mert. It was just put up temporarily for display purposes, I understand. Yeah, and it's out of this world. Mm, I hope it ain't too far out. I gotta get back to Brooklyn nights. I mean, it's got all kinds of buttons that you push when you want stuff. You press a button and all the furniture disappears. Mm. I knew a finance company who did that without a button. It also has a machine that washes and dries dishes, a machine that washes and irons the laundry, and a gadget that cooks and serves all your meals. Gee, if a man had all that, what would he want with a wife? Are you kidding? Uh, Mert, don't look now, but either your jalopy needs gas or it wants to be burped. Yeah, it needs gas, all right. Gosh, I can't understand it. I put in a gallon just last week. Oh, there's Al's gas station just ahead. I always get my gas from Al. He's different than the other gas stations. Different? Yeah. Al, trust me. Oh. Uh, Mert, you better get some breaks for this jalopy or an anchor. Oh, hello, folks. Oh, hello, Mert. What's cooking? The radiator. We need some water. No, uh, Al, this is Hazel Laverne. Uh, fill her up. Sure, sure. Mm, not me. The tank. Uh, oh, sure, sure. My mind's not on what I'm doing lately. 
Still got that gal on your mind, Al? The one you met when you went on your vacation? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, she's beautiful. I ever show you her picture, Mert? A million times. Look, Al, we're in too much of a hurry for family albums. I don't want to be late for that job of Maisie's. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Laverne. Gosh, Hazel, Al sure got it bad. Since he met that Edna, he can't even think straight. Must be terrible to be in love and not be able to marry the girl. Well, why won't this Edna marry him? I'm sure that underneath all that grief, Al has a face. Oh, but Miss Hazel, that isn't what's standing in my way. You see, Edna went to finishing schools, Vassa, and never did a day's work in her life. So what? Nobody's perfect. Well, I lied to Edna and her mother when I was up there this summer. Pretended I was rich with a big mansion here on Long Island. Yeah, and he really lives in a room at the racetrack over the stables. Well, Al, your home may not be impressive, but it has a certain air about it. Oh, you said it. You said it. Now, Edna and her mother are coming east. They're arriving today. Yeah, and then they'll find out you really belong to the horsey set. Yeah. Uh, don't look now, Al, but the tank's overflowing. Oh, that's nice. Here, I'll wipe your windshield. I ain't got any windshield. Oh, pretty dirty, ain't it? Al, go! Hey, you're wiping off Merton's glasses. <laughs> Is it, Hazel? The house of the future. Mm, what kind of architecture is that anyway? Looks like early American screwball. <laughs> Professor Tucker dreamed it up all by himself. No doors, no windows. Everything works with buttons. Mm, that prof should have saved some for himself. I don't think he has all his buttons. You ain't kidding. Oh, uh, I think this is the doorbell. Good, good afternoon, folks. Do come in, won't you? Better open the door, Professor. That peephole is a little too narrow for both of us. Oh, yes. <laughs> the door. <laughs> now, uh, what button do I press to open that again? Oh, yes, this must be it. Oh, oh sorry. Wrong button. <laughs> Here, this must be it. Yeah. See, Hazel, it works. After a while. Come on in. Hmm, it's your great little gadget, that. I hate to think of all the empty years I struggled along with a silly old doorknob. Well, come, 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 enter. I'm Professor Tucker. Uh, Professor, this is Hazel Laverne. Maisie can't come today. Maisie? Yeah, laryngitis. Maisie laryngitis? Do I know a Maisie laryngitis? (laughs) No, no, Maisie Revere. The girl you hired as demonstrator. She has a cold. A cold what? Oh, brother. Oh, too bad. How did her brother catch this cold? No, Professor. Maisie's in bed. Yeah, and I'd like to take her place. In bed? No. As demonstrator. You need one, don't you? Oh, oh, a very good idea. Yes. (laughs) I really should hire someone to show my house off. I'm very busy, you know. Always on the move. First I'm off in one direction, then I'm off in another. (laughs) Yeah, Professor, you sure must be off. Exactly. Yes. Now, uh, let me show you around, uh, Miss... uh, uh, miss. And I shall demonstrate how everything functions. Now, let's see. Where, oh, where are my glasses? They're on your forehead. My forehead? Just put your hand on your nose and travel north. You can't miss it. Oh, never mind, never mind. I have another pair at home. Now, everything in this house is controlled by secret springs hidden on the inside wall. Right hi- um, somewhere. Just press the hidden spring and the door disappears. You must lose more doors that way. Oh, that's a Jim Dandy one. (laughs) Jim Dandy. Now, let me see. Where did I put the button that closes the outside door? Search me. Oh, that's silly. It couldn't possibly be on you. Well, no matter. It's bound to pop up somewhere sooner or later. Gosh, this sure is an amazing joint, Hazel. There's not a stick of furniture anywhere. Yeah, nothing but blank walls. Hey, maybe this is the garage. Oh, oh, oh hardly, Miss, uh, uh, Miss. Uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, uh, now don't tell me, don't. This is, um, the living room, I think. Mm, it's nice and cozy for people who just hate to sit down. I know, I just know you're wondering where the furniture is. <laughs> you're probably wondering yourself. Oh, hardly, my dear. <laughs> The furniture is all inside the walls. Gee, that's great. Especially if you're a termite. Now, uh, I will demonstrate, Miss, um, Miss, so uh, you can show potential buyers when they come around, you see. I'll just press this button on the wall, and out will come a chair. This I gotta see. Yes, me too. There. <laughs> well, I guess I was wrong. 
This is the bathroom. Yeah, I guess that by the bathtub. I never saw a bathtub like that. It has no faucets on it. Very discerning of you, young man. Very. <laughs> you see, there's a reason for not having any faucets. That's for people who don't like to take baths. No, no. The reason I left off the faucets was so people wouldn't hurt themselves if they happened to slip while taking a bath. Say, that's great. Uh, but, Professor, if it has no faucets, how do you get water into the tub? Hmm. A very good question. A very good one, indeed. Now, if you'd like to see the rest of the house... No, thanks, uh, and I'm very grateful for showing me where everything is. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Well, I must be running along. Thanks for showing me around, miss. It's been very interesting. Very. Something like the sort of house I've been working on. Goodbye, and do let me come again, won't you? Well, there goes the professor, Hazel. I guess working on the plans for this house all his life sort of got him. I think he's off his trolley. He ain't even near the track. Oh, gosh, Bert, I'm exhausted. Maybe we could find which one of the buttons that brings the furniture out. Yeah, well, I'll try, Hazel. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mother told me to press this one. Hey, that did it, Hazel. Here's the furniture. Yeah, your mother knows more about this place than the professor. Oh, hiya, Hazel, Mert. Al, what are you doing here? Not interested in buying a house, are you, Al? This joint has everything. If you can find it. Oh, I couldn't afford a snazzy place like this. I, I just dropped in again on my way to pick up Edna and her mother at the station. Oh, have you been here before, Al? Every chance I get. I keep dreaming that someday I'll be able to own a place like this. For me and for my Edna. Yeah, you could come home from work, whistle for the dog, and the icebox would come out. Oh, Hazel, you can laugh all you want. But if I had a place like this to show Edna's mother, she'd really think I was rich. Uh, too bad it ain't possible, Al. And, uh, well, you'd only need it for a couple of hours, wouldn't he, Hazel? Now, wait a minute. I'm trying to hold this job for Maisie, not lose it. Sure. Why sacrifice a job that could last for days just so a poor gas station jerk could be made happy for the rest of his life? Okay, Al, okay, you win. You'll do it? Hazel, what happened? I thought you had a strong will. I have. But I also have a weak won't. Ah, oh, gosh, no. No, it, it's it's no use. But you gotta, Al. Gee, Maisie will never forgive me if you don't. Yeah, but 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 you you, you don't understand. You wouldn't want Edna to marry somebody else. And have your kids have a stranger for a father? Oh, but it's no good, I tell you. I got the house, but no ritzy family like I told Edna and her mother I had. Oh, yes, you have, Albert Old Bean. Really, you have. Don't you recognize your own lousy with culture, sister? Hazel. Hazel, you mean you'd play her? But but could you take off for a society woman? Hmm, why not, old thing? Taking off is one thing I've had lots of experience at. The Adventures of Maisie, featuring for this performance the glamorous Audrey Totter, will continue in just a moment. I guess I look like real honest to goodness society now, hmm? Not a bad looking hostess gown I whipped up from odds and ends. Uh, yeah, it sure is odd where it ends. Oh. Mm, don't you worry about me, Sonny. Just make sure you don't make any folks' passes. Remember, you're supposed to be a very ultra butler. Yeah. Too bad I couldn't sew, too. Fine looking butler I'm gonna make. Slacks and a plaid sports jacket. Oh, well, I'll just tell I guess that you used to be a butler in Hollywood, eh? Hmm. That must be Al the guest now. Jeeves, answer the door. Uh, we oui, we, oui, senorita, at once. Uh, hey, it, it's closed. Al must have done it when he left. Well, open it. You know how. Yeah, but I don't know what. I forgot which button to push. Well, come on, push something. Here, here, here. this looks like it might be the one. Oh, what do you know, Jeeves? Uh, what, madame? We got a piano, too. 
Do you play, Jeeves? Uh, no, madame. Well, we won't be needing that tonight. Uh, may I have the next one, madame? Do, Jeeves, by all means. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's see what happens with this one. Would madame care for her bath now? Oh, that tub again. Hold your horses. I mean, uh, do have patience out there. We're playing a game of button, button. Oh, that did it. Hello, sis. Gosh, I, I thought you'd never open the door. No, you and me both, dear, dear brother. This is your Edna, isn't it, Elf? Oh, no. I'm her mother. <laughs> uh, but we're often taken for sisters, you know. <laughs> oh, then you won't mind being taken again. Uh, for sisters, I mean. Uh, Hazel, Hazel, this... This is Edna. Ah, how do you do, Hazel? You don't mind me calling you Hazel, do you? Ah, not at all, my dear. I'm used to being called all sorts of things. Of course, Hazel is my favorite. Uh, well, Edna, Mrs. Page, how do you like my, I mean, our, uh, I mean, this place? Oh, it's beautiful. And so, uh, it's so different. Yeah, it's the latest thing. Hazel, where do you find such furniture? Oh, we just keep at it, and sooner or later, something turns up. But you dear, dear folks must make yourselves comfortable. Well, we can't stay long. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Uh, Hazel means it's nice of you to spend the time between trains with us. <laughs> yes, I mean, quite. <laughs> Jeeves? Jeeves? Uh, yes, madame. You called, madame? Yes. Uh, take the ladies' wraps and hang them in the closet. In the, uh, closet? Certainly you know where the closet is, Jeeves. Uh, not by heart, madame, but I'll have a go at it. Uh, wish me luck, madame. Mm, very new, isn't it? Oh, yes, but quite capable. Work for some of our finest families. Does he always wear slacks, a sport coat, and a sweatshirt? Oh, no. Nah, just when we're having company. Most of the time he just slops around. <laughs> um, I'm sure you two young people would like to be alone and, uh, chat. Hmm? Why don't you show your fiancé the rest of the, the, the house? Oh, hmm? sure, sir, sure. Uh, it, uh... Where do we start? Uh, just press any button and see what happens. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, you must see the library, uh, Edna. Come this way, I think. i uh, see you later, Mother. Mm -hmm. Hazel. Charming couple, don't you think, Mrs. Page? She's so pretty and he's so filthy rich. <gasps> yes, yes, a wonderful match. Um, Hazel, I don't want to rush you, but we are here only between trains. Oh, and we... yeah, yeah, yeah. What you want to put on the feed bag. Uh -huh. I mean, have some chow. Uh -huh. I'll get Jeeves started on serving directly. Jeeves? Uh, Jeeves? Uh, yes, madame? Come out, come out, wherever you are. I'm here in the closet. Well, how about dinner? That's a great idea. I'm starving. Nah, I mean for the guests. Come on out and serve. I can. I don't know how to get out. Well, well, where's the closet? Well, I ain't sure. Press one of them buttons. Oh, fine. Here we go again. Let's see, I must be at their house in the future, Joe. Uh, Park the truck here. Let's go to work. Say, uh, the, this here sure is a funny-looking house. Uh, what are we supposed to do again, huh? I told you five times, you meathead. What? We're supposed to remove off the bedroom in the library. Yeah. And stick them on that other house in the future. The professor's putting on display in the next town. But the professor says to do it at midnight. It's only 7.30. So What? There ain't anybody in this joint, and the sooner we get finished, the more time we'll have to get drunk. Yeah. Say, you sure think of everything. Well, Mrs. Page, Jeeves finally found his way out of the closet, clumsy lad that he is, and dinner will be ready pronto. Oh, fine, fine. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Oh, I wish I'd known. I prepared a turkey. Jeeves is in the kitchen carving it now. Hmm. I'm afraid it's a rather tough bird. Why, it sounds like... There goes the wing now, I think. Uh, pardon me, Mrs. Page. I must see what's keeping G's. Oh, I'm glad you came in, Hazel. Guess what? What? The bathroom's gone. Merton, have you been drinking the furniture polish? Nope. The bathroom ain't here. It's disappeared. Well, maybe you pushed the wrong button and it wound up in the library. 
Hey, let's get a hold of Al out there. He's a mechanic. Maybe he can find it or something. Uh, here's the button for the library door, Hazel. Hey, Hazel. What's a tree doing growing in the library? That ain't the library. It's the backyard. Somebody swiped the library, too. Hey, come on. I gotta call the cops. Gosh, I heard of them breaking into houses, but I never heard of them breaking them off. Hello, 12th Precinct, Sergeant O'Toole speaking. Hello, Sergeant. I'd like to report a couple of stolen articles. Yeah, what? Give me a description. Well, well, one of the stolen articles is a library. Yeah, and when did you notice it? Was it? A library? Yeah, and one of our bathrooms is missing. What? Somebody going around with a hot bathroom? Are you kidding me? No, and there are two people in it. In the bathroom? No, in the library. Well, at least they got something to read. I'll check on it. You better be prepared to take a sobriety test. <laughs> understand it, Hazel. Why don't Edna and Albert come out of that library and join us? Oh, they're, they're young, Mrs. Page. They probably really like it in there. They're sort of attached to that library. Yeah, yeah, where it goes, they go. But they haven't eaten, and we must catch a train. First, we gotta catch the library. <laughs> There's something strange going on here. I'm going into that library and speak to those children. No, 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 no don't. You can't. You, you, you don't know where it is. Does anybody? Oh, come now. I can certainly find my way to the library. Not without a road map, you can't. Hmm, that's the front door. Maybe. No, yeah, I'll get it, Hayes. Uh, I mean, madame. This is the house that reported a robbery. <gasps> a robbery? Oh, my goodness. Why, what was stolen? <laughs> a couple of rooms and some people. Oh. My Edna, she was kidnapped with Albert. Oh, we found the oh. library, madam. And the girl, she's out there oh. with Al Johnson, the gas station attendant. Oh, gas station attendant? But I thought he was rich and... Why, he's a phony. Mother, don't you dare talk that way about my husband. Husband? Oh, my goodness, my daughter married to a petrol merchant. Oh, but I'll make her happy, oh. Mrs. Page. And I oh. want to thank you for all you've done, Miss Laverne. Oh, I... I've never been so humiliated in all my life. I, uh... Oh, hey, our mother, she's fainted. Oh, quick, Mert, get a glass of water. Yeah, but what button do I push? Who knows? Try anyone. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens with this one. Well, I'll be. Uh, the furniture went right back into the wall. Yeah, and your mother was in one of the chairs. Hey, quick, you two. Get get started for Niagara Falls where Mama ain't in no position to stop you. Yeah, I'll give you a motorcycle escort to the station. Oh, that's very kind of you, officer. Uh, the pleasure's all mine, miss. It ain't often I get a chance to use my siren. Come on, get going now, kids. I'm sure Mama will relent after she comes through and maybe even buy you this house for a wedding present. Yeah, and you and Edna can live in it happily ever after. Uh, Hazel, we can't get out. The door, it's stuck. Stuck? Oh, fine. Now I guess we'll all have to live here happily ever after. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Hazel Laverne. Hello, Maisie. Hazel. No, no, no. Don't talk, honey. You want to save your voice to scream later when I tell you what happened. How about your job? Well, the job is still there, but the house is gone. It, you see, Maisie, it seems I played Cupid, and when the girl's mother came to, she was so mad she could have hit the ceiling. <laughs> Only that had been removed, too. Uh, maybe I stuck my neck out, Maisie. I mean yours, but... You see, these two kids were in love, and, and I know you would have done what I did, wouldn't you? Yeah, I thought so. Are oh, you feeling better already, huh? What? Right now you're looking out the window? Oh, say, Maisie, do me a favor, will you? If you see a bathroom go by, send it back home. 
Yeah. Bye, honey. Get better real fast. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, featuring our guest star, Audrey Totter. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Peter Leeds, Isabel Randolph, Barney Phillips, Harry Bartell, B. Benaderet, Sammy Hill, Ed Max, Tommy Bernard, and Will Wright. Jack McCoy speaking. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear a Maisie adventure in radio, starring for this performance the Metro Golden Mayor star, Gene Kelly. But first, your announcer. Adventures of Maisie, starring Gene Kelly as Bill. Bill Jones. Yeah, I'm the fellow folks around here in Centerville used to say, there goes that wild Jones boy. Guess he'll just never settle down and marry some nice girl like boys his age ought to. Of course, all this was during the war when a fellow didn't know whether he'd ever come back. <laughs> At least, uh, that's a line I always use with the girls. And it worked, too. Except with Maisie. Funny thing, I'm married now. I got a wife I'm nuts about and two of the cutest kids that ever drove a man crazy with questions. But every once in a while, I still think about Maisie. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time I met her. I was home on a 24-hour leave, and I dropped into Joe Davis' newspaper office for a little highly necessary information. Hiya, Joe, you old civilian, you. Bill. Wipe the ink off and shake the hand that held the gun that almost blew off my foot the first time I shot it. <laughs> well, Bill Jones. Yeah, with a whole 24 hours to squander. Joe, that's why I called you right from the train. Have you got your little book with the phone numbers handy, pal? Well, sure, Bill, but I don't think it's going to do you any good. Look, Joe, this is Bill Jones you're talking to. The gal that can turn little charm boy down for a date ain't been born yet. Come on, give chump. Well, I mean, Bill, there just are no girls. I got 38 bucks to spend. No girls? Uh-huh. Don't tell me Congress has made them unconstitutional, too. Practically, Bill. Almost all the babes in town are in the service. They can't be. It's against the war code of fair tactics. Look, Joe, how about that red-headed job? You know, uh, Rita Wilkowski? Whack. For the blonde number, Jenny Twork. Oh, you mean the one with the silly giggle. Giggle, schmiggle. This is war, man. This is war. What's with Jeannie? Uh-uh. Wave. Oh. All right, then. Tilly Farfel. Uh-uh. Wife. You see, Tilly... Never mind the me... details. What's her phone number? Well, she married Sam Jenks. Uh, the blacksmith. Oh. Well, who else you got, Joe? Yeah. 
Oh, say, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who? Well, when George Newcomb, who used to help me get out this paper, was drafted, I, uh, I hired a girl. Yeah, yeah. You see, help is scarce. And, sure. Well, when you can't get what you really want, you gotta take what you can get. You ain't kidding, chum. Where is she? Well, Maisie is supposed to be at her desk outside by nine, and it's eleven now, so she should be in by now. Thanks, Joe. I'll do the same for you next war. So long. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Bill. Maisie may not be your type. Chum, when all you got is a 24-hour pass, anybody's your type. And I hope you people of Centerville will forgive me for trying to do a man's job. Question mark. No, no, period. You see, I am a woman... You can put a period after woman, too, baby. No question about that. Look, I'm busy, so don't try to get fresh. The first thing I have done was to organize a Boy Scout troop. Well, doll, if you need any help in that department, little Bill Jones is your lad. Oh, were you a Boy Scout? Until I was 14. Then I started scouting for girls. What do you say, beautiful? How about knocking off for the afternoon? Knocking off who? Oh, don't be like that, sugar. All I've got is a 24-hour pass. Hmm. And you'd like to spend the whole 24 hours making it at me. No, now please go away. I have work to do. Uh, the leader of the scout troop is Terry Wilkins, who is 13 years old and acts like a perfect gentleman. When I was that age, I did too. Look, babe, it's a beautiful day out. I can get a hold of a car. And run out of gas up on the top of Lover's Lane Mountain. Look, all I got is a 24-hour pass. I'll have to run out of gas sooner. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Sorry, Admiral. Little Maisie has just declared herself out of bounds. Oh. I know. I know. It's too much to ask of such short acquaintance. But... Yes, it is too much to ask, Ella. So scram, will you? I got work to do. Hmm. Spoken like a true civilian. How soon the world forgets we heroes to give our all for mankind. And womankind. Look, sailor. Save some of your all for some other womankind. I ain't interested. Oh, hi, Miss Revere. Well, oh, hi, Terry. How's the troop coming on? Oh, swell, Miss Revere. I got Benny Guzzi to Look, join Look, kid, up. go away, will you? I'm doing good now. Oh, hi, Bill. Gee, I haven't seen you since you was drafted eight weeks ago. Fix me on the I can cray it, Kate. Huh? He said don't louse up his pitch, Terry. He's trying to get me to feel sorry for him because he spent three years overseas. Yeah. I mean, well, that's true. That's true, babe. You don't get these ribbons for nothing, you know. No, you got up here a quarter apiece for him at the PX. <laughs> uh, drunk with power, ain't you, Terry? Look, Maisie. I... Greetings on you, Miss Maisie. Well, how do you like my Boy Scout uniform, huh? But, Benny, you're a little too old to be a Boy Scout. In his case, they probably went by mental age. Hey, that there's an insult, I think. Maybe I better slug him just to be on the safe side, eh, Maisie? Stop, stop, Benny. You're not in the prize fight ring anymore. Besides, it'd be a shame to mess up Mr. Jones' beautiful face. Oh, so you have noticed me, huh? You want to know something, honey? You deserve me. That's a nasty thing to say. Now, leave me alone. I got work to do. Terry, do your good deed for the day and show Mr. Jones to the door. Huh? Never mind, never mind. I can find the door myself. I just happen to have a compass with me. Oh. Well, get going already. Sure, sure. And Scout Benny, if you ever want to start a fire, remember, it's easy. All you got to do is rub your two heads together. I'll visit with your boss for a while, Maisie, just in case you get tired of the company of this kid and uh, yawn punch-drunk fighter. Hmm. And now I can get back to my work. Yeah, some nerve calling Benny punchy. Yeah, yeah, that is an untrue lie. I ain't punchy. Let me at him, I'll kill a punk. Benny, Benny, your... that was only the typewriter, Bill. Calm down. <laughs> Well, no. Let's see, Bill. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. You remember Florence Breck? Uh-uh. I ain't been away that long. Mm. Besides, Maisie's my target for tonight. Look, Joe, you're Maisie's boss, ain't you? Oh, yeah, Bill, but I can't talk her into going out with Joe, you. Joe, can't you think of some nice little assignment? Say one that uh, perhaps would take her out to, uh, well, let's say, Beaver Lake? There's nothing going on at Beaver Lake. There will be when me and her get out there. Mm. After all, Joe... I'll be going overseas soon, and I may not come back. Gee, that's a beautiful thought. What? I mean, making Maisie think it's an assignment for the paper. I'll do it. You know, Bill, when it comes to being a louse with women, there's nobody to top you. 
Joe, you're just saying that because you're my best friend. Now go in there and get to work. I got a car and a basket lunch my old landlady fixed up for me. I should take it back to camp. There's enough in there for two. Oh, this is going to be a picnic. In the true sense of the word, chum. Now get in there and turn on the power of the press. Okay, I know Major's alone in there. And the first recruit Terry Wilkins got for the scout troop was an ex pute an ex-fighter. Stop the presses, Maisie. I got a story for you to cover. Oh, gosh, at last. A real reporter. What's the assignment, Mr. Davis? Um, a, a hatchet murder, maybe? Uh, no, Maisie. What I want you to do is get your pencil and notebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go down to Beaver Lake. I know. I know. A submarine was spotted there. Maisie, how could a submarine get into a lake way out here in the Middle West? I don't know, Mr. Davis. Them Germans are pretty tricky, you know. Uh, yeah, sure. What I want you to do is cover a big story out at the lake. The 1912 graduating class of Centerville High is having a picnic reunion there. Hmm. Some scoop, I'll say. Maisie, when anybody in this town gets together, it's news. Now, I want you to drop everything and rush right down to Beaver Lake, and I want the whole yarn of the picnic. Right, Chief. Only how I get out there, I don't have a car. What's that? I said I don't have a car. Well, did you hear what Maisie said? She don't have a car. Oh, hello, Joe. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, Maisie, did you see my hat? You're wearing it. Oh, I know, but uh, <laughs> did you see it? Say, Bill, I'm glad you happened to pass by. This is an emergency. Forget it. We can use my car. Oh, gee, that's swell of you, Bill. Wait a minute. How did you know I needed a car? Well, uh, well that's obvious. Nowadays, everybody needs a car. Uh, will you do it, Bill? Well, I had other plans, really. There are lots of girls in town that have missed me, but for you, Joe, yes, I'll drive Maisie out to Beaver Lake. Hmm. And uh, how did you know I had to go to Beaver Lake? Oh, uh, well, because you had a you had to cover the reunion of the high school graduates. Yeah. Shall we go, Ushers? Well, we've got to have a yarn on that reunion at Beaver Lake. The only trouble is I, I don't speak either. Well, if you two will excuse me for a moment, i got to step out for a while and make some necessary arrangements. Well, we did it, Bill. Yeah. But, uh, you think Maisie suspects everything ain't strictly on the level? Oh, of course not, Bill. She went for it hook and sinker. Yeah, now all she has to go for is my line. get bitten on the hand by a snake, you make a crisscross cut in it with your scout knife. Yeah, yeah. On what part of the snake do I make this here cut? Hey, hi. Hi, scouts. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I've been here at the club teaching Benny first aid. Yeah, Macy, after I learned this good, then Terry is going to maybe teach me second aid. That'd be nice. And gosh, maybe I may even get as far as eighth or ninth aid. Huh, Terry? Well, scouts, this here little girl needs some aid, too. And the help I want will call for real brains. Oh, you just want to use Terry. No, no, both of you. Look, look, you fellas know how to track down a wolf. Well, sure. Even a wolf in ship's clothing? You mean Bill Jones again? What else? Oh, don't you worry, Major. I'll grab a hold of that guy and I'll tie him up with knots. Terry, teach me the real sailor's knots. No, no, what I want you two fellas to do is follow me and Bill down to Beaver Lake and join us. For the duration. What do you want us there, Miss Revere? Well, Mr. Jones has a good conduct medal, and I want to make sure that he earns it. The Adventures of Maisie, starring for this performance, Gene Kelly, will continue in just a moment. Kind of romantic down here at the lake, huh, Maisie? Kind of. Lots of birds and bees around today, I noticed, Bill. 
Yeah, they've been following me around. <laughs> Probably want to take notes. <laughs> Clever little rascals, ain't they? Uh, would you care to walk down close to the edge of the lake, Maisie? I, I know a nice spot there. I'll bet you do. Hey, Bill, you know something? There's no people here. Oh, I wouldn't say that, baby. We're people. After all, I'm a man. Yeah, and I'm a woman. Cozy arrangement, ain't it? Yeah. How about sitting down here, honey? And, uh, wait until they arrive? Well, 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 sure. What else? Yeah, what else? Well, it shouldn't be too long before the reunion. After all, we don't have all day. It's all right, Gord. Uh, how about get a little closer? Sure. After all, there is work to do. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it work, baby. Well, uh, writing a story about a reunion of graduates isn't what you'd call fun, is it? No, there's more interesting things in life. Snuggle a little closer, sir. Please, Bill. Somebody might be watching us. Oh, just those two lovebirds up in that tree, they probably want to pick up a few pointers. Hmm. Mm. I wonder what's keeping them. Forget them, doll. Concentrate on us. We're here alone. Just we two. Hi, folks! Just we three. Hey, Terry, where are you? Just we four. Well, gosh, Terry, what are you and Benny doing way out here? Oh, this is part of the scout training. Yeah, yeah, me and Terry, we wanted to see how people feel when they get lost. Oh, it's an exciting feeling, fellas, so why don't you two get lost? Oh, no, no, boys. Look, Mr. Jones brought along a basket lunch. What do you say we all make ourselves nice and comfy and help him eat it? Cheap food. Yeah, hey, that sure is nice of you to invite us. We, we'll join you, Bill. Oh, you wouldn't like this stuff, fellas. It's chocolate-covered salmon. Chocolate-covered salmon? That's my favorite. Figures. Help yourself, fellas. Oh, gosh, Bill, ain't it nice to have people you know with you on your only day of leave? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been so happy since they made me 1A. <laughs> Gee, these here hot boiled eggs taste delicious. They taste even better if you took the shell off first. Uh, have some more potato salad, Bill. No, thanks. I'm fed up. Look, isn't it time for you two beavers to go back in the forest and gnaw down some trees? Gnaw down some trees? Hey, Maisie. Hmm? There's a cute little island in the center of the lake. Why don't we row out there? Let me show it to you. Oh, that's a swell idea. I'll do it. You will? Sure. Oh, gosh. I know where there's a canoe. Yeah, but it only holds three. Yeah. What'll we do with Mr. Jones? Huh? <laughs> don't worry about me, folks. I'll just swim alongside with a lunch basket in my mouth in case you get hungry again. Can't you take a hint, Chum? I think Mr. Jones really likes company. Yeah, fellas. well, he's a little too much of it. Hey, Benny, step over here a minute. I want to talk with you. Yeah, sure. Leave a step aside, old people. Well, I'll go down and wait in the canoe, fellas. Uh, will I see you before you go back overseas, Mr. Jones? You will, baby. Oh, Bill! Yes, little beaver. Oh, we'd like to show you an old Indian wrestling hole. Goody, goody. It'll come in so handy overseas in case I run into any old Indians. Yeah, now, now first I, I, I grab your hold of your hand like this, you see. <laughs> oh, oh, that trick, yeah. <laughs> well, then I grab you by the other hand, yeah. like this. <laughs> oh, like this. Well, this is too, too peachy. Oh, I just wonder what happens next. <laughs> well, uh, I count till three. You think you can make it? Well, first, though, we back up closer to the edge of the lake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. You will. Now, here we go. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> well, so long, fellas. Have a nice swim. And thanks for teaching me that trick. It's a humdinger. I'll be right there, Maisie. Gee, I don't understand, Bill. Why did Terry and Benny run out on us? Oh, just afraid to take chances, that's all, honey. They spotted a couple squirrels and they didn't have their hats on. Oh, here we are at the island. All ashore that's going ashore. Uh-uh. Give me those paddles. I'm going back. 
In the rain? Rain? What rain? Any questions? Bill Jones, when you make arrangements, you don't leave nothing out, do you? I try not to, baby, but uh, this lovely rain, I didn't count on. Mm-hmm. Came in mighty handy, though, didn't it? Yep. This goes to show that I got others on my side in this war besides England. Okay, step ashore. Here's my hand. Uh, thanks, Rock and Bar. <gasps> Oh, look, look. I am looking, baby. You really got a figure there. I mean the canoe. It's drifting out on the lake. Do something. Like what? Wave goodbye? This is a calamity, senior grade. Do you realize we're on this island without a boat? Yeah, yeah, I do, honey. I'm just beginning to realize it. How are we going to get off? We can't stay out here and get pneumonia. No. Lucky, there's an empty shack on this island. Yeah, lucky. For who? Ah, don't you worry your pretty head about anything, Maisie. Come on, the shack's this way. I'd rather stay out here. Bill! Bill, wait for me! Oh, gee, Chief Brewster, we've been around this island three times, and we haven't even found a sign of Miss Revere and that Jones Creek. Now, don't you worry, Terry. We'll find them. In all my years as chief of police, I never lost a missing person. Well, I still don't get this. What makes you think that Maisie and that their wise guys may be drowned? Well, we found the canoe drifting in the lake. Yeah, with nobody in it. So? So, put two and two together, what do you got? Give me a hint. Well, the answer's four. Well, I was close. I had three. Well, look, Chief, there's something in the sand. The canoe? No, it's a footprint. It, it goes all around the shore. Yeah, wait, wait. There's some more footprints over here. Gosh, Chief, you're really on the trail now. Uh, I told you I was a regular bloodhound. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you got a clue, huh? Terry, does uh, Bill Jones have flat feet? No. Well, does Major Revere have flat feet? No. Oh, just as a thought. What, Chief? These footprints are mine. Oh, Chief, Benny, hmm? look. That old deserted shack way out there on the other side of the island. Yeah, there's smoke coming out of the chimney. It must be them. Now, come on, to the rescue, men. Well, nice cozy little shack, this. How amazing? A dream house. Well, it's better than nothing. Not much. I wonder who owns it. From the way the roof leaks, I'd say a mackerel. I guess the builder didn't have a lumber priority. My side don't have a roof. My side has. You still sure you don't want to come over and stand by the fire? No, thanks. Well, if you're going to be a silly girl, I won't try to coax you anymore. Hey, Maisie, do you go to the movies much? And you needn't try to make conversation either. Oh, I was just thinking about how things like this always happen in the movies. You know... Two people are stranded on a desert island, and and they hate each other. Bill, do you hate me? Oh, silly girl, of course not. Oh. Do you hate me? Yeah. As I was saying, these two people hate each other, but then something happens. Not if she can help it. I mean, he breaks his leg. Good. And she forgets and forgives and crosses over the line to nurse him. Wanna bet? Not yet. You're playing with a marked deck. <laughs> See, now you're really catching cold. For the last time, you come over here by the fire. For the last time, no. Stubborn, aren't you? Well, purely because some of that boy scout training rubbed off on me, I'll shove the fire over to neutral territory, the center of the room. There. There's the fire. Use it in good health. Thanks. Now, please stay on your side of the fire, and I'll stay on mine. Gladly. You know, Maisie... This whole thing was accidental. Circumstances got us into this. We might as well make the best of it till the storm blows over. Don't blame this deal on circumstances, Mr. Jones. You tricked Terry and Benny somehow. You paddled me over here. You lost the canoe and let it drift away. It's all been planned by you. The rain, too? Yeah, that, too. I made it rain? Yeah. You sat right there in the canoe and insisted on it. Now, look here, Miss Rebecca. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll get back to my side of the line. No. No, I mean there. There's something moving over there in the corner. Where? There. It's... It's a tiger. <laughs> Maisie, it's only a beaver. Oh. 
Is that good? <laughs> hey, hey, bud. If you're looking for the rest of your patrol, they're over on the other side of the lake. Oh, Bill! It's coming this way. Do something. It's all right, honey. I've got you. You're all right. Is it gone? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Bill, where are you going? Down to the lake. Maybe I can hail a passing boat. Yeah, but uh, won't you get wet? Does that worry you, Miss Revere? Well, I just wouldn't want to have you on my conscience, that's all. Now, don't worry. I'll write you release from all responsibility. Now, just cuddle up to that fire. Bill, don't go. I won't be long. Well, wait. Uh, maybe the beaver will come back. Huh? Oh. Well, he wouldn't dare, honey. Hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm sorry I was so nasty. And I'm sorry for everything I did to get you out here. If you had to go about it the same way again, Bill, would you? Of course not. I think the whole approach was pretty corny. It was not. <laughs> he was real cute. Oh, Maisie. Bill. Unhand that damn man, woman. I, I mean, unhand that woman, man. We've come just in time, Maisie. Yes, Maisie, we're here to save you. Is the storm over, Chief? No, but it should be in about an hour. Come back in an hour, fellas. What? But not first, please. In just a moment, we shall return to our story. the next day I went back to camp and very soon after that they started shipping us overseas for active service. After that it was just one big battle after another. But I finally had to go anyway. When the war was over I came back to Centerville. But Maisie was gone. I tried to locate her. I tried real hard. But the only trace left of her existence in town was in the hearts of the folks there. Well... After a while, I gave up the search and married the little freckle-faced kid I went to school with. Well, maybe it's just as well I never married a girl like Maisie. You know, she's the kind that always would want things her own way. And me? Well, I'm the kind of a guy that insists on wearing the pants in the family. No, siree. No woman could boss Bill Jones around. Bill Jones, come in here right now. Yes, my dear. At once, my dear. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie with our guest star, Gene Kelly. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Florence Hallop, Sheldon Leonard, Will Wright, George Neese, and Gilbert Barnett. Jack McCoy speaking.
The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Like the man said, Maisie Revere. I've kicked around the world a little, and the world's kicked me around a little, too. There's one good thing about being in show business, though. You do get a chance to travel. Right now, I'm in India. I can't pronounce the name of the city, but it sounds like something spelled sideways. <laughs> How did I wind up in this Oriental Coney Island? Well, when you're in show business, your agent is like the draft board during the war. You go where you're sent. Well, anyway, the show folded, and here I am, stranded, and without boat fare to get back to the state. Not even enough to pay for the hotel room I'm sharing with another girl in the show, Dixie LeVere. Did you say something? Gosh, Dixie, this hotel room is sticky, hot, and smelly. If I had the strength, I'd take a stroll over to the fish market for a breath of fresh air. What'd you say, Maisie? Oh, nothing, Dixie. I was just talking to myself. Oh, if I don't get back to the good old USA soon, I'll be talking to myself, too. Yeah. Maisie? Yeah? Hand me the newspaper. Oh, what's the use? The only jobs open in this overpopulated mirage is for camel drivers. I'm not on the market for a job. I just wanted that paper to swat a mosquito. Oh, don't do that, Dixie. Well, don't tell me in this country it's against the law to kill mosquitoes, too. No, it ain't killing a mosquito that bothers me. It's all the relatives flying in for the funeral. Oh. Maisie, get the paper and kill it anyway. Well, it's your turn, honey. I got the last one. Here's the paper. Thanks. Say, Macy, we got more company. Well, step on it. I can't. It's Dolores King. She's in town. See? It says so right here in the paper. Dolores King here in India? What for? Listen. It says, Dolores King, famous moving picture star, arrives from Hollywood. Famous. Huh. The last picture she made almost brought back vaudeville. I remember it laid a big egg. How do you know? I helped hatch it. You don't like Dolores, huh? Hmm. What's to like? She still owes me about 300 bucks. You loaned her 300 bucks? Yeah, and grips and grabs. And I never got a grab back from that grip. You see, after the picture was released, so was Dolores. Oh? What was wrong? Her personality. It came across. After that, she couldn't get a job, and I let her move in with me. So one afternoon, I came out of the shower, and dear, dear Dolores was gone. Well, why didn't you go after her? My clothes were gone, too. Well, this is your chance to balance the book. Dolores is here in town. So what? That dress she took ain't in style anymore. But the 300. They're still using the same style money. Uh, get those stars and stripes out of your eyes, Dixie, honey. If you're counting on getting back to America and what I can squeeze out of Dolores, stop counting. She's probably just as broke as us. Not according to what I read here in the paper. No. No. She's out here to marry up with a local boy. Serves her right. Who's the unlucky groom? Some goon with a fleet of drive-it-yourself elephants? Oh, he owns elephants, all right. And just about everything else in the country... Dolores is going to marry the Maharaja Ishmael. 
You mean that handsome prince we saw yesterday driving through the marketplace in a jewel-happy elephant and throwing handfuls of money to the beggars? That's Maharaja Ismail? It ain't Jack Benny. What? How did Dolores ever swing that deal? That there Maha's a doll. Real pretty. And has about 300 million bucks. Mm, that's real pretty, too. Oh, gee. This here article here is romantic. Says that Ishmael fell in love with Dolores the minute her kisser appeared on the screen. Right away, he sent her a letter to come out here and marry him. Well, so Dolores is in the chips, huh? Come on, Dixie. Where to, Maisie? We're going back to America. We'll find Dolores and make her cough up enough of what she owes me for boat fare. Gosh, Maisie. Imagine that lucky Dolores marrying 300 million bucks. Gee. If you had that kind of deal, what would you do? Well, let me see. I'd buy 100 million bucks worth of clothes and 100 million bucks worth of underwear. Yeah. Well, what about the 300 million? Oh, that I'd probably just spend foolishly. Come on, let's go. I'll take this, uh, and this, and this. Yes, yes, Miss King. I mean, Your Highness. I mean, Your Highness to be... Uh, perhaps maybe Her Highness would be interested in this string of pearls? Hardly, my good man. Dolores King never wears pearls. They are very expensive. I'll take them. Uh, you may put it on the Maharaja's account. Uh, naturally, Your Grace. Now, we have some pearls just arrived from Paris, Your Majesty. Ah, you think of everything, don't you? Yes, Your Grace, don't we? For example, we have this sable for $12,000. I'll take two. Two, Your Eminence. But how could you possibly wear two sable coats? She'll force herself. Yes, I'll force my... Maisie Revere. Hiya, Dolores. You read any good bank books lately? Uh, my good man, uh, I'm expecting a headache. Uh, get me an aspirin. And charge it to the Maha's account, huh, Dolores? Ah, uh, yes, Your Majesty, at once. And I shall bring Her Eminence's wedding ensemble with me when I return. I believe the seamstresses must be finished sewing on the diamonds and rubies as His Royal Highness the Maharaja requested. Gee, a wedding gown with diamonds and rubies. What else? Say, who are you, miss? Dixie LeVere, honey. A roommate of mine. We have adjoining stalls at the hotel. How do you do, Miss King? Quite well, thank you. Gee, you sure are lucky, Miss King. They say the Maharaja is so rich he don't even know how much money he has. But Dolores knows, don't you, honey? After all, you can't take it with you, you know. Yeah, but it's nice to have something to wave goodbye to when you go. Hmm. Same old Maisie. Always thinking about money. No, just about what you still owe me. And we need it to get back to America. Our show closed here two weeks oh, ago. Oh, naturally. Every show dear, dear Maisie is in has a habit of running into, shall we say, uh, bad luck, honey? You're really a king-sized louse, aren't you, Dolores? Well, all I want from you, honey, is the money you owe me. Yeah, we want to get back to the States. I can't stand this place. It's full of crawling things. Yeah. You'd think there was enough of them without the Maharaja importing more. Well, Maisie, if you need money, I'd be glad to give it to you. Good. Of course, it'll take a little time to get together all the passage money. A little time? How much time? Oh, that depends on how good a personal maid Maisie is. Personal maid? The future Maharani is a kindly lady. She won't let any of these native girls draw her bath or keep away the flies or the thousand and one other bits of drudgery the job entails. The kindly Maharani saves a position like that for her friend. What? Maisie be your servant? I got a good mind to tear your blonde hair up by its black root. My, my, don't we have a nasty disposition. But I'm sure hard work will soon cure that. Are you kidding? Macy ain't going to be no flunky for you. Yeah, draw your own bath and swat your own flies. And if you don't want to swat them separately, just put a hunk of sugar in the corner and bunch them. Very well, Miss Revere. 
I hope you and your friend learn to like it here in Karawagani, because you're going to be here a long time. But you can't do this to her, uh, us. You can't let us be stranded in this outdoor turkey's bath. Ah, Your Highness, here are your purchases, already wrapped. And here, your royal wedding gown. Oh, it's beautiful. All covered with diamonds and rubies and stuff like that there. Her eminence, please. Oh, it takes my breath away. I wish it would, permanently. Her Highness wishes us to deliver the wedding gown and these other purchases to her hotel? No, uh, my servant will carry them there. <gasps> yes, Your Grace. Anything you say, Your Highness. Very well. I shall have the wedding gown wrapped at once. Maisie, you're not going to do it. Want to bet? It's the only way we can both eventually get out of this country. A very wise decision, servant. Very wise indeed. Simsalabim, simsalabim. What does that mean? It is Hindu, your eminence. It means, oh, noble highness, drop dead. <laughs> Starring Ann Southern will continue in just a moment. Your Majesty, the Sultan of Farfella, this chest of precious jewels. Oh, truly a more sumptuous gift than the Sultan contributed when you took your third wife. Or oh, was it your fourth, Your Majesty? Your omnipotent, Maharaja Ishmael. Uh, yes, you were saying something about it. Uh, merely that your wedding today to the American one has captured the imagination and loosened the purse strings of your constituents, O commander of golden elephants. But your eminence has not seemed to be interested in the list of gifts. Hey, Bali, I realize it is against the custom for the groom to view his bride before the ceremony, with a veil over her face, of course, but do you think one tiny peak, perhaps? <laughs> Might be arranged, O oh master of the planet. <laughs> I shall hasten to the royal suite of the hotel His Highness has provided for Miss King and bring her here to the palace for that, shall we say, uh, prenuptial chat? Yes, let us call it that. Go now and bring her here to me, and we will have a uh, friendly chat. With refreshment? What else? We shall have grasshoppers roasted to a turn. Oh, delicious. And in honor of my bride to be something typically American. Evale, uh, what is the American national dish? Oh, a, a strange concoction, Your Majesty. I have read many times about it in magazines. It is called a hot fudge sundae. Good, Evale. Then that is what we shall serve. Roasted grasshoppers and hot fudge sundae. <laughs> oh, sounds delicious, oh, pink and whiteness. I go now to fetch the bride to be. <laughs> Sweet is just down the hall, miss. Come, I shall open the door for you. Thanks, Sonny. My arms are too loaded with Mrs. Maharaja to be loot to handle it by myself. Open up them portals, Sesame. My arms are ready to fall off. Yes, at once, miss. This is it. The royal suite. Jeepers, what a layout. 
Looks like the lobby of the Waldorf. Help! Help! There is something wrong? Quicksand! I'm sunk up to my ankles in quicksand! That is merely the carpet you are standing on. His Highness likes everything soft. Well, he's sure going to be disappointed in Dolores. She's hard as rocks. He's going to take him for a million. Will that be all, miss? Ain't it enough? I mean, uh, oh, yes. I'll unpack the wet gown and stuff myself. <laughs> Wait a minute. <sighs> Lucky Dolores. Look at all these beautiful things. The Maha has taken her for better or worse, and she's taken him. Wow, get a load of this Hindu wedding gown. Just crawling with jewels. Heavy, too. Golly, when the Maha carries her over the threshold after the ceremony, he'll have to make two trips. Gee, this wedding gown. It's just beautiful. Maybe... If you know what's good for you, you'll hang up that wedding gown and scram. Sure, I bet it. Hey, who are you? Where did that voice come from? This is your conscience. I am your other self. Hmm. No wonder I can't get along on what I make. I gotta feed two of us. Maisie, you're tempted, aren't you? You're just crazy to try on that Fort Knox with sleeves. I never was thinking of no such thing as trying on this gown. But I bet you'd look swell on me. Don't be a schmo. What have you got to lose? Try it on. No, I don't want to. Oh, go on. Coax me. Well. You talked me into it. <laughs> I'll bet that's Dolores. And me in her wedding gown. She'll hit the ceiling. What are you worried about? You got enough on that trip to queer her with the Maharaja. Yeah, that's right. One word from me and her children wouldn't have a mother. Come in, you royal four-flusher. Good evening, your grace. No, I'm Maisie. I mean, uh, oh, I'm amazed to see you. You ain't, um, she... I am my valley, madame. Secretary to His Highness, the Master of the Four and Forty Green Umbrellas, the Maharaja. Oh, well, look, mister, this wedding gown, I only put it on, I was just trying to... To please his adamantine invincibility, no doubt. And His Majesty will be more than pleased to see how beautiful his bride-to-be looks in it. Bride? But I'm, I mean, I'm not, uh, um, well, I'll take off this. You must not remove that veil, madame. It is the law. Well, then get me a lawyer. I mean, uh, gosh... Madame, his impatient sentientness would like to see his fiancée immediately. Come, I will lead you to the palace. Look, I can't go. This whole thing is a mistake. A mistake? You are trying to back out of your promise to marry the Maharaja? Well, he's probably a nice kid, but but you don't seem to understand. Madame, it is you who does not understand. In this country, the penalty for attempting to make a laughing stock of his majesty is <coughs> death. Death? You mean like in killed? Yes. Now come, Miss King. His august constellation wishes you to spend a few moments with him. Alone. And remember, anything the Maharaja wishes, you must obey. Anything? You mean like in... anything? Yes. Come. The wearer of the platinum pantaloons is waiting. I'm coming. Maisie, this whole thing sure is funny. <laughs> Some joke, believe me. You were talking perhaps to me, madame. No, to my other self. You see, there are two of me, and one of us sure is in trouble. Enter, Miss King. 
This is his finest private quarters. You see, a table of delicacies has been prepared for you. His Highness wishes to sup with you. No, thanks. Look, chum, there's been a mistake. Hardly, my beloved one. Even with the veil, I can feel that you are more beautiful than the image of you with which I fell in love. The one on the screen. Well, gee, thanks. Madame, this is His Highness, Maharaja Ishmael, extreme potentate of Mustafa Bon, Prince of Ishman Ho, Raja of Magarak, plenipotentiary of Bugadoth, ruler, emperor, sovereign, and prince of Karawagon. Hi. Go now, Adali. I wish to be alone with my lovely bride-to-be. Yes, my master. Ah, my beloved. It is enchanted I am to meet you face to a veil. Somehow, you seem much younger than I expected. And somehow I got a feeling I ain't going to get much older. Only in years, my beloved one. Beauty like yours never dies. Promise me? Ah, my sweet American rose. I have been awaiting this meeting so long, and now that you're here, I have a feeling I hardly know you. Well, could be. Uh, look, Maha. Please. First, we must dine. Come, eat. What is this stuff? Roasted grasshoppers. Grasshoppers? Yes. Have one. No, thanks. I'm jumpy enough already. Your Highness, I'm... Thrilled at seeing me in person, eh, my darling? Come, come into the next room, please. It won't... Can't we kick this thing around out here, Ish? You don't understand, my darling. I've been waiting anxiously, impatiently for you to be my very own. Come with me. I want you to see the ceremonial jewels you will wear this evening when we are married. Jewels? In here, my magnificent one. Here, my sweet, mysterious one. I will open the chest. Wow. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and... What's this, uranium? No, my dear. Amethyst. I place all these precious jewels at thy feet. Gee, if I'd accept this stuff, I'd sure have the richest-looking feet in town. Maha, all this is just swell, but... I will hear no more of gratitudes, Miss King. Adorn yourself at once with these jewels. I will await you. Okay, Your Highness. I'll be right out. Ready, yes, my beloved one. Is thou wearing the ceremonial jewels? I is. Ah, you indeed look beautiful. Like a true Mararani. Come to me, my darling. Yes, sure. Um, you, you'd better come to me, Maha. I can't walk with all this jewelry on. Ah, so beautiful you are. Let me kiss your hand. Oh, sure. It, it, it's some place under these rings. Open the door! Open the door at once! Who is that at the door? Oh, it ain't termites. Y your Highness, I... Open the door at once! And she ain't kidding either. Where is she? Where's that Raja Swiper? Right here, sister. Under the jewel. She insisted upon seeing you, old lion of the uranium nose. She claims she is your fiancé. You ain't kidding. And I got first claim on all that dough. I got a letter to prove I was the one proposed you, to. You are the real Dolores? Yeah. I don't understand, O oh mighty confounder of the articulate. It is apparent now, quite apparent, that I have been the victim of a great deception. Evale, uh, remove her at once. Oh, yes, your most immeasurable perspicacity. Keep away from me. I can't run with all this hardware on. No, not this messy one. The scheming money-mad one. Throw her out. Me? Oh, but you can. Now, Your Highness, I can explain. The reason I came all the way out here to marry you... Evale! Put her on the next boat back home. Oh, you won't hear the end of this, Maisie. I'll get you. I'll... Yes, I am, Maisie. Me. You can't do it, Mr. Me. I'll write my lawyer. I'll call the U.N. I'll... Ah, shut up. Oh! Well, that 
was what you call in your country a narrow escape from a fate worse than death. No, Miss Ribeer? Yeah, I guess so. Your Highness, I never really intended to go through with this marriage. Perhaps. Perhaps I can persuade you to change your mind. Well, you see, I was just trying on that wedding dress, and... You mean... Now you want to marry me? Why not? But, Your Honor, we haven't known each other very long. Adam and Eve knew each other for even a shorter time, and she said yes to marriage. Yeah, but Eve didn't have very much of a selection, did she? <laughs> You've got a lot to offer, Ish. Money, position, power, and good looks, too. But, well, you got a couple of wives already, haven't you? Six, but I would make you my favorite. Sorry, Maha. In my country, we still have rationing. Only one wife to a man at a time. But we could be very happy together, the eight of us. Uh-uh. I don't mind having a mother-in-law and a father-in-law, but I draw the line at having six wives-in-law. <laughs> moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. up enough money to pay the fare back to the good old USA. Some gals may think me crazy, but I just couldn't see myself as one of someone's wives. I don't know. But when we buy those monogram towels for the bathroom, I want them to be embroidered his and hers, not his and theirs. I guess I'm just one of those old-fashioned American girls who wants a husband all to herself. Yep. If my husband is out late at night, I want to worry where he is, not know where he is. Well, i got to rush and catch that boat. Hey, baby, wait Nothing doing. You stay right here. You got me into enough trouble already. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included B. Benaderet, Mary Ship, Herb Butterfield, Hans Conried, Stanley Waxman, and Hal Gerard. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>